Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Uh, go ahead and look it up. <laughs> If you want, we'll go ahead, we'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this r slash neckbeard stories. Ah, uh, cringe. My co-pilot is a neckbeard, number 15. Oh, honka doggas, I don't know how you got this one out so fast, man. <laughs> it's not even been a full week and he's like here's another one another one what you like in this go ahead another one okay sure why don't we just turn this into the uh, red x slash honker donkers channel right <laughs> where we sit down and have a eight hour podcast about chris every single day because this dude seems to have gotten up to uh, a lot of stuff throughout the years Hey there, Red X gang! Hi, you some mommy honkadonkas! <laughs> Still the best username on the internet. I finally got a little bit of time to write, so let's not waste any time, and instead, we will get into another story about Chris. And oh my god, this is a beefy one. <laughs> this is longer than any previous entry, I'm pretty sure. I'm excited. So who is Chris? Well... Chris is a very fat and sweaty man, and by virtue of his plentiful bulk, he subsequently struggles to clean himself. I wash myself with a rag on a stick. <laughs> Except he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't even bother with the rag on a stick. Wherever he goes, his advance is heralded by the creeping odor of his poopy coom stinky stank. He has few pleasures in life, taking joy instead in his own personal dark triad of anime, lot lizards, and crystal meth. <laughs> Chris and I both work for a trucking company, and a major one at that, and we take turns driving our big rig down the road. Things are usually okay, at least when Chris is driving the truck. Usually being the operative word, but that is not necessarily the case every time. What is almost always the case is that when Chris is not driving, that is when the fun really begins. Chris is then free to do all sorts of Chris things, like clean up his fetid groinal blockage in the back of the cab and harass his coworkers or just prowl truck stops looking for dope. Try as I might and try as I do, Chris still has yet to stop acting like a goddamn animal and pretend that he's a human being, and it drives me insane. The real kicker is that to this very day, I still have to ride with Chris. I mean, you're still doing it. Maybe part of you does enjoy it, you know? <laughs> There's been a lot of comments and whatnot that are like, why are you still doing this, Honker Dockers? And he tried to explain his side, but honestly, I would take a pay cut for this. My family has to eat a little less for, for a while. That's fine. At least daddy's not losing his mind every goddamn day. <laughs> so I sat there with my hands pressed against my temples, quelling the surging agony that welled up from deep within my soul as that odious lard ass excitedly introduced me to his new best friend that he brought up and into the cab. Why you always gotta bring him home, Chris? I think it's been asked three or four times throughout this saga already. You don't need to invite everybody into the truck, okay? <laughs> this is where all of our things are kept. It is what should be a sanctuary. Ugh. We hadn't even left the fleet yard today, and it was already going to be a doozy of a ride. I'd like to stress something here and now to everyone who is reading this. It's not that I hate animals. I love him. I got a big old black lab back at home who was a member of our family and a loving and loyal companion. What I did hate was the thought of the goddamn poopy coo man bringing one with him onto the truck ride. You just shoving your dog in a truck? Oh god, Chris is responsible for another sentient being. Oh no! <laughs> smell that dog's mouth. Does it smell like peanut butter? <laughs> 
<laughs> Tell me right now! Does it smell like peanut butter? <sighs> you have this animal taken away. I'm sorry, I, I can't do this. I cannot abide. I mumbled, Chris, I didn't even know you had a dog. To which he excitedly exclaimed that he didn't <laughs> up until a couple days ago. Oh man. <laughs> not good. It's not good. At some point during his home time, he got a wild hair up his ass that said, I need to go to the pound and pick up a critter of my very own. Never mind if my lifestyle's right for it, or if it would be happy riding along in a big rig with me all day, or even if I had the time to give it the proper attention that it deserves, or any other slew of the considerations that one ought to run through their mind when adopting such an animal. Nope, this was an act born of unadulterated impulse. Yeah, that never works out too good. <laughs> <laughs> I already knew that somewhere, somehow, there would most certainly be consequences. Those consequences would not come from HR. It's not unheard of for them to let us bring dogs along with us. But instead, they would come from the universe. Yeah, and y you just can't make it stop. It's like a freight train barreling towards you. <laughs> what are you going to do? Just jump out of the way. Just let it all happen and try your best to be involved as little as possible. <laughs> That's really the only advice that I got for you, Honka Dockers. Many other people have said that you should uh, beat Chris up again since it seemed to work the last time, but like, how many times can you beat his ass? <laughs> Especially considering he's a daddy's boy and Honka Dockers doesn't want to lose his job. It's, oh, there are just so many things to consider. With all of this, it really I'd rather just not consider any of them, okay? Just just try not to involve me, please. <laughs> but it's too late. He's already involved. So I look down at the hulking mass of muscle named Titus that pretended it was a dog. The very same thing that Chris decided to pick up only a couple of days ago from the local animal shelter. A massive pit bull. It's head like a brick, stocky, squat, a pure alpha dog pack leader through and through, fueled by spite and testosterone and God knows what else, was busily licking its crotch and had made itself comfortable in my bunk bed. There was no way in hell that Chris was going to be able to control that dog. Yeah, pit bulls, you know, they have a bad rap and everything like that, but they can be good dogs. They just need a little bit of extra training to be the good dog that you want them to be. Really, all dogs do, okay? <laughs> and uh, I don't think Chris is capable of any of that. I'm not even going to suggest an alternative breed. I just think Chris should not have a dog or a cat or a rat or a goldfish. <laughs> Just keep them away from animals, period. A beast like that would never see Chris as an equal, never mind as its master, and in the grand scheme of things, that is a bad situation for any dog to be in. Chris, however, assured me that uh, it would be fine. <laughs> uh, I don't know that it will. I just sighed and I told him to get that dog out of my freaking bed. Chris demanded to know why, and I told him, Because it's my damn bed, and I don't want his dog sleeping in it. If he wanted to give it a spot in the cab, he could set up a little doggy bed on the floor of the cab. He bitched and moaned as he grabbed his cummy stink blankets <laughs> and laid them out on the floor for Titus. And when he at last set up a comfy little spot for Titus to settle in, he said, Hey, get up! <laughs> that dog ain't gonna listen. You think I wanna lay on that? Smells terrible, dude. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna catch something. Dogs are smarter than they look, alright? He knows sleeping on that's gonna make him sick instantly. The only person immune to it is Chris. Titus just lifted his head, looked at Chris, and then got comfy once more. Oh boy. <laughs> Chris repeated himself two or three times. The dog ignoring every command that he issued. When Chris reached down to physically assist Titus in moving, a low growl resonated in the back of the cab. The kind of growl that says, 
Touch me again, and I'm gonna rip your face off. <laughs> uh, it's your dog, bro. What are you gonna do with your dog? <laughs> uh, yeah, you stuck between a rock and a hard place right now, Chris. Chris recoiled and thought about what to do next. My suspicions were 100% confirmed. The pack order had been established, and Chris was not in control. He turned to me and said, um, he, he doesn't want to move right now. <laughs> uh, you understand that that is an animal. It's supposed to be your animal, Chris. You are not making a request. You are issuing an order. I understand people love their dogs, member of the family, such and such and such, but while they are a member of the family, they're also on, like, the, the bottom most tier of the family. My dogs don't even get on the couches, bro. On the bed? Forget about it. Never! <laughs> I sighed, got up from where I sat, and channeled my big boy voice. Titus, get up! Chris stared at me in quiet, seething jealousy as the beast looked to me with sad boy eyes and slowly, begrudgingly, he got up from where he lay and stepped down onto the floor. See? Not a request. It's an order. <laughs> He will listen if it seems like you know what you're talking about. I guided him over to the stanky bed that had been laid down on the floor for him by Chris and told him to lay down. And he got comfy with an audible sigh. Oh, don't sigh. Then you're going to have to inhale again. And, and you're going to be... Uh, what you're inhaling is not good. <laughs> it's not good for people. It's not good for dogs. Miss me with all of this. I broke clean with Chris. I said, dude. You are not in control of that dog. He doesn't respect you, and he's not going to listen to you, man. He's going to walk all over you, and it's just a matter of time until him or you or both of you guys get into trouble. Honestly, bro, you should take that dog to the nearest shelter ASAP, because honestly, Chris, you are not anywhere near fit enough to own a dog like that or any dog at all. But let's just start with not this one, okay? <laughs> Uh, Chris scoffed and insisted that I was just being a whiny beta bitch. <laughs> yeah, the beta that gets your dog to listen wh where you can't. <laughs> Seems a little sus. He said that my concerns were unfounded and that it was probably my scared womanly energy that had made Titus disobedient to his command in the first place. Yeah, whatever you got to tell yourself. He told me that if I just called my tits, everything would be fine. And as if to prove my point, Chris leaned down to pet Titus, calling him baby names in a baby voice, and Titus let out another growl, telling Chris to fuck off. Yep, this was not going to end well. <laughs> Uh, he's gonna get his face ripped off by a pit bull. I'm pretty sure. Pit bulls can be great dogs. Loyal defenders. If, if ever there was a dog to defend something. But right now, it just seems like he's out for himself 100%. So whatever he values, if Chris tries to take away a bone or, you know, gets too near his food, he's gonna get bit, you know? And <laughs> you hate to see that. It's not really the dog's fault. It's improper ownership. And there was never an owner more improper than Chris. Upon seeing this, I offered to take the dog to a shelter myself because as much as I disliked the poopy coom man, and honestly, I did think that it would be hilarious if he got maimed by his own dog, <laughs> I'd hate for him to maul Chris and then have to be put down because Chris is too much of a freaking tool to deal with animals like that. And let's be fair, the modern pit bull is a tough breed that had been deliberately forged in the flames of genetic selection to bring down enraged bulls in arena fights. Literally, bred to kill frenzied creatures many times their size and many times their strength. They are not beginner dogs for beginner trainers. They're not for the weak of will or the soft of personality. They're not a freaking status symbol. I won't even have one around my family, flat out. And they are absolutely not 
for fucking neckbeards who decided that eh, they were just lonely and wanted a friend. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, man. Get a Cocker Spaniel, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I love Cocker Spaniels. They're super easy to train, nice and friendly for the most part, unless they're inbred and stuff. Maybe go with one that has like a bit more genetic diversity. Cockapoo, that's what they call it. It's real nice. Maybe you want a bulldog. Bulldogs are like super lazy, just like the Poopy Coo man. He probably still wouldn't be able to train it, but at least it would just, you know, flop around and <laughs> not need walking all that much. There are many better dogs to pick than a pit bull. I don't know why he picked this one, honestly. Probably because he thought it was cool. He'll look totally hardcore if he gets one. Ugh. I say all of this knowing full well that I'll probably hear somebody talking about how they're nanny dogs, mommy honker donkers, or I have a sweet pit bull. What about that, mommy honker donkers, in the comments, as if one anecdote about a well-behaved pit bull invalidates and disproves not only the years of selective breeding for a strong prey drive, but also an overwhelmingly disproportionate representation of this particular breed in an overwhelming preponderance of dog attacks against humans, other dogs, wild fauna, and livestock. They're not something that you just adopt on a whim. The way I see it is... Every dog has a job. You need the place guarded on pain of the interloper's death? Yeah, that is why you get a pit bull. You need a friend? Go get a golden retriever or, or a lab. But okay, I digress. The long story short is that Chris was inevitably endangering himself with a literal fighter breed shelter dog that he had only had for a few days and he knew next to nothing about its history and the dog did not respect him in the slightest. He didn't even realize it, and while I know that Titus could very well be a good boy, hell, the absolute bestest of boys, with the right environment, and a strong, dedicated, intelligent handler who gave him lots of attention and care, in the hands of one poopy coo man named Chris, Titus was just a ticking time bomb, waiting to happen. Now, I wish I could disagree with anything the Honker Donker said in that paragraph, but really, I can't. <laughs> the statistics are there. Would you like to take a look at them? There are plenty of ill-behaved dogs, but a lot of them are much more cowardly than a pit bull would be because pit bulls are indeed bred to feel no fear, to not give a single shit. <laughs> they will fight a human, whereas most dogs are like, oh my God, you're bigger than me. I gotta go. I think that uh, his, his statement is completely correct. This dog could be a good dog, but he doesn't respect Chris. I mean, nobody respects Chris, <laughs> but the dog is just following suit and showing no respect to this dude who deserves no respect. And eventually there is going to be a situation that arises where Titus is going to do something very naughty and he's going to get himself put down. So at the end of the day, yeah. 100% it would be in the best interest of the dog to get it away from Chris. Hell, the second I heard that Chris adopted a dog, I didn't even know what kind of dog it was. I was like, you need to take that dog away. <laughs> it's not going to work out well, okay? Chris said, no, and asked me if I was ready to leave the yard yet or if I was going to keep crying about his new best friend. He remarked that our delivery will be late if we don't get moving, dude. And I almost cold cocked him. Whatever, Chris, take us out of the yard. I settled into the passenger seat. Chris put the truck into gear and Titus passed out in that kumi nest that had been made for him by Chris. I wonder why he named it Titus, honestly. Is it because it's just like a big tough name? Or did he actually name it after the lead character from Final Fantasy X? I mean, we do know that Chris is kind of a weeb, so I wouldn't put it past him, but I, I don't expect Mommy Honker Donkers to know the answer to that 100%. <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask me. That's what the dog's name was. So yeah, we rolled on down the highway that day. Chris had set his podcast on as usual. And it didn't take long for the throaty cries of Daddy Baka to begin. <laughs> he, 
He practically shouted the first one at something which I could only imagine was especially provocative to Chris, and it startled Titus awake from behind the passenger seat. He let out a loud howl and then started barking incessantly. Here we go, what fun! <laughs> Chris started to scream at the dog for it to SHUT THE FUCK UP! I CAN'T HEAR MY PODCAST! Which only increased Titus's agitation, compounding barking with more barking, I see. <laughs> Chris and Titus shouted back and forth at each other. Titus agitated that Chris was now yelling, and Chris mindlessly shouting at the dog to stop. This is... oh god. <laughs> <laughs> How far are we in? Not even an hour in to this road trip and it's already devolved beautifully. Please, Chris, reconsider everything. But he won't. He's nothing if not stubborn from what we've seen, I suppose. I could have stopped it with a word, but I let all this play out for just a little bit. At least Chris's anxiety got so heated that he swerved and almost went over an embankment, at which point I turned around put my hand over Titus's muzzle, and told him, quiet, in a nice, calm voice. Chris, oblivious to this simple exchange between Titus and I, grumbled to himself, hey, about time you listen to me, you stupid butt. <laughs> now I have to rewind my friggin' podcast. Hey, hey, honker dockers, tell that dog to lay down and shut up. I still got tons of miles to make. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Uh, it really just doesn't get it, and he's never going to get it. This story is gonna end in a really bad way. I hope it doesn't end poorly for Titus, because he did nothing except be adopted by the wrong person. Shame on the adoption agency for not asking more questions. I want to be mad at everybody, but I think I am the most mad at Chris himself. Okay, yeah, whatever, Chris. I turned back to my computer and settled in. Chris resumed his podcast from where he was so rudely interrupted by Titus, and when it came to another unbelievably spicy take that Chris couldn't handle, he inhaled deeply as if to proclaim the two Japanese words that he knew, but he paused, then glanced behind the seat where Titus now slept, and practically whispered, Nadi Baka! <laughs> Uh, I guess the dog got Chris to shut up. That's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> this would continue at least a few more times. It was almost as if reciting those two magical words was some form of ritualistic arcane incantation for Chris. Like if he said them enough times, Mikasa Ackerman might step out from the animated page and materialize into this fleshy coil and she would sweep that fat tub of shit off his feet and into her arms, intent on spiriting Chris away to anime land, to perform lewd acts with him and dote upon the basic needs that he himself was too lazy to take care of on his own. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that's gonna go how you think it's gonna go. If Mikasa pops out of the page, she's gonna think that Chris is just a, a great big fat titan and slay him. <laughs> Maybe all that is speculation, I don't know, but it is real within my own mind, okay? Okay, and it's real within Chris's mind as well, I do suppose. So this shift wore on. I felt bad for the big guy in the back, and somewhere around hour six of the drive, I could hear Titus stirring. He had been asleep all goddamn day back there, and I could only imagine that he was bored to tears. From what I could tell, Chris had packed no toys for him. Nothing for him to chew on, not a single bone to be had. He was just left alone in his doggy doldrums for the entire ride. And considering how long we had been riding, we'd taken no breaks from during Chris's drive time that day, it was no surprise that he started to whine. Probably because he needed to pee and didn't want to do it in the cab. Even without the logical inference of him not being let out for hours, I can still surmise what a piss whine sounds like, especially on a long car ride, and while Titus so far had been an absolute champ and held it up until now, it seemed like the time was now upon us for the inevitable. 
I mean, when you gotta go, you gotta go. He seems like an older dog. He probably can hold it, but even older dogs have a limit, okay? The poor little bastard definitely needed to pee. Chris, however, just yelled, hey, shut the hell up! Over his shoulder. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> he is so unfit. Even before I saw him interacting with the dog, I knew he was unfit, but it's worse than I ever could have imagined. I told Chris, you know, we've been riding for a long time now, and you haven't even taken your break, let alone let that dog out, man. Maybe we should pull over at the next gas station and let him out. Hell, even right here on the shoulder. I mean, we're in the middle of nowhere. Chris scowled and told me, You got to tell him how to treat his animal. And then he was just acting up because he was a little shit. And he did that sometimes. And I should just ignore him. <laughs> yeah, that's going to fix the situation. This seems to be Chris's uh, solution for everything. Oh, what? My butt stinks? Let's just ignore it. <laughs> Why deal with the problem when we can just as easily ignore it? <sighs> I seethed, and Titus got louder and louder in the back of the truck. His continence was failing, and to my distinct lack of surprise, I watched Titus begin to circle around the back of the cab. His whining incessant and desperate. Chris just kept shouting, Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Back to the poor Titus, and Titus, unable to contain himself, let loose with a flood of urine all over the back of the passenger seat. <laughs> uh, yeah, we saw this coming from a mile away. Everybody but Chris saw this coming. Has he never had a dog before? Does he not know that sentient beings need to unleash waste from time to time? <laughs> I shouted at Chris, telling him that his dog had just pissed in the cab. And as if to punctuate that point, the poor little dog that had been neglected popped a squat and let out a steamer right in the middle of the truck cab as well. <laughs> When you gotta go, you gotta go. I tried to let you know, you wasn't helping me out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is a good boy. He he tried his best, but it's just a, a no-win kind of situation. I rolled down the window as the rankling smell of dog shit filled the cab. Oh, man. <laughs> Can you not pull over right now? I, I don't know why he's so in a hurry all of a sudden to get where we're going, but I, I just need you to pull over for five minutes and clean up the mess that your dog has made. I could see the rage building on Chris's face as he realized that he now drove in a urine-soaked, crap-smeared truck, which is funny because his clothes are both of those things and he's never really been bothered by him before. <laughs> Uh, and slowly he began to decelerate. He put on the hazard lights and pulled over onto the shoulder because, of course, now he could find the time to do it. <laughs> you could have avoided this whole thing. He took a deep breath before he got up from where he was. He cried out when he realized that the dog piss was on the back of the passenger seat and had dripped down and soaked into all of the poopy coom blankets. And he screeched at that poor hound for a good 10 minutes straight while it tried to crawl under my bunk. I told Chris to knock it off, but he was so deep into his fit that my words fell on deaf ears. God, this is horrible. The dog is never gonna understand. He tried to let you know what was going on. It's too late. The situation is over. The only thing that's gonna happen now is your dog is not going to trust you. He thinks that you're unbalanced because he doesn't make the connection between the poop and the pee and you screaming at him for 10 minutes. He got down on his hands and knees and grabbed Titus by the hips, pulling him out, and I thought to myself, oh shit, here it comes. <laughs> That's my first thought too, honestly. That dog is gonna bite you, ooh. Well, Titus, terrified of the now raging Chris, who was mad that Titus had crapped in the truck after Chris refused to let him out, nipped at Chris all right, and he nipped him hard. <laughs> I heard another shout and a snarl, and the poopy coom man withdrew from Titus, 
clutching a hand which was now dripping deep crimson blood like a sieve. I don't understand what you expected to happen, bro. <laughs> Titus returned to his retreat and eventually wriggled his way underneath my bed and behind my suitcase. And as I peered under the bed from where I sat, all I could see were two pinpoint eyes in the darkness that emitted steady, low growls in Chris's direction. Well, that dog ain't never coming out. <laughs> <laughs> He's not gonna trust you ever again, Chris. If nothing else convinced you to, to give him back to the shelter, please, just do the right thing. For the first time in your miserable life, do the right thing. This was a bit of instant karma, but somehow I think that Chris is still going to continue and try and take it on the, on the dog, and, and I hope that Mommy Honker Donker steps in, if that's the case. Please, that's how I want this story to go, all right? I saw this coming from a mile away. I fucking knew that something like this was coming. My first instincts were that it would be much more catastrophic, perhaps a la Chris getting his entire face ripped off, but whatever. This was demonstrative enough of every point that I had made to Chris about Titus. <sighs> it was too late now, though. Chris was howling in pain with a wounded hand, had fallen back on the cab floor to nurse his wound, landing right on top of the dog turd and the pissy cum blankets. <laughs> oh! Ew! Dude! What the fuck? Uh, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> uh, that, that's always how these mommy honker donker stories go, right? <laughs> they bring us low and then they <laughs> shoot us back up. It's like, oh, tragedy comedy. Just flip back and forth. Oh, it's done masterfully. <laughs> uh, got a dog bite and now you're covered in a dog turd. <laughs> and Chris sat there for a moment in absolute shock at what had just transpired. <laughs> Tears were welling up in the corners of his eyes. <laughs> Uh, God, you hate to see a fat man cry, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> At least most of the time. This one, <laughs> he deserved it, honestly. Uh, this is just desserts. <laughs> it was about that moment that Chris turned to me and said, Dude, the dog just bit me. What the fuck? We gotta do something about it. I need your help, man. You gotta help me get him under control. Ugh. We. Since when was this a we moment? Chris turned to me with pleading eyes and just said, Help! We gotta get him under control! <laughs> uh, oh my god, dude. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. You don't have what it takes within yourself. Just admit it now and give the dog back. I pressed my questions. I said, get him under control so we can do what, Chris? Uh, so I can rub his face in his piss. And that way he'll learn that he shouldn't pee in the truck. <laughs> uh... Do you really think that that is going to improve this situation, Chris? Use your brain! I know it's got holes in it, it's so meth-addled, but come on, dude. That is not how you train a dog. Ah! The absolute gall of this coom ogre, I thought, as I responded, Dude, your dog was clearly crying and hadn't been outside for hours. You should have pulled over and let him take that piss, dude. He couldn't hold it forever, and that's about the time that Chris hit me with even more coping. Dude, he just whines to give me a hard time. And he probably just peed and crapped everywhere because he wants to act like he's the alpha. <laughs> Dumbass doesn't know that I'm the only alpha here, though. So I'm gonna put the fear of God in him, and he'll never be a disobedient little bastard again. I don't think that that's going to go how you think it's gonna go, Chris. You're just gonna get yourself bitten again, Chris. <laughs> get him all nice and calmed down and then 
rub his face in the pee. <laughs> uh, are you serious? I told him to go screw and make all that happen on his own damn time because I wasn't going to be part and parcel of torturing Titus. My head hurt. I was about five seconds from just calling the police, but uh, I thought better of it. Because if they showed up, well, that would definitely be the end of poor Titus, who admittedly didn't deserve this treatment, or the inevitable destruction of his literal being if the lawmen found out that he had bitten Chris. Yeah, even while Chris was terrorizing the poor damn dog, and knowing Chris, he couldn't keep his trap shut about it, something had to be done that would both send a lesson to Chris and protect and even possibly rehabilitate Titus. God, you're just trying to fix everything, Honker Donkers, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't know that it's possible. <laughs> as far as all of this goes, I would just do my best to keep my beak out. I am an unapologetic fence-sitter <coughs> during all of this. So, what could I do? For a second, I thought about telling Chris to go screw completely, and that Titus was mine now, and I would oversee his life. But, here's the thing. I don't want another dog. Nor do I want a pit bull. I know my capacity as a dog trainer, and I did not have the time, or the energy, or the dedication to sink into that particular beast. Nor would I want him lingering around my home, wherein I had a young teenage son, and a couple of other kids going to elementary school. Plus, I already had to babysit one critter at work, and that gave me enough of a headache as it was. <laughs> uh, yes, the Chris Critter. It's too bad we can't put that one down. After all that we've seen him do, especially for these past few stories, he's just really showing his true colors, and I hate it. If I took Titus and he bit the poopy coom man again, I might get in trouble. So me rescuing Titus seemed like a flat out impossibility. For a second, I thought about just flinging the truck door open and letting him run off into the night. <laughs> Don't do that. But that is also cruel. Who knows if Titus would survive, starve, die of thirst or exposure or get hit by a car or something. And yeah, you know that ain't right. I put some thought into it while Chris finished up his shift, and when we finally pulled over and traded spots, I had to take the wheel. Here's Honker Donkers again, playing the martyr, cleaning up Chris's messes every single time. Ah, oh, it enrages me. I'm also like, you know, sort of grateful that Chris has somebody like Honker Donkers in his life, but he's never going to learn. You know what I mean? You, you have to let him fall and skin his knee. We've tried the nice way. Now we gotta try a little bit of tough love. You know what I'm saying? Chris paused and asked if perhaps uh, we could take a little bit of time for him to go clean up. <laughs> and I told him we didn't have time for him to go and jerk off right now. And then we had to get moving. He mentioned his soggy dog pee poopy coom sheets and told me that he had to clean up his bedding. And while I thought it would have been hilarious to force Chris to sleep in Titus's pee, the fact was that I was beginning to smell them, and I just wanted them removed from the cab entirely. So I told Chris, sure, we could wait as long as he actually did his laundry and didn't just wander off. <sighs> Should have known that that was in vain. Truck stop equals jerking off and meth as far as Chris is concerned. Chris rounded up the sheets despite the glowing pinpoints of light that growled at him from underneath the bed, and he threw his pissy blankets outside of the truck and waddled down after them. <laughs> uh, yeah, the perfect place for these. The floor! <laughs> when he had left the cab, I looked back into the truck, and my heart went out to that poor beastly brute of a dog. <sighs> Whatever I was going to do, I had to act fast. I opened up the GPS and searched for animal shelters, and one by one I went through the listings and gave them calls. I had a very deliberate intent in mind. Uh, I mean, shelter sucks, but going with Chris is even worse, so at least he has a fighting chance, I guess. Somebody could love him, call him their very own, and give him the, the proper training that he so desperately needs. 
Everybody I called, I asked very explicitly about whether they were no-kill or not. And it seemed hopeless, but after enough calling around, I finally found one. Somewhere in the greater area that would take Titus in and promised not to put him down. I turned to look back at those glowing pinpoint eyes. They had stopped growling as soon as the poopy coom man left. And I told Titus I'd be back. I went into the truck stop. Got a bag of jerky, looked around for Chris. He was nowhere to be found. Probably spanking it in the stall, if I had to guess. Whatever. I returned to the cab. When I got in, I saw Titus dart away and duck under the bed once more. He growled from underneath as I climbed in, but upon realizing that I wasn't Chris, he grew quiet. Then, gently, I called his name, and I asked him if he wanted a treat. See, honker donkers know how do dog. Right? <laughs> you have to have a firm hand, but you also have to be a loving owner. You have to earn the trust of this animal. You can't just scream at it and expect it to do what you want. Titus was hesitant at first, knowing very little about this situation besides the fact that Chris had brought him into it and that he didn't like Chris. But after some coaxing, he eventually came out, laid down on the floor and stared at me as I held the piece of jerky. I threw it to him, and he gobbled it up. I told him he was a good boy, and I gave him some more. With the dog starting to trust me even slightly, I said, good enough, and I climbed into the driver's seat and left Chris there alone to jerk off in the travel plaza while I drove to that shelter that I had found. When I got there, I gave Titus some more treats, leashed him up, and brought him inside. The clerk asked me about him as I dropped him off, and I told them that I had rescued him from a bad situation, but that I didn't have the resources to take on another dog at this time. Which is somewhat of a white lie, but also uh, completely true. <laughs> as weird as that sounds. Question after question, uh, where did I get him? How long had I had him? Had he bit a person? Ugh, I thought about that one only momentarily before I decided that Chris did not count as people. <laughs> Uh, it's a good answer. Again, a little white lie, but completely true. <laughs> then I turned Titus over, stressing that whoever ultimately took him should be a competent handler. If nothing else, because of the treatment that the poor dog had received from others who didn't know what they were doing. And the clerk assured me that before anything happened, he would spend time with a resident behaviorist who, worst case scenario, was not above adopting dogs that were particularly difficult for average folk. As we said our goodbyes to old dear Titus, I dumped out the whole bag of beef jerky for him to enjoy. Poor guy. From bad situation to bad situation, it seemed. I do hope that he found an owner fit for him, wherever he is now. With my business concluded, I returned to the waiting truck that I had left parked out on the street, and I drove it back to the truck stop to recover the poopy coom man that I had left behind, and I mused to myself that we needed some shelters for wayward people, and some human behaviorists to fix them. Of course, that assumes that Chris was even fixable. <sighs> Whatever. He's definitely not fixable, okay? You have tried <coughs> beyond trying, Molly Honker Dockers. And if he ain't gotten it yet, then he ain't never gonna get it. Like I said, the only thing you can really do is, is step out of the way. Let him skin his knees. When I got back, Chris was still nowhere to be found. And I walked inside the travel plaza. No sign of him anywhere. Realizing that he was gone for the time being, the likelihood of him coming back anytime soon shrank to zero, and so I, tired with the goings-on that had occurred during that long and very trying day, went back to the truck to take a well-deserved nap. I would drive later that night when Chris inevitably returned to the truck, jarring me awake with his fat ass causing the cab to lurch back and forth. And that about wraps up the story that I got for you guys today, friends. I hear the open road a calling my name, and someone's gotta go drive down it, so... I'll see y'all next time with another story about the disgusting creature that we all know as Chris. I mean, there seems to be a lot of fallout aftermath to this story that wasn't touched upon. Like, did Chris ever get to a hospital? Because that seems like a pretty important thing to do. 
<laughs> Not that I even like Chris all that much, but he, he, you got bit by a dog. You should probably go get checked out at the very least. And then there's also the question of, uh, was he upset about this? Like, <laughs> how did it unfold when he came back and figured out that the dog was, was no longer there? That, that seems a little bit weird. I guess he just forgot, <laughs> methed out of his mind. He's like, okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Great, we're carrying on. Good for you, Chris. It's just so strange to me. I I'm trying to get a grasp on how this would all unfold, but I, I just ain't too sure. <laughs> He's a weird dude, but I don't think his, his short-term memory is that bad. That was Kevin in the big rig, remember? <laughs> so yeah, maybe we'll hear about the fallout at some point in the future. Maybe this is the whole pajama beard origin story. Chris got bitten and became a werewolf and started stalking around like underage girls at a, a cabin in the woods or something. <laughs> I don't really know. I have a lot of questions, but it is what it is, at least at this point in time. My co-pilot is a neckbeard number 16. Oh, it's already like almost half as long as the unfortunate Nookie saga. Is it going to beat it out is the main question that I have. I'm sure it's going to get even more juicy. There's a lot of stuff to get into here. So let us do exactly that. Hey there, Red X gang. Yeah, that's us right here. Gang, gang. <laughs> Looks like I finally got a little bit of time to write, so uh, let's not waste any of it, and instead get on into it and talk about Chris. Well, if you don't want to waste time, that's too bad, because I'm real good at wasting time. <laughs> if you're new here, though, you might be wondering, who is Chris? Well, Chris is a very fat and sweaty man who struggles to clean himself, unless that cleaning happens to involve his pipes. And one pipe more than the other one, I do suppose. See, you got a back pipe and a front pipe, and I probably can't get into that. That's fine. <laughs> He's surrounded by a perpetual aura of poopy coom stinky stank that exudes from every pore and orifice. <laughs> he likes meth, lot lizards, and anime. Chris and I work for a trucking company, a major one, and we take turns driving our rig down the road. Things are usually okay when Chris is driving the truck, but eventually his shift comes to an end and I have to take over driving for the day. And that is when the struggle really begins. Then it's a constant battle to get him to stop jerking it or being a creep or just being himself for Christ's sakes and try, try to make him act like a human being. <laughs> But he's not really a human. He's like an ethereal entity, just a force of nature. As much as I hate it, I truly believe he can't be stopped. <laughs> it is difficult. And of course, the real kicker is that to this day, I still ride with Chris. I think you're just stuck in purgatory, OP. That's what this is. That's what this has to be. <laughs> What did you do in a past life to deserve this? This is really more of a part 15B than a part 16, but eh, you know what? You get what you get. Honestly, that is what I was hoping for because I had a lot of questions, like I said. If you're not up to speed with part 15, okay, Chris adopted a massive beast of a dog named Titus that he was just completely incapable of handling. After provoking the dog to the point of biting him, he disappeared into the night to wash dog off his sheets while I spirited Titus away into the night to a no-kill animal shelter. With the day's activities done, I settled in that night for some much-needed rest. As we all know, however, <sighs> nothing good lasts forever. And so, without further ado, I also want to give you a big tip of the hat, Mommy, for uh, going to a no-kill shelter. That is really, really important. That dog, he a good boy. He deserves a chance. And I am sure that he found a better, more deserving owner than Chris, which would be basically anybody in the world. <laughs> I don't know how long I had been asleep, but I sure had been enjoying it. For a moment, 
I was back at home with the wife and the kids and everything was clean and sterile and it smelled of bleach and lavender and lilac. <sighs> However, I was quickly startled awake, not by the lurching of the suspension, but rather a loud bang right outside the passenger door of the rig. Something had collided with the side of the truck and I didn't know what it was. Meth monkeys. <laughs> Middle of the night in a truck stop? Yeah, there's really only one thing that it could be. My fears spiked as I felt the truck jerk to the side and the door flung open revealing a towering shadow of a man. I bowled up my fists, ready to fight, startled awake and adrenaline now pumping through my veins. I didn't subside as Chris stumbled into the cab because, let's be honest, I just wanted to punch him in the face after the events of the previous day. And it took me a good deal of restraint to resist that primal urge. I mean, you've done it before and it seemed to be fairly effective. Maybe just one more, one more for the road. And then an infinite number more, because you're always on the road. <laughs> there you go, problem solved. He fumbled around in the dark and turned on the light. I was greeted with a familiar sight and smell. Poopy coom, stinky stank, and drain cleaner surrounding a bloated tub of human detritus. Drain cleaner? I guess that's what ice smells like, right? I have no experience with that, nor do I want to. But good, okay, we're learning things today. There stood that jittery, chemical-infused neckbeard. Surprise, he'd been out there tweaking again. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, not really a surprise these days, but sure. We'll just make a festivity out of it since there doesn't seem to be any escape. As I wiped the sleep from my eyes, I saw that he had deposited his bed sheets upon the floor. Having completed his laundry, after a dope run and a shower of course. <laughs> he didn't even ask where I had been. Probably because he didn't even realize that I had left with that truck to go get rid of his dog. And instead, short of breath and looking somewhat nervous, he asked me, uh, Where's Titus? He had the terror of a new recruit experiencing a war zone for the first time in his life. And his eyes darted underneath my bed. I'm so glad that this dog is out of the situation, honestly. He wasn't a fit owner when he was sober. <laughs> now he's coming in here twacked out of his mind that he's like, give me my dog. No, you're good, dude. The situation is handled. Quietly, Chris listened for the telltale growl of that terrified hound. I debated between just coming clean and telling Chris that I had taken him to a shelter or lying to him. I chose the latter because I was sure that if I told him I had taken Titus to the pound, I would never hear the end of it. So I said, I don't know, man. I went to go outside and Titus just bolted for the door. He took off into the night, dude. I couldn't keep up with him. The dog's gone. I expected Chris to release a shudder of sorrow for his now lost friend, for him to tear off into the night beating his aggrieved breast with the furor of a mother whose child was lost, crying unto God, demanding an explanation as to why he had been so scorned. <laughs> yeah, that would require Chris to love anything aside from himself, and he don't even really love himself that much. Inversely, I half expected it to amplify his fear. If that dog had got out and went on to maul somebody else, Perhaps a dog tag or a microchip would lead the police back to Chris, equipped with a summons and a heavy lawsuit for reckless negligence. Did the dog have a dog tag? I know Chris isn't the one paying money to microchip it. And I don't think any reputable shelter that would microchip their dog would give it to Chris. So I don't really think you need to worry about either of those things. But yeah, he's not thinking about any of this stuff anyways. Especially because, uh... <laughs> He's partaken a little bit tonight. Instead, Chris just shrugged his shoulders, grunted, and said, hey, Not my problem anymore. <laughs> wow. I wanted to rail on him for his abject callousness. His lack of concern for what should have been a consequential event. 
for neither caring about that poor dog or any person who might be harmed in this hypothetical situation and his general disinterest in storming out into the night to look for his pooch, which he would never find, so that I could get some more restful sleep, but I just didn't have that anger in me at the moment. And honestly, that breath is going to be completely wasted. No matter how much you scream at Chris and try to drill into him that this should be significant, He's not in his right mind. Well, he's never in his right mind, but he's even more not in his right mind right now. <laughs> so, as my adrenaline lapsed, it became a quiet, simmering seething instead. I just shrugged my shoulders, laid back down, and went to go to bed. I heard Chris rustling around the cab, however, practically tearing the entire place apart. He wasn't going to bed anytime soon. Oh, <laughs> what is he doing? Tweaker stuff, I guess. I heard him grumbling as he turned the contents of the cab inside out. I sat up again and said, what the hell are you doing, dude? He said that he was looking for the first aid kit. About that time, I noticed that he was leaking blood all over the cab seats and floors and walls. Despite how long he had been gone, his wound still hadn't stopped bleeding, and now that he had cleaned up his wound a bit, I could see that the skin was peeled back on his hand, exposing the rippling layers of muscle beneath. Ooh, yeah. Like I said the last one, you probably want to get to a hospital real quick. <laughs> Might have hit an artery or something, like, he's gonna die. I don't like Chris, but I don't want him to die, okay? Chris couldn't even get a damn bandage for that wound before coming back to the truck. Hey, Chris, I said, that looks pretty serious, dude. You're gonna need some stitches, man. To which Chris replied, hey, it'll be fine. I already watched it. I just need some gauze and tape and it'll heal up in no time. See? As if to prove his point, he held up his hand to show me the wound and I grimaced as a little bit of blood dripped out of it and splattered onto the floor. The entire cab was now contaminated with poopy coom blood. <laughs> uh, well, they've completed the unholy trifecta, I see. Satan himself should be coming along shortly. <laughs> I wondered what sort of bloodborne pathogens the poopy coom man might be carrying. Because, let's be honest, he loved his lot lizards, and I doubt he ever used a rubber, let alone even knew how to use one. Uh... Pitch it at the top before you roll it down. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> My home away from home was now a biohazardous death trap. Hepatitis, beardititis. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's some new science right there. We're uncovering the cause right now. My mind railed at all the possibilities of what infections now saturated the darkness in which I was confined. Um, I'm just gonna go get a hotel room for the night and hope that you're not dead when I come back. <laughs> uh, I told him to get the hell out of the truck and go buy some gauze from the truck stop and not come back until that thing was wrapped up. Then I added that he needed to get some bleach too. And he asked me, uh, why? And I pointed at the bloody mess that he had left all over the floor. And he said, dude, it's fine. It's just a little bit of blood. It's not like I got anything. To which I had my own plethora of doubts. I repeated, bleach, now. And he said, if I fight, I'll be right back. It disappeared into the evening once more. It's not like I've got anything. Yes, because you take such immaculate care of yourself, Chris. <laughs> he's walking in so out of his mind, he's leaking blood everywhere and doesn't even notice. I mean, I guess it's dark, but Honker Donker's noticed before Chris. He, he's the one who's actively bleeding. God. I noticed that we've also just glossed over the fact that he actually brought back clean laundry which blows my mind, although it's not completely clean because I guess it's got blood on it now. And also, he wants to go hit the pookie. 
<laughs> before he even thinks about going to the hospital. Like, it's not going to make you feel better, dude. Why are you like this, Chris? Ugh, to my distinct lack of surprise, Chris didn't return anytime soon, and I, now alone in a blood-soaked truck cab, decided to spring into action because we all know that he wouldn't. Oh, honker donker, stop cleaning up his messes. <laughs> this is terrible. Every time. I put on my boots and headed out to the shop to buy some bleach and rags and gloves out of your own pocket. Oh, it hurts me deep down. When I returned, I set to work scouring the cab. It took me a couple of hours to clean everything up and my compulsion to make sure that the place was spotless was borderline obsessive. By the time I finished, the sun was rising once again, and I, tired but needing to hit the road so that we didn't get penalized for a late delivery, had to go and rustle up Chris. I trudged around the travel plaza, looking for him, but I was having no such luck finding him until I stumbled across some patio tables out and around the back. Chris sat at one, slumped over, cradling his head in his hands, one of which was wrapped in damp gauze and stained bright red. Yeah, that's not stopping bleeding. Let's go to the hospital. I guess I can suffer a small penalty if we're making sure that Chris doesn't die. Just, just take him to the hospital. After having that thing wrapped for hours, the wound should be, you know, abating at least a little bit. A, a deeper sort of red. Bright red is bad. That's real bad. I never thought that I could be concerned for the poopy coom monster, <laughs> but I sort of am. We could take him to the vet, right? <laughs> I bet the, the vets never see the species like this before. <laughs> Chris, get up, dude. It's time to go. Chris didn't respond at first, so I kicked his feet, and eventually he stirred from his slumber. I wondered for a minute how he could even fall asleep right now, being strung out on dope, and that's when it hit me. He wasn't asleep. He had fallen unconscious. I kicked his foot again, and he stirred with a confused, Hey, what the hell? And I told him it was time to go. We had to get on the road now, and... By the looks of it, he needed to get to a hospital as well. As Chris came around to reality, or at least his questionable interpretation of it, <laughs> he scoffed, remarking that he wasn't a beta male, and he wasn't going to let that stupid mutt get the best of him. He didn't need no goddamn hospital, in his words. And as if to prove the point, he shot up from where he sat, with so much bravado and braggadocio that he had to pause, precariously teetering back and forth as more blood dripped from his bandaged hands and a rush of what I can only presume to be blood loss induced lightheadedness ran over him. Yes, Chris, definitely bleed to death from a dog bite like a true alpha male would. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> uh. That is about the most ridiculous statement in the world. Bro, you got shot in the chest. It's a sucking wound. We need to get to the hospital. He's like, I'm not a beta. <laughs> uh, okay, fine. Y you're not. Just please go to the hospital. Oh. Chris leaned forward and placed his hand atop the table to brace himself. The concrete threatening to catch him if he should fall. I could have helped, but... Well, I didn't want to touch him, much less help him, and I stand by that ordering of motivations. <laughs> uh, he doesn't deserve it. The best I could do is roll past the hospital and kick you out the door, honestly. When his composure was finally regained, Chris followed me through the parking lot and back to the truck, leaving a blood trail across the pavement that would have given Watson and Holmes an investigative hard-on. As we loaded up into the truck cab, I once again asked Chris, Are you sure you don't want to go to the hospital, man? I, I really think you need some stitches. It's been a few hours now and you are still bleeding everywhere. To which he replied that he was fine. 
He had plenty of gauze and disinfectant and all that good stuff. And it would heal up on its own. And I should stop clutching my womanly skirts and just leave him alone. Dude, you were just passed out. <laughs> you can't be strung out and passed out. This is not normal. Please accept some help. Ugh. Maybe that's the secret. Maybe this is how he got so far off the rails. Everybody that tries to help him, he just turns it into an alpha beta competition. He's like, oh no, if I listen to you, then I'll be a beta. And it's like, dude, some things are actually in your best interests. Like not letting yourself bleed to death. <laughs> Come on. All right, Chris. Sure thing, buddy. And I punch the truck into gear. And we roared out of the travel plaza and down the road. Chris was peculiarly quiet, seemingly drifting in and out of consciousness the whole time after we got into that truck. And I, knowing full well that he had lost a good amount of blood and was seemingly fading, obviously decided to get the poopy coom man to a hospital despite his inclinations to refuse medical treatment. Uh, yeah, I guess you don't want the owner's son's blood on your hands, right? It would seem like a, a really easy way to just get rid of him, but you know that ain't right. Honka Donker's always out here with the biggest Giga Chad energy, always doing the right thing. Proud of you. Even when it's hard, I'm proud of you. And OP says, I know, I know, I know. <sighs> I should have just let him bleed out. Do you think that I didn't want to do that? <laughs> I could have rid myself of all my problems if I didn't make myself roleplay at being his mommy. Honker Donkers. <laughs> uh, is that where the name came from? <laughs> the lore is getting deep, bruh. Still, letting this dude die of an easily preventable case of blood loss didn't really sit right in my conscience. Yeah, I, I couldn't unsee that if you did that, Honker Donkers. It's not the right thing to do. So the next city proper that we hit, I pulled off the highway and found us a hospital while Chris floated in and out of consciousness, his blood now seeping through his bandages and staining his pants in a poopy, coomy, sweaty, bloody mess. Oh no, the trifecta has become a quadrata. Is that how that works? <laughs> Uh, the super devil will be on his way quite soon. <laughs> Titus really got him good. I mean, should have got him better, in my opinion. And when we arrived, I tried to wake Chris up with a hard shove on his shoulder. He just grunted at me and rolled over on his side. And I knew that he wasn't going to get up of his own volition anytime soon. Yeah, like forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think you can submit somebody to medical care unless they are fully unconscious. So, okay, seems like he is. We meet that requirement. Now get him into the hospital. We gotta go get a gurney. An extra double plus heavy duty gurney. <laughs> the adrenaline had long since worn off and he, asleep in the passenger seat, spilling his potentially hepatitic blood everywhere, <laughs> was just absolutely useless. I got up, walked into the ER, and roused the people at the front desk, remarking that I had a guy passing out from blood loss in the front seat of my truck, and I needed some help getting him inside ASAP. They sent a couple of paramedics to come and remove his lard ass from out of my vehicle. I remarked, truthfully, that they'd probably want to send a couple more, cause he a big boy. <laughs> Yes, one of the biggest of boys, at least on the outside. Inside, he is really just a tiny, tiny man. I would also suggest bringing a garbage bag so as to not permanently stain the gurney forever. <laughs> we got out into the lot, and I showed him to the big rig, and they opened up the truck door. And I could see the guy leading the charge recoil, in visible disgust, as the swampy, smegmatic, poopy coom air of the cab blasted his senses. Do you smell like this, honker donkers? <laughs> Have you just gone nose blind to it and it has like partially infected you? 
Oh, God! Uh, I can only wonder what the guy thought as his senses were violated by Chris's aura. I guess after all this time, I'd just gotten used to it. And I just didn't realize how bad it was in there anymore. But, boy, howdy. That poor guy just doing his job choked back tears. And probably some vomit, too, as he tried to ask Chris a question. Are you awake, sir? Can you move? Chris grumbled and groaned again, and the EMT asked, to which Chris repeated his half-conscious grumbling, and I could hear over the commotion unfolding the words that escaped his lips. Because, sir, I love you. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to touch on it. You know what? Just let him have this one. He's in a really bad place right now. I'll wait until you're conscious again to make fun of you. <laughs> uh, even so close to death, he still has his fantasies. I'm at a loss. The EMTs looked visibly confused and exchanged some worried glances with each other, probably not knowing what that was, and instead focusing on the fact that he had descended into a state of delirium. So they just ignored him. I did my best to keep from bursting into uproarious laughter in the middle of that tense parking lot situation, but I couldn't hide the smirk on my face. <laughs> uh, I mean, it is funny as hell, but you need the context, right? <laughs> oh, you brought your twin sister. <laughs> Uh, still my favorite. The boys set to work, two of them coming up on the driver's side and hoisting Chris up and off the passenger seat, while the third supported him from below, and yet a fourth did his best to place his feet onto the stepladder, leading down to the parking lot. I could see the visible cringe on all of their faces as they lifted his ass up off the seat, releasing the pungent aroma of fermenting sweat and stale skid marks off of the faux leather. Oh god, dude. <laughs> uh, yes, you've definitely painted a picture. Thanks, I hate it. One of the EMTs even murmured, Good god, this guy's disgusting! <laughs> uh, I mean, you're not wrong. I was humorously dying. Both at the suffering of these poor guys just trying to save this sack of garbage's life, and I was spiritually dying at the fact that I had become so adapted to this lifestyle of filth and decay. Honestly, hard to say which one hit harder, the humor or the despair, but hit me hard, they both definitely did. Honestly, I'm just gonna focus on whichever one is easier to process. That's definitely the humor, Let's leave the despair for those late nights lying alone in my bunk staring at the ceiling, okay? For now, humor. Funny haha. -ha. Thanks so much. <coughs> when at last they got Chris down to ground level, they loaded him onto a stretcher and took him off towards the ER, leaving me alone with the truck while one stayed behind to ask me what had happened. I told him Chris had suffered a dog bite, and he asked if the dog was up to date on its shots. Didn't know. Whose dog was it? Didn't know. Was animal control called? I didn't know. I ran interference for poor old Titus real hard. Good thinking, honestly. Then when the EMT realized that I wasn't much use beyond telling him that it was a dog bite, he left me behind and I got back into the pilot's chair and reached out to dispatch and made them aware of the currently unfolding situation. Honestly, I don't think anybody's really going to suffer any penalties because it's daddy's boy, right? We don't even really know much about the relationship between Chris and his father. But I mean, he's still employed at the company. So my presumption is daddy thinks he can do no wrong. Maybe it will be unveiled someday. I explained to the dispatcher on the other line that my co-pilot was injured. He was passing out from blood loss and that I had to take him to the emergency room. I told them that we were already running a couple hours late as a result of this debacle, and that if I were to make the delivery on time, I would have to take off now and probably drive, uh, 
overtime. Dispatch responded asking if Chris was out of the ER, to which I informed them that he had just been dropped off and that it would be several hours before he was released. The order came through, just keep driving. Make the drop off. We weren't terribly far, but it would have been a longer drive than my designated shift. And then pick up Chris and return to the yard first thing. Okay, there you have it. I punched the truck into gear and enjoyed a nice solitary ride to the drop off point, wishing that I could just drive that way forever. Honestly, you could if you let him die of blood loss, but you didn't. It was the right thing to do. The hardest choices require the strongest wills or something like that. <laughs> At least you got your little reward. He's out of your hair for the moment. Just try to soak that in. I finished that drive with the blissful expression of a Buddhist monk attaining enlightenment carved on my face. It took maybe a couple of extra hours over my usual drive time. Whatever. The package arrived, and because of the shenanigans that had occurred within the past day, I was off the hook for being penalized on a late delivery. The company was covering the cost in light of an emergency medical situation. And the best part was, there was no Chris sitting beside me, stewing in his own rot, shouting his broken Japanese into the void, serving as a constant reminder of my suffering. <sighs> I sat behind the warehouse while the trailer was detached from the truck, and then, when I was in the clear, I headed to the nearest gas station and took a well-deserved break. I sent Chris a text. Hey, f face, you still alive? <laughs> I prayed and prayed for no response. That maybe I was off the hook. That Chris had gotten to the hospital just a little too late, despite my best begrudging efforts to save his pathetic life and expired there in a hospital bed. Hell, maybe they decided to euthanize him with a pillow and chalk it up to a hopeless case. <laughs> uh, oh, where's Dr. Kavorki when you need him, right? <laughs> Look, he, he's not enjoying life, okay? He's just the lost cause. This is for the best. <laughs> uh, no such luck, though. It took a while for a response to come in, but a response did come. Chris said that he had woken up in the hospital and they had stitched him up and given him a prescription for antibiotics. He was only a few minutes from getting released and then he was free. I told him to suck it up and get a hotel room for the night because I was tired and I was going to get some rest somewhere. Cue a long wall of text-based screeching, which I promptly ignored as I got a room at the Motel 6. I mean, not the nicest digs, but it's got to be better than a truck cab. Let's all just try to enjoy the situation. Everything turned out as well as could be expected. I didn't get docked any pay. Chris didn't die. <laughs> All's well that ends well. Come morning, I went to go pick up Chris from the city where I had abandoned him. It was a good 10 hour drive to get back to where I had left that tub of lard. And when I arrived, to nobody's surprise, he wasn't actually at the hotel. He had been wandering the streets, strung out all goddamn night, probably scrounging for even more shards to smoke, and he looked rough as sin. <laughs> when I finally found him outside the gas station, hanging out with a couple more crackheads around the back, I shouted at him to get a over here, and he loaded up into the truck, albeit much more gently with his mangled hand, and asked me if I could take him to the store to fill out his prescription. Really, dude? <laughs> uh, you want me to hold your hand? You had so much time to get there and back, but now we have to do it. Oh, I was completely amazed. The dude had been out here all day and all night, and he couldn't take 30 minutes out of his drug binge to go and head to a pharmacy so that he could be okay. I said, hell no, you can fill it on your own damn time. We're getting back to California right now. And I put the truck in gear. He screeched at me that he needed to fill it now because whenever he tried to clean up his wounds, he couldn't actually properly wash his wound because it hurt so bad and he needed his antibiotics. 
It's not my problem at this point. There was so much time for you to do it. <laughs> you just wanted me to do it for you. I'm not putting up with this. No. No. I hope they cut your hand off, Chris. <laughs> Then at least you can't uh, drive and polish the bishop at the same time, right? Or probably he could. He'd be like, look, I'm steering with my knees. <laughs> uh, well, I hope you lose those necks, Chris. Something tells me that he was just trying to go rub one out with his busted hand. And it wasn't working when he said that. But I mean, who really knows if he actually tried to wash it? As we drove, I wondered about the pharmacological interactions of amphetamines and amoxicillin as he pressed me to take him to a store. And I repeated that, no, right now we are on honker donker time and we were driving and that he should have filled it last night when he had all the free time in the world. He could find a pharmacy when it came his turn to drive the truck. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fair. That's what I like about Honker Donkers. Very tough in s most ways, <laughs> but also very fair when it's required. I would say that you should stop cleaning up his messes so regularly though. At that moment, Chris got real spiteful with me and remarked that none of this would even happen if it wasn't for me. He apparently wouldn't need to fill a prescription if I had just stopped being a woman about the little old dog bite and kept driving and let him recover all on his own, and that now I owed him for the hospital bill that he had incurred as a result of his terrorizing poor old Titus. Yeah, good luck with that. I'll see you in court, buddy. <laughs> he even went so far as to extrapolate that if I had just been encouraging with him in his efforts to woo a woman, he wouldn't have felt so lonely and subsequently wouldn't have felt the need to get Titus in the first place. Oh my god, how long is your spine? That is the biggest reach I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah. It was all somehow my fault that the poopy coo man now found himself in this position with a staggering hospital bill coming his way over a crippled hand that he brought on himself. <sighs> Should have let him bleed out, to be honest, but I just had to show mercy, didn't I? I mean, what were you really going to do about it, you know? Like you just sit there and watch your co-pilot bleed out they're, they're gonna arrest you for like manslaughter it's negligent at the very least and then if you're like not trying to report the dead body you gotta like dig a grave and for a boy that big i i just don't have the time or the energy okay i guess you can continue existing for now chris for now well my shift finally came to an end at some middle of nowhere travel plaza and chris took over driving but not before insisting that he needed to head to the showers <laughs> to clean up. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Considering that he was injured, yeah, in theory, I'd allow it. Especially if he actually were washing his wounds. But we all know that he was actually just going in there to spill his spoiled seed in the shower stall. Ugh. <laughs> I didn't have the energy to fight with him anymore, however, and I said, you know what, dude, you go do you. Jerk off in the shower, see if I care. I retired and took a cat nap. When Chris came back, he was sullen, remarking that his wounded hand had gotten infected. Do you think bacteria and pubicum splooge react to stimulants like people do? Did he unwittingly impregnate his stitches with his chunky load oh god oh yeah <laughs> save the real good cringe for right at the end you got me good <laughs> can you get herpes in your hand <laughs> and he said that we have to return to the hospital when we got back to california to make sure he was all right i said i didn't care and resumed my nap as he drove Eventually, we did return to California, and Chris had some leave time to go and sort out his medical situation, while Dispatch looked for another load to send us out with. 
By the time came, it was amusing watching Chris struggle with driving the truck. Every turn of the wheel and shift of the gears seemed to cause him plentiful anguish, and I honestly positively relished every minute of it. <laughs> Throwing his own crap back at his face, remarking, It's just a truck, Chris. Why are you driving it like a woman? <laughs> Uh, it's always my favorite part. Any movie, any Reddit story, if they can recycle a line and throw it back at somebody's face, you just love to see it. He ended up fighting off infection for weeks on end, probably because of his abysmal hygiene, refusal to finish his medications, and the fact that he constantly augmented his prescription plan by uh, self-medicating with some cheap truck stop crank. Something that we all know wreaks hell on your immune system and probably sends your staphylococcus colony into overdrive. At the height of it all, he returned to the ER for intravenous antibiotics and had to spend half of his leave under watch. All in all, it was a stupid nightmare that none of us had to live through if Chris had gotten it through his head that he should not ever be responsible for another sentient creature. And that about wraps up today's story about Chris. Sorry this one came so late, but I've had a fair bit of stuff going on, haven't had much time to write. The next one will probably come out with a bit of delay on it too, but uh, I guess we'll see. Rest assured, however, that the Ballad of the Poopy Coo Man is nowhere near its close quite yet. Until next time. God, that is a rough pill to swallow, isn't it? I'm so torn. <laughs> Much like Honker Donkers, I'm like, can we just can we just let nature take its course? But yeah, you can't really have that happen. My co-pilot is a neckbeard number 17. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. 20? Almost? Let's keep it going, honka doggas. I didn't have to wait a month for this one either, so I appreciate that. <laughs> hey there, Red X gang! I use the Bobby honka doggas. <laughs> I finally got myself a little bit of time to write, so let's not waste any more time and instead get directly into another story about Chris. For the uninitiated, you might be wondering, who is Chris anyways? Well, we've got 16 other videos explaining in depth who Chris is and what he is like. That playlist in the description. Check it out if you haven't, but I know most people have. You get one part and you just eat all 16. Your appetite for cringe is insatiable, and I love it. <laughs> well, Chris is just a, uh, he's a very fat, sweaty man who's surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank that follows him wherever he goes. His prodigious size makes it difficult for him to clean himself, unless of course he's quote unquote cleaning himself, whether it be in the back of the truck or the truck stop shower stall or even the dumpster corral with some poor sucker that he roped into a transactional. Yeah, we all remember that story, don't we? Ow, fuck. Suffice to say, he doesn't bother with cleaning himself. If you're a big boy like this, get some of that baby powder in the crevices. You know what I'm saying? Then at least you can smell good, but he doesn't care about any of that. Chris only has a few pleasures in life, content instead to embrace his own personal dark triad of ice, anime, and lot lizards. Things are usually okay when Chris has to drive the truck. Usually. But when our shifts change and I have to take the wheel, or when we pull over somewhere for the night, that is when the fun really begins. It's at times like these that him and I lock horns in the eternal struggle between beard and man. Honestly, that's an internal struggle for me, but I feel like I'm winning lately. <laughs> and I fight with him to make him act like a normal human being. It seems that I am trying to do the impossible, and much like Sisyphus, I push the boulder of neckbeardism up the hill, only for it to roll back down once more. And the real kicker is, 
that to this day, I still have to ride with Chris. God, I can't wait until the day that I get to the end of the intro and it's like, actually, I don't ride with Chris no more. Really? What happened? Feed it to me. It's going to be in part like 50 or something because Chris just gets up to so many hijinks, so many shenanigans. Actually, hijinks and shenanigans is probably an understatement for this type of degeneracy. But uh, you'll see what I mean if you haven't yet. So I had got to the yard fine that morning and I was approaching the truck ready to get on the road and get this nightmare over with. We were scheduled for a long haul from Los Angeles out to Fort Worth, Texas, and I was dreading the trip for all of the usual reasons that I dreaded these trips. I could see our fleet truck rocking back and forth as that revolting lard ass I called a co-pilot staggered around inside doing whatever unspeakable acts it was that he felt inclined to do. And for some reason, I was dreading today more than usual. Call it prescience. Call it a gut feeling. Call it me just having an already bad day that morning and just really not wanting to deal with him. This. It. But my suspicions were confirmed as I climbed into the cab and was greeted by the poopy coom man himself with a good afternoon, my brother in Christ. Oh, here he is, turning over a new leaf. <laughs> uh, you know I'm not buying this for a second, right? That is my prediction for what's going to happen this episode, but honestly, yeah, I find that a really hard one to stomach. If he does do that, he's going to do it all wrong, starting by uh, cleaning his pipes before OP even gets into the truck. It was still the same fat, slovenly, disgusting, poopy coom man called Chris that I had come to know after all this time driving this truck. His tent-like t-shirt soaked in sweat and curiously milky stains. Ugh. His filthy skid mark sweatpants donning his girthy, swaying frame, but something was different today. He had donned a golden crucifix around his neck and clutched it tightly. The poopy coom man had discovered religion. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't really know if this is his first interaction with religion. Maybe his first interaction with an organized religion. But we've seen him trying to do some rituals, create a coom golem and whatnot under his pillowcase a few episodes back. So yeah, he, he sorta had religion before. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think that this would send him on a better path, but I'm just I'm just not sure, man. I responded with a quiet and standoffish, hey there, Chris, and promptly proceeded to completely ignore him, at least to the best of my abilities. And I could tell that it miffed him that I didn't return his greeting in kind. He put down his phone and clutched his crucifix tighter, threatening to rip it from his neck and shove it into my face like he was some kind of exorcist. Then he turned to me and remarked, Just, hey, it's a beautiful day given to us as a gift from our one and only Lord Jesus Christ himself. And you just dismiss it with a hey? <laughs> I will send you to Jesus. Uh, how long do you think this is going to last, honestly? Come on now, heathens like you absolutely. <laughs> uh, can't even get through it. Heathens like you absolutely disgust me. You don't deserve a place in Christendom. How can you spurn the blessings of God so casually, you heretic? <laughs> uh. Well, this is completely out of left field. I don't know where you picked this up, Chris, but nobody's buying it, okay? It's a fine gesture, but let's let's not do this today, all right? Can we go ahead and presume that he just met like a really hot chick that was super into Jesus or something like that? <laughs> Our OP sighs. Uh, I had just seen Chris not even two full weeks ago. And he was the same poopy coom man that he ever was, smoking speed in truck stop parking lots, 
addicted to a fictional relationship with a cartoon character, picking up lot lizards and running off to sordid motels to catch diseases without taxonomical classifications. And yet, in that short time between our last departure and now, he had become the most devout believer in Jesus Christ. <laughs> or so he says. Now, I'm not one to mock people finding religion. Believe whatever the hell you want to believe. I don't really care one little bit. But when you go from a godless troglodytic atheist to inquisitor of the church over less than a fortnight, I know that it's going to be painfully obnoxious and doubly so for it being so painfully short-lived. The question that stared me in the face now was how long I would have to deal with Chris Chin before he reverted back to ordinary, regular Chris. I don't think he's ever been regular or ordinary. Definitely sub-ordinary. And yeah, I will say that, you know, if, if anybody needs Jesus in their life, <laughs> it's probably Chris. But I know he's not actually believing. He can't possibly actually believe. Turn around this big in two weeks? I doubt it. He's going to start polishing the bishop as soon as you turn around, OP. Guarantee. And then you tell him Jesus doesn't like that. He's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Something like that. I, I told him all of this. I, I remarked, Chris, just last week, I watched you smoke speed in a truck stop parking lot with a hobo. And then take the Lord's name in vain when I caught him sucking on your dinkle do in the dumpster corral. Yeah, we jump around a bit with these stories. There's really no established timeline here because there is really just too much to tell. Are you going to tell me that after you strong-armed a homeless man into oral for illicit narcotics, you're suddenly, just out of nowhere, decided to turn over a new goddamn leaf and become a Christian? Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe he's only doing this so he can, like, persecute male-on-male -male action or something like that. I don't really know what's going on here. I got a lot of suspicions, though, I'll tell you that much. Chris boldly declared that the actions of last week held no bearing on who he was today. And that Jesus had forgiven him of all of his sins. And that that was purely a mercantile affair. <laughs> Uh, yeah, still with the line. And then I was being unreasonable in my perception of the events. He went off on that part for much longer than the part about being forgiven by God for his transgressions. And I think that's because he doesn't believe it was a transgression of any sort. It was a purely mercantile affair. <laughs> uh, I paused. And I wondered just what this would mean for today's long drive. Would I not have to deal with a messed out neckbeard for one night of my life? Would he actually be on good behavior? <laughs> would it be possible that his behavior today would be palatable or even borderline normal in any capacity? Lol. LOL! LMFAO even! <laughs> uh, yeah, he's still the same Chris deep down. You know, Tiger can't change his stripes or something like that. Chris punched the truck into gear and took us out of the yard and then out of the city as we roared down the desert highways that day. Instead of his usual anime podcast, he decided for something fresh and new to mark this fine, God-given occasion of gainful employment. He put on a video of what I can only guess was from the congregation at the church he attended, and I whispered a prayer for those poor souls who had won over this odious convert. I mean, yeah, what, what have you brought on yourselves? He, he's gonna show up every week. I understand Jesus loves everybody, but surely it's harder to love some than others. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris sang along to some garbage contemporary Christian rock. Just so you know, I am Christian. Baptist, born and raised to be precise, and I absolutely despise contemporary Christian rock with a heated passion. 
Can't you see you're not making Christianity better? You're just making rock and roll worse. I mean, you feel how you feel. If there's money in it, I'll sing about Jesus. That's a big market. <laughs> Let's not be so quick to look down our noses. And then when the band was all finished and all this weird arm waving ended and the congregation sat down, the pastor approached the podium and began his sermon. I admit, it, it was a welcome change, at least to some degree. And while I have some issues with his backwards Lutheran interpretations, it was fascinating to hear a different point of view on biblical subjects nonetheless. It was nice, up until Chris yelled, Daddy! <laughs> uh, he can't change his stripes, like I said. <laughs> In shock to some revelation that the pastor had seemingly bequeathed onto his flock. And I waited for the follow-up phraseology that I had become so accustomed to. I had been conditioned for that one-two punch throughout my time in this truck. But the worst part was that that second part never came. See, he's got you programmed now, OP. Now he's got you saying it inside of your own head. It's not okay. That is not okay. <laughs> Cautiously, carefully, perhaps reflexively filling in this new and strange void in my life, I mumbled, Baka. <laughs> Under my breath. <laughs> Uh, oh God, dude, uh, he really has programmed you. He's pulled you into his world and I fear it's too late to back out now. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, beautiful. What has Chris done to you, honker dockers? <laughs> uh, oh man, Chris swerved as he caught wind of this tiniest of outbursts nearly missing the guardrail on the right and the vehicle on his left. The horn trailed off as Chris tightened his grip around the wheel and seized hold of the crucifix around his neck once more, threatening to break the delicate chain that suspended it there among his fatty folds. Apparently, I had upset him because Chris launched into a long tirade about how I was a godless savage for my disrespectful remarks, and that one day, the Lord would strike me down for my insolence, because I just called his beliefs, and him, and his congregation, and his pastor idiots, and Deus Vault! <laughs> uh, oh, that's really what it's all about, isn't it, Chris? You just want to LARP as a, a crusader, or something like that. Did he have a stroke? <laughs> I want to know what's happened to him and why. Why we've gone so far off the rails. Interestingly, this was the day that I actually learned what Baca meant because up until now, I had not cared to ask nor been offered any kind of context whatsoever. Anyway, I never made a performative display of my faith to Chris because well, I never felt the need to. And in this instance, I didn't really feel like I needed to do it either. And instead, I just let him rail on and on against my perceived heresy that would most assuredly be punished by a vengeful God. The fat slob would tucker himself out eventually, and then we could begin to drive down the road in blessed, blissful silence once again. Honestly, I, I think this is worse. At least when Chris was driving before, it was tolerable. You both didn't have to talk to each other. Now he's out here like he's got something to prove. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Pack it in, bro. I'm still not buying it. No matter how deep you go with this Crusader LARP, okay? It was unbearable. I'm not gonna lie. Did I mention that I absolutely hate contemporary Christian rock? with a fiery passion. <laughs> you might have. It's awful, soulless, cheaply mass-produced music with no spirit to it. Jesus would probably hate it too. And rock and roll and Christ Almighty just do not mix. 
I don't know. Jesus was a dirty, hopeless, hippie peace activist, and he said drop out and find God to anybody who would listen. Turning water into space bags. You know what I'm talking about? Pat the bunny. <laughs> Go look it up. <laughs> Jesus does the dishes. Turning water into space bags. I guess that's not rock. It's folk punk. But whatever. It's the same thing. I don't think there's anything more cringeworthy than listening to Brad the Choir Boy LARP like he's a rock star in what is supposed to be a church. I mean, there seems to be a lot of LARPing going on here. Okay, whatever, you know, it's fun to play pretend. I sort of get it. <laughs> I did my best to drown it out, but Chris practically belted the lyrics at the top of his lungs when the band started up once more. And at one point in the peak of the song, attempted to grab the truck's steering wheel with his knees while he raised his hands to the sky in homage of his newfound benefactor and lord. <laughs> uh, oh my god, bro. I was not up for Jesus taking the wheel of the big rig today, however, and I shouted as the truck began to drift, and I seized the wheel in my own hands keeping us in our lane as we barreled down the highway at 70 miles per hour. <laughs> yeah, you love Jesus so much, today you get to meet him. <laughs> uh, between the Christian rock and the sermons and the singing, uh, Chris's shift dragged on forever. When it finally came time for Chris's shift to end, he made a point to pull into a TA. Now, here's the thing about TAs. They have a trucker's chapel, which is really just a dumpy little trailer that they pretend is a church. And people can go in there and pray or listen to a sermon or socialize or whatever. Usually we avoid a TA like the plague. At least I did. Because TA is that one truck stop where the really sketchy stuff happens the most. Oh, well, Jesus isn't going to like that. What does TA even stand for? Google says Travel Centers of America. Twitch chat says Travel America. So, yeah, it, it's just a skeezy truck stop, I guess. Since I was usually the one who finished driving for the night, I would get to pick the truck stops where we would end our voyage. And I would opt for something a bit more sensible, like a pilot or a loves, which are generally less sketchy. Honestly, Loves is really cool. They let me sleep in my car. Didn't give me a hard time about it or nothing. They're like, we get it, bro. Not a sponsor, but I do love Loves. <laughs> Welcome to Loves Gas Station. We've got car snacks. We've got flavored drinks. We've got knickknacks and medieval combat armor. <laughs> That's not to say that they aren't sketchy. It's just that as a sum or an aggregate, they are uh, less so. Well, as Chris finished up his shift, he pulled into the TA specifically and got up from the driver's seat and told me that he needed a minute to take care of some business. Uh, <laughs> I thought this was a new euphemism of his for a shower spank. So I responded, Chris, I really don't want to wait around for you to go and rub one out, dude. I'd like to get back on the road. He remarked that he wasn't going to go and spank it concluding that fornication was a sin and that he didn't do that anymore. I really doubt that. <laughs> uh, he didn't do it, at least for today, I guess. At least not yet. At least not in front of OP. But, but Chris, God is always watching, all right? <laughs> he wanted to go stop inside the chapel real fast and get the good word for the day before we continued on our blessed voyage. I wonder how long it would be before going to catch the sermon on this blessed day became a euphemism for picking up dope or beating off in a shower stall, but I decided not to press the issue. I said, fine, whatever, go to church. I'd take a cat nap, and when I woke up, we could get back on the road. We weren't in a huge rush at the moment, and our schedule was actually fairly lenient with our current package. So yeah, there wasn't much of a time crunch at all. So yeah, sure, why not? 
Indulge Chris in his new fascination, as long as that's going to last. It could make for a better Chris. I'd like to see it through Mommy Honker Donker's fresh eyes. Encountering this for the first time. Did he actually believe that it was going to make a change? Because I doubt it. <laughs> I think we all doubt it. We're just waiting for the other shoe to drop, essentially. I wasn't passed out for terribly long after Chris had left. Truth be told, I expected that I'd have to get up and stumble around the travel plaza looking for Chris and had allowed ample time after my alarm to do so. But Chris had other plans in mind today, it seemed. And so, as I sat there and I stirred from the lurching of the truck jarring me awake, I checked my phone. It was well before the alarm that I had set was due to go off, and I was honestly shocked that the poopy coo man had returned so quickly. I wondered if he had actually just caught a sermon and came right back without getting in trouble for once in his damn life. <laughs> He'll regret it later. He'll be like, ah, I could have done so much BS. Well, you know what they say. The door flew open, in came Chris, and he turned around at the doorway and extended one of his greasy paws to hoist in his newest pet stray that he had decided to bring back into the truck cab with him. Oh God, it's not another dog, is it? It's not another love dumpster participant, is it? Is, is it a lot, lizard? <laughs> Chris seems to make friends everywhere he goes, doesn't he? As I rubbed sleep from my eyes, I beheld a skinny tweaker in a tube top and booty shorts. Oh boy. <laughs> Fishnets clinging to chalky, leathery, sun-beaten skin. She furtively picked at bloody scabs on her face and looked around with wily eyes, and I sighed. Oh my god, he's, he's trying to win her soul. This is how I win her soul, honker dockers. <laughs> uh, 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 Chris found himself a lot, Lizard, all right. Praise the Lord! <laughs> uh, I started up and said, Chris, dude, we, we've got to go. We don't have time for you to hang out with your girlfriend. To this, Chris replied that, It's all right, bro. We're not hanging out. She's coming with us. I'm taking her away from her current life of sin. And she's going to start a new life in the next town. <laughs> uh, oh, bless your heart. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's definitely going to start a new life. Of hooking! <laughs> uh, endless shenanigans with Chris. Honestly, the best series on the channel. <laughs> no competition whatsoever. I rolled my eyes, grabbed all of my valuables, stuffed them in my pockets, and said, Whatever, Chris. She's your responsibility now. Are we ready to go? Uh, I'd like to get out of here. And without waiting for an answer, I got up, hopped into the driver's seat, punched the thing in gear, and took that rig down the road. All the while, I could hear Chris proselytizing to the messed up courtesan in the back about how she needed to adopt Christ to do her life. And then if she just listened to him, he could help save her soul from eternal damnation. <laughs> <laughs> Great, how am I going to get my rent paid? <laughs> At that point, he opened up a Bible and began to pick and choose passages, reading and explaining them with a twist of his own personal heresy to this lovely little lot lizard. He was busy misrepresenting biblical passages according to his own personal headcanon, all right? A classic move that I have seen a lot of scumbags do before. Yeah, the leaders of a lot of mega churches, but we're not going to go there. <laughs> That's a story for another day. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's also, you know, weird trucking tweaker guys, I guess. A lot of the headcanon, of course, revolved around how every biblical passage led him back to how this hooker needed to be his wife. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Chris, you, you can't turn a hoe into a housewife. Somebody probably should have told you. Was this the Poopy Coon Man's new dating strategy? 
biblical mutilation in front of truck stop prostitutes in hopes that they might be his lawfully strong-armed mate? Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him, honestly. I, I thought that he had somebody in mind. But no, he, he made this choice all by himself. This was his brilliant idea. <laughs> God, I can hear him behind me. Genesis 2.24 Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, but they shall become one flesh. I chuckled as the lot lizard remarked, We could do that, baby, but it'll cost you 50 bucks. <laughs> uh, Chris began to stammer, no, my, my sweet, I, I'm trying to save you from that life. Don't you see? <laughs> uh, Chris can't even save himself from that life. What are you talking about? Uh, prostitution's a sin, and you need to leave it behind you. Uh, that's why I brought you out of that truck stop and into the light of God with me. <laughs> Uh, the power of Chris compels you. <laughs> uh, and she replied, Yeah, well, time is money, sweetheart. And you only paid me enough to cover the ride. If we're going to do this one flesh bit, you better make good on the funds or accept what you've paid for. <laughs> uh, uh. I mean, she's trying to get the bag, you know what I'm saying? She's got her eye on the prize. <laughs> Good on her, honestly. The most terrifying part is Chris probably would marry her. He'd get married and then get divorced or annulled within like the week. And essentially, isn't that the same thing? You're making a mockery of the ceremony. I don't know. Again, a, a video for another day, perhaps. <laughs> At this point, OP was dying. Chris was over here trying to save the soul of this truck stop working gal, and she was still demanding that he pay her for every minute of it. <laughs> he was literally shoveling out money to have a conversation with someone who had no interest in anything that he was trying to say. <laughs> I saw out of the corner of my eye that she had casually tuned out everything that Chris was saying as he rambled on and on about feminine subservience to her mate and becoming one flesh and, you know, all those good biblical euphemisms for banging. I like to just say that, you know, my wife and I know each other in a biblical sense. We have lain together in a biblical sense. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my two favorite, because with, if you don't say biblical sense, it doesn't make any sense. I guess it does. But it doesn't imply anything further. Anyways, whatever. His lady of the night was having none of this whatsoever, and instead delved into her phone, probably texting her pimp and letting her know that it'd be a couple days till she got back from down the road and he got his cut. Meanwhile, Chris pleaded begging her to listen to the words of God that he spoke to her. <laughs> uh, for her to turn from her old life of sin and instead take his hand and start a new life, hell, alongside him, of course. And then she could come live in his house and they could be happy and have children and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> uh, this is the worst idea that you've ever had. And you've come up with a lot of bad ideas, Chris, but this one takes the cake. I'm pretty sure you're proposing children, childbirth to a woman that you met like max a few hours ago. <laughs> Uh, wow, wow, something's, something's really wrong here. Maybe he did have a stroke. Maybe there's some just massive brain injury that we don't know about, right? That's, that's how it was in Kevin and a Big Rig, and that guy was still a scumbag, but at least it explains some things. Chris, explain some things to me, please. <laughs> of course, this all went on and on before the lady finally snapped. So we gonna do it or what? 
I'm not going to marry you, but if you want to bang, we can make that happen. You know my rights, otherwise leave me alone. I'm getting out at the next truck stop one way or the other because I need to make some money. Are we banging? <laughs> uh, oh, Chris stammered. Uh, what? You, you want to go right here? And I yelled, no, you don't. <laughs> but Chris just ignored me as the lot lizard responded. Yeah, right here works. Whatever. What? You never done it in front of someone else before? Oh, my God, dude. Please. <laughs> Uh, please don't let no bad happen. <laughs> we were on the rails. We were on a good path. And I think now's the point where he skips the tracks, goes sliding sidelong into a preschool like a boxcar full of bowling balls. <laughs> the temptation of sin was too great for Chris. And as I screamed and yelled at them to stop what they were doing... I heard Chris get up and embrace his nasty little meth muppet. Fornication is a sin, Chris! I yelled, trying to ply Chris away from that leathery mannequin along his current theological line du jour, but it seems that it was a sin that he was all too willing to commit. Yes, even in front of my presence. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> We begging for Jesus today. <laughs> uh, I heard him murmur, It's all right, bro. Jesus will forgive me. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. This seems pretty intentional to me. The clothes hit the floor, and the stank of unwashed loins and crusty poos. <laughs> Uh, flooded the cabin earnest like it used to do so many times before when he would spank it in his bunk and I scowled and rolled down the window. <laughs> uh, what else can you do? Apply the brakes super hard? All it's really going to do is fling him to the front of the cab and then you got the unwashed loins and, and crusty poos right next to you. <laughs> Uh, no, no, just best to grin and bear it, I guess. It'll be over in less than five minutes. <laughs> I'm surprised the lot lizard didn't freak out and protest. For a second, I wondered if they ever actually did. But then I realized that she slept with truckers as a job, was absolutely strung out, and had probably been privy to some really nasty sons of guns in her time on the job. I don't know if she hesitated at all, but the slapping sounds of wet flesh started up in the back, and Chris groaned in sinful delight. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it hurts. I knew it was going to come, but that doesn't make it hurt any less. <laughs> <laughs> he declared, suck it. And my soul died right then and there, wondering if the lot lizard would put herself face first to the fermenting infection that blossomed between Chris's thighs. Oh, God. Uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> much to my relief, which isn't much relief at all, truth be told, she told him, I'm nasty, but not that nasty. Put it in me and get it over with. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's all about romance, isn't she? <laughs> Honestly, uh, thank God for that at the very least. Honka Tonkers is right. It's not much relief at all, but I'm going to take what I could get at this point. <laughs> I cannot describe the horror that I felt as I listened to the poopy coom man get it on with this meth muppet in the back of the truck. While I drove. <laughs> uh, oh my god. What I can tell you is that it was all over just about as fast as it had begun. Not to my surprise. Thank god for that. <laughs> Not soon after Chris mounted her, he finished, and a familiar musky odor flooded the cab, 
as he planted soiled seed in hooker soil. Ugh. Gives a new meaning to the word soil. <laughs> That's spoiled soil. <laughs> With a sigh, he leaned back and asked her, eh, Did you come? To which she responded in a flat monotone, Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> uh, that's right. Best lover I ever had. Stop asking me stupid questions. <laughs> and then she told him that he owed her 50 bucks. <laughs> Chris started to protest as he put his clothes back on declaring that eh, prostitution is a sin, my darling, and that he simply couldn't fight against any more of that wicked and sinful behavior from her if she was to be his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God! Uh, what? <laughs> uh, a pimp named Slickback is gonna come and cut your face open, bro. Just give it a 50 bucks, it ain't worth it. I thought we were pretty clear that, that, that the wife thing is, is not gonna happen. <laughs> I heard the lady of the night murmur, Oh, is that so? To which he replied, Yes, it is. And you should stop such shameful behavior at once. Fornication displeases our Lord, my sweet. Come with me and be redeemed. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> He's really not giving up. Well, to nobody's surprise, not very long later, she was speaking to somebody on the phone. It seems that, predictably, Chris was running afoul of somebody's pimp tonight. I could hear the conversation, and the woman remarked that she had a customer that didn't want to pay. She turned to me and asked me when we were pulling over, and I remarked that I could do the next truck stop if you like, to which she replied, Hey, that's great. If you ever want a discount, you've got one, baby. <laughs> I gagged. <laughs> uh, yeah, not, not really something I'm interested in. What a generous offer. <laughs> Discount VJJ. <laughs> we weren't very far into our ride, maybe only an hour or two from the last TA travel plaza, and when the rig came roaring into the stop, the lot lizard got out and beckoned for Chris to follow her. I remarked to Chris, Dude, I don't think that's a good idea, man. We should probably just get back on the road. If she was on the phone with her pimp, bro, you do not want to meet that guy. They're probably gonna rob you, Chris. Chris scoffed at me. A fire with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and remarked that pimp or not, he was gonna confront him and demand that he release this woman into his custody so that he could put an end to her unholy lifestyle and restore that woman to grace. <laughs> uh, does she get any say in any of this? Good God. Some people might argue that it, it's a noble cause, but obviously she's not the one, bro. Chris, you're gonna get yourself killed, dude. She doesn't seem interested in your religious shtick, and I guarantee you that that guy is only interested in the contents of your wallet. Let's just go, man. He scowled at me and remarked that I was a coward and that I couldn't be counted on to stand up for a damsel in distress if my life counted on it, too. No, he was about to go become the hero of this story. <laughs> I guess. He turned his back on me and climbed down from the cab, wandering through the lot in the direction that the lot lizard had disappeared. Good God, dude. <laughs> uh, I guess he does come back alive. OP said that he still has to ride with Chris, but he's gonna lose his wallet at the very least. I stared out the windshield, just waiting for the inevitable to happen. A rather nice Chevelle rolled up, and I saw Methtasia approach the window and lean into the cab. She said something to the guy inside, and he got out of the driver's seat. As Chris approached, it appeared that they were talking, 
exchanging words. I just waited for it, and sure enough, it came. A big old fist plowed right into Chris's face, and it did not stop. Chris fell to the ground, and the blows continued until he stopped struggling. Then his assailant reached down, fished around in Chris's pockets, produced his wallet, got back into the car with the meth muppet, and they sped off into the evening. I mean, at least it was only a fist, honestly. <laughs> this could have gone a lot worse. I got down out of the cab, surprised that Chris didn't just get murdered in cold blood in broad daylight. And I approached him where he lay on the concrete, sobbing his bloody tears into the pavement. As I walked up, I asked him, uh, you all right? He just cried and started cursing out the God that he had so fervently believed in not 10 minutes before. <laughs> uh, there it is. Okay, a, a short little stint. We all knew it was going to fall apart for one reason or another, but hey, he did go like almost the whole story. I got to be sort of impressed with that. <laughs> I helped the big guy up and dragged him back to the cab. Mindful not to get his blood on me. Yeah, who knows what's in his blood, huh? <laughs> and when he got back in the truck, we drove on a bit in silence. After a while, he fumbled around and pulled out his phone. Its screen now cracked, and he put on an episode of his little stream, sullenly mumbling to himself, Gadi? Becca! <laughs> While the man children discussed Japanese cartoons. <laughs> Uh, he didn't say much else for the evening, and that night I figured I might try and be nice to him. I pulled into a TA again, as much as I hate him, figuring maybe Chris might just want to spend some time in the chapel in the morning and actually get right with God. But instead, he just scowled at me and asked if we could get the hell out of there. And as we drove to the plaza across the street, he hucked his Bible out of the window. <laughs> uh, was this just a one day affair? I wonder how much of the couple weeks that he was off, he actually spent, you know, going out there proselytizing to people. All it took was one lot lizard refusing to marry him, wanting to get paid and <laughs> uh, his belief, his faith is broken that quick, huh? Good God. <laughs> he turned to me then and said, Man, religion is stupid. I'm not going to buy into that trash anymore. Can't even use it to get laid. Oh, what a load of crap. <laughs> uh, and it's uh, essentially exactly what I called it as in the beginning. He didn't have one specific girl in mind, but yes, it was just uh, a duplicitous tool that he tried to employ. Thank God it didn't work, honestly. <laughs> I was a bit offended that he thought religion in general was just a tool to get your peenie wet, but I wasn't surprised hearing that reasoning from Chris. However, I just stayed silent. He turned to me and said, Next time, I will be a godless atheist like you, bro. To which I declared to him for the first time in my life that I was Christian. And he just replied, yeah, well, you're a bad one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am, aren't I? I pressed him, asking why he thought that way. And he remarked that not once have I ever tried to convert anyone or win them over. And that every time he found himself in a situation that caused him trouble, I was never there to help. Honestly, you, you, you saved Chris's life. You've put yourself in harm's way more times than he even knows. He's just too dumb to see it. <laughs> of course, that was a half-truth, considering that I did let him scrape his knees, but regularly, I advise strongly against it. And he just scoffed and wrote all that off as a bunch of... And wrote all that off as a bunch of... Christian copium. To nobody's surprise, that evening he disappeared once more into the abyss perhaps to prowl for transactional BJs and speed. And that, my friend, seems to be about where we're going to cut this tale for today. Don't worry, though, because I'll be back soon 
that we could talk a little more about the train wreck that is my co-pilot, Chris. God, he was going so hard for Jesus for just a minute there. Almost crashed the whole big rig because he loves God so much. <laughs> and then he gets punched one time in his little nosy wosy, and he's like, oh, God didn't protect me from that guy's fist. I guess I don't believe anymore. <laughs> My co-pilot is a neckbeard number 18. Oh yeah, lucky number 18. Now I can finally call her. Maybe if I'm the first to acknowledge her womanhood, she won't realize that I'm a disgusting slob. You ever, you ever see some posts like that? I see some posts like that. Makes me sick to my stomach. But Chris will make me sick in a, in a different type of way. Let's see what we got. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, Red X. Hi, you Zamami Honkadonkas. Bless up. Finally got myself a little bit of time to write, so we're not going to waste any time. And let's get right into another story about Chris. My God, it, it's so fast. Literally three days ago, part 17 dropped, and now we're already feasting on part 18. Are you kidding me? Beautiful. I, I love it. <laughs> Please keep this pace up. We can just make it the Red X and Mommy Honker Donker show. I don't care. <laughs> so the uninitiated might be wondering, who is Chris? Well, go check out the playlist. But to put it shortly, Chris is a very fat and sweaty man. Everywhere he goes, his approach is heralded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. <laughs> Chris has a uh, few pleasures in life and chooses to indulge in his own personal dark triad of crystal, anime, and lot lizards. He is an insatiable horn dog to the point of concern, floating all sorts of euphemisms for cleaning his pipes, and he will never pass up the chance to do so. Unless he's LARPing like a Christian like he was in the last episode. That was quite a ride. <laughs> he is just overall a despicable creature. And I despise him with every fiber of my being because try as I might, I cannot get him to act normal for even just one damn minute. And the real kicker is that to this day, I still ride with Chris. Oh, it's never going to end. And I want to be happy, but it also makes me sort of sad. I don't know how to feel. I'm a mixed bag of emotions. <laughs> Today, I had convinced myself that I was ready for whatever fortune would throw at me. The operative word being convinced, of course. I walked from my car to my big rig and seized the handholds while I clambered inside. Chris hadn't arrived yet. And I always could appreciate those moments of meditative quiet while I examined the sad surroundings in which I had to exist. Yeah, that is rough. Even if you're not stuck with Chris, living in a truck for a vast majority of your life, I, I, I don't know, man. I don't think I could do it. This truck stank like something died in there. I mean, it always stank like something died in there. I tried to push it from my mind and sat down to examine our trip's paperwork. We had a shipping container that we had to take out to Albuquerque, and we were scheduled to arrive in a couple of days. From there, we'd pick up again after a couple days layover and come back to California with another load. Okay, fairly standard trip for us. We went from California to New Mexico relatively often, and I imagined to myself that today we would do it without complication Oh, if only, if only. <laughs> I mean, it's good to have a dream, you know? Shoot for the moon and land in the stars or some crap like that. Oh, brother. When will I just learn that that is all wishful thinking? My illusions of that, however, were shattered when I felt the truck lurch and I knew in my heart of hearts that the disgusting little gremlin had arrived to drag my spirits down into the abyss alongside him once more. Yep, misery loves company. Why not? <laughs> Chris doesn't want to fix his life because that requires effort. 
it requires a lot more effort to just drag you down to his level, right? The door flung open and in came Chris. And I was surprised to see that he had changed his usual getup. My God. No longer was he in his greasy sweat stained t-shirt or his poopy coom sweatpants. Today, he was dressed differently. I wouldn't say he was dressed normal, however. In fact, pretty far from normal. He wore a brown jacket with some weird patch that looked like it was covered in feathers or wings on each shoulder. And on the back, he had fastened to the side of his belt two large oversized boxes painted in a metallic color. And of their purpose, I had no clue. Just from the description, I don't know what anybody's getting at. Is Chris, like, just trying to cosplay? He thinks he'll pick up some super hot cosplay chicks if he just spray paints these boxes and straps them to his belt. It's just really weird. It's all really weird. <laughs> Chris strutted around as he came in the cab before turning to me and saying, Oh, uh, well, what do you think? And I said, well, I think it's time you get in the damn pilot seat and take us out of the yard. <laughs> That's right. Playtime's over, Chris. Time to work. Let's put your game face on. Or as much of a game face as you have, I guess. He stammered a reply, asking me uh, what I thought about his getup. To which I responded that he looked like an idiot. And he got mad at me. He said, I wouldn't understand something as sophisticated and, or cultured as, as cosplay. Oh my god, dude. Uh, sophisticated or cultured. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, I, I like cosplay. I think it's a cool thing to do. But I don't think it implies any of the things that you have implied. I admit... I couldn't contain my curiosity, and I asked him what cosplay was. He told me he was dressing up as a character from his favorite cartoon today. Because, well, he could. And when I asked him if there was really something that precipitated this unusual occurrence, he came clean. I arrived at the yard really early, and I saw the paperwork on where we were going. And I remembered there was an anime con in Dallas. So I nipped back home real fast and got my cosplay on. And since the dates line up, I want to hit the convention and see what's happening. Oh my god. He's on his way to a convention, everybody. In his Attack on Titan cosplay, everybody. <laughs> uh, I, I can't believe it. Hey, do you guys think that this time it's all going to work out and Chris is going to find the milady of his dreams? <laughs> uh, uh, no, no, but I will enjoy the dumpster fire. I wondered just how early he had arrived to get to the yard, see the paperwork, leave and come back still on time for me would be a two hour trip. And it got me wondering if Chris ever left the yard at all, but I didn't ask. Sometimes I think Chris takes himself a bit too seriously, or perhaps he's being a bit too honest when he calls that truck his house. Uh, yeah, I guess it hasn't ever been established that he like lives anywhere outside of the truck, right? That's why it always smells like a dead animal. Wouldn't the company have something to say about that? Oh yeah, he's daddy's boy. I almost forgot about that part. I just sighed and I said, uh, we'll see when we get there. And Chris lumbered over to the captain's chair. Those weird cardboard boxes painted metallic, lashed to his hip, jostling everything as he trudged through the cab. Yeah, he doesn't need help. He's already wide enough, okay? <laughs> to strap boxes to your hip. Uh, maybe the comments can explain Attack on Titan to me a little bit. Is this how it's supposed to look? What are the boxes for? I suggested that maybe he ought to take those off while he was in the truck, but he ignored me, sidled into the driver's seat and put the truck in gear, boxes and all, and we were off making our way east, which really is about the only way that you can go from California. <laughs> 
<laughs> Chris was much more animated today, practically bouncing up and down in his seat as he drove. The ear-splitting cries of Gladi Becca caused me to wince each time he proclaimed them with increasing gusto. But beyond that, relatively little of note occurred, at least not on his shift. Yeah, good, I guess. He, he's the same old mess. No surprise there. But when it became my turn to drive and I took the wheel, I hauled us further down the road once more. That night, we pulled into a truck stop somewhere in Arizona. Chris asked me how I would feel if he kept driving. I mean, personally, I didn't care one bit so long as he didn't wreck the vehicle, but he knew as well as I did that we had a legal limit to how many to how many hours we were allowed to drive per day, and that if he found himself in trouble as a result of that, it wouldn't be my problem. Strictly on him, baby boy. And besides, I continued, he should probably take the opportunity to rest as it was. Albuquerque wasn't going anywhere, he said, hey, he'd be fine if I just let him go out and grab a cup of coffee. Yeah, grab a cup of something. Cup of nuts. <laughs> and I groaned. Something in my heart of hearts told me that that was a euphemism for doping. And I replied, you know what? Screw it. Keep driving, Chris. I don't care. It's on you if you get pulled over, though. You know that. Honestly, he might get in trouble with the law a little bit, but his dad would pull some strings. He'd get him out. There's a reason that Chris is, like, not scared at all to pull stuff like this. He squealed like a sow in heat, or perhaps like a schoolgirl with a cephalopod. <laughs> uh, and he hopped back into the driver's seat. I crawled into my bunk and let sleep overtake me as we roared down the road, hoping against hope that Chris maintained focus just long enough to not kill us until I could take the wheel once more. I don't know, man. I, I feel like Honker Donker should have stood his ground a little bit more, but at the end of the day, he probably knows better than the rest of us that, yeah, dude is going to do what he wants regardless. So sure, get yourself arrested. Maybe I, I can enjoy a few days of solo trips, you know? As the night wore on and the cities passed us by, I dozed off, waking up somewhere near the New Mexico state line to Chris quietly but excitedly murmuring the two words in Japanese that he knew. Chris was still driving. And as I staggered to the front, I was amazed that he had not yet killed us all while I slept. I mean, that was just by happenstance. Jesus was quite literally taking the wheel, even though he was spurned by Chris in the last episode. What's that they say about God having mercy on, like, children and fools, right? <laughs> I can tell by looking at Chris, however, that he was absolutely exhausted. Dark rings hung heavy beneath his eyes, and he barely mumbled, uh, hey, to me as I came up, and I told him he should pull over and let me take the wheel. Usually one to protest when I told him to do anything, this time, he simply put on the hazards, pulled onto the shoulder on that lonely patch of highway, and let me take control. I mean, he's dumb, but he's not stupid, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're almost here! We gotta get that anime con cringe going! But yeah, I can't drive the whole way by myself. Thanks for having my back, honker donkers. Nah, he would never say thanks. At least he's like dead dog tired. He's gonna go back and go to sleep. No shenanigans today out of Chris. At least not yet. Without saying a word, Chris got up, lumbered to his bunk, and disappeared into dreamland, populated with all the anime girls that he could shake his stick at. <laughs> I drove us the rest of the way to Albuquerque that day and found our delivery location. We were early. Very early. And the guy running the shipping dock was surprised to see us easily a good 12 hours plus before they were scheduled to arrive. I shrugged and said, eh, traffic was light. <laughs> and I let them do their business as they disconnected the trailer. When all was said and done, Chris had finally started to stir once more, 
We were stuck somewhere in downtown Albuquerque about midday or early afternoon. I told him I dropped the container, so I guess we should probably find a hotel or something since we're so damn early on our delivery and we can't really leave town. Looks like we've got the next couple of days at least while we wait for dispatch, so uh, I'll leave that to you, I guess. Chris chimed in that he had just the place in mind. I even got reservations. Visions of bed bugs danced in my mind's eye. Good God, this is like the scariest thing about neckbeards. They have all these thoughts and plans. The hamster on the wheel in their head might be like super obese, but slowly he's making his way somewhere. He's got something cooking. I don't know if I want to find out what it is, however. Chris pulled us out of the receiving bay and took us down the road, the GPS rattling out coordinates as he drove, and I zoned out, watching the city sail by the windows. Eventually, he pulled us off the highway, and we found ourselves going down city streets towards a dumpy little motel on the edge of the downtown district. Oh, this is how it ends, huh? I'm gonna get stabbed in the shower, or robbed in the middle of the night, or uh, nothing good can happen in a dumpy little motel. <laughs> Chris pulled us in, and we both got up, climbed out, and rambled towards the front desk. Chris did in fact have a reservation, whereas I rented a room outright. This is not a bad thing, by the way. I can always go a couple days without the poopy coo man in my face. And I didn't expect him to have reserved me a room anyways, but I'm a grown-ass dude. It would be really nice not to sleep in that cab as it was, so it was a welcome reprieve, despite how modest the accommodations were. I mean, yeah, you got a matchbox hotel, but at least it's a full room. The days that I had to sleep in my car were just absolutely miserable. I can't imagine it being all that much better in a truck. I mean, you get an actual bunk, but yeah, besides that, <laughs> forget it, dude. It sounds miserable. I would be getting a hotel every chance that I could. We got our room keys and wandered down the hall, Chris following me, gibbering excitedly about uh, how this was going to be the best weekend of his life ever. Yeah, build your expectations up. <laughs> Whatever, bro. Have you ever heard the expectation is the mother of disappointment? Something like that. But as usual, Chris doesn't listen to advice. So OP just tries to ignore him. And when I got to the door of my unit, I curtly said, have fun and open the door. As I got inside and attempted to shut it, Chris jammed his foot into the door frame before I could close it all the way and said, uh, wait, bro. I, um... Uh... I got something for you, man. He fished into his pocket and produced a ticket. No. No. <laughs> uh, I don't want to go. No. Just slam the door as hard as you can. Fracture a few bones in his foot. He's going to learn his lesson. <laughs> uh, uh, I was left to surmise that Chris had gone so far as to try and rope me in to the convention that he was attending. And I balked at the proposition. I said, Chris, I don't care about this thing, dude. I don't even watch cartoons, bro. He shrieked at me a bit, demanding I apologize for the meeting as chosen media in such a casual fashion. And I said, fine, fine, whatever. They're not cartoons. Okay, but they are cartoons, though. <laughs> but that doesn't change the point that I don't want to go, Chris. Chris, however, kept pressing his luck. He said, oh, Come on, Bobby Hawker Dockers. You know it's going to be fun. I think our ideas of fun are vastly different. Very vastly different. Now, I can't tell you what possessed me to pull that ticket out of his hand and put it in my pocket, let alone agree to go, but take it I did, if for nothing else than to get him out of my face. Honestly, that is a really nice gesture on Krish's part. These cons, they ain't cheap to go to. 
really he's hoping to probably just have you as a wingman or something it's not just out of the goodness of his heart but yeah if it's something you haven't experienced before then i guess why not just take the ride left you with a good story if, if nothing else as i shut the door i could hear him yell from the other side that uh, we had a few hours before we left and i grumbled as i set my suitcase down now alone i took myself a shower and laid down in the bed to watch tv while the hours whittled away until it was time yes the witching hour draws near <laughs> I was torn. I wanted to refuse Chris's offer and to just stay at the hotel, but curiosity had also seized me and would not be so easily shaken. And I wondered what it would be like to see Chris in his natural environment among all his kinsfolk. Let me play you the song of my people. <laughs> Despite all better judgment, my curiosity was far stronger, and I had resolved that I was going deep into this den of wolves, if for nothing else, then for science. Good God, don't put yourself in harm's way for science, although sometimes it does happen. Sacrifices must be made. Some of you might not make it back, and that is a risk I am willing to take. <laughs> When the time came, I heard that fat, hammy fist bang upon the door, and I got up from where I lay, put on my shoes, and stepped outside. Chris eagerly awaited me, bouncing up and down with the frenetic energy of a child on Christmas, now augmented by a copious amount of amphetamines. <laughs> where the hell did you get those, Chris? Why did you get those, Chris? It seems like he managed to score and get high in the very short time that we had been at the hotel. He asked me, uh, are you ready? Because I'm ready. We should go right now. And I sighed, shut the door behind me, and said goodbye to my moment's respite. We made our way to the truck, got in, and took that ride to the convention. Obviously, I hope that you're driving here, OP, because you can't trust him. Running on zero sleep? Smelling like drain cleaner? What's wrong with you, Chris? I mean, uh, that's, that's an answer that probably we don't have time for. Everything, everything basically is the answer to that. <laughs> we arrived at the convention center in downtown Albuquerque not that long after, and we exited the vehicle. In the parking lot, various beard-adjacent kindred swarmed about on their way into the building. Some were dressed up for the occasion in ornate costume, others were not, but all seemed to smell like the interior of an unwashed jockstrap. Yes, these are the ties that bind. <laughs> we're pheromone brothers now. My stomach churned as we swam through a sea of obese man-children, my head spiraling from the fragrant symphony of armpits and a-holes and body spray. The world, a colorful blur of costumed neckbeards surging towards the pearly gates of the promised land. Or at least as close to the promised land as a neckbeard might ever get. When we reached the convention center doors, we presented our proofs of admission, and we were allowed inside this baleful gathering and the smell from the parking lot was amplified by the confined interior of the convention center hallways. Yeah, mask up. That's all I got to say. I snickered to myself as I saw a sign talking about hygiene standards that had clearly been and certainly continued to be disregarded, and Chris and I waded further into the abyss. Now, this is an interesting dynamic because usually it's Honker Donkers taking care of Chris, but this is a situation where Chris is the old hand, so maybe he'll have to take care of Honker Donkers. Although, Chris can barely take care of himself, so I don't know if that's actually going to happen. I highly doubt that that's actually going to happen, but I guess we'll see. 
somewhere between the parking lot and the main floor of the convention center, I heard Chris murmur, Oh my god, what a lovely little strumpet. <laughs> Uh, oh, strumpet. Are you kidding? I turned to see what so firmly arrested his attention. Much to my surprise, I realized at that moment that attractive women actually did attend these bizarre gatherings. She was a 10 out of 10 bombshell, all right. Scantily clad in what can best be described as a series of leather straps that struggled to contain her blossoming bosom, and she beamed around with confidence and zeal as numerous Cretans desperately approached her, begging for their photos to be taken with this out-of-place, provocative creature. I mean, I'm sure there's chicks that go out there and cosplay just to cosplay, but certain women are there to, like, you know, make a name for themselves. I think it's sort of like the American version of the Japanese idol culture, right? Take a picture with me, follow me on Twitter, uh, give me money on one of these different avenues. Which, I mean, I totally get it. I respect the hustle. But yeah, they're out there for a reason. I don't think it's just to hang out with a bunch of creepy, nerdy dudes. <laughs> Chris poked me with his elbow and asked if I would do him the honor of taking a photograph to commemorate this occasion. I said, hell no. <laughs> and he declared, you're a fun dude, as he left me standing there. My messed up compatriot approached this girl that was far too good for him. I could hear his loud, wheezy voice above the thronging crowds, and with the most dapper flourish, and a pose that he surely thought to be dashing, he asked her if uh, perhaps Milady could grant a fine gentleman such as me with a picture. Um, yeah, I'll take a picture with you. Ten bucks a picture? That's fine. <laughs> like I said, she's got a hustle. I don't think anybody would, would go to this effort for free. Well, the girl did giggle. A giggle that was admittedly forced. A giggle that betrayed that she wished that these losers would just leave her alone. But begrudgingly, she leaned in beside Chris while he snapped a selfie. He reached his arm around her for the pose, but stopped far short of physical contact. His greasy hands hovering far away from her body, and I wondered how he managed to restrain himself. The hover hand is actually a really good way to go. Honestly, I'm a big proponent of that. I'm also a big proponent of cosplay is not consent. I'm liking Chris in this one, honestly. He hasn't been as horrible as he has been uh, before. Is he still a horrible person? Yeah, but like this story as a one-off, it definitely showcases a more human side to him. The Pooby Coom Man. Exercising restraint, and with a human side at that, I was shocked. So was I. <laughs> I was even more shocked that she actually agreed to humor Chris with a photo. Then I realized that this poor girl probably had to deal with this all day, every day, whenever she attended one of these events, and having fat losers request photographs of her to which they could fantasize later was just sort of the relative norm. I don't know. I, I, I don't think that she's out here doing this for free. If she is doing it for free, then she's trying to establish herself as like an online presence or something like that. It's just wild to me that somebody would spend time and effort on a costume, buy a ticket, and then spend the entire day just taking pictures with fat nerds for free, for, for no reason at all. She might also be like paid to be there, you know? There's something going on behind the scenes that uh mommy honker donkers nor chris are considering anyways uh chris returned gloating to me about how he totally cupped her butt and she was into it and i rolled my eyes he became incredulous with me 
declaring that hey, she wants me, dude. I could totally sense that I'm the alpha in this pack. What pack? What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, didn't you see how she looked at me? That's animalistic lust, bro. Oh my God. Are you, what planet are you from? <laughs> It was then that I recalled the passive display of disgust on her face as she leaned in and caught a whiff of that poopy coom aura that still managed to follow Chris around, even in this new, comparatively clean getup. I replied to him that maybe you should go back and get her number then, instead of some dumb picture, Chris. And he responded, <laughs> Nah, she's not my type as if he was some lady killer, and that he'd actually get a choice in partners if he wasn't paying them in cold coin. He can't actually believe that, right? Is his ego this out of control? <laughs> uh, not my type. Oh yeah, she's not a barefoot and pregnant single mother that lives in a trailer at the bottom of the, the Appalachian Mountains or something. I laughed at Chris. And I threw a little bit of his own poison back in his face, remarking that he sounded like a beta, and that if he was the top dog, then he ought to prove it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is uh, straight out of Chris's own mouth. Although I will say, dude, if, if that came out of Chris Trucker's mouth, you probably don't want to put it in your mouth. That's how gingivitis happens. I'm pretty sure you can get infected like that, right? <laughs> Uh, Chris stammered that he would before the night was out. And suddenly I felt a pang of conscience as I worried about the well-being of one of these poor costume girls lured into this defiler's den because they happened to share a common interest. I mean, you are kind of throwing him to the wolves at the end of the day, but they also have been walking into the wolf den to get paid, like... I don't think it's their first rodeo. They probably know how to give some dudes the brush off without being confrontational about it. I think she's going to be just fine. We meandered through the crowds, their greasy, sweaty bellies brushing up against me. Oh, God. I hate that. <laughs> As we squeezed past them and into the main floor of the convention, I shuddered with each contact, wishing full well that I was back at the hotel with my precious shower. But still, I pressed on, following Chris through the parting seas of people. Why? I mean, he did spend good money on the ticket, but I, I can't do it anymore, man. I tried. I gave it the old college try. Eventually, however, Chris paused in the middle of the convention floor and I sidled up alongside him and asked, what's up? And I heard him half whisper, my God, I found her. Oh God, <laughs> uh, please stop. I followed his gaze to the center of the floor. She stood there, a bloated Japanese looking she beast with one of those alt girl haircuts. <laughs> What? Dressed in the same getup as Chris, in the midst of a thronging pack of neckbeards, Chris spat into his hands, slicked back his hair with that man-made gel reeking of rotten teeth, ugh, and approached her with a swagger in his step. I could hear him as he spoke, and I died at the exchange. Oh no, she's also wearing Attack on Titan? Really? I mean, maybe they will make a connection. Maybe it's going to go great. But honestly, my, my first set of advice to that woman would be just run. Just run and get out and run. <laughs> run, bitch. Run. Uh, 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 Chris said, oh, my God, you are the most riveting creature I've ever seen in my life. Might I have the pleasure of knowing my lady's name? She giggled, that giggle the equivalent of a braying jackass, if we're being honest, and this cartoon character wannabe stayed true to her character 
announcing herself as Mikasa Ackerman. Oh, oh no. I mean, okay, she is very likely a leg beard, uh, but she still deserves better than Chris, man. He probably would have made a run at basically anybody he saw wearing this costume. It's not the girl inside the costume that he's interested in. It is the costume itself. This is so weird, dude. I can't say that I didn't admire her dedication to her role, even despite the impending approach of the poopy coom man himself. I mean, if she was really dedicated to her role, she would slay him. This giant fat titan coming towards me. Boom! End him! <laughs> well, Chris, enamored now by this person before him, leaned in and started to whisper into her ear what I can only presume to be his lewd, awkward, cheesy flirtation, and I watched as the braying role player giggled and smiled and fawned over this questionable attention that she was receiving. As far as I could tell, she was actually displaying genuine interest in the poopy coom man. Oh, it was rich. And as Chris held out his massive greasy bear paw to take his mate's hand and lead her off into a world of shame and regret, I heard a shrill nasal declaration from across the hall. Unhand her at once! Um... <laughs> Uh, beard fight! <laughs> uh, uh, it's too good to be true, wasn't it? From out of the swirling masses of people approached String Bean, a greasy little goblin with a bad case of acne and an asthma inhaler draped around his neck. <laughs> uh, uh, oh my god, dude. I wish it was made up, but I don't think you can make that up. He was dressed in much the same getup as Chris. Mikasa declared, Boys, there's enough Mikasa for everyone. But String Bean was having none of it. He ignored Mikasa's protests and walked right up to Chris, puffed out his little chest, and asked Chris, uh, Who the hell do you think you are? And he squinted at him through those thick lenses. Chris, without missing a beat, declared that he was the alpha of this pack. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, this whole interaction, I just can't. Even with Chris Trucker, we rarely get cringe this deep or this flavor. Like, <laughs> I love to hate it, I gotta say. And then Chris said that String Bean had better back off if he knew it was good for him. It's like you watch too many high school movies in the 90s or something. String Bean launched into a tirade directed at Chris, lighting him up for trying to make moves on his girlfriend, and that his cosplay looked like he got it at a thrift store. Now, I didn't realize how severe an accusation this was, but it seemed that the friend group from which String Bean had materialized thought it was a hilarious and poignant burn and cackled like a pack of hyenas at this smack talking. Come on, OP, now's your chance. You gotta back Chris up. When he drops a burn, you gotta cackle too and be like, oh, it's so good. Where'd you get those clothes? The toilet store? <laughs> I rolled my eyes, but... Absolutely enthralled with this peculiar mating ritual, I could not look away. Chris was insulted, of course, and he made it known. He declared, You attack my honor, and you block my cock. There's only one way we can settle this. We go to the parking lot and fight for my lady's hand. Oh my god, dude. Are you sure? Is it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> All the while, Mikasa brayed that they should settle down and that she'd be more than down to take care of them both. If they all went back to the hotel room, she could assuage everyone's tempers. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no. Why does this always seem to happen? Thank God that it didn't go that way in this one, though. 
That did not seem to be happening, however, not today. String Bean accepted the challenge, though, and now Chris, followed by a pack of cackling neckbeards, said, Come on, Hogger Dockers, you get to see me beat this stupid kid's ass. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited for the upcoming display, and I'd be lying twice if I said I wasn't hoping that String Bean somehow, miraculously, beat Chris into a bloody pulp. I mean, Chris does have the, the size advantage. I mean, horizontally at the very least. <laughs> uh, he's also cranked up, so I don't know. I think String Bean might be in some trouble here. But I too hope that String Bean turns out to be like secret MMA fighter. Just turns him into a big fat pretzel, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we filtered through the thronging masses of the convention once more and found our way out into the parking lot. Chris stood alone against String Bean and the pack of howling, jeering beards thirsty for blood all around him. While Mikasa cried for everyone to calm down and they could solve this in a more civilized way. Yeah, with everybody going ham on the same chick? I, I, I don't think so. I'm good with all that, okay? <laughs> I asked Chris if he was sure that he wanted to do this, and he told me that the insult to his honor uh, was too grave, and that I should just shut my mouth and watch how a real man handles his business. Okay, Chris. Watch, I will. I mean, didn't Honker Donkers hand Chris's shit to him at least once before? Does Chris really still think that he's like a big tough dude? Ugh. The level of delusion is unreal. With a shout, String Bean pulled a foam sword from the fake metal box that hung at his belt. Oh, the box was a sword sheath this whole time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he let out an awkward battle cry and charged Chris full tilt, striking him in the head with an anticlimactic <laughs> <laughs> And Chris just blinked at him. String Bean stepped back, gasping for air at what little physical exertion his body had already performed, and he took a huff off of his inhaler. <laughs> uh... Oh my god, dude. This is the worst thing ever. This is the truest, the purest of nerd cringe. <laughs> uh, part of me wants it to stop. Part of me wants it to go on forever. I don't know how I feel anymore. <laughs> Chris retorted, hey, You're pretty good, kid. But you'll need to do better than that to defeat me. <laughs> Uh, I pressed my hands to my face and groaned. Chris approached String Bean, making whooshing sounds with his mouth as he tried to duck and weave before he got up to him, ripped the sword from out of his hands, and swung it at String Bean like he was going to cut his belly open. The foam raked across String Bean's shirt, and String Bean let out an agonized cry while Mikasa shrieked bloody murder. What is happening here? <laughs> As an outsider witnessing something like this? <laughs> I just can't. Uh, uh, a crowd was beginning to form around this heated duel consisting of parking lot bystanders and string beans staggered back, gasping as if he had been mortally wounded, his hands clutching at his belly. Honestly, this entire display is making me wish I could end myself right now. <laughs> uh, all of this hurt OP so bad. I wanted to wade in there and punch both of their lights out for this ridiculous display, but I also wanted to see how this played out. I abstained as String Bean and Chris took turns monologuing their quote-unquote fight at each other and trading blows with foam swords. As String Bean recovered from the slice to his belly, he struck what he must have thought was a badass pose, pushed his glasses onto the rim of his nose, and then bit his hand. 
The look of shock on Chris's face was priceless as String Bean let out a shriek and charged Chris, attempting to latch on to Chris and now bite him. Chris sidestepped out of the way and sliced again with his foam sword, raking it across the back of String Bean's neck. String Bean staggered forward for a bit, let out an agonized screech and fell silent onto the black pavement. What? What? <laughs> uh, say what you will about Chris, but he sure can not beat this weird kid in a sword fight. The howling pack of beards grew silent as String Bean laid there on the pavement, faking his post-mortem spasms. And then Chris dropped the sword onto the ground. He walked up to his milady with a bow. And then about that time, String Bean struggled to his feet and said, Hey, dude. Just because you won the fight doesn't mean you got to bang my girlfriend. <laughs> Chris chortled and said, Yeah, suck it, you beta male. <laughs> uh, and he grabbed Mikasa's hand. Then he looked at me and asked me if I was ready to leave. At this point, you could not pay me enough to remain any longer. And I said, Yeah. Sure, let's go. <laughs> uh, I have been ready to leave. Chris, Mikasa, and I all wandered back to the truck while String Bean followed behind Mikasa, pleading with her not to leave him alone at the convention, almost on the verge of tears. But Mikasa grabbed him on the shoulder, told him jealousy was a major turnoff, and that she would be back soon enough. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> this is brutal. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm not willing to, to put up with that. Come on, String Bean. You little loser. <laughs> don't, don't let yourself lose out like this. I cannot imagine the agony that String Bean felt as his duplicitous and unfaithful girlfriend loaded up into the rig with the poopy coom man and traveled off to his hotel to do gross poopy coom man things. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah, Chris wins, but I guess we all lose. Oh, thanks. I hate it. It's the worst thing ever. <laughs> as soon as we got back to the hotel, I got the hell out of that truck and locked my hotel door and determined that I was not going to open it again until it was time for us to leave and go pick up our package. I suppose this was all well and good because when that time came, Chris had gotten rid of his precious waifu and we were able to hit the road once more in some semblance of normalcy. I told myself from that day on that I would shoot Chris down the next time he wanted to go to some weird gathering. But in the back of my mind, a small voice told me, that's a lie. <laughs> And that concludes today's story. The open road is calling my name, friends, and down it I must go. Don't you worry, though, because we'll all be back in due time with another story about that magnificent train wreck that we call Chris. Jesus, man. From the outside looking in, I have no idea what's going on. Like, I'm relatively well-versed in some forms of nerd culture, but this... This seemed really over the top. <laughs> I had to have a lot of Attack on Titan things explained to me. Like when he bites himself, it's it's going Titan, uh, which I totally didn't pick up. But yeah, Twitch chat is there to help me out for a lot of it. So I do appreciate that. My co-pilot is a neckbeard number 19. Can you believe it has gone on this long? I don't know what to expect when I'm starting up a new series, but I generally don't expect that they're gonna go on for more than like five parts, maybe 10 parts. 19? Ludicrous, bro. <laughs> Please keep feeding me this. I'm loving it. Hey there, Red X gang. Hi, you Sabami Hakadakas. <laughs> Looks like I finally got myself a bit of time to write. So let's not waste any more time, and we'll get into uh, another tale about everybody's favorite train wreck, Chris. 
Yeah, it really is. It has become a channel favorite, like, overnight, instantly. He's a sensation! And he doesn't even know <laughs> how sensational he is. Uh, so who is Chris, anyways? Well, Chris is a very fat and sweaty man, surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom, stinky stank. Chris and I both work for a trucking company, a major one, and we take turns driving our big rig down the road. You know, Kevin and the big rig, it came and it went, you know, and that was a great ride, but this ride, I just love it so much more. <laughs> it's so much more gross and so much more my speed. Things are usually okay when Chris is driving, usually, but when our shifts change and Chris is finally free, then the cringe really begins. He's free to indulge in his own personal dark triad of meth and lot lizards and anime. Chris and I battle almost daily, with me struggling against hope itself to try and make him act like a regular human being. But despite my best efforts, my concerns, my threats of violence, my kind and sagely advice that I offer to this human atrocity, it more often than not just falls flat on its face. At a certain point, you're wasting your breath, you know? This is what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object, okay? <laughs> the real kicker, of course, is that to this day, I still have to ride with Chris. Oh no! <laughs> I don't know when it's gonna come to an end. One of these days, the story's gonna say I don't ride with Chris anymore. But uh, when that time will come, none of us know. Chris and I were on our way back to California after a couple weeks out on the road. We dropped a package somewhere down by Tucson, and it was coming to the end of our time away from home. Yay! Quality time with wifey! And then Chris is like, yay, quality time with body pillow! <laughs> I looked forward to a week of peace and quiet and solitude. A clean environment and my loving family as we headed back to the yard to drop off the truck. When at last that was complete, we would be free of the job for the coming week and I could forget about the misery that I had to endure in order to feed my loved ones. Well, you know what Gus Fring says on Breaking Bad, right? A man provides for his family. As I sat there zoning out on the passing miles of open and endless desert, however, I barely noticed when Chris pulled off the interstate in some strange and unfamiliar setting. Oh boy, here he goes again, off on his own adventures. <laughs> he told me that uh, we were taking a detour. I replied, Chris, I really just want to get back to the yard and go home for the week. <laughs> uh, can't you just take the detour by yourself later once we're off the clock? But Chris told me that he had some pressing business that couldn't wait. I wondered, was he in debt to gangsters for his habit? Did he see a truck stop and pop a stubby? <laughs> or maybe it was just a really good looking lot lizard. I demanded of him then to ask where the hell we were going. And he told me that I gotta stop at my house real quick. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you gonna meet Chris's mom? I just presume that he lives with his mother. <laughs> He's gonna step into Chris's beard nest. Oh no, I don't know if I was ready for this today. <laughs> uh, here he comes, here he comes. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm terrified. I reeled at this proposition, we all do. <laughs> But I was also morbidly curious about what exactly constituted Chris's house. It's probably just a love dumpster. <laughs> Visions of some rundown shack in the middle of nowhere with dead patches of grass killed by motor oil dilapidating its lawn flooded my mind's eye. I could smell the black mold that fervently bloomed in the rundown drywall behind mountainous heaps of dew bottles filled with urine. I mean, are you describing it already? Maybe it's gonna be pristine. Maybe I'll be shocked. <laughs> yeah, and maybe the Pope shits in his hat. <laughs> Perhaps a few raccoons had made a nest in the crawl space. 
cohabitating with the rats that crawled up from below while he slept to spirit away half-eaten or half-rotten chicken tenders into the dead of night. <laughs> Were the curtains yellowing from his stinky stank? <laughs> uh, oh my god, dude. Was the shower drain choked with poop? <laughs> The carpets perhaps crisp with coom? Oh, I was stealing myself for the worst of the worst until I realized just where we had pulled the truck off of the highway. Everywhere around me, ritzy townhouses popped up from the cliff sides. Palisades surrounded by high gates with spiked fences monitored by constant CCTV surveillance. My brain can't process this. Chris lives in a nice place? <laughs> Is that what you're going to tell me? Oh my god. There wasn't a homeless man in sight on these pristine streets. Yeah, that's pretty unlucky for Chris, honestly. <laughs> you know how he loves the homeless. <laughs> they were all probably in jail or shipped further towards the cities, wherein they spread like a swarm of rats over a rotting carcass. Oh, that's not a good comparison to make for the homeless. Come on, honker Docker, show them some love. Although I do sort of get why the analogy fits, because we're talking about Chris at the moment. Even the McDonald's looked like it could have been a private resort or part of a country club. No, this was the upper crust part of town, <laughs> and it seemed that herein Chris resided. If not as the upper, then most assuredly as the crust. God, I was going to make that same joke when I first saw you say it. <laughs> uh, oh, we are of the same mind. I love it. It's perfect. But yeah, we do have to remember that Chris's daddy owns this trucking company. It's probably not Chris that is buying himself this stuff. Maybe he still lives with mommy and daddy. I don't know. There's a, a lot of mysteries yet to be uncovered about this beast. My mind reeled at the shock of where we were. And I wondered how the poopy coom man could afford a McMansion on a modest trucker's salary. Yeah, I, I kind of spoiled that one, I guess. <laughs> it simply didn't add up as I ran the numbers of the average take-home of any guy on this job. Even I, despite my decent compensation due to my prolonged experience and immaculate references in the trucking industry, wasn't able to afford even the humblest ramshackle hovel in the neck of the woods like this. Somehow though, against all conceivable possibilities, Chris managed to live here. It's all starting to make sense as far as I'm concerned. I, I wouldn't even be that shocked about this. I'd be like, okay, daddy's boy. <laughs> I see what's going on. I refuse to believe it. Even as we pulled up to a gate wherein a guard sat and asked us where we were going, and Chris told him the residence where we were bound to and who he was, and as if Chris actually belonged here, he waved us through without any issue in our company truck. <laughs> I mean, it's daddy's truck, right? <laughs> this is wild. Are you gonna meet Chris's father? Oh my God, what a story arc! The story arcs aren't actually story arcs. They're more like story roles when it comes to Chris Trucker, but still, <laughs> I'm finally excited. Maybe we could get some headway towards punishing Chris. We drove through those immaculate suburbs of cookie cutter, multi-million dollar homes, past condo after condo with sprawling lawns and flowing fountains in the middle of this parched desert, and I ran the figures again in my mind. Chris, how, how can he possibly live here? There was no way he could do it unless somebody more well-financed than he made it possible. And that is when it finally hit me. He was still living at his daddy's house. Ah, oh, see, daddy's not taking care of his boy. He just hasn't made him fly the nest quite yet. Honestly, I am so excited to, to see Chris Trucker's dad and what he's like. <laughs> How did this beard get formed? Was it from neglect? Was it from doting? Because I've seen both of those. I'm taking bets right now. Taking bets? Go ahead, let me know in the comments. We pulled up to one of the McMansions and Chris parked the truck on the street. 
as the driveway was occupied by a fresh new sports car that cost more than my yearly salary. Oof. He opened the door and lumbered out and half-heartedly asked me, uh, Well, you, you want to come inside or what? And I must admit that despite my reservations about existing in a place so posh beside a disgusting creature like Chris, I had to take a peek at how the poopy coo man actually lived. Yes, please, let us all know. He's probably just got one room and it's a complete wreck, and then the rest of the house is like nicely maintained. Maybe he actually does have a maid that cleans up after him, and honestly, if that's the case, that woman needs a raise. I don't know what you're paying her, but it's not enough. <laughs> Surely the tenants of this place wouldn't just let Chris roll about in his own detritus like a pig in the mud. I clambered down the passenger side and stood before a place that carried a price tag bigger than every dollar that I had ever made and probably ever would make in my life. Boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I poop on company time. <laughs> God damn, bro. I want to be clear. All this stuff doesn't make him a better person than you. He's just a person with a bigger house. What does that actually mean at the end of the day? Eventually, entropy will overtake everything. It is completely fine. <laughs> There's a heavy dose of copium that I had to tell myself right now. <laughs> uh... We walked down a path wherein Roman-style columns stood at attention, like soldiers of ancient architecture, holding up an awning covered in vines that crept from suspended pots and arrived at a pair of double doors, emblazoned with ornate wrought brass and a giant mommy honker knocker. <laughs> hey, that's pretty classy. A classy place you got over here. And I practically cried at how unfair it all was as the dirty lord of the manor reached into his pocket, pulled out some keys, and stuck one into the lock. The doors swung wide, and we stepped through as Chris's wheezy voice echoed throughout that magnificent foyer, declaring, Hey, Bob! Dad! I'm home! <laughs> Uh, oh my god, dude. How is this really happening? <laughs> there was no reply to his shout, but movement instead. And from the far corner of the living room, I heard somebody shuffle out from their hiding, and into view stepped a little housekeeper lady. She was busily dusting off a plasma screen TV that was like half the size of a tractor trailer, until the arrival of the poopy coom man had broken her attention. And she said, Oh, hello, Mr. Chris. Sir Padre's not here right now. You're home early. Is something wrong? Is there something you need to tell him? <laughs> uh, I probably could have done the Hispanic accent, but it seemed pretty racist to just presume that. <laughs> so we're going to stick with the English one. Thanks. I would have interrupted and said, Yeah, what's wrong is that I am here. Chris will be back home later after he drops me back off at the fleet yard, but... Instead, I was just staring, awestruck, out of a sliding glass door at an Olympic-sized swimming pool in the backyard that could manage to fit even a beluga whale like Chris and still have room to spare. Bro, I'm so jelly. Honestly, the size of the house doesn't make me jelly. The only thing that I really want in this life is a pool. You know, I could go kick it in the pool all day, every day. We're going to have pool streams. You heard about hot tub streams? Forget about it. Pool streams all day. <laughs> uh, oh, I could give a damn about everything else. But yeah, that's the one, the one thing that makes me a little bit green with envy. <laughs> Through the sheer haze of shock, I heard Chris say, No, that's, that's okay, Maria. We can just hang out in my room until my dad gets back. Uh, hey, could you make me something to eat? <laughs> oh my god, you're going in his room? That's the most dangerous part of the house. I I'm gonna kick it in the living room. Maybe Maria can keep me safe. <laughs> and then without waiting for her to say yes or no to his request, he told me to eh, pull my crap together and that I should follow him to his room. We wandered down the halls to the echoing cries of Maria, stating, Well, 
He should be home soon. And I was led along like a marionette. I could barely muster up the will to refuse the request. And I followed Chris blindly through the halls of this massive house. Besides, on some basic level, my curiosity compelled me to see the hidden, shameful nest that I knew was tucked away inside this massive display of opulence. Yeah, honestly, that's like a modern art masterpiece or something. Look at this gigantic, beautiful house and this repulsive, small, tiny beating heart. Completely black with rot. Yeah, that's, that's a statement on capitalism or something like that. I'm edgy, check me out. <laughs> and sure enough, I found it. And I was amazed, first, that the sheer scale of the room was bigger than my entire living room and the attached kitchen. And second, that it could be stuffed with so much garbage, despite the fact that there was a dedicated housekeeper right outside in the living room right now who could have kept this place just as tidy as the rest of it. So he told the, the housekeeper to stay out is what I'm reading here. I need to hang on to every bit of my precious trash. Getting a little bit of bourgeois beard vibes here. What is the point of any of this, Chris? Why do you choose to live this way? Ugh, I shuddered as stale and rotting food drifted on the breeze and mingled with that poopy coom stinky stank that I had come to know so well. Empty soda bottles and pizza boxes lay scattered all across the hardwood finish in random and curious mounds that had probably never been moved, and they were topped off with nasty rags that once donned Chris's body, now left there to rot. And always the same, tent-like sweatpants and cheap t-shirts covered in curious stains. I don't understand, you got money, bro. You could buy like the nicest t-shirts, you could get fitted as hell, but I guess this is just how he chooses to live. Not out of necessity. This is all a choice. I'm shocked. I am, ugh, well, not that shocked. <laughs> out of the sea arose the accoutrement that preoccupied the poopy coom man's juvenile mind. A massive table covered in painted figurines of dragons and zombies and tanks and space aliens and God knows what else sat in the middle of the room. And paint dripped down the table leg onto the floor. Always playing some Warhammer? I never got into it because it was too expensive, but apparently that's not a problem for Chris. He's buying some of that plastic crack. And some real crack, too. <laughs> As I spotted a jar with a submerged figurine, oh no, in yellowing fluids, oh god. I was glad that it wasn't that which had been spilled. Oh my god. Don't look in the jar! It's gonna be Mikasa! <laughs> I hate it! Why are you doing this? Posters of Japanese cartoon characters and wizards and comic book heroes and several cartoon girl body pillows stared out on this shoddy domain, keeping constant vigil, challenging all who might threaten the sanctity of this domain with paper cuts or crusty snuggles respectively. Honestly, you, you should have a, a hazmat suit just to go in here, OP. Are you hazmat certified, honka donkers? Tell me that. <laughs> this is not safe. Do not touch a goddamn thing in here. Oh, despite the window being open and a fan being on full blast, pointing outside into a huge sprawling yard, the smell was still overpowering and it took me a moment to truly appreciate the musky bouquet that it presented to even my dulled olfactory senses. Oh my god, I hope that's sarcasm. I hope you're not developing Stockholm Syndrome or something like that. <laughs> Chris shoved his way past a mountain of garbage that protruded up in the middle of the room and rolled out a chair that sat at his computer and motioned for me to sit while he popped a squat on his bed. This is not my first rodeo. I have a teenage son, and I know better <laughs> than to sit in somebody's computer chair, especially when that somebody is Chris. Yeah, that thing's gonna crack in half. <laughs> it's gotta be so brittle. Oh, 
Why is this cushion so hard? This is so rough, dude. I mean, the room is basically what I would expect. <laughs> it's like every neckbeard nest we've ever seen. The, the true mystery here is what Chris's dad is like. I'm still left wondering. That is the carrot uh, on the stick in order to get through this episode, okay? <laughs> I coughed and I wheezed for a bit, choking on the rancid nature of this place. And I said, Chris, I, I gotta go get some air, man. Well, you wait for your dad. I, I can't handle this. <laughs> uh, few could. I mean, you put yourself into this situation. I'm gonna go chill in the living room, okay? This is your room. I don't want to cramp your style. I just need to get the hell out of here. Chris told me, No, you can't go. My dad doesn't like it when I have guests here, bro. I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> oh, God. But I didn't pay it any mind. My survival instincts had kicked into overdrive, and I needed to escape this enclosed chamber of despondency. <laughs> we all do, honestly. That's all it takes is one look. No, I'm not sitting down. No, I'm not hanging out in here. <laughs> I have to go now. The smell had clouded all of my judgment and powers of reasoning, and I, unable to take any more, instead stormed out of that room and back down the hall towards the living room as fast as I could, putting as much distance between me and that filthy lair as humanly possible. <laughs> that has to be like such a wild shift, doesn't it? You go into this room that's just a complete trash pile, and then you step out into opulence. What a contrast. I dash through those halls like a bat out of hell, leaving the poopy coom man to wonder why I had left him there alone in such a hurry, despite his protest that I must remain. Yeah, he doesn't have the self-awareness. He's probably like, oh, honker donkers are so weird. Like, no, bro, you're the weird one. Y you got a pony jar sitting on the desk. <laughs> I just can't. I wasn't even focused on where I was going, truth be told. I just knew that I needed out. And as I round a corner, I practically ran over a little old man in a funny hat as I came crashing around the bend in one of those massive halls. It was a sudden cry, and I was met with the stern demand to know, Who the hell are you and what are you doing in my house? It was at this moment that I realized that I stood face to face with Chris's father. Yay, we do get to meet him this episode. Oh God, I hope he's not a degenerate. <laughs> uh, I did my best there and then to recompose myself into something presentable. I stepped back, took a deep breath and tried to gather my wits. When at last I was confident that I had returned to my senses, I said, hey there, daddy Chris, I'm mommy honker donkers. He retorted, that's nice and all, but that doesn't explain who you are. He said this as he started reaching towards his waistband, towards what I could only surmise to be a concealed pistol. Bro, you just walking around with a pistol in your waistband? Like around your own house? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, usually, you keep the firearms locked up tight. But, um, I guess this is a good way to do it. Maybe this is how rich people do it. I don't really know. I repeated myself, I'm Mommy Honker Donkers, and I work with your son. I'm his co-pilot. At this realization, the hand paused, and I saw a look of exasperation cross his face. He said, That worthless boy! How many times do I have to tell him? I don't want him bringing his stupid friends here! I stammered, Um, sir? I assure you I'm not one of his friends, I'm j just his co-worker. To which Daddy replied, yeah, It's close enough. What are you doing wandering around in here? Where's Chris? And why isn't he with you? I mean, that's a good question. You could be, like, looking around for some stuff to thief. My house is rather modest, and I still don't want people wandering around here unsupervised, okay? Well, sir, Chris told me to hang out in his room while he waited for you, but honestly, I couldn't stomach being in there. It is just freaking disgusting inside his room. At this, Daddy Chris puffed up with rage and cast me an accusatory glance as if to say, What do you mean it's gross in there? 
Oh God, he is one of those doting fathers who thinks that their kid can do no wrong. Okay, I was wrong. I thought he was neglectful, obsessed with work, but nope. He's one of those that will go to bat for baby boy, no matter how wrong baby boy is. I wondered then how long it had been since Daddy Chris had actually looked in on how Chris lived in his own home or what he was doing. And then I realized that he had probably not looked in on Chris at all in years. Oh, well, that's more towards the neglectful side. I guess he's only defending Chris there because Chris is a reflection of himself, you know? His ego can't stand the thought that there's a dirty room in his own home. Uh, anyway, without missing a beat, after I accused the Poopy Coo Man's domicile of being a disgusting garbage heap, he cried out, Hey, Maria! And I could hear the shuffling of the little housekeeper as she came around the corner and paused in the entry to the hall, staring at pissed off Daddy Chris as we basically had a standoff moment. Go find out what the hell's going on in my son's room and make sure it's clean. Maria began to protest. But Mr. Chris doesn't like it when I go in there. And he asked me not to do it, so I haven't done it. And he said he would clean it up and... To which Daddy Chris yelled, No! Oh, God. <laughs> okay, you're the boss. Pretty sure it's this guy who signs the check. So yeah, the room has to be clean, Chris. Sorry if you don't like it. Maybe you should move out. <laughs> Maria fostered no further protest and disappeared down the hall towards the poopy coom man's nest, a room that she thought was being taken care of by its putrid denizen. <laughs> Everybody's just lying to themselves. They're like, if I don't look at the mess, then it's not there, right? <laughs> Boy, howdy. I knew she was in for a rude awakening, and I could already hear what Chris's shrieking would sound like as Maria set to work cleaning the place out. Just do it when he's not there. I, I, I don't want this confrontation, please. <laughs> Daddy Chris then moved to push past me without any further acknowledgement, and I paused, cleared my throat, and said, <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. He stopped bristling with anger that a peasant like me might dare address the king in his own castle. And he murmured under his breath, What do you want? I figured that here and now, if it ever was to happen, it was the time for me to make my case to someone with much more authority than me or the worthless HR department. This was the man who cut my paychecks and gave me a job who oversaw the entire operation that had become my livelihood and, if anything was to change in my life, it would most certainly have happened through him, if I played my cards right. Honestly, Honkadonkers, I don't think this is a game that you can win. <laughs> you might play all the cards right, but sometimes, you know, luck of the draw just ain't there, and... Sadly, I think that's going to be the case today, because as far as I know, you still have to ride with Chris. Although it might end in part 20. I really, <laughs> I really don't know what's happening. Look, you own the company that I drive for, and I've been there for some time, working alongside your son now. A couple of years, to be precise, and to be quite blunt about it, he has some serious issues. I've tried taking it to the HR department, but they tell me that they can't do anything about it because, well, because he's your son, and that's that, and I guess I just have to suck it up, but now I've actually met you in person. So I figure while I've got an audience with you in person, uh, maybe there's some way we could work something out about what to do with him. Like, when I started driving with him, he was jerking off in the back of the truck cab with me in it. <laughs> oh, I don't think we need to go into details. You, that is a misplay of the cards right there. <laughs> you just leave it at serious issues. You don't need to talk about his son. <laughs> uh, uh, oh no. <laughs> and he did this while I was driving, for goodness sake. He, he even beat off a couple times while he was driving the truck as well. It was a struggle just to get him to stop doing that. And even then, it's still not enough to make him act right. 
His hygiene is atrocious. He stinks like a rotting pile of garbage heaped in the summer sun, and he spends all night at every truck stop we hit looking for speed and lot lizards. Oh, it's all just spilling out now. Please put a lid on it real quick. I... <laughs> oh, no. Uh, it's not going to go well. I can already tell it's not going to go well. No father wants to hear this. Absolutely wild. <laughs> <laughs> we are so outside the bounds of the social contract at this point. But then again, maybe Honka Donker's perspective is a little bit skewed because he spent so much time with Chris. He doesn't know how regular human beings are supposed to act anymore. <laughs> half the time he's getting in trouble with gangsters. The other half of the time he's causing trouble for your other employees. He's just absolutely insufferable. And truth be told, I don't think I should have to live like this anymore. Frankly, I don't think anyone in your company should have to live like that. And uh, truth be told, again, you need to get your son some help before you put him back on the road because he is a danger to himself and others. Daddy Chris dismissively remarked, So quit then. Go work somewhere else. <laughs> oh, I didn't expect that. Uh... Oh my god. At least he didn't explode. After that tirade of all these horrible things, I expected Daddy Chris to explode, but maybe he knows. He knows all about it. He's just like, whatever. Jesus, dude. I, I My mind is blown. <laughs> uh, my jaw practically hit the floor at the callous disregard of another human suffering inflicted by his own spawn, of the callous disregard for the backward state of his own son. I started to stammer, but Daddy Chris didn't wait for me to complete the sentence. In a nutshell, he basically told me that, eh, Chris is my problem. He wasn't about to fire his son, and that I was under no obligation to continue driving for his company if he didn't like the working conditions that I operated in. Oh my god. <laughs> yep, well, you're, you're just kind of SOL. I don't know what else to tell you. Maybe it is time to go find another company or file a lawsuit because this is, uh, this is nowhere road, you know? Complete dead end. I replied that that wasn't an option. That I had a family to feed back at home who were counting on me to keep bringing home the bread. To which he responded vindictively, uh, well, it must not be that bad, then, if you're still willing to put up with it for a paycheck. So which is it? Is it insufferable and you're gonna quit? Or are you gonna get out of my hair and get back to work? Oh my god, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, he is ripe for a lawsuit, I'll tell ya. As he started walking down the hall, he began monologuing to himself, remarking that, uh, Chris is your problem, not mine. If you don't think the deal with him is worth what you're paid, you can go find somewhere else to work. What's more, I don't appreciate you putting my son in such a bad light. <laughs> all you people are all the same pack of vultures trying to besmirch my son's good name. You come into this house, my house, our house, always expecting something from me, always trying to use Chris as your leverage. You think this hasn't happened before? It's happened plenty of times. Believe you me. I know what my son's like. I know full well what kind of man he is. And I assure you that these bold-faced lies have been told to me before. So you understand me well when I say that such a brazen attempt to tarnish my son's name won't be taken lightly. Honestly, if everybody has the same complaint, maybe it's, it, it is actually your son that is the problem. I'm smelling class action lawsuit now. <laughs> Honker Donkers is not alone? Oh, that's beautiful. Great. Give me some names. Who was working with him before? Please tell me. <laughs> I want to get this paperwork started. Uh, of course, Daddy's boy could do no wrong. Even when he was cracked out in a truck stop, getting the crap beat out of him by gangsters for dime bags of cheap dope, he was apparently still a perfect little angel. Okay, so now I'm back to doting father again. But he's also kind of neglectful. I don't know, he's going right down the middle of the road. Even Chris's dad is like a complete mystery. Considering the absolutely atrocious state of Chris, 
I don't know why I expected anything less but complete obliviousness or lack of concern from Chris's family. As Daddy Chris walked away, I yelled after him. You don't believe me? Why don't you walk into his damn room and breathe in the stench that I have to breathe every damn day and then tell me that I'm full of it? Again, a dismissive wave of the hand from Daddy Chris as he started down the hall. And in that moment, I realized that I truly was not going to get through to him. <sighs> I decided to let the issue lie because persistence was useless. I was just so fed up with everything that I was about to head back to the truck when a crash and a shriek caught my attention and I paused. It had come from Chris's room and by the sounds of it, something had frightened that poor little housekeeper lady half to death. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is cooking up another coom golem in his room and she found it. It was half alive. <laughs> it knows her name, lifts up the pillowcase, and it's like, Maria, my life is paid. <laughs> <laughs> Even Daddy Chris paused. Not soon after, the shouting started in earnest, and both of us headed off in the direction of the commotion to determine the source of that ruckus. Not long to walk, and we found ourselves standing at the edge of Chris's doorway. And I could see the disgust etching itself into his father's face for what was probably the first time that he had caught the pure and unadulterated blast of stagnant poopy coom from this beast's den. There, now it's looking you in the face. Are you going to deny it? Yeah, he probably still is. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? The crash had been produced by Chris as he shot out of his computer chair and he was yelling at poor Maria, who might as well have been making the sign of the cross to God, murmuring in Spanish and averting her eyes from the poopy coom man who was now red in the face with rage. Oh gosh, I wonder what he was doing at his computer desk. Hmm, what a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> we all know, the only thing he ever does at his computer desk, this coom-brained tub of lard, this semeny behemoth. <laughs> As I peered into the room and past the mountains of filth, I saw that Chris, not even five minutes after I had left his room, had begun surfing the web for Japanese cartoon prawn. And it seems that poor little Maria sent to go and investigate the accruing mess that he had promised to take care of himself so many moons ago, stumbled right in on him, preparing to rub one out to a particularly violent scene with a lot of tentacles. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Why this? I mean, because Chris, I guess. But there you go, Daddy. See what your baby boy likes? This is what he enjoys. This is what I have to deal with every day. Yes, it is your problem. I hate to tell you. I could still see the stubby little tent in his sweatpants as he gesticulated in blubbery rage at this unprecedented interruption. As if to send the point home, I declared to Daddy Chris... Told you he's a disgusting troglodyte. <laughs> Before spinning on my heels and heading back out of that house, leaving Chris alone with his seething father in a room of his house that he had just never bothered to check in on before. I went back to the rig and stared out the window, wishing to be rid of this pompous poopy coom paradise before it too threatened to consume my sanity. I, I feel so bad for Maria. <laughs> I say again, she does not get paid enough for all of this. And this is the ridiculous part about having like a house that's too big for your own good. There's parts of it that you don't see for months at a time. I just want a modest sized house with a pool. Is that so much to ask? It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. We're gonna vlog it on Mr. and Mrs. Red X. I'll be like, look at me chilling out in the pool, hooray! I'll even show you guys around my, my studio. It's not a den, it's not a beard nest, it's a studio. <laughs> like, legitimately. I'd like to think that there's going to be repercussions for Chris now that his dad knows, but daddy's just gonna erase all this from his memory, I'm pretty sure. Some time passed, it was maybe a good half an hour. I can only imagine what daddy Chris said to Chris 
while Chris frothed in sexual frustration at poor Maria. When the truck finally lurched and the door flung open, Chris didn't say a word to me. With an ugly scowl etched on his face, he punched the truck into gear and took us out of that wealthy little suburb and back down the interstate. This is so weird. What did he even need to stop at the house for? To watch some of his cartoons? Tentacle cartoons? <laughs> I don't understand what was happening! We went almost the whole way back to the yard in blissful silence until Chris decided to disturb the peace with an interjection that I really did not want to hear. He said, You got me in a bunch of trouble, dude. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How is this my fault? However, OP ignores him, and yet Chris presses on, repeating himself, asserting how uncool it was that I didn't listen to him, explaining to me that I kept Maria out of my room because I didn't want her throwing away any of my stuff. Now my dad thinks I'm a pig, and he wants me to get rid of a bunch of it, and Maria doesn't want to help me do any of that because she says my room is gross and I'm gross. So now, when I get back home, I'm going to have to get rid of a bunch of my stuff, and nobody's going to help me do it just because you couldn't sit still like I asked you to. <laughs> You're such a jerk, bro. You're literally ruining my life. <laughs> Uh, again, I ask, how is any of this my fault? You made all of these decisions. All you had to do was sit in that damn chair while I went and talked to my dad. And none of this would have ever happened. Honestly, I should talk to my dad about firing you. You know, he told me what you said about me, and I don't appreciate you saying things like that to my dad. Why are you going to go and make up a bunch of stuff about me, dude? Are you... <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell? I didn't make up any of this, Chris. Are we just both playing dumb? Oh my god. I am having a really hard time to stomach that last line. You do these things. If you're gonna do these things, at least accept the fact that you do these things. He's completely delusional. Uh, uh, what the hell? Oh my god. Again. OP does not reply. That's probably the move to make, honestly. There is... What do you say to this? If I start talking about this, I'm gonna start screaming. As the truck rattled into the yard, I didn't even wait for Chris to cut the engine. I climbed out of the truck and trudged across the yard as the poopy coo man shrieked behind me, demanding that I apologize to him for upsetting his comforting little static world. I, of course, again, ignored it, climbed into my car, and peeled out of the yard that day. It was early afternoon, and I realized then and there that if anything in my life were to be fixed, I needed help. Between this encounter with the Poopy Coo Man's father, who had proved entirely less than helpful, and the urging of the folks who have been listening to these stories, that day I texted my wife and told her that I would be late coming home. I stopped by at a couple of attorney's offices that day to see what could possibly be done about my situation. Nobody bit that day, but with my home time before me, I placed a few more calls and eventually found someone who said they'd be willing to take up my case for a hostile work environment, and the gears got put into motion. Hell yeah, dude! <laughs> the wheels of justice turn slowly, but they will grind Chris and his father into a fine powder, I'm sure. At the very least, honker donkers, you will never have to work again. <laughs> no more money troubles, no more nothing! I'm hoping that that happens sooner rather than later, honestly. We will see how all that plays out in due time, of course. I don't expect a quick resolution because... Eh, the legal system is always painfully slow. I will say that this confrontation, however, did yield one net positive. Ain't that the truth? That week I was at home, I noticed one day that when I had to step out for groceries, my bank account was a, uh, a bit more flush than it usually was. I called the company and asked if there had been some sort of error during payroll processing, but after much assurance that the direct deposit I had received was legitimate, I shrugged my shoulders 
and said about damn time something good came of all this. He's trying to buy you, honker donkers. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> In that moment, part of me contemplated canceling keeping my attorney on retainer, but the other part of me realized that this pitiful token was not the compensation that I deserved for the nightmares that I had suffered at the hands of the poopy coo man Chris throughout my time at this company. And that about wraps up our story for today, my friends. But don't you worry, because you know I'm coming down the road as sure as a big rig with a spun out trucker. And I got plenty more stories to tell you about that fascinating train wreck that we all know as Chris. See you next time. I think the right thing to do is, is hold on to that bribe and yeah, keep the lawyer. <laughs> I got even more money coming my way, but thanks for the boost while the wheels of justice turn, I do suppose. My co-pilot is a neck beard number 20. Oh my God, it's almost of legal drinking age. And really we have probably needed <laughs> some legal drinking uh, between part one up until now, but you know, we're almost there to 21. Magic 21 is all gonna be easier after that. <laughs> all gonna be downhill from there. Uh, let, let's see what it is we got today. Hey there, Red X gang! Hi, you some mommy honkadonkas! We missed you. <laughs> I finally got a little bit of time to write, so let's not delay any longer and instead get into another story about Chris. Oh, it's so good. I missed it. <laughs> it's sick, but I did. <laughs> For the uninitiated, well, they might find themselves wondering, who is Chris? Well... Chris is a very fat and sweaty man, surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. Chris and I both work for a trucking company, a major one, and we take turns driving the big rig down the road. Things are usually fine when Chris is driving, usually. But when I take the wheel, Chris finds himself ready to indulge in all sorts of inappropriate activities that oftentimes centers around meth, Lot lizards, anime, or the one thing to rule them all, uh, his schlag. <laughs> I mean, really, that's all central, isn't it? The dark trifecta rotates around the, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> the cheese stick. <laughs> that's when the fun really begins. And try as I might to reel him in and make him act normal and stop him from being the cretin that we all know him to be, it is all in vain as he brings the scuzz in copious amounts. The real kicker is that to this day, I still have to ride with Chris. Holy smokes, we've already reached installment 20. Yeah, it, it flew by, honestly. It did not lag in any part. A lot of the longer sagas, I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm about ready for it to be over. Chris Trucker, it ain't like that. I want it to go on forever. If it wasn't for Mommy Honker Donker's sanity, I would encourage it to go on forever. And now, to celebrate this momentous occasion, I deliver you guys another twofer of tales from the earlier days. And our first tale is called Aerosol Delight. Oh, he's doing whippets in the <laughs> in the back of the truck. He's like, I got whipped cream, bro. <laughs> not not the usual kinds. It was <laughs> it was a hot and miserable day in the Dallas slash Fort Worth area of Texas. Oh, we traveling all over, and Chris and I were stuck in layover hell, staring out into the endless expanse of the truck stop parking lot. The heat radiated up off the scorched black pavement, distorting the air above it as it rose in waves, and even the lot lizards and speed demons, usually content to forever prowl the parking lots in search of suckers or vices, all depending, had instead hidden from the elements entirely. I mean, I do understand getting the bag, depending which one you're talking about, which bag you're talking about. <laughs> but yeah, don't risk your life for it, okay? People will come into the shade. You don't have to go out there and die of heat stroke. Uh, but not Chris, of course. As soon as we pulled over at that truck stop, he lifted his fat, swampy ass 
steps away from the faux leather seat to which it clung and staggered out of the door and into the parking lot in search of those who could provide him the lechery that he so desperately desired. God, this is just like his whole life, isn't it? The having a job, the cruising around, all of that is just like intermissions between the times when he gets to pull over and do whatever the hell it is that he does out there. <laughs> As he shut the door behind him, I knew that he would be back soon enough. Nobody in their right mind wanted to be outside in that heat, under that sun, on top of that black tarmac right now, and it was only a matter of time until Chris returned from his prowl, empty-handed and bored, and then I had to deal with him once more. I think the, the key word there is in his right mind. Nobody in their right... Well, Chris is not in his right mind, is he? It wasn't long, perhaps half an hour to an hour tops, until I felt the truck suspension lurch again, and the door swung wide open, and in came Chris. His clothes soaked with his own sweat and the ambient moisture in the air, and both of those things magnifying the powerful odor of his latent aura. Yeah, moisture will do that. That fungal growth is happening, and you can smell it happening, and I hate it. <laughs> Please make it stop. I gagged as he shut the door behind him, sealing us in together in our tight quarters with his very own fetid scent. The truck was idling, and so I turned up the AC and the fan, hoping to aerate the enclosed space that we populated. Yeah, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get the bad smell out. You're just adding new air to the bad smell. <laughs> As Chris shambled inside and towards the back, I saw that he had gone into the store and picked up several cans of cheap deodorant spray. Oh, it's not Whippets. Okay. <laughs> you know the one that they like. Axe. Lynx, if you're overseas. I groaned. It was only a matter of time now. I knew how this routine would go. He would announce, Hey, hacker dunkers, I need to go clean up. So I had to make sure that I didn't look at him. And he would lumber into the back of the cab and strip butt naked, beat one out, spray his seed everywhere, literally and figuratively, to simultaneously both spread and cover up the stench of his rotting seed. <laughs> I don't think I could ever get used to this, man. I do have a question about Chris Trucker that I, I've been kind of scared to ask. Why is a seed rotting? Like, <laughs> it, it's just, it, it's new, supposedly. He seems to change it out quite frequently, you know? Out with the bad, in with the good. Is that how it works? <laughs> I don't want an answer. This is all hypothetical, okay? <laughs> I know it's for, for a literary function, and it does disturb me quite deeply. Thank you. So I just looked at him expectantly, waiting for those dreaded words to come out of his disgusting maw, when I noticed that Chris was barely standing on his feet. Yeah, that's some heat stroke right there. The poopy coom man staggered as he moved through the cab, teetering precariously where he stood, each step a lurch forward, wherein he braced himself against the wall with his free hand, all the while threatening to fall on the floor as he moved and... I did get a little bit worried. I asked him, Hey, Chris, are you alright? He didn't respond, and I repeated myself insistently once more. Volume increased. Severity in tone escalated. Chris, are you alright? He moved his mouth to form words, and nothing came out at first, until he just murmured, seemingly out of breath and not entirely coherent. <laughs> yeah... I'm great. <laughs> what the hell? And I caught the telltale whiff of something familiar wafting on his breath. Still, I couldn't place what it was. It wasn't meth mouth. It was almost sickeningly sweet in its smell. Bro, did you did you try to huff that axe? <laughs> uh, there's a reason they do it with whipped cream, bro, because it's edible. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I, uh, oh my god. What is this? And with Chris becoming responsive to my questioning once more, he continued on and said, yeah, I gotta clean up. Oh boy. 
Here we go. He wandered into the back, and I told him to close the damn curtain behind him. But he didn't do it. Surprise, surprise. He never does. And as I turned around to yell at him, I saw that he had sat cross-legged on the floor with his cans of spray deodorant, somehow managing to even totter while he was sitting still. Something's wrong with him. I mean, even more than usual. <coughs> Are we going to the hospital again? I wondered for a second if Chris had found somebody out in the lot selling some, like, bad, cheap dope, and he took a few hits, and now he was ODing and dying right in front of me. I got out of the pilot seat and hovered around Chris for a moment, insistently asking him what he took, and repeating myself, asking him over and over if he was sure that he was okay. He was beginning to come to full cognition again, and he said that yeah, he, he didn't take anything. Heat stroke. I mean, the, the smell in his mouth is kind of weird. Also unfortunate that you had to smell his mouth smell, but yeah, I'm still saying heat stroke. <laughs> I shrugged. He seemed to be on the mend, so I let the issue lie and returned to the front seat. It didn't take long for Chris to start spraying his deodorant everywhere, and the smell was absolutely overpowering. I wanted to go back there and beat his ass and tell him to use stick deodorant like a freaking normal person. <laughs> but I didn't. I mean, there's nothing wrong with aerosol deodorant, and uh, I don't think Axe is really even a deodorant, is it? It's like a body spray, right? Spray deodorant is super convenient. If it wasn't for the chlorofluorocarbons, I totally use it all the time. <laughs> I knew what he liked to do in the back of the truck, and I assumed that at this point he was full tilt into, uh, doing that, so I dared not turn around. <laughs> I just sat there, silently, just dealing with it, taking it all in, waiting for the overpowering odor of stale to diffuse through the cab from behind the pungent smell of spray-on deodorant. However, it never, ahem, <clears throat> came. <laughs> I get it! <laughs> and I was jarred loose from where I sat by a loud BANG coming from behind me. I practically jumped out of my skin as I shot up in my seat, and I turned on my heels, compelled by nothing but pure instinct. He finally did it! He finally did it, fellas! He ventilated his own skull. The Chris Trucker saga is over. <laughs> uh, if only it were that easy, honestly. <laughs> At first, my blood ran cold. I thought I was going to get an eyeful of poopy coom chode and gullet. A distorted grimace of uncompromising ecstasy painted across Chris's face as he uh, painted the floor. And then it only ran colder as I realized that Chris had fallen unconscious, toppling over himself and falling to the ground, creating that loud slam that had so arrested my attention. Bro, this is not good. He's gonna start seizing in a minute. What do you do? Hey Google, what's the first aid treatment for heat stroke? Hurry, tell me, don't show me an ad before the video or something. <laughs> I ran up to him, placing my hand to his neck, checking his vitals, seeing if he was still alive. He was murmuring incoherently to himself as he lay there on the floor, and that's when I noticed that telltale stench on his breath again. It was the same smell as the spray-on deodorant that he had been blasting around in the back of the cab. And as I put the pieces of the puzzle together, the prolific quantities of spray-on deodorant, a rag stinking of said deodorant, and that telltale stink coming across his breath, I realized that Chris was getting a high on frigging Axe deodorant. Oh, that is a desperate measure, let me tell you. Does that work? <laughs> Nobody tell me if that works. I don't want to find out if that works. That is insanity. Are you that hard up? Are you that desperate to just... <laughs> it's quite a different high, isn't it? All it does is make you pass out. What are you doing, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> probably asked myself that a, a thousand times throughout this story. I rolled my eyes. This was the desperation that the poopy coom man was willing to sink to when he couldn't find himself a cheap bag of dope in the travel plaza. 
rather than let Chris intentionally asphyxiate himself to death when he recuperated enough to take another hit, however, I decided to do the right thing. Rounded up all those cans of aerosol spray and took them out back to the dumpster. I mean, admittedly, he does need the spray, but <laughs> not in his lungs. Just spray it all on his body. Spray it in his laundry basket that he never washes. <laughs> When I came back to the truck, Chris was still unconscious. Breathing, but, yeah, unconscious. I kicked him a couple times to make sure that he hadn't killed himself. Yeah, <laughs> That's the first aid treatment. Go kick him in the ribs. He's fine. <laughs> Maybe I planted a few in his fat gut a little harder than I should have, if we're being honest. And then I started to kick his feet, and when he began to stir and came back to reality... I sat down in the passenger seat and waited for him to come around to speech. Not long after, Chris blearily asked me, hey, What happened to all my deodorant? I replied, You used it all, cleaning up. And I let the subject lie, never to be addressed again. I mean, was this the only time that he did that? <laughs> <laughs> At this point, yeah, I guess if you're really that hard up, ice is the safer option. It is poison that you're putting into your body, but at least it's not as direct a poison as, like, <laughs> spray on deodorant. Oh, my God. And that concludes our first tale for the day. Now we reach number two. This one I've come to refer to as the gruesome twosome. Oh, no. Chris found another friend, didn't he? Oh, no. Why is he so popular with the weirdos and the grifters and the drifters, huh? <laughs> you tell me that. Chris and I had just left California, and we were overnighting somewhere in Nevada. Now, the thing you need to know about Nevada right out of the gate is that besides it being a general den of every conceivable form of debauchery, like gambling and drugs and cheap booze, is that is also legal, even to a point where the law will turn a blind eye to a lot of underhanded, uh, unofficial dealings. Yeah, escorts that, like, work with the casinos and whatnot, I don't know nothing about this, okay? <laughs> Let me wind that back right now. Uh, <laughs> talking out the side of my neck. It should go without saying that whenever we had to stop in Nevada, Chris is right in his element and can't wait for us to pull over for a bit so he can go get his fixes of dope and poon. <laughs> no, he never goes to the brothels because he can't afford them. And I doubt a professional working girl would even want to put her hands on a guy like Chris. I mean, money talks, but yeah, there's, there's certain things that, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably seen terrible things, but nothing this terrible. This doesn't mean, however, that even low-level street hoes tend to uh, get a bit of a pass in this state, thanks to the laissez-faire attitude about working girls, and he's not one to miss an opportunity to partake as a result at every chance that he can. Oh my god. If there was ever any reason to uh, not go buy a hooker or something like that. <laughs> Just imagine. Imagine she been with Chris the day before, and now you're paying to get in that? Oh, I, ugh. <laughs> I don't need that kind of motivation, but if you do, there it is. I lay it down quite flat. Might not bother some people. However, me, it disturbs uh, quite deeply. <laughs> Well, Chris and I had found ourselves at a truck stop somewhere outside Elko for the night, and with nowhere left to go, it was time for the evening's fun to begin. Oh, great. <laughs> it's just every night with this dude. He's out getting into some sort of trouble, and then OP's got to go bail him out. It can't be every night, right? These are just the highlights that we're getting. <laughs> the story wouldn't be much fun if it was like, yeah, nothing really happened. <laughs> <laughs> it was no surprise that when Chris got up from the truck and took to prowling the travel plaza, searching for some dope or some lady of the night to imbibe it with, between his fetid groinal fondlings... <laughs> uh, oh boy. If we could never say that again, I, I'd be just fine with that. Thank you. 
<laughs> I'd been left alone once again to my own devices and enjoyed that precious moment of blissful silence as the poopy coom man did his poopy coom deeds somewhere, thankfully, far removed from me. The evening wore on and I moved to retire that night. As I laid in my bunk on the precipice of consciousness, ready to tumble into the dreamlike abyss and forget my momentary world of suffering that I occupied and its accompanying ambient stinky stank, the truck lurched and I was wide awake once more. Oh, great. <laughs> the hinges screamed as the door flew wide open. In tread, Chris, his eyes bugging out of his skull, overly animated off some cheap truck stop speed, and he was practically jabbering the moment that the door flew open, and he hit me with both shotgun barrels as he declared, Bro, I need your help with something, dude, like right now, you gotta get up, come with me right now, I can't wait, man! It's like the opportunity of a lifetime, dude! I wiped the sleep from my eyes and said, Chris, dude, it's like two in the morning, Screw off, dude. I, I need some sleep so I can drive tomorrow. <laughs> That's got to be the hardest part about dealing with Chris. He gets all twacked out and tries to take you on his weird adventure. And you know it's going to be something lame so, or something horrible. <laughs> I don't want to get involved in either. I would rather sleep. And Chris responded, You can sleep when you're dead, dude. This is important. I can't wait. Come on, get your shoes on, bro. Let's go, bro. I swear you won't regret this, dude. J just come with me. To which I repeated, No, Chris, I'm not getting up. Especially until you tell me what the hell all of this is about. Well, he wasn't exactly forthcoming with any new information about the dire situation with which he needed my help at this most pressing of moments and instead said, Yeah, screw it, dude. If you won't get out of bed, then I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, dude. Swear to God, if you go anywhere, I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably gonna be right here. I'm probably gonna be back asleep. <laughs> God, I know it's gonna be another person. Uh, some right business opportunity for honker doggers to partake in? Yeah, forget putting food on the table for your family. You want to invest in... <laughs> Whatever this is. <laughs> Disposable scissors. Never wash another pair of scissors again. Oh, yeah, take my money. <laughs> it's the worst idea ever. I just said, sure, whatever, Chris. And he was running off tweaker time, so I imagine that he would forget whatever mission it was that was so critical that it demanded my attention. And instead, he would just disappear into the night, never to be seen from again, at least until the next morning. <sighs> Wishful thinking that was, when the poopy coom man wants something, he is surprisingly focused. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> As I laid back down once more, the truck lurched again, and the door swung wide. And the poopy coom man came in, jabbering to himself, or perhaps to me, all over again, and he climbed back into the truck. Why? I just want to sleep, why? <laughs> Once more, pulled back from the precipice of dreamland, I wiped the fatigue from my bleary eyes and saw Chris step aside. In climbed a lady of the night, scantily clad, perhaps a little strung out herself, beaming around the cab with a pre-transactional glow. Oh no, dude. <laughs> Do you guys see what's about to happen? <laughs> oh god uh, this is the devil the devil's threesome about to happen right now <laughs> I hate it uh, I sat up straight in my bed and said what the hell is this Chris she needs to go now I'm trying to sleep Chris started up and said, Dude, I need your help. This is Tina, and I totally want to bang the crap out of her, bro. <laughs> I groaned and said, uh, Then just do it, man. But for the love of God, do it somewhere far, far away from me. To which he responded, No, dude, you don't get it. I, I need your help on this one, man. I can't afford her usual rates tonight, but she's got a special for a twofer. <laughs> Uh, oh no! Why would you ever think that this is something I would agree to? 
<laughs> I, I I don't wanna. I don't wanna play anymore. <laughs> I, I need you to bang her with me so I can get the discount. Otherwise, I can't get any action, dude. But she's totally down to do both of us at the same time, bro. You, you can get a blowy while I put it in her butt. <laughs> what the actual f did you just say to me right now? Get out of my sight. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> and then we can high five because I always wanted to do an Eiffel Tower and <laughs> I cut him off with one word. No! <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Whatever made you think that I would Oh. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Admittedly, I would probably never do this even alongside George Clooney, you know, but <laughs> alongside Chris, that would be a new low point for my life. <laughs> I'm just not ready to go there. Oh. Chris started to screech and whine, demanding to know why I would bang his lady of the night alongside him, to which I responded with a series of bullet points. I'm married, you're gross, and I'm not interested. <laughs> he screeched and shouted a little more, declaring that I was a loser and a cock blocker and that this was my fault, and he was broke, and that if I was a man, I'd totally bang that lady of the night right here and now, practically demanding that I strip naked and get busy with her so he could get the discount rate and get his own rocks off. Oh, God, dude. Ugh. <laughs> I hate everything about this. <laughs> and Honka Dockus does the right thing. I knew he would hold strong, of course. But the fact that you would even proposition, that you would even consider that I might try this, you'd have better luck with a stranger, bro. <laughs> Go ask just any rando on the street. I'm not down. I told him to get the hell out of my truck and take his floozy with him. At which point he shouted a barrage of epithets at me, grabbed the uh, lady of the night by the hand and went outside. Me, now further from sleep than I had been in the entirety of my life up to this point in time, got up out of bed and went to the front and grabbed the seat, realizing that sleep was a foregone conclusion. <laughs> I mean, he's done now. He's off sulking. At least just shut your eyes for 30 minutes. You'll pass out. It's going to be fine. I looked at the phone to check the time. It was almost three in the morning. And as I sat there debating, leaving Chris alone in the travel plaza to his own devices and divorcing myself from his presence entirely, I could see him, courtesan in hand, weaving in and out of the rows of trucks that lined the parking lot. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> At first I thought I was hallucinating, but as I came to realize, Chris was not taking no for an answer tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he is out there asking strangers. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't know how you don't have any money, Chris. You live with daddy, don't you? <laughs> You're living rent-free in the heads of thousands of viewers, aren't you? <laughs> I just can't anymore, man. I wonder if anybody's gonna agree. Let's take bets on that. <laughs> Do you think somebody's gonna take a look at Chris and be like, yeah, I'm in it with you, bro. Probably somebody is. <laughs> There's gotta be another trucker out there like Chris. Oh, God. That discount on a menage a trois had absolutely ensorcelled Chris. And he was not about to pass up what equated to the deal of the century in his spun out tiny mind. He was going big rig to big rig, knocking on doors at 3 a.m., <laughs> disturbing the inhabitants inside. And when the doors opened, I could hear some of them shouting through the open windows and and most of it was not present and carried tones of implied violence. 
He had been asking the other drivers if uh, perhaps they wanted to double team this lot lizard alongside him. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, no, thank you for your generous offer. <laughs> this went on and on and on as Chris proceeded to wake up the driver of every truck in the parking lot until eventually one of them, enraged, answered the door with what I could barely make out as a pistol in his hand. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Chris presented his Corey to the surly truck driver and the shouting died down in the lot. He must have been considering the offer. And then, much to my surprise, I saw him step aside to allow both Chris and the toot into the truck cab. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, presumably to do the dirtiest of deeds. I was a little disappointed that Chris didn't get shot. <laughs> but I said, whatever, and headed back to my bed. Oh my god, dude. Uh, this is awful. I've seen some awful things. But I don't know, man. I just can't imagine this. Nor do I want to. As I lay there once more, I finally passed out. And for a while, I was comfortably in dreamland. A million miles away from the waking hell that I regularly occupied. Until, surprise, the truck shivered and shook under the strain of the copious weight of the poopy coo man. And I practically fell out of my bed from how hard the vehicle was shifting around this time. Uh-oh. He's bringing his newfound bro into the cab this time, isn't he? <laughs> An aggressive, spun-out ogre was climbing into the truck, and I felt every lurch as the poor suspension groaned. As I struggled to my feet to compose myself, I saw Chris, now even more strung out than before. Perhaps he had found some more smoke to smoke, and he was gesticulating and shouting with unusually agitated vigor. As I wiped the sleep from my eyes and came back to reality, I was able to pick up on what he was going on about. Hey, come on, honky doggers, he said. We gotta kick some ass. This prick thinks he'll pull a fast one on me. I'll show him. Oh, boy. <laughs> I told him to slow the hell down and tell me what was going on. So apparently, after Chris left the truck and found another trucker to hang out with, as we all knew, and they started smoking dope in his cab, well, when the dope was gone, they got to talking business about how they were going to bang that lot lizard. <laughs> Did he already do it? Is this, is this the second time? Oh, God. <laughs> Chris presented his offer. They could go halves on her two for rate and both get a crack at cooming. The other trucker thought about this magnanimous offer for a moment before he decided that he didn't actually feel like sharing a woman with the poopy coom man. Who could blame him, honestly? And instead he paid her for her solo rate and told Chris to kick rocks. <laughs> uh, honestly, if you're gonna do it, that's the way to go. Honestly, the, the lot lizard's probably happy about it, too. She's like, oh, thank, thank God. <laughs> I thought I was actually going to have to do him. <laughs> Chris left dejectedly until the seething caught up with him halfway through the parking lot, and he stormed back to the truck to recruit me, somebody who wanted nothing to do with this lot lizard business, to come and help him kick that treacherous trucker's ass. I sighed and remarked, dude, you know he has a gun, right? And Chris replied and said, Yeah, I know he's got a pistol, but guns are for wusses. I'm gonna go out there and challenge him to a proper duel. And you're gonna come with me as my second. Nope. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I rolled my eyes and asked him, What makes you think he'll accept that and not just shoot you and me right in the face instead, dude? Chris paused fishing for a response, but nothing ultimately came to his mind. At this point, I told Chris, why don't you just settle down for the night? Deal with the fact that you're not going to get any action and let it lie. Bro, a truck stop toot ain't nothing to get murdered over. I guarantee you there's another one in the next town that you can afford. Just watch. At that remark, something broke inside of Chris. Or broke even more, I guess. He's been broken for a long time, I'm pretty sure. I don't know from whence it came, 
<laughs> but there was some deep, deep poison in this boy's soul. But yeah, Chris goes off. He whinged and whined and said, it wasn't good enough and he was horny right now. And that that prostitute literally was like his dream girl. <laughs> what? He really does have this weird relationship. Calls him his girlfriend and stuff. He gets like super attached. We got to talk to Irish pirate. Get the psychology on what the hell's going on here. <laughs> Imagine that. Our boy Chris crushing on truck stop toots. Good lord. He went to his bunk and began fishing around and pulled out that katana from the Tinder profile picture lore and pulled it from its sheath before locking eyes with me and asking if I had a weapon that I was ready to use. <laughs> uh, ah, dude, I don't really make a habit of that. I guess you go pull out a crowbar, a lug wrench, something like that. No, no, don't do it. <laughs> You're both gonna get shot in the face. I repeated myself to him. I I'm not going out there, dude. Definitely not going out there with a weapon. And if you value your life in the slightest, you will not go out there and bother that dude in his truck again either. To which Chris started to moan and complain and said, oh, Dude, come on, I need your help, man. I can't take him alone. And I know you can fight, dude. Help me. <laughs> I know you could fight. Just because Chris got molly walloped by honker donkers one time. I don't think Chris is that much of a fighter. So yes, on the scale of fighting, honker donkers is above Chris. But where's the, the limit to that? <laughs> What's the ceiling? So finally, our OP says, All right, you really want my help, Chris? I'll help you. I got up from where I sat, walked up to the driver's seat, sat down, put my keys in the ignition, and fired up the engine. Chris asked me, eh, What the hell I thought I was doing? And how turning the truck on was supposed to help him get his dream girl truck stop lot lizard back? And I told him that it wasn't supposed to. I put the thing in gear and drove out of the truck stop as Chris started to howl from the sting of treachery. <laughs> oh yes, how dare you save me from getting shot in the face. Honestly, Chris would have been dead so long ago if Honker Doggers just let nature take its course. This is why Darwinism has failed us. You realize that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sad, you know, a human life and it means something, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm not even going to finish that sentence. We went a couple of miles further that night. Chris whinging at me the whole way about how I was the worst wingman ever and that I should be helping him out when he needed it, not just turning my back on his needs and driving away whenever he needed a hand with something and that it was just one little fight. And why was I being such a wuss about it? I ignored all of it and made our way to a rest area that night. The nice thing about rest areas is that there are generally no hookers or tweakers running around. And as I cut the engine, Chris looked at our new stop in despair. I told him, deal with it. Kicked off my shoes once more and climbed into bed. Honestly, is there a reason that you have to stay at truck stops instead of rest stops? Because every time I was driving, this would be like my new protocol. Okay, Chris, we're weaning you off of your vices slowly but surely. Pretty soon, maybe you'll be close to a normal human if we just keep this up long enough. Chris disappeared into the wee hours of the morning as soon as I cut the engine. What few hours were left of the morning anyways? To try, try! and rustle up some poon or some dope, of which I can tell you, he had no success. And when I found him in the morning, loitering outside of the bathroom stalls, bugging some random passerbys as they went in to relieve themselves, he had a certain desperation about him that only a messed up man with blue balls can channel. <laughs> You're scaring the families. They're here at the rest stop to just take a leak and get back on the road. And you're terrifying them. Have some shame. Have some decency. Hide your face. <laughs> I paused for a second and watched it as he tried to strike up conversations and chuckled as people kept calling him a creep or telling him to kick rocks. 
When I finally did approach after I had my fill of his delicious desperation, I asked him if he was finally ready to leave, and he didn't offer me one word in response, but instead gave me a vicious glare that would petrify anybody if it had come from anyone other than Chris. <laughs> yeah, come at me, bro. And then sullenly, dejectedly, he followed me back into the truck and clambered on in. That's right, I like sullen Chris. Sullen Chris, sad Chris, he causes no problems. He just sits there and soaks like a little baby boy. That's fine, I can deal with that. You think not talking to me is a punishment? <laughs> I love that. And uh, that about concludes our tale for today. Happy 20th to Chris Trucker, everybody. But for now, I must disappear again. Real life is calling. Something, something, appointment with my attorney. But don't you worry, however, because I will be back soon enough. And I promise you that when I return, I will have another story about our favorite catastrophe that we all know as Chris. I gotta say, I do like these two for stories. Him huffing axe, it was like, you know, pretty cringy. <laughs> but then, but then we get the two for, and I just, oh God, it, just saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes my spine fracture a little bit further. I, I can't possibly understand why he would come to you with that, Honker Donkers. What was left on the cutting room floor that would encourage him to bring this proposition to you? <laughs> Is this something that I need to know about? I won't judge you too harshly. Maybe he's just really that lonely and desperate and doesn't have any other friends. That seems like a pretty likely story as well. He didn't know who else to turn to. My co-pilot is a neckbeard number 21. Oh my God, it's official. Everybody take a shot on behalf of Mommy Honker Dockers. This is definitely one of the longest running sagas on the channel. Coming for the crown of old unfortunate Nookie and you love to see it. Honestly, I don't know how I'm gonna put this thing into a compilation, but uh, we will find a way, all right? <laughs> Hey there, Red X gang. Hi, mommy honka donkas. I got myself a bit of time to write, so let's not delay any longer and get into another story about our favorite train wreck, Chris. Indeed. The uninitiated may be wondering, however, who is Chris? Well, Chris is a very fat and sweaty man surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank that follows him wherever he goes. It probably follows you around too, honestly. You've been hanging around him too much. Uh, we need a break from that. Chris and I both work for a trucking company, a major one, and we take turns driving the truck down the road. Things are usually okay when Chris is driving, usually. But when I have to take the wheel, or worse yet, when we have to pull over for the night, that is when the fun begins in earnest. Then Chris is allowed to do Chris things, like indulge in his own personal dark triad of anime, lot lizards, and dope. Chris and I battle it out all the time. I struggle against all hope and poopy coom inertia to try and get Chris to act like a normal human being. But more often than not, these endeavors fall flat on their face. I hate this deleterious pile of human refuse with the burning passion, rivaled only by the sheer mass, heat, and density of the cursed sun that illuminates the dark natures of his evils to the waking world. God! Wow, you are really getting into this one today. <laughs> <laughs> Some stuff is gonna happen. You need to sit down, talk about it. That's okay. That's what I'm here for. The real kicker of it all is that to this very day, I still have to ride with Chris. So, I pulled up to the yard that day and shut off the engine to my dinky little personal vehicle. As I grabbed my backpack, I had prepared for the upcoming trip and climbed out and made my way across the yard. My heart sank. It always sank 
whenever I took that fateful walk away from the last bastion of my comfort and into the mechanical den of debauchery that I occupy just to try and feed myself. <laughs> Again, related to the wages video we did yesterday. I, I feel your pain more than anything. Nobody should have to live like this. You need to get up and out, honk and knockers, please. The truck was already rocking back and forth today, making entirely evident the profane burden that I had to bear that was dwelling deep within. Why is he always early? You think neckbeards would be like super late for stuff. Chris, he's punctual if nothing else. <laughs> Chris had arrived earlier than usual and had gotten himself comfortable in the cab doing God only knows what in that small confined cabin. For a second, I wondered if the vigorous rocking of the truck was from Chris furtively spanking it to tentacles and schoolgirls, and that when I finally did walk inside, there would be that abundant odor of stagnant smeg. <laughs> uh, I would catch the ogre in the midst of his unspeakable acts of pleasure and shame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if it was that, I don't think you would foreshadow it as that. I'm kind of catching on to the game here, you know? All those normal shenanigans, that's what we expect. That's all old hat. It's time for him to bend and break my mind in new and interesting ways. <laughs> I struggled to compose myself as I got closer to our rig. The dull thudding of bass and the rattling of a snare drum creeping out of the metal paneling like so much aura of his that could not be contained by the flimsy fabric of his streaked sweatpants. And I paused for a minute, finding myself entirely surprised. Oh, great. Chris is into drum and bass now. <laughs> Have you ever heard about EDMOP? It's great. Yeah. I'm pretty sure 2010 called, you know? <laughs> Chris never listened to music once in all the time that we rode together. But today, the entire truck rattled with the sounds of mass-produced hip-hop. Oh no, he went Christian for one, now he's going hip-hop for another. I can't handle this no more, dude. <laughs> I open up the door and climbing up the scaffolding and into the cab, I found myself greeted by the sight of Chris, swaggering around, grabbing his crotch, swaying like a rapper, and mumbling some gangster rap songs. Is it at least good rap? Please tell me it's at least good rap. Like 90s rap? That's that's what I'm into. Anything current day, I, I, I can't really get behind it. Sorry, not sorry. As I came inside, I was met with, Yo, what's good, my redacted M-Bob? Yeah, don't, please, no. <laughs> with a very hard and overly exaggerated R. Oh, Chris, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I paused, not returning a reply, pretending that the spectacle before me was not unfolding like it was until I just couldn't contain my curiosity any longer. Chris, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> he remarked that he was getting in touch with his people's roots. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I don't think we've ever addressed Chris's race. Is he actually, is he black? I assumed he was white this entire time. <laughs> Maybe he is. I don't know what's happening. I'm losing my grip on the world. <laughs> and I asked him, what the hell do you mean getting in touch with your roots? He replied that he had taken a DNA test online. Pause. DNA test online. <laughs> uh, oh, no. I don't like it. I don't like it none too much. <laughs> and he just got back his results, which turned out to have 2% African. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I sighed, set my backpack down in its niche, and turned to Chris. I was ready to slap the stupid smile off his face 
for him, like his mama should have done years ago. For that matter, I don't know what race Mommy Honker Donkers is. I kind of just assumed that everybody was white, but... <laughs> I, I I find myself now questioning everything that I once presumed. If you ever saw Chris, it's abundantly obvious that he's about as black as I am, which is to say, not in the slightest of ways at all. Okay, I'm, I'm glad we cleared that up. My mind was running away with me. I was like, I don't know how to feel about this necessarily. <laughs> I've received more eyefuls of his pasty, lily-white booty while he beat off in the back of that truck than I ever care to recount. And I can confirm that there is nothing African about any part of him. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for clarifying. However, Chris had somehow got it in his head that by result of a discount internet DNA test, I examined the paperwork that they sent to him, and the margin of error was much higher than 2%. He was now a Zulu warrior, reincarnated in the flesh, ready to go forth and proclaim the virtues of this newfound birthright of his. Oh, Chris. I guess it wasn't an entirely online test. Maybe he's not that stupid, right? Somebody confirm that for me. You did actually mail your DNA in, right, Chris? You didn't just sit down and do like a BuzzFeed quiz and you're like, yep, 2% African. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know how I feel. This is so weird. I groaned again, knowing full well that this was not going to end well in any capacity. And Chris remarked, yeah, that's about the response I'd expect from a white boy. <laughs> Always hating on us redacted and bobs. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> I hate this. Uh, I'm so uncomfortable on so many levels. Please, can we not do this one? <laughs> <laughs> can a brother practice his culture without being oppressed by the white man? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I said, oh, for God's sakes. You can go practice it somewhere else, Chris. We don't got time for this. We got to drive. Drive as fast as you want, OP. You'll never get away from Chris. He's sitting right back there behind you. You, you can't escape the smell. Chris mumbled, yeah, whatever, <laughs> race. Oh my God, you, what? <laughs> uh, and he jumped into the driver's seat, leaning it back further than usual, trying to figure out how a thug might sit if he drove a semi. Yeah, Chris Drucker knows all about them mean streets, living in his daddy's house. <laughs> Uh, then he fired up the truck and pulled us out of the yard that day, repeatedly slamming on the brakes at quick, even intervals as he backed out to emulate hydraulics as we reversed out of our parking space, <laughs> nearly swiping the tractor trailer next to us. And then he punched the rig into gear proper and took us down the road. <laughs> the hydraulics thing's funny. I do that with my kids sometimes, but yeah, probably not in a tractor trailer that you're driving around for your job. The rap music didn't last long when we hit the highway. It wasn't even good rap music in my opinion. Like, it wasn't Biggie Smalls or nothing. Oh, Honka Donka's a man after my own heart. <laughs> It was that weird mumble rap that everybody listens to these days, and I can't stand it. It's like we're the same person. I don't know how this happens. <laughs> and instead, Chris opted for more traditional Poopy Coom Man fare. He put on his anime podcast instead and shouted, Daddy, back here! As we drove down the road, and I said a small thanks to Jesus that his DNA test didn't come back telling him that he was 2% Japanese instead. <laughs> uh, I hadn't even considered that possibility, but it is far more horrifying, I guess. Small blessings where I can get them, I suppose. Lord only knows what I would have to deal with if Chris had come to work believing that he was from the land of the rising sun. 
Yeah, even 2% like this. <laughs> Come on, dude. That's a drop. I would never in my life base anything on 2%. But as we roared down the highway and the debate raged on over whose waifu exhibited the most pure virginal qualities, I couldn't help but rib Chris a little bit. Today, he was fully convinced that he was black, and yet he sat there indulging in Japanese trappings. And I said, this doesn't seem very black of you, Chris. <laughs> See, that's why I want to pump the brakes and be like, I don't think you get to <laughs> declare who gets to do what based on the color of their skin. No, no, no. It is a bad take, but I mean, I I'm kind of into it because he's using it to needle Chris, which... You know, you love to see that. So, okay, let's just see how it unfolds. <laughs> You're listening to a show about Japanese cartoons. How are you going to get in touch with your true African folk spirit if you don't search for it? To which Chris replied, Dude, black people were the original Japanese. Don't you know that? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, we literally discovered Japan and taught the Japanese everything they know about stuff like Bushido and martial arts and honor. W what? <laughs> uh, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Let let me just say no. No! <laughs> it's not how any of this works. Uh, to which I rolled my eyes. I was about sick of this already, and we were only a couple of hours into the trip, so then I tried to hit him with some reason. Chris, look in the damn mirror, dude. You aren't black. Your freaking Irish is all get out. You're pale. You're covered in freckles. Your results were even within their own declared margin of error by a significant percent, dude. And you're latching on to something that I don't even think is really there. Something that this company, by its own admission, isn't even sure is really there, bro. Chris, my guy, you are not black, dude. <laughs> Has he ever listened to logic before? I've seen you try it many times. It doesn't seem to work. Uh, Chris just replied, yeah, well, well, you're just trying to erase my true people from our history, man. You say I'm Irish, huh? Well, what about the black Irish? <laughs> Let me repeat myself, you idiot. Black Irish. Ever hear of them, dig dog? Ireland is rightfully African clay. Egyptians, you're welcome. Bathing? I laughed hard at this one. <laughs> Yeah, that too. <laughs> oh, bathing. That thing that you never ever do, Chris. Yeah, I sure am grateful for that. <laughs> uh, it seems like a bridge too far, doesn't it? I, <laughs> I don't even really know how to process this. It hurt my soul, but I let the subject lay because let's be honest, you will never convince a neckbeard with any sort of evidence, or reason, or logic. <sighs> no, it was hopeless. Chris, now desperately latching on to what I can only surmise as an error within the context of the test that he took, wanted to believe that that now defined him in his entirety. And he had also dedicated himself to using it as a claim to which he could expand every other facet of human existence on this planet. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's the cradle of civilization or some such. But no, no, I'm not lending him any credence. He's... <laughs> I don't like any of this at all. The hours whittled by as we drove. Me doing my best to ignore the existence of this deluded tub of lard beside me. And when the shift change finally occurred at some dumpy little Arizona travel plaza, I took the controls and it was my turn to pull us down the road. All right, here come the shenanigans. <laughs> Chris put on rap music for the rest of the drive, singing along with much gusto especially every time an N-bomb got dropped, wherein he made sure not to miss interjecting the hardest R that he could muster. 
he, he's gonna get beat up at some point, isn't he? <laughs> this is not going to turn out well. Part of me wondered if the whole purpose of this being black LARP wasn't so he could just pretend that he had a free pass to say such things as he pleased, something which would not surprise me in the slightest. I was about ready to slap him, but I said, you know what? Let's wait. Yeah, somebody else is gonna slap him for you. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> On a long enough timeline. We'll just see how this whole ordeal plays out. Well, those six hours passed, and finally, with the night coming to a close, we pulled over at a travel plaza somewhere on the eastern end of the state. The sun was going down that evening, and as we pulled in, Chris remarked uh, that he was gonna go and take a shower, because the desert had gotten him all gross and sweaty. Yeah, no kidding. Implying that you weren't gross and sweaty when you woke up this morning? <laughs> Uh, I have to wonder if he has ever actually showered. That's not what he does in there, right? We've established that. Now I'm questioning everything that I ever knew about this series. <laughs> I couldn't hold back when I asked him if beating off in a shower stall was some cultural artifact that belonged to his proud people's tradition. He looked at me incredulously, called me a racist and then slammed the door behind me as he waddled his bloated ass out into the lot. Presumably to go and get some poo and dope after a nice long spank it session in the truck stop shower stalls. Now, I couldn't tell you what possessed me that night. I went to lay down, but I couldn't sleep. I just laid there, wide awake in my bed for a bit, tossing and turning and waiting for sweet darkness to overtake me. But it never did. Maybe my curiosity of what problems Chris was stirring up had kept me awake, and I couldn't resist the allure of seeing the poopy coo man desperately embrace a 2% DNA test error. Maybe I was so agitated having to listen to his LARP all day that sleep was just a foregone conclusion as I grappled with the cognitive dissonance created by a clearly non-African man LARPing as an African man. <laughs> Let him believe. It's fine. He's gonna learn his lesson soon enough. Not my circus. Not my clown. <laughs> All I knew was that I simply could not just sit idly by and go to sleep like I had planned on doing. I had to go out into the truck stop and find the Pooby Coom man himself. I had to see what sort of hell he was raising with his recently acquired race card. I pushed the covers aside, laced up my shoes, and stepped out into the cool night air. Greeted by the rushing wind and the roaring of the engines and the hallucinatory pulsing of drums somewhere far off in that concrete jungle. Jesus, what is this dude? Uh, this is showing like a, a pretty different side. I'm, I'm so uncomfortable right now. I don't think you understand. It's like on multiple levels. <laughs> I hate it. Uh, I clambered down the scaffold and my feet touched the pavement. And as I shut the door behind me, I stepped out into the travel plaza. It was late, perhaps pushing past midnight by my reckoning. And the world had long gone to sleep. Very little seemed to be going on, and I took a stroll around the property, trying to unwind, but also quite curious as to what Chris had gotten up to. I knew I would find him somewhere along the forgotten souls that roam these haunted highways and byways at night, and if truth were to be told, it truly didn't take very long. How big is a travel plaza, after all? <laughs> as I rounded a corner to the side of the travel plaza, I could see him, leaning against the wall, his back turned to me, entirely unaware of my presence, lurking around the bend. He stood there, chatting it up with what I could only assume was a lady of the night, doing his best to be sultry and seductive with her. Chris, you really don't have to do that, just, just hand the money over, bro. <laughs> I dipped back into the shadows and strained my ears to try and catch snippets of their conversation above the ambient roar of the engines, wondering what juicy, cringe-laden morsels I could procure for my own personal amusement. 
It wasn't every day that I was so privileged to catch the mating rituals of the wild beard in person, let alone with the added LARP of foreign cultures, and yet here I stood, granted just that very thing this fine Arizona evening. Yeah, this, this isn't gonna go well, is it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm gonna hate it on, on completely new levels. I could hear Chris's throaty, whinging voice just fine as he spoke to this poor girl, asking her uh, what she was looking to do today. She murmured some reply and let out a giggle that I could not for the life of me discern, though I assumed transactionally flirtatious, and Chris responded at the same obnoxiously loud volume that he always did, remarking that uh, we could make that happen. What do you think? Wanting in a hotel room with me? You know I'm that Ed Bob with the gorilla sausage. <laughs> uh, oh, Chris. No, not like this. Uh, I hate it. Thanks so much. I hate every single thing about what you just said. Hopefully you get slapped in the face. Another reply was spoken, which I couldn't make out, and I figured that Chris would agree to the offer presented to him and whisk her away to motel hell to do the nasty, but I was caught off guard when I could hear his retort over the idling engines at the Diesel Island, laden with protest and perhaps even a subtle threat of extortion hidden within. Whoa, you're kidding, right? That's way too much. Oh, see, I don't know how he's living in daddy's house and still doesn't have money for his vices. <laughs> An episode for another day, I guess. The toot replied something else that I couldn't hear, her body language conveying some degree of exasperation, and Chris started right up with that ace up his sleeve that I'm sure he had been preparing to use all night. You're kidding, right? First, your people forced my people to toil for you for centuries. And now you expect me to pay that for a night with you? You owe me some damn reparations, sweetheart. Oh my god, I hate this episode. This is the worst episode. Uh, it's gotten me real deep, man. I'm very uncomfortable with everything that's happening. Here's how it's gonna work. You're buying the hotel room, and, and this one's on the house. <laughs> oh, God! Uh, please, no more. I was dying inside. Well, good. <laughs> You're in good company there. As I heard that poor little lot lizard speak up for the first time that night and say, I can't do that. To which Chris continued to berate her, asking her why she refused to hook a brother up like that, and if she was a racist. <laughs> uh, just any foothold he could grab. He did the exact same thing with Christianity. I don't know why I'm, I'm surprised, but this one cuts me just a little bit deeper than the other. She stammered a bit and then offered that maybe Chris could go and meet her pimp and they could negotiate a price after all. I could hear her as she spoke with increased volume and agitation in regards to this subject. That sly girl. <laughs> Remarking that he was one of Chris's brothers and that they would most assuredly find some common ground between them. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, you see where this is going, right? I could see the gears turning in Chris's mind, and I knew that he would most assuredly agree to this proposition. <sighs> Suckers. They are born every minute. <laughs> Some much larger than others. Oh, Lord forgive me, for I should not have intervened. Darwin, next time I'll just let natural selection take its course. But still, I had a pang of conscience and... That's about the time that I couldn't hold myself any longer, and I popped around the corner, and I said, Chris, what are you doing, man? <laughs> uh, oh, hawk dog is always out here to save Chris from himself. I don't get it, but I do sort of encourage it, because really, if, if Chris is just gone off this planet, that's the end of the saga. 
And that would be like the darkest end to this saga ever, ever. <laughs> Chris looked like a toddler who was caught with his hand in the cookie jar as I pressed him and I told him, you should leave that poor working girl alone, dude, and just go to bed for the night. This ain't worth it, my guy. Chris looked at me incredulously, remarking, I always try to keep a brother down. <laughs> uh, and then he turned back to the toot and said that he'd gladly go and meet her pimp to discuss business. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> he flipped me off as he waddled away with the toot in tow to go and inevitably meet with disaster. And I wondered if Chris would be leaving this travel plaza tonight in an ambulance bound for the morgue. I shrugged. Good advice is often ignored around these parts as it was, and I decided to ramble back to the truck. I mean, yeah, you can't save him from himself. You did what you could, but I do think this is going to require another trip to the hospital. <laughs> I climbed up the scaffolding and in through the door, and I shut it behind me, my eyes starting to feel heavy, and my bed calling my name in earnest. I kicked off my shoes, got comfy in bed, and wondered how long it would be before I heard either ambulance sirens approaching to take the poopy coom man away, or the frantic lurching of the truck as Chris staggered inside, running from an angry pimp whose ire he had provoked in fantastic ways. I don't think Chris is fast enough to outrun anybody. <laughs> it's like an elephant seal just hobbling across the parking lot. It didn't take very long for my question to be answered, and as I lay there teetering on the brink of sleep, at first I heard it, but not in the form of the lurching that I had come to so regularly anticipate. No, I heard shouting coming from the far end of the lot, and I sat up in bed and looked out the windshield to see Chris desperately waddling towards the big rig as fast as his stubby little legs could carry him as a very angry pimp chased after him. <laughs> Hot on his heels, yelling for him to get his fat ass back here this instant so he could beat it. <laughs> oh god, dude. Uh, I, I hate this. You saw it coming? Part of me wishes that he just got the ambulance ride. Now you're dragging trouble to my doorstep, Chris. Ugh. The truck then lurched, and I could hear Chris clambering up the side. I can't tell you what possessed me, but... I got up from where I sat, went over to the door, and held the lock closed. <laughs> As he desperately pulled at the handle. I did not want that dude coming in here. Seeing that I was with Chris, and then taking his anger out on both of us. Especially after Chris probably provoked his ire by dropping multiple hard R N-bombs as he LARPed as a black dude. No, this was one that Chris would have to learn the hard way. <laughs> because I wasn't in the mood to get dragged into it tonight. And I certainly wasn't going to be the one to protect him from his own hubris. <laughs> I mean, it's cold-blooded, but something needs to happen. Something's got to give. God, dude. Uh, it's too ridiculous. As I looked out the windshield, I saw the pimp approaching the truck. And I could hear Chris shouting for help. Hunter knockers! My redacted! The door's stuck! You gotta open it up! Help me! <laughs> uh, no, not today. I tried to help you when I told you not to go, but you didn't want to listen to that, did you? I do admit that I felt kind of bad about it. The poor fool hadn't even pieced together the treachery that was unfolding inside, authored by none other than myself, nor did he realize the inevitability of the beating that was coming his way from the outside by way of an infuriated truck stop pimp. <laughs> it didn't take long for the sound of Chris's impotent screeching to overtake his efforts to try and open up the truck, and I relaxed as I peeked out the window to watch Chris tumble down on his ass against the pavement and get smacked with somebody's pimp hand repeatedly upside the head. I mean, honestly, it, it could have ended a lot worse, all right? <laughs> when at last the beating subsided 
And this leisurely gentleman decided that Chris had had enough. He gave Chris one last swift, hard kick to his bloated gut and then wandered off into the night, perhaps to go rejoin his toots and see what money they had earned for the evening. <laughs> Just be glad he didn't get stabbed or something like that. This could have gone a very different way. It was about that time that I opened the door and crawled out of the cab, cautiously peering around for any pimps that might have second thoughts about leaving Chris alive at all. And when I got down to the pavement where Chris lay, mangled and bleeding, I asked him, you all right, bro? <laughs> uh, what do you think? He didn't reply at first, until he stammered through a bloody mouth. I, I tried to get you, but, but the door w was stuck and... I lied through my teeth and said, yeah, I heard all that. I tried to come out and help you, man, but I swear the door wouldn't budge. Do you need a hospital, dude? <laughs> Uh, God, that is cold-blooded. Again, but but some lessons need to be learned the hard way. That's just how it be. Do you think he learned anything? Because I don't. <laughs> he declared that he was fine, that he had had worse, and that he was going to go clean up. <laughs> Hopefully, this time, he meant legitimately clean up because he was bleeding pretty good after Slickback had his way with him. I shrugged as he waddled off towards the travel plaza to go wash off his newly acquired wounds, and I wondered if he would ever try to extort a toot for reparations by LARPing as a member of another race ever again. I don't know, man. <laughs> don't put too much past Chris. That boy just does not learn. Then I returned to sleep, imagining that after the beatdown Chris had so unceremoniously received, he would mostly behave himself, and that there was very little reason for me to worry about him any further. All was right in the world, it seems, and I escaped into dreamland while the Poopy Coon Man actually did wash up. When he came back to the truck that morning, his face bruised and swollen, he climbed inside, clutching a cup of coffee while I warmed up the engine, and he asked me if we were ready to leave. By all measure, I had been ready to go for the last hour, but had been merely waiting for Chris to rematerialize, and I informed him of such. He got comfortable in the passenger seat and passed out there, probably exhausted from that night's shenanigans, his injuries, and running across the parking lot. <laughs> he only woke up later that day to eventually take the wheel and continue taking us down the road. Somewhere during that drive, Chris spoke up and said to me, you know what, Hacker Knockers? You're probably right, man. I don't think that test was accurate when it said I was black. <laughs> what? Uh, I murmured, gee, do you think so? You were well within their margin of error. And to latch onto something that is so statistically small, let alone statistically improbable, seems kind of dumb, dude. Just stick with who you are, man, and work with that, or work on it. Maybe both. Whatever. So, are you gonna stop this LARP or what? <laughs> Chris thought about these deep words of wisdom for a minute before he said, You know what, dude? You're right. I'll stop pretending I'm something I'm not. I'll focus on what I am instead. <laughs> Clumsily, he fished out the results of his discount DNA test from his pocket and looked at them for a moment before turning to me. Uh, did you know that I'm 7% Navajo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Uh, and that's when like you roll credits and have like the canned laughter. <laughs> oh, Chris, you'll never change. <laughs> Uh, he seriously won't, and uh, <laughs> I just love that so much. Uh, I groaned as the sign declaring the state border to New Mexico passed us by, and I told him that he had better stop while he was ahead. <laughs> and that about wraps up our story about Chris for today. Sorry if this one's a bit later than usual. You know how life could be hectic sometimes, and as of late, it has... Certainly been that. Oh, preaching to the choir, friend. 
Rest assured, however, that I have not forgotten about you, nor forgotten about the Poopy Coo Man. God, why can I not forget about the Poopy Coo Man? <laughs> and that more stories about Chris will most certainly come your way. We have a long way to go yet before this tale is over. Until next time. Are we going to get the Navajo story or does he actually quit while he's at <laughs> Uh, I don't know if that part's true or just thrown in there to like amp it up or what, but it totally worked. I, I lost myself at that. <laughs> Chris Trucker taking yet another pimply beat down and I, I, I just saw this one coming from a mile out. There was no surprise here and somehow it was still exceedingly entertaining to me. How do you do that, Honka Doggers? What's the secret sauce? What's the magic in your magic mix? <laughs> My co-pilot is a neckbeard, number 22. 22, oh, ain't it nice? And it never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle, honestly. I, I still think this needs to be compiled into a book or something like that. Hey there, Red X gang! Hi, yes, the mommy Hakadakas! It looks like I finally got a little bit more time to write, so let's not delay any longer, and we will get into another story about Chris. Yay! For the uninitiated, though, you might be wondering, just who is Chris? Well, we got a whole playlist, 21 other videos if you want some more shenanigans, but we'll give you the long and short of it. Chris is a very fat and sweaty man, and his approach is heralded wherever he goes by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. Chris and I work for a trucking company, a major one, and we take turns driving the big rig down the road. Things are usually okay when Chris is sitting behind the wheel, usually, and sometimes they remain okay, even when I'm driving, but when we pull over for the night, yeah, that's when the fun really begins. Then, Chris is free to do all the Chris things that he loves, often revolving around his own personal dark triad of lot lizards, amphetamines, and anime. I struggle with Chris regularly as I try to make him stop doing all of those cursed things that he does, as I try to make him act like a normal, regular human being, but this beast is highly resistant to change, and more often than not, my efforts to reform this loathsome creature result in agonizing failure. And the real kicker about it all is that to this day, I still have to ride with Chris. You know, now that I've seen it written down there in black and white, it kind of makes me realize why I love this series so much. It's like a Mr. Magoo cartoon every single time. Chris stumbles around, gets himself into trouble, and Honker Donkers ends up getting the rough end of that almost every time. Sometimes Chris gets his comeuppance. I guess we'll have to see what happens in today's episode. So I got to the yard that morning before Chris did. Wow, there's a shocker. And I settled into the cab filling out our paperwork and wondering what sort of hell on earth would precipitate about me today. As I completed the checklist, I looked up through the windshield and I realized something. I hadn't actually arrived before Chris. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's always there. I don't think he ever leaves the truck, honestly. No, Chris was sitting in his personal vehicle at the other end of the lot, just staring into space. Hmm, what sort of wicked machinations is his mind getting up to today, huh? I watched him for a bit, wondering how long he had been there, and the whole time, he did not even budge. He seemed catatonic. A thousand mile stare looked at nothing in particular, and just cast his gaze over the big rigs, and I wondered if today Chris might have actually shown up to work high as a kite. I glanced at the time on my phone and realized that it was getting about time to leave, so I laid on the horn. <laughs> yeah, Chris is having a rough day, isn't he? The Poopy Coom Man, however, did not react to the horn in the slightest. Wherever he was, he certainly wasn't here mentally today, and I wondered what he had taken before work. 
Maybe he's getting into opiates or something like that. This this could be real bad. I realized then that I had to go and rustle him up myself, begrudging the fact that I couldn't just leave without Chris. I climbed down from the truck and walked across the lot towards Chris's vehicle, a nondescript white van with a slight tint to the windows. Oh no. <laughs> uh, I don't like that. Why Chris driving around in a windowless van for, huh? <laughs> Does it say free candy on the sides? <laughs> the whole time, he seemed oblivious to my approach, despite the deliberate fuss that I made as I came near. It took me getting close to that vehicle and tapping on the glass for him to snap back to reality. And he rolled the window down and asked me, hey, What's up? In the most dejected and forlorn voice that I ever heard coming from him. Yeah, he's, he's having a bad day, all right. But you gotta break him down before you start to build him up, you know what I'm saying? So maybe this is like the dawning of a new era or something. Well, who am I kidding? That's not. <laughs> None of that's ever gonna happen. Uh, I said, dude, it's time to ride. Are you coming or what? What's going on with you, man? Are you high or something? He let out a long and whining, No! <laughs> before he rolled up the window and then took his sweet time exiting his car. When that door opened, I was blasted with the concentrated aroma that had long since soaked into the upholstery of the vehicle, and I recoiled as he climbed outside. And if I hadn't seen his room a couple episodes ago, I would just assume that he lives in the van 24-7, but no, he just kind of stinks up everything he touches. King Shitus, as somebody said in the comments section. <laughs> uh, the King Midas of poop! <laughs> we moved across the lot and got to the truck, and I climbed inside. Chris, dejectedly, lethargically, climbed on in as well. And as I moved for the passenger seat, knowing full well that Chris would complain if I tried to take us out of the yard, I heard him remark, Hey, hawker knockers, uh, could you, could you take the first shift today, man? I, I just kind of want to lay down, dude. I said, sure, whatever. As he clambered towards the back, I told him, don't you dare think about rubbing one out back there. And he didn't respond. And he turned to me a pained expression on his face. Then he grabbed the curtain for the first time in his life and slid it shut. Something was wrong. What that something was, however, I didn't really care. Today, I would get to drive the truck in silence without having to deal with the presence of the poopy coom man beside me. Yeah, I guess some gifts and such. One of these not my circus, not my monkeys types of situations. You're just like, okay, I, I hope you get it figured out, maybe, eventually. Uh, it was safe to say that whatever had him in a funk would keep him out of my hair for at least some time. I punched the truck into gear and took us out of the yard as I heard the muffled murmurings of an anime podcast came through the closed curtain behind me, along with the sullen mumblings of Naughty Baka. <laughs> Not once during that eight hour shift did Chris come up to the front of the cab to hang out and try to talk to me. He was entirely absent. And truth be told, it was the most pleasant shift I have had working with that company in a very, very long time. And I wondered to myself why Chris couldn't be downtrodden and depressed every day of his life, as he no doubt should be. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's cold-blooded, but yeah, if it's gotta be me or you, I'm gonna pick me every time. And as that long drive finally concluded, somewhere in Nevada that fine day, I pulled over at a travel plaza. I told Chris, hey dude, it's your turn to take the wheel. I heard him groan, as if the prospect of him having to do his job was the most agonizing thing in the world to him at that moment in time. And I repeated myself sternly, dude, you need to drive this damn truck. Get over here and take the wheel. The bed spring squeaked, as he dismounted from his bunk, and the curtain slid back, revealing the poopy coom man. His eyes were red, and his cheeks were glistening with moisture, 
and I realized that while I drove the truck today, he had been hiding away in the back of the cab, crying his fat little eyes out. I was beginning to get weirded out. Chris, usually oblivious to the sufferings of his life today, felt all its slings and arrows all too poignantly, and I momentarily wondered what had happened to him that had put him in such a seemingly dark spot. Yeah, it seems like Chris has been through everything, hell and back. So what indeed could finally be the realization that shakes him awake? I don't even have a good guess, honestly. Then I reminded myself that I didn't actually care. <laughs> and whatever that revolting Tubelard was going through, well, he probably, one, brought it on himself, and two, absolutely deserved it. Well, Chris wiped his tears, climbed into the pilot seat, punched the truck into gear and took us out of the travel plaza and further down the road. I did my best to pretend that he didn't exist at all as I sat in the passenger seat, playing around on my phone between bouts of my own staring out the window, interrupted solely by the solemn cries of incredulity that were solicited from the podcast that he watched. That's one thing we know, no matter how bad he feels, nothing can stop the nanny baka. <laughs> I could get used to it, to be honest, and I'm sad that it didn't last because somewhere around the middle of Chris's shift, the podcast that he was watching came to an end. And rather than ritualistically starting up another episode, as he always did, instead he took a deep breath and let the silence linger. I looked up from the window and felt a chill roll down my spine as I said to myself, Oh boy... Here we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of an inevitability, I, I think. Honker Donkers, he seems to be like some sort of role model for Chris, or maybe like Chris's only actual quote-unquote friend. So yeah, of course he's going to start the trauma dumping, which I can't even feel that bad about because Chris has created plenty of trauma on his own, right? <laughs> then Chris hit me with a question. Hey, Honker Donkers, uh, can I talk to you? I wasted no time replying with a stern, no. <laughs> uh, at least the correct response, a little cold-blooded, but uh, honestly, I really don't want to get involved. I fully expected him to just obliviously ignore my response, but rather than blabber at me, despite my obvious disinterest, he just mumbled, uh, okay and went back to driving. And I must admit that this change in behavior, despite my stated disinterest, had now instead piqued my curiosity. Yeah, that is, that is weird. He's acting human today. Is this like invasion of the body snatchers? Something's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> Respecting boundaries, what are you doing? Something was definitely bugging the poopy coom man, and rather than allow him to gift me that revelation, I shut it down, and the ride continued in silence. I mean, I didn't want to know, but by God, I did really want to know, all at the same time. <laughs> he made no efforts to speak to me further during his shift, and the truck rolled along in silence, punctuated only by the sounds of the game that I played as we drove along, and it was actually kind of nice. Then, when Chris had driven his allotted time for that day, and finally found us a place to pull over, he got up from the driver's seat, let out a long and winded sigh, and I said, thank God he's out of my hair for the night. Chris, however, made no motion to leave the cab. Instead, he just murmured, I'm gonna go to bed. I'll, I'll see you in the morning. And he made his way back to the bunks once more. What is happening right now? <laughs> uh, you're really not in the mood to go out there and do Chris things? You, you Chris, though. It's, it's what you do. And I need this alone time. <laughs> Please. Uh, alarm bells were seriously ringing in my head at this point. I expected Chris to jump with joy at the prospect of beating off in a truck stop shower or finding a lot lizard and a bag of dope, but uh, none of that seemed to allure the poopy coom man today. Nope, he just got up from where he sat, went back to his bunk, trudging along slowly in abject misery, 
He climbed into his bunk with a heavy, pained groan and laid down. And for a second time, I waited for the squeaking symphony of bed springs to begin their sordid tune, but it never came. What did come were heavy gasps that bordered on sobs, and I paused my game, got up from where I sat, and turned around to see what the poopy coom man might be doing back there. He had buried himself face first into his crusty coom pillows and was stifling back wails. Oh man, he's, he's almost human, isn't he? I knew it was coming. I was prepared for this revelation, but I didn't expect to actually feel bad for him after what he has put so many people and animals through. But somehow, yes, I do feel slightly bad. Damn my human heart. <laughs> <sighs> uh, I put my phone down, got up, and moved back to where Chris wept, barely making a sound. It all felt so surreal. And then, cautiously, I asked him, Hey, big guy, are you alright? The dam burst at the prodding of those simple words, and the sobs of the tragic fat man flooded the cab, near deafening in their exuberance. And I said, all right, all right, calm down, damn it. Just tell me what's going on. He took in a loud gasp and then started to ramble at me with a feverish intensity bordering delirium as he explained to me the plight that had come to pass upon the poor poopy coom man. It seemed that over the last couple of weeks, Chris had fired up his dating profiles once again. After some time trawling around the internet in quest of a mate, he had found a match and they had gotten together for the evening, hopped on the good foot and did the nasty thing, and now, a couple weeks after the fact, Chris had been hit with the biggest alleged bombshell of his life. The poopy coom man had gotten someone pregnant. Oh no. That's what I thought happened in the last episode, right? <laughs> I was talking about DNA tests and whatnot, now we gotta get a DNA test for real. I can understand being slightly upset about it. I mean, Chris Trucker having offspring, that's a horrifying thought. <laughs> but on the other hand, like, these are the consequences of your own actions. How can you be that surprised? And just like that, my sympathy for him evaporates. <laughs> my soul died a little bit that day. While new life is generally something to be celebrated, not like this. Not like this. <laughs> if there is a single person on this planet not fit to take care of another sentient being, then that person is Chris. And likewise, anybody foolish enough to voluntarily lay with the poopy coo man, ugh. But lo and behold, now here we stood on the precipice of something awful. A newborn soul coming into this world sired by nothing more heinous than my co-pilot Chris and his anonymous Tinder date. I would have cried too, but not for Chris. <laughs> yeah, it does make me die a little bit inside, but you know what? Maybe it'll help him finally get his act together. That's not true, that's not a good take. <laughs> Don't sacrifice a child in the hopes that he might learn something from it. It's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. Chris wiped away his tears, stammering out, I don't know what I'm gonna do, man, before breaking down once more into full-fledged wailing and gnashing of teeth. And between his desperate sobs, he declared that he couldn't take care of a child accurate <laughs> that he was ready for this accurate and that he didn't know what to do yes also accurate i didn't try to calm him there's no point when somebody is in the middle of a bout of histrionics i just let that sack of refuse weep into his pillow for a good 10 minutes before he finally calmed down of his own accord and then when finally he had come down enough to be able to speak straight, I asked him the question in the room that needed to be addressed. So, Chris, what are you going to do about it? 
Chris knitted his brow before wailing, What can I even do? And I said, Good. Now you're thinking proactively. What can you do? God, I love this. You can tell Honka Donkers has raised kids before, right? <laughs> I was trying to prompt him into some productive line of thought. Maybe to like, I don't know, realize that his lifestyle was entirely aberrant and that if he had a spine, he would man up, clean up, and get his shit in order and take responsibility for his mistakes for once in his life. A long shot in hell though that might be. <laughs> like I said, maybe, maybe this could be the turning point, but I really doubt it, dude. And if it's not the turning point, definitely don't subject a kid to this. Jesus. If he couldn't do all that, maybe he should just consider putting the child up for adoption and let this be a lesson to him that he shouldn't have unprotected boom boom with strangers if he's not ready to grapple with the consequences. Duh. <laughs> well, Chris's mind didn't go there at all. He struggled for a minute before coming to terms with the only solution that he perceived as viable to the conundrum at hand, abortion. Oh, Chris, see, he just wants to get it done easy, quick, fast, in a hurry. While part of me wants to say I'm for it, the other part of me is like, yeah, that's a, that is a very Chris solution, is it not? And Honker Donker says, theologically, I have huge issues with this, being a Christian. Let the kid go to adoption. Find someone willing to raise it, but killing unborn life for me is a line that shouldn't be crossed. Particularly when such a process is treated so casually, like regular contraception. Should the circumstances around a birth be unconsensual or particularly co-sanguinous or life-threatening to the mother, then okay, yeah, I can understand that. But as a way to rectify your mistakes, because you're too stupid to use a rubber? It just feels wrong to me. All right, all right, good soapboxing. <laughs> My theological misgivings, however, were offset by the realities of natural selection as well. Did the world really need a baby Chris Trucker? <laughs> Even if that child were raised in a household apart from its odious father and dubious mother, would not nature still find and exude some prevalent sway over its maturation, despite the nurture lovingly provided by hypothetically competent parents? <sighs> Maybe killing the damn thing in the womb would be best for not only that poor, ill-conceived child in the throes of their sweaty ham-beast passion, but also for the entire world. God have mercy on us all! Honestly, maybe this is God's way of showing mercy, you know? <laughs> he just looked away for a second, and then Chris got into something he shouldn't have got into, and oh, now this situation needs to be re rectified, or something like that. I don't know. Whatever makes you feel better. Who cares? <laughs> he grappled in the darkness for his phone, murmuring about how he was gonna make her abort that parasite. At which point I told him to slow his roll. I said, Chris, you can't force people to do things, man. You can suggest it, sure, but ultimately whether your hookup decides to abort or not is on her. What are you gonna do if she says no and decides to keep it? You gotta prepare for that contingency, man. Oh, fingers crossed, please don't keep it, please don't keep it. <laughs> I regretted those words as Chris asserted that by God she'd abort that child if it was the last thing that he ever held sway over in his life. And then I pictured Chris attacking some poor woman's vajay with a clothes hanger and a shop vac. <laughs> God. Uh, and then I paused and asked Chris, perhaps in hopes to sway him from playing back alley doctor, are you really even sure that you got her pregnant? Have you seen the test? There's no need to jump the gun yet. Chris paused for a moment and murmured, Well, no, I, I haven't, but she sent me pics, and I think she's showing a baby bump. At a couple weeks, huh? Real freaking doubtful. <laughs> uh, 
I told him to show me the pictures. And he browsed through his phone before saying, Here! And passing the device to me. By the faint glow of the screen, I could make out the creature with which Chris had given the mating press. And I chuckled. <laughs> yeah, she was a big girl, all right. She had enough pounds on her to where she could probably carry a baby to term before showing any visible signs of being with child at all. Oh dang, that's a real big girl. <laughs> Frantically, he pointed to her bulging belly and said, Bro, if that isn't a baby bump, I don't know what is. <laughs> You're really dumb, ain't you, Chris? <laughs> and I said, You're right, Chris. You don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, I chuckled, threw the phone back at him, and said, Chris, my guy, women don't show that they're pregnant for like four months after conception, and you haven't seen the results of any pregnancy test, dude. You get the results of that test before you start freaking out, man. All this is way too premature to even start getting scared about. Honestly, solid advice. Once again, honker donkers, surrogate parent to Chris, the child that he never ever wanted. <laughs> Chris thought about it for a second, almost letting himself get swayed by reason before he said, No, dude, I can't wait. If I wait that long, she'll have to have the kid. And she said herself, she's too broke to afford a test. <laughs> and I replied, dude, they're like 10 bucks at the drugstore. Just send her 10 bucks and tell her to pick one up and send you the results. Chris thought about it for a minute before saying, Bro, don't those tests come out wrong sometimes? Bro, I, I let my load inside of her. Of course I knocked her up. I don't know, dude. I'm just going to make her go to the doctor and get an abortion. Yeah, definitely drop a, a hundred bucks instead of the ten dollars. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> you really think your seed is all that powerful, Chris? I highly doubt it, especially with the endless flow of dope that's going through your system. Forget it, you're basically infertile, I'm pretty sure. I slapped my head, wondering how he couldn't piece together the fact that there would be none of that if there was nothing in her womb to begin with. Whatever. I threw my hands up in the air and said, Chris, at this point, I don't know what to tell you, dude. It's your problem, not mine. Tried to offer you guidance, and you won't hear any of it, so good luck, man. Chris replied, <laughs> Yeah, well, your guidance is dumb, and you sound like a virgin. Nah, we're just gonna abort that kid, and that'll be the end of this nightmare. <laughs> uh... No, no, this is only chapter 22 in my recurring nightmare. <laughs> but good, I'm glad it's over for you, I guess. This complete non-issue that's getting made up. She's like, yeah, just send me a couple hundred bucks and I'll do it myself. And he's like, oh, good. I sure got away with something there. <laughs> uh, this is horrible. Again, I, I have extreme doubts that there's any baby at all. I suppose I can't say that I wanted to protest against that prospect. My Christian side told me that I should talk to him about why he shouldn't do that and explore alternative options, but my Darwinian side said that this is how it should be, and that so long as Chris never actually bred, let alone had custody of his own spawn, the world would be a better place for it. Let it be. I laid down in my bunk for the night with a good book as I heard Chris furtively tap, tap, tapping away on his screen above me, presumably talking to his honey boo-boo about what to do with this possibly non-existent child that allegedly had taken up residence in her belly. As I finished up my chapter, I heard Chris murmur, Oh, sweet Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Jesus had nothing to do with this, bro. <laughs> Uh, I say again, nothing to do with this. I set my book down, and out of curiosity, I spoke to the ecstatic tub of lard above me. What happened? Chris replied, eh, She's willing to get an abortion, dude. 
just to make sure, but since she doesn't have insurance, I'm gonna help her cover the cost. Uh, I just sent her the money. Bro. <laughs> uh, how, how could I have known? I said, oh, and how much money was that? <laughs> <laughs> and Chris replied, 1,000. Whoa, dude. <laughs> uh, is that not like super excessive or something? Google says that's about right, if not a bit on the high end. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't say that I felt bad for Chris. I told him what he should have done, but if getting taken for a ride to the sum of a cool grand made Chris feel better about cooming inside of that woman, then I wasn't going to try and burst his bubble. Truth be told, it's the smallest of prices that he should pay to that poor woman for traumatizing her with his unwashed loins. I mean, it was, it was consensual. <laughs> I said, well, that's that then, huh, bud? Chris, however, was now exuberant. He shot out of bed, shouting, yes, yes, over and over at the idea of a fetal death, romping around the cab like a bull in a china shop. The revelry didn't subside for a while, as he excitedly jabbered at me about how this was all going to work out, and he wouldn't have to give up anything he cared about to raise some stupid kid, and he could keep hooking up with random chicks he met online. Uh oh yeah, <laughs> definitely the way towards a fulfilling life, Chris. <laughs> uh, I asked him, so what did we learn here today? I was expecting something about, I don't know, wrapping your tool before you go to drill, or that maybe unprotected intercourse with random strangers he met on the internet wasn't the wisest course of action if he wasn't ready to have a kid, but yeah, I probably expected too much of him. He entirely disregarded the question and continued to rampage around the cab. And then he turned to me, expectantly, perhaps thinking that I was going to voice some gushing approval over the fact that he was now off the hook for any responsibility. I can't even muster the energy to pretend to care. Good for you. <laughs> Get out of my face. Disappear into the night and do Chris things so I could get some sleep, how about? I apathetically mumbled, Oh, Chris, I'm so happy for you, bro. G great job. And he declared, Man, this calls for a celebration. I'm gonna throw a party, man, and everybody's gonna be there. Oh, God. <laughs> and I wondered who everybody precisely entailed, and a sinking feeling in my stomach told me that by everybody, it really just meant me and Chris. Yeah, basically, unless the lot lizards want to come, but they gotta come. Unless Chris pays them to be there. I don't know. Chris looked at me pleadingly and said, Are you either to party with me, right, honker donkers? <laughs> You've been such a bro through all of this, man. I want you to come celebrate with me. I'm a free dude. <laughs> you can even meet my girlfriend, too. She's real cool. Oh, God. <laughs> I want you to say no. But also, I really want to see what a, what a party with Chris looks like. What Chris's girlfriend is really like. <laughs> the idea of throwing a party over an abortion seemed absolutely revolting to me on moral, theological, and philosophical levels, but... I would be lying if I said that I wasn't absolutely intrigued by the idea of seeing just what Chris had in mind for his festivities. I toyed with the idea of actually attending, if for no other reason than to meet that troll who had swindled Chris out of a cool thousand over so casually pretending to be pregnant and to see just how far along she would string him. and you know that she's going to string him along. I imagine that she would take that ride for as long as possible, considering that Chris was endowed with daddy's money, and while I absolutely don't care for Chris in the slightest, I figured, you know, what the hell. This would be fascinating to watch unfold in real time. Half-heartedly, I replied, yeah, sure. 
Whatever, dude. We can hang out and have a few cold ones over it. <laughs> when and where? And uh, that about wraps up today's story. I hear the road a calling my name, but don't you worry, we'll be back in the not too distant future with yet another story about Chris. Well, this is just absolute madness, but I knew that Honker Donkers was gonna go. He agreed to go to an anime convention, for God's sake. His lust for cringe cannot be sated, much like my own. And while this wasn't the cringiest saga that we've had of Chris Trucker, I'm sure the next part, part number 23, boy, you need to keep your eyes peeled for that one. <laughs> Uh, there are going to be some festivities! My co-pilot is a neckbeard, number 23. Oh, it's so recently posted. It's so fresh! I cannot wait to consume! <laughs> Hey there, Red X gang. Hi, you Zabali Hakadakas. I finally got a little bit of time to write, so let's not delay any longer and get into another story about Chris. Do you write these while Chris is in the cab or something like that? <laughs> the uninitiated may be wondering, well, who is Chris? I'll tell you now, Chris is a very fat and sweaty man, and his prodigious bulk makes it difficult for him to clean himself, implying that he ever tried to clean himself. <laughs> Uh, as a result, he's surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank wherever he goes. Chris is a fabulous disaster of a human being, content to indulge in his own personal dark triad of meth, anime, and lot lizards. Chris and I both work for a trucking company, a major one, and we take our turns driving the big rig down the road. Now, Things are usually okay when Chris is driving, usually, but when he's finally freed of his designated duties for the day, that is when all chaos cuts loose and Chris is allowed to go about his life doing his favorite things in the world, which are of course, Chris things. Yes, <laughs> we know them well by now, I think. Chris things that are sure to make even the devil blush. Try as I might to rein him in and make him act like a regular human being, it seems that all of that effort culminates into nothing. And the struggle only continues. Damn, man, you having a rough day? <laughs> you usually sound more upbeat about this whole thing. Kind of lets me know that today's story is going to be uh, maybe heavy. <laughs> maybe a lot to take in. And of course, the real kicker of it all is that to this day, I still have to ride with Chris. It's not forever, I promise. That lawyer's gonna do some stuff, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> Our last tale seemingly brought Chris to an unprecedented brink within his life. By some weird twist of fate, the Poopy Coom Man had somehow not only found a willing subject to take his spoiled load, ugh, and not long after that unholy exchange, he came to believe or perhaps it was only stated to him that she believed that Chris had knocked her up. Well, Chris, torn by this agonizing realization that, yeah, actions have consequences, <laughs> and that he actually might have to face some for the first time in his miserable life, demanded of his honey boo-boo that she abort the allegedly gestating abomination within her. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, this is just written so well. Have we confirmed that the baby's not real? We confirmed that, right? <laughs> it's basically confirmed unconfirmed. Is that there are known knowns and that there are known unknowns, but there's also unknown unknowns. So yes, Honey Boo Boo obliged Chris, of course, to the tune of a cool thousand dollar dues. And Chris, elated once again that he was off the hook, scot-free, and able to continue his lifetime of degeneration, <laughs> decided that this was a cause worthy of celebration. He decided that a party was in order, and he begged me, pleaded me, to come and show up. Now, I know I should have said no, but the prospect of attending an abortion party thrown by the Poopy Coom Man? <laughs> Uh, that just sounded too delectably torturous to pass up. <sighs> Maybe I am a bit of a masochist. Who knows? 
<laughs> it's definitely confirmed. I think I confirmed that in part like six or seven. <laughs> Some part of you needs this, doesn't it? I can't even look down on you because we're basically in the same boat. <laughs> uh, when we finally got a little bit of away time after a couple additional hauls, Chris and I departed from our truck in the lot, and exuberantly, he called after me, Hey, we're still on the range it up this week, right? How do I get a hold of you and let you know where it is? I debated giving him my phone number, but if we're being completely honest here, the one thing that I did not want to deal with was Chris calling me up out of the blue whenever he felt like it, like a nagging stalker asking me to please respond. And you know he would. I, I know he has nobody else. Is it sad? Yes, yeah, sort of, but I mean, you reap what you sow, man. <laughs> I decided to give Chris an email address and leave it at that. And he told me that he'd totally get a hold of me in the next couple days so we could get together over the weekend. And of course, celebrate his newfound denial of any responsibility for his own actions. <laughs> uh, fine, sure, whatever. I went over to my car, hopped in, drove home, and spent time with my loving family to try and, well, forget everything. The days whittled by, and as the weekend drew closer, I almost forgot that Chris even existed. Almost. And truth be told, I wanted to keep it that way while I was back at the house, but some weird, nagging, gravitational pull made me hop onto my computer one day and check my email. And sure enough, sitting in my inbox was an email from someone who called themselves Mr. Ackerman. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so you got like the anime profile picture and everything? Come on now. I just knew by that sinking feeling in my gut that Chris had in fact not forgotten about how he wanted to throw a little get together to celebrate his newfound, refound irresponsibility. So I opened it up and inside Chris rambled and raved for a bit with plenty of typos of course, before finally giving me the location of a bar. I was surprised to see that he had picked one out. It was fairly close to where I lived, only an hour's drive or so, and I decided, eh, what the hell. Guess I was going out of town that weekend. I let my wife know what was going on, and when she heard that it was my awful co-worker throwing a party over an abortion, <laughs> even she groaned. Then she asked me if I had to, and I replied, no, I don't, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Thankfully, she gets me and asked if perhaps we ought to ask our eldest to babysit so that she could come and keep me from losing my mind too. And maybe so that she could witness firsthand the spectacle that I've been dealing with every day since I started driving for this company. <laughs> I said, you know what? That sounds like a plan. Oh, Mrs. Honker Donker's on the way. Dude, I'm so excited to meet your wife. This is amazing. Now we're dealing with double trouble. <laughs> so my wife and I got ready that coming weekend to explore the horrors of my life in depth. God, I do love that woman. Coming along for a neckbeard safari date night. I mean, it takes a certain kind. It definitely does. But once you find that one, you never let it go. You treat her right, Honka Doggers. Well, we loaded up in the car that following evening leaving the children to their own devices, and I drove us down the winding roads of our city towards the bar in question. When we got to that seedy little hole-in-the-wall dive bar, I cut the engine and we got out and headed towards the tiny alcoholic shanty. We opened the door and we were blasted by the sounds of mumble rap and the smells of a brewery. And then we walked inside and passed through the thronging 20-somethings acutely aware of the fact that we were indeed probably the oldest folks here. I hate bars, guys. The music sucks, the drinks are stupid expensive, and I don't like people. Yet still, here we are, <laughs> as we navigated the thronging masses in that den of debauchery. My attention was arrested by the nasal cry of the cohort who I had come to meet, the Poopy Coom Man himself. I'm definitely not a fan of bars either, but for a neckbeard safari, I mean, we go to some weird places. It's probably gonna be fine until he starts ogling your wife. 
<laughs> then you gotta put him in his place again. Chris was entirely out of place himself, not only because of his age, being in his mid-30s, but also because of the fact that he had displaced the voluminous crowd in that little joint by the might of his sheer stink alone. Yeah, maybe pick an outdoor bar next time. <laughs> I could tell by the judgmental glances of our younger counterparts that none of them wanted to get near the stinking ogre that squatted alone in the dark corners of their venue. <laughs> Uh, and I could feel their stares on my wife and I as we approached the booth wherein he sat with two other people. Among them, I recognized the big girl from the pictures he showed me when Chris had his pregnancy scare. People say the camera adds 10 pounds, but she seemed even bigger in person than she did in pixels. <laughs> At those MySpace angles. I suppose she fancied herself a bit of a femme fatale, judging by the black leather jacket covered in patches and the crop of neon hair that flashed wildly from atop her head. The other was an entirely new face to me. To Chris's right sat a greasy little goblin with thick curly locks of hair that glistened in the incandescent lighting, picking vigorously at the pimples that speckled his face despite the presence of the company around him Oh god, you're gonna shoot somebody with that thing. Just wait till it goes off! <laughs> terrible, dude. Can you imagine sitting there enjoying a drink and some dude shoots zit goo into it? Or like on your body, anywhere. Especially not the face. Don't do it on the face, please! Oh! I think I made it worse by talking about it, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, when he finished with that, he would readjust the glasses on his nose, leaving greasy smears along the edge of the glass. He told me his name at some point in the night, but I didn't really dedicate any brain space to it, so we will call him Stringbean. Stringbean was perhaps the youngest of the group, definitely in his early 20s, barely looking old enough to drink, and I wondered what Chris was doing hanging out with these almost children. <laughs> I figured it was better not to ask, however, and my wife and I slunk through the curious parting of people towards where it was that Chris sat. Alright, so we got a, a few new characters. This is interesting. We got Hunker Dugger's wife, we got String Bean, we got Chris's girlfriend, whereas most of the previous episodes it has just been OP and Chris, so it'll be interesting to see how the dynamic devolves in public. As I approached, I could hear Chris's voice shouting above the music. Hey, Hunger Rockers, you made it, dude. Whoa, I see a virgin like you even managed to get a date for the night. She's super hot. Uh, hi there, I'm Chris. Oh, boy. <laughs> Did I not call it? First thing that he does is start ogling his wife. Jesus, Chris. Uh, this is the worst thing ever. He stood up with a flourish, completely oblivious of the fact that his date was sitting right beside him, and I checked to see if she was even the slightest bit perturbed by this fact. She wasn't. I guess getting a thousand bucks out of the poopy coom man was enough to make her tolerate any sort of slight. I turned my attention back to Chris as he asked for the lady's name. Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> Tell me he didn't. <laughs> uh, ouch. <laughs> my wife offered him a fake one, calling herself Jane that evening. Big brain. And I smiled at Chris as she refused to let the poopy coom man take her hand and bow to her like we lived in the 15th century. I interrupted this awkward moment and said, Hey, let's go grab a seat, huh? And we sidled into the corner booth, interposing myself between Chris and my wife. <laughs> Another big brain play. It might be a safari, but we still need to take steps to keep ourselves safe, all right? Take some notes here. <laughs> <laughs> so let's be honest, at this point, I'm kind of used to Chris's smell. And though the poopy coom man did take some time to get dolled up for the evening, as evidenced by the pungent aroma of cheap cologne, it was like dressing up a turd. <clears throat> and underneath, I could still smell the crusty coom that coated his belly and the poop that lubricated his butt cheeks. <laughs> <sighs> uh, yeah, that's a description, all right. <laughs> 
I'm dead, dude. I can't. I can't do this anymore. Oh god. Why would you go that far with the description? Ah. Uh, uh. Chris leaned into me as I got into the booth, and I could catch the stench of booze on his breath as he said, hey Man, you sure got yourself a hottie tonight, honker donkers. <laughs> you might have to let me have a crack at her. Bro, does he not know about your wife, or what's going on here? Maybe he's just being a jerk on purpose. I I'm a little bit confused. OP has the proper response to Chris's come on, and he says, Shut your stupid mouth. That's my wife. You should show some respect. Chris laughed and said, <laughs> Yeah, right. You married her? Uh, I doubt it. I guess Hunger Dunkers is just the button-down type, you know? He doesn't want to talk about his problems at work and whatnot. Chris asked him, like, Hey, man, do you have a family? And Hunker Dunkers just grunts at him, you know? <laughs> A snicker erupted from String Bean, who sat on the far end of the table, which quickly erupted into a guffaw, as if Chris's remarks were the funniest thing in the world to him. And my heart sank, because it translated to somebody being lower than Chris on the proverbial totem pole. Yeah, that's, that's rough, but I think he only got up there because of his age, right? This kid's like maybe too young to know what a loser Chris is or something. How do you get lower? Then the poopy coon man. Well, I can't say. My wife interjected at this point and replied, Yeah, he's my husband. Leaned in, grabbed my face, and gave me a big old kiss. I could see the seething jealousy of the poopy coon man beside me as she let me go, and I smiled broadly at him. You see, Chris, you could have a functional relationship too if you'd put all these things away. But he won't. <laughs> as if to prove his point, that he was in fact an alpha male. Chris turned to his girlfriend and said, Hey babe, how about a kiss on the cheek? To which she mumbled, Yeah, sure! Put down her phone and gave him a peck on the cheek before immediately returning to the screen. With his alpha dog fantasy, now completely shattered, fueled by booze and rejection, his insecurity came out in full display. I heard him practically screech, What the hell was that? And she mumbled back, It was a kiss, ding dong. <laughs> uh, in the middle of a bar. <laughs> uh, and he starts ranting and raving at her, going from zero to 60 real quick. And I will never forget that rant. You know what? You're just a stupid and I'm glad you aborted that kid. God, imagine the kid being raised by the likes of a pig like you. A stupid virgin like Honker Donkers could get a loving wife, and you can't even give me a kiss? After all that money I paid for you? Are you serious right now? Woman, put that phone down and give me a real kiss. His date didn't miss a beat. She put her screen down, turned to the agitated Chris, and said, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, Chris. I wasn't even pregnant. I doubt you could even get a woman pregnant. It's no surprise considering you couldn't even keep it up and you basically coom dust. Even after all the disinterest I expressed to you, after our one night together, you wouldn't leave me alone. Do you know why I left you on red? Because I don't want anything else to do with you. <laughs> Good God, dude. Somebody get the popcorn. <laughs> uh, we're finding out all types of stuff. He couldn't even keep it up, you said? Huh. <laughs> uh, this episode is so juicy. <laughs> Uh, but you wouldn't stop. Every waking moment it was, Hey babe, how are you? Or, Peter Grand. So I said, you know what? A queen like me deserves something nice for all her troubles. Since you ain't no king and you can't have this, I didn't feel it at all bad taking your money. You know what you bought me, Chris? Rent. You bought me rent. <laughs> wow, dude. 
<laughs> this is some quality trash TV. Somebody call up the Learning Channel. <laughs> we need to get somebody on this right now. Good God. They really just laid both of their cards on the table. Do you think they're going to end up getting back together at the end of all this? <laughs> I mean, I don't in my heart, but I hope that they do because that would be hilarious. <laughs> we weren't even five minutes in and the bickering had already begun. I turned to look at my wife to see how she was holding up through this quickly devolving ordeal. And I was surprised to find the most bemused and entranced expression on her face as she watched Chris and his date get into it. Yeah, she watches the learning channel for sure. <laughs> Uh, you get to see Honey Boo Boo in real life. <laughs> uh, I suppose it's more entertaining than her soap operas. But to be honest, I didn't expect such vivacity in her expression that night. To be fair, I was expecting a, okay, that's enough, honey. We can go home now. But when I turned to her and whispered in her ear that maybe we should go and leave them to their night, she hissed at me. No, I want to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, she's she's ride or die for sure. I can tell why you put a ring on it, Hunker Dockers. I was about to ask her if she was sure when I heard String Bean start up with a cry. I guess the two fighting had gotten him agitated, and behind a stream of alcoholic tears, I could hear his wails as he declared that, No, you, you guys shouldn't fight. You're perfect for each other. Come on, guys, just kiss and make up, and don't do this. I want to see you guys happy. <laughs> uh, they will be happier apart. You're not going to make them happy by forcing them closer together. Chris then turned on String Bean and told him to shut his stupid mouth. Uh, we already tried this, but this dumb redacted doesn't seem to want to give me one. He shot up out of his seat as String Bean recoiled, and so did his date his fat belly bumping the table in front of him and spilling booze everywhere, all over everyone at the table. <laughs> Practically knocking the entire thing over. He leaned in close to Lardetta and said, You will give me a kiss now. To which she responded, You're going to take me home now! <laughs> uh... Chris met somebody who is basically his equivalent. That much is true. But sometimes opposites attract for a reason. She plays the game way better than Chris could ever hope to play it. I can only imagine what the, the patrons of the bar are thinking about all this. <laughs> Probably just watching it too. Get your phone out. Go viral on, on TikTok or something like that. <laughs> uh, oh, it's cringe all around. <laughs> I was surprised that someone who wanted nothing to do with Chris had ultimately agreed to letting him take her to a get-together, but I guess like attracts like, and so she accepted the offer. Besides, if she was trying to milk him, not in that way. Gas, food, and drinks, I mean, those ain't exactly cheap. I looked around the bar helplessly at this point, soaked in alcohol, my wife's wry smile, despite the beer that now soaked her dress, had become a complete Cheshire grin, gleaming in the darkness. <laughs> Did you marry Adelaide or something like that? This was going on right now. String Bean desperately pleaded for calm while Chris and his date kept hurling vitriol at each other. My heart sank as I observed the other patrons staring over at our quiet little corner, mouths Agape. <laughs> For a second, I felt a slight pang of shame, but then I realized that I was basically old enough to be the father of half the people in that bar, so I shrugged it off, said, screw it, we're taking charge of this situation, and I turned back to the table and said, guys, guys, everybody calm down. Nobody paid any attention, so I cleared my throat, summoned my authority voice, and repeated my request. Calm down! Now! String Bean, Chris, and his date all fell silent at the newfound and much more intimidating agitation that disrupted their cacophonous rhetoric. I felt my wife's arm slide over my shoulders as I took a deep breath and said, Sit down. <laughs> Here we go. He's putting on his daddy pants. 
Honestly, from what little I know, yeah, all three of them could use a, a, a good daddy. Not that I think anybody actually wants to do it, but yeah, control the situation. You got this. <laughs> With a word, I had put an end to the fight and figured that things would be okay from that point on. Wait, we're really continuing? <laughs> I thought that was it. For a moment, everyone grew quiet, and then begrudgingly, Chris sat back down in his seat. String Bean dried his eyes, and Chris's date returned to her phone as if nothing had happened. In sullen silence, everybody sat there for a minute, and then I reminded them, Look, we're here tonight to... celebrate, I guess? <laughs> so can we at least keep it civil for a little bit? Please. Nobody offered a reply, and I shrugged, leaned back into the seat, and accepted that silence was good enough. Yep. You guys ain't doing anything to help me out of this hole? That's fine. Let's all sit here and die together. <laughs> that silence, however, was not long for this world when one of the waitresses came over to the table. I knew it was coming, and when she got to the edge of the table, she remarked, Hey, I have to ask you guys to leave. I, of course, was entirely fine with this prospect, but my wife tugged on my sleeve, a motion that I've come to know means, Do something and I looked into her sad, pleading, puppy eyes. Oh god, not the puppy eyes. <laughs> uh, we're really sorry, I'll slip you a 20. Please let us stay. It's not gonna happen again, okay? What else do you do in this situation? This was the most fun that she had had in weeks, and those deep baby blues screamed at me to keep us from getting evicted so she could enjoy the show for just a little bit longer. Well, if there's one thing that I feel stronger than my hatred of the poopy coo man, it is the love that I feel for my wife. And if she wanted to stay and watch the fireworks, I'd do my best to make that happen for her. Yes, dude, I love seeing healthy marriages depicted in media. Are you kidding? All this, oh, I don't like my wife boomer humor, get that out of here! If the worst thing you can call me is a wife guy, I gladly accept that. High five, honker donkers, wife guy energy right here. Anyway, I turned to the waitress, and I said, Hey, look, I'm sorry for my friend's outburst. We will clean up the booth back here, and from now on, they are all cut off. I will not let them have any more drinks. My wife and I just got here five minutes ago, and we'd like to stay for a bit and enjoy our evening. I got them under control already, and I can keep them under control, so would you please, perhaps, reconsider? Strong argument, humble, well played. To sway this opinion even further, I fumbled with my wallet a bit to reveal my spending money for the evening. I know how to speak bartender, after all, and the waitress most certainly considered it. She said, fine, but you got to keep them under control, okay? My boss is breathing down my neck about you guys, especially the fat, stinky one. <laughs> uh... Oh, man. And then, and then Chris leads over to Hawker Dockers like, I think she's talking about you. <laughs> uh, uh, if you keep things calm and contained to this corner, I'll ask him to look the other way. Before I go, do you guys need anything? She asked this question before turning to my wife and I. Now, I was the designated driver for the evening, so my wife ordered herself a delicious beverage while I abstained from the drink. Oh, come on, you can have one. Then again, maybe don't have one, because you don't know how long you're going to be there. <laughs> you might have to get in the car ten minutes from now. <laughs> uh, uh, I, however, was getting a bit hungry, it being about dinner time, and I asked the girl waiting our table if there was a chance that they served food here. She said, yeah, kitchen's still open. Do you need a menu? And I agreed and asked for menus for everybody. A little bit of food to soak up the alcohol that was fueling all this tension, you know? Not a bad plan, especially if you're willing to foot the bill. <laughs> Free meal? Okay. She left and returned with a list of the evening's fare and walked away again, visibly recoiling from the poopy coom aura that was now saturated with the stink of alcohol. Recoiling from the aura's not enough. Running from the aura, not enough. It will find you. <laughs> Chris and his date sat there in silence, while Stringbean, seemingly the glue of their little trio, tried desperately to hold it together. 
Trying to get them both excited about the prospects of some grub at the local Greasy Spoon. But none of them even feigned interest in the prospect of something to eat. Oh, come on. I could take one look at Chris and his lady and say, yeah, they, they probably both hungry, like, quite often. Just wait ten minutes. They'll get hungry. <laughs> uh... Oh, look, guys, I know you hate each other with the fury of a thousand suns, but <gasps> they got nachos. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it didn't work. <laughs> uh, cracking me up today, man. Chris stewed in sullen anger while his date lazily stared into her phone. When at last the waitress returned, she asked what we'd be having. And I placed mine in my wife's order, and she took them down on her notepad. And when she finished writing down our requests, she asked Chris, Is there anything I can get you? Chris then cleared his throat and said, Yeah, you know what I'd like? You got some meatloaf back there? Why don't you get some of that? And carve it into the shape of a baby and serve it up to this fat whore who killed my child. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, leave the waitress alone. Uh, just gotta pull her into the crap pile. Oh man. <laughs> uh, so she could be reminded of what we lost when she had it sucked out of her rancid womb. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, 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 this is too much, man. Uh, Oh, it was so quiet, <laughs> you could hear an ant fart. <laughs> Chris, emboldened by the attention he was now receiving, continued. And uh, you can get me your number too. Hey, maybe we can make a new one to relieve the pain of the one I lost. If you know what I mean. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I hate, I hate everything about this. I always know it's going to be an adventure, but this adventure today, something special. <laughs> uh, the waitress moved her mouth to speak, but only silence came out as she stood there before she finally mustered up two words. Out. Now. I turned to my wife with a look that said, ain't no way we're buying our way out of this one, babe. And despite her sadness at the proposition of the night being over so soon, she knew that I was right. Chris then began to go off on the waitress, god damn it. <laughs> Starting up with an, Oh, you women are gonna save every last one of you. What do you want, buddy? I got buddy, you prude. I'll be your sugar daddy. <laughs> oh, god. Uh, no, not you. Never you. The waitress then wandered away in complete disgust. Presumably to get someone more masculine and more aggressive. And I said, Chris, it's been fun, but I think we should go now. <laughs> Hastily, I deposited 50 bucks on the table for that poor, bereaved waitress, who admittedly dealt with more than she ever deserved in her lifetime, and I motioned to my wife that it was indeed time to go. As we made our way through the thronging crowd, we could see the waitress pointing back to the table from where we left, where Chris still sat in his perfect trinity of delinquency, just waiting for a bruising. Yeah, he's used to that by now. <laughs> uh, uh, we exited that seedy little dive bar into the cool night air. And on the way out to the parking lot, my wife and I were accosted by a couple from the bar, two young lads in their 20s. They interposed themselves between us and the rest of the lot, and they asked, Hey! Weren't you with that dude who was harassing that lady? And I replied, yeah, I was. He is my coworker, and he is a piece of crap. If you're looking for trouble, I'll give it to you in spades, but he's the one you want, not me. And he should be on his way out of there real soon. <laughs> as if to prove my point, I heard the door to the bar bang open as Chris was dragged off the property by a rather large and burly man who was either the boss or the bouncer, or perhaps both, screeching and whining the entire way, Stringbean and his date in tow behind him, being shepherded by a very angry waitress. The two young gents who accosted me looked back at the window, looked at me, 
And I basically shrugged at him expectantly, as if to say, well, which one do you really want? Without a word, they got out of our way and started towards where Chris stood. The door to the bar slammed shut behind the now evicted poopy coom man, and as he started to brush off the dirt, these two hooligans approached him from the parking lot and started to give him some grief. <laughs> you do talk old-timey, don't you? Those hooligans were giving him some grief. Let's go down to the malt shop. <laughs> uh, my wife and I got back to our car, hopped in, and watched from the front seat as guys one and two started to lay into the poopy coom man. Stringbean fled, unwilling to help his fat friend in a fight, and his date, my wife and I, all looked on with amusement. <laughs> when at last they were finished with Chris, as he lay there sobbing in the parking lot, one of the guys turned to Chris's date, who had come to this place with a ride from the poopy coo man, and said something. She smiled and jiggled in delight. <laughs> uh, and then the guy threw his arm around her shoulder and walked off with her towards a car, while the other guy gave one last swift kick to the fallen Chris. <laughs> Good God, dude. Uh, my wife asked if perhaps we should help him, and I thought about it for a second. Then I jammed the keys into the ignition, <laughs> turned over the engine, and sped off into the night, yelling at Chris as I left from out the front open window. Happy abortion day! <laughs> uh, oh, my sides, man. My face hurts after this story, dude. <laughs> my wife and I headed home that evening, much, much earlier than we anticipated arriving back at the house, to the surprise of our teenage son who had already put our youngest kids to bed. Then we went into the kitchen, whipped ourselves up a quick dinner, and had a meal and a drink together in silence before bed. I think that from that day on, she understood a lot better what it was that I had to deal with at work every day. And while I knew that she was more than entertained from such a short interaction with that odious creature, she now also understood why I almost always came back from my shifts out on the road, ready to pull my hair out. And that about wraps up today's story about the Poopy Coom Man. I heard that open road calling my name, but don't you worry guys, because most assuredly I will be back with yet another story about that horrifying train wreck that we call Chris. Oh, just a human disaster. I'm glad to see him come off the worst in a lot of these stories. I mean, Mo Molly Honker Donkers has gotten caught up in Chris's schemes once or twice, but usually Chris gets exactly what's coming to him. This particular entry, almost poetic. There was a one part lead up to this, so I, I think that makes it even more juicy. It was definitely worth waiting for. <laughs> I mean, he could have just gotten his butt kicked, but they stole his woman too. Man, something tells me they didn't even want that chick. They just did it to make Chris feel bad. <laughs> it works. My co-pilot is a neckbeard, number 24. It's so recent, it's so fresh. I slapped this video together tonight for you guys. <laughs> I am 100% in it to win it. Hey there, Red X gang. Hi, you Zabami Hakadakas. Looks like I finally got myself a bit of time to write, so let's not delay any longer, and we will get into another story about Chris. Oh, bless it. <laughs> The uninitiated might be wondering, who is Chris? Chris is a very fat and sweaty man, surrounded wherever he goes by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. Chris has very few joys in life, and instead takes pleasure in his personal dark triad of anime, lot lizards, and crystal. Chris and I both work for a trucking company, a major one, and we take turns driving the big rig down the road. Things are usually okay when Chris is driving, usually, but the fun really begins when I take the wheel or when we pull over for the night. Then Chris is free to do Chris things. You know the things. Despite my best efforts to try and rehabilitate him and make him act like a normal human being, it's all in vain. The real kicker of it all, as of this week, I no longer work with Chris. What? <laughs> uh, 
Now that is a, a mind blow if I have ever heard one. This is juicy. Oh, so juicy. Is the lawsuit going through? Did that happen? Yeah, please update me. No more Tarantinoing, okay? I just want to <laughs> see what happens. I was hoping it would be longer than a fortune cookie, but I don't know, man. I am kind of at a loss over that news. <laughs> uh, uh, now you're probably wondering what happened. Uh, yeah. Well, pull up a seat, boys and girls. Let old mommy honker donkers tell you a tale. Oh, and what a tale it will be. Chris and I had been out on the road for a couple of days. We'd come and gone and went again from California to Albuquerque, back to California, and then out to Portland. As we sat outside a truck stop in Oregon, waiting for dispatch to direct us to another package that we had to haul, we just sat in layover hell. And as we've established, uh, they don't get paid for that, so yeah, that is hell. <laughs> <laughs> now, usually the pickings up in the Pacific Northwest are pretty decent for Chris. Seems like everybody's strung out or up to something shady. And I figured that Chris would be out and about prowling the lots today, looking for some trouble to get into. But it seems that in that podunk little town that we were stuck in, waiting for news of our next delivery, there was nothing going on that Chris could amuse himself with. I don't know what to tell you, bro. Find another anime podcast or something. <laughs> Instead, we both sat in the cab, I in the passenger seat, Chris in the driver's, me pretending that he didn't exist while I quietly tapped away on my laptop, and him staring out the window, absolutely dumbstruck at the peculiar lack of dope and escorts in this particular travel plaza. That's good, Chris. That's a good thing. Hang yourself out to dry, just just for a couple of nights. <laughs> Everybody needs a break. Uh, I paid Chris no mind, however. Well, I paid his physical form no mind, because if we're being completely honest, I write these stories for you guys at a rate of about one per week. And Chris and I are usually on the road for extended periods of times, sometimes up to two months, all things depending. Usually I would write in Chris's absence, but... With this startling lack of vice at this near Portland travel plaza on this fine day, well, I had to do something. I couldn't not write for you guys. Oh, oh, he found out. He found out about the writings. Everybody abandon ship. He's in the comment section somewhere. Everybody run. Uh, I decided that I would brave it and do my best to get another installment ready for you all while we were stuck in layover hell. That installment being about a certain party that I attended with one Mr. Poopy Coom man. Yes, I remember it well. I think they served meatloaf. Mm-mm, meatloaf. <laughs> uh, Chris eventually came back around to reality, screeching out to nobody in particular, This is so freaking boring! I grunted in a non-committal way as I continued to tap, tap, tap away at my keyboard, doing my best to ignore his interjections, leaning against the door in just such a way that my laptop screen was hidden from one very certain neck-beardy trucker. I mean, you are kind of rolling the dice on this one, but really he shouldn't be looking at what you're doing on your screen anyways. Then again, he's Chris. I, guess, <laughs> I can't be surprised. I suppose he didn't take the hint that I was in no way interested in anything that he had to say, because he repeated himself, He said so boring! as if expecting some different response, and when I offered none, and when he realized that there was no vice for him to have, and that he would have to turn up some other ways to entertain himself, he decided to amuse himself with what I was so embroiled in at the moment. Uh-oh. <laughs> You, you see the, the train coming, but you can't stop the crash, man. Oh, he asked me. What the hell are you doing over there anyway, dude? I gave him a monotone response, writing. He pressed the issue and asked, About what? My monotone replied, Stuff. <laughs> this answer wasn't good enough to get him to leave me alone. In an attempt to be cheeky, he responded, <laughs> What are you writing, your diary or something? What kind of stuff are you writing? I debated going mask off. I didn't, however, and I decided to give him another single word response. Stories. 
<laughs> Surely he's peeling back the layers. Slowly, slowly. Soon the whole ugly thing will be unveiled. Oh no! But also, oh yes, it could be like a, a revelation. He'd be like, oh my god, this is how other people view me? I'd better change. I can do better than I've been currently doing. But no, what would actually happen is he'd be like, man, you're all a bunch of betas. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Chris got excited at this proposition and said, oh, dude, I, I didn't know you wrote stories. What are they about, man? Is he actually interested or is he just pulling your leg or something? I had to navigate this position with as much tact and decorum as I could muster. And I responded that I was writing about a socially inept weirdo and his escapades. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the lie? Only by omission. <laughs> it is ingenious. I probably would have got mask off at this point. Then again, I probably would have quit this whole job long ago. Chris laughed heartily and said, Oh, so you are writing your diary. <laughs> what, working on your autobiography, bro? Nobody wants to read a book about a stupid normie. <laughs> Look, Hawker Dockers, I know you're a total beta, but you don't gotta be so hard on yourself, dude. I could totally teach you to be a Chad like me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, what a kind offer, but I would rather be dead. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but OP just responds, thanks, but no thanks. And I continued my best to keep tapping away on that week's cringy tale. True, I was playing a dangerous game. I had outed myself only ever so slightly to Chris. And I knew that if he discovered that I was in fact writing stories about all his sordid encounters, problems would arise. Yeah, best to keep this one under your hat, bro. <laughs> I wouldn't even talk to him. I'd be like, none of your business. I don't write. I don't know what you're talking about. But OP never won to give up, <laughs> doubles down into the screen, kept pressing keys, hoping, hoping that the poopy coom man would get bored with this line of questioning and instead find something else to take his attention away from me. That did not happen, however. Chris continued the one-sided conversation and remarked, You know, I'm something of an author myself, bro. <laughs> no, dude. Uh, it's gonna be cringe fanfic. You know it. <laughs> uh... Now this was too juicy to refuse. I paused mid-sentence, grabbed the top of my computer, and shut it slowly. My eyebrows raised in absolute curiosity. I turned to him and replied, I didn't know you wrote, Chris. He played it up and said, Dude, there's a lot you don't know about me. <laughs> you want to hear one of my stories? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, but I sort of do. I guess why not, you know, while we're on the subject, <laughs> show me the darkest depths, Chris. <laughs> Under any other circumstances, I would have abjectly refused. But considering how topical his interjection was, I decided, you know what? Sure. <laughs> Let's hear a story, Chris. He got up from where he sat, fetched his computer, and booted it up. He punched his password into a welcome screen that depicted a cartoon girl with big old mommy honker donkers. <laughs> and then with the desktop loaded, he navigated to a folder and browsed through the documents. He opened one up, cleared his throat, and began to read out loud. <laughs> no. <laughs> Chris X Mikasa, a fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I guess we're really doing this. Despite my best efforts to keep a polite face, I was psychically screaming. <laughs> he began to read. Allow me to paraphrase. Our story begins at Chris's house. Chris had always loved Mikasa Ackerman from Attack on Titan and made sure to watch every episode as soon as it came out so he could see his beloved kill monsters and be a total badass. Still, that wasn't enough for Chris. 
He always wanted to meet Mikasa in the flesh, and while he would play it totally cool if he ever actually met her, and win her over with his awesome personality and amazing good looks, he really just wanted to take her by the hand and confess his unconditional and undying love for the amazing Japanese Titan Slayer. <laughs> it's not even a fanfic, dude. Uh, this is like an accurate description of, of you. As far as I can suss it out, this is non-fiction. <laughs> he looked over in my direction, expectantly. I was doing my best to choke back laughter and put on a legitimately interested face. And I must have succeeded in doing so because Chris thought that I was honestly interested in the tale that he was telling and continued. The days and nights flew by as Chris pined for his beloved until one day he saw that an anime convention was happening nearby in San Diego. <laughs> Chris had a totally patrician taste in anime as it was and decided that maybe he should go to the convention because he knew it would be a good time. Well, <laughs> Chris got dressed up that day in his best scout regiment cosplay and went to the convention. Not long after he entered, however, his breath was taken away because the convention smelled, right? <laughs> That's why? No, it was because he had found her at long last. Mikasa Ackerman, in the flesh, stood at the doors welcoming the people as they came in. Oh no, this is a fan fiction, right? It's not actually Mikasa Ackerman. This is the journal where he documents assaulting a girl in cosplay. <laughs> I hate it. Maybe this is all what happened at the anime convention that Honker Donkers went to. And it's just like run through the reframing device of Chris's mind. So everything is cool and awesome. <laughs> Chris felt his heart skip a beat. And he quickly fixed himself up before approaching the doors where Mikasa stood. At this point, I stifled back a snort by transforming it into a cough. <laughs> Chris looked up at me and said, hey, What do you think so far? <laughs> uh, uh, you don't want to hear what I have to say. Let's finish it out and see how it goes. <laughs> and I replied to him, You know what, dude? It's great. <laughs> 10 out of 10 writing. You could win an award with all that. <laughs> what award? <laughs> uh... Yeah, maybe let's let's wind it back a little bit. <laughs> We're going over the top. Although, of course, Chris believes it. His ego is just that big. Chris started to glow and said, uh, Do you really mean it? Dude, wait, check this out. <laughs> it, it gets better. <laughs> he scanned the page for where he left off and then started up again once more. Chris approached Mikasa, and upon seeing Chris, Mikasa blushed and giggled. She could totally sense an alpha male from a mile away. <laughs> uh, and she had never seen one before, quite like Chris. <laughs> I should have read the whole thing in that voice. <laughs> he was totally awesome, and a man of culture, and a master of the blade as well. <laughs> uh, and it excited Mikasa on a level of... Animal lust. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, it's gonna get real x rated real quick. I don't, please pump the brakes. We can't do this. Chris could sense her arousal. And as he approached, the true gentleman gave her a deep bow and said, It's an honor to finally meet you, m'lady. Mikasa shyly asked Chris for his name and he said, hey, I'm Chris. She asked if he had come to the convention alone, and Chris said that, Yes, sadly he did, but not because he wanted to. He wanted to come here with his one true love, Mikasa Ackerman. <laughs> Mikasa fainted then, <laughs> and Chris caught her in his manly, muscular arms and swept her away from the door to somewhere more private so that she could recover. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. When she finally awoke, she peacefully mumbled, Oh, Chris Coon, thank you for catching me before I fell. <laughs> Even though she was unconscious and had no way to know that he actually caught her, <laughs> Chris replied, Of course, my love. Anything for you. 
And then Mikasa grabbed Chris's head and pulled him in for a kiss. And then she probably smelled his breath and projectile vomited everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> is this really how you see things? What is happening, bro? Chris shut his laptop from there and said that the rest <laughs> was private. Oh, thank you for not sharing that with me, honestly. <laughs> and I, absolutely entranced by this awful story, pressed him for more. I feigned excitement and said, Oh, come on, Chris. I want to know what happens next. Spoiler, I knew what was going to happen next, but I just wanted to hear it from Chris. <laughs> uh, Chris thought about it for a moment before he shyly said, Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> Oh no. Uh, maybe just a tasteful cut to black during the edit. I don't know. That <laughs> might be a bridge too far, honestly. If you're truly curious, post is up, but I, mm, I'm not. Mm -mm. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Oh God. <laughs> now at this point, I couldn't hold it anymore. Yeah, that's, that's the spine shatter. You felt that one around the world, right? <laughs> I groaned audibly, loudly, and twisted and contorted in discomfort as I did it. Chris got huffy and said, Dude, don't interrupt the story. You're totally killing my chubby right now. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, no, not this. And then I groaned even louder, <laughs> practically screaming in cringe-induced agony. Chris got even more defensive and said, Dude, stop! I'm trying to tell you how it ends. <laughs> and I couldn't help myself and I said, I know how it ends, Chris. You coom and Mikasa marries you and that's that. <laughs> uh, yeah, what a shocker. All these twists and turns. Chris glared at me with a look of sadness and dejection on his face that I had spoiled his story in that last triumphant moment. Then he slammed his laptop shut and threw it in his bunk. He said, Screw you, Hawker Doctors! You're such an a-hole, dude! You don't know that's how it ends! And even if that was how it ends, it's way better than you make it sound. <laughs> You're just jealous that you can't write half as good as me. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wish we could steal a copy of that Chris fanfic. I, I don't think I'd ever read it on YouTube, save for that Patreon-only content, but <laughs> I was sort of hungry for it. I was rolling with laughter at this point, and I said, You want to make a bet on that? And Chris didn't miss a beat and said, You know what? You're on! I cannot tell you then what possessed me to open up my computer and read to him the tale that I had been writing for you all. <laughs> all I know was that driven by some maniacal spirit, I started to read from the story that I had prepared for you all last week. Oh my god. <laughs> Does he even recognize? He has to realize, like on some level. Like he's dumb, but he's not that dumb. Will his ego protect him? I guess not, because him and Honker Tonkers do have a parting of ways. Oh, this is where it really heats up, man. <clears throat> Chris immediately began to reel in shock as I read. It didn't take him long to recognize the identifying behaviors that I've all told you about as his own, and a dark grimace spread over his face. Still, I defiantly persisted in the face of the poopy coo man, getting into the meat of that previous story, and by the time I got to the part about how I was due to attend my abortion party at the behest of one Mr. Ackerman, he was red with rage. <laughs> you want to fight me again, Chris? Is that what's happening? All right. You remember, you remember what happened last time. Let's have a repeat, I guess. He didn't even let me finish before he started to scream and shout at me, Dude, what the hell is all this? I smiled wryly and said, Chris, my guy, it's a story about you. <laughs> uh, your story's also about you. You can't be offended. <laughs> he screeched and groaned and said, Why you gotta tell lies about me like that, dude? <laughs> uh, I called it. The ego is fully in play. <laughs> God, dude. Uh, 
After all we've been through, you gotta go and make stuff up about me like that? <laughs> you need to delete that right now. <laughs> uh, I told him to calm down. His name had been changed for a reason, and that nobody except me and him would ever know who he really was. And he leered at me and said, What do you mean nobody except you and me will really know who I am? The devilish spirit within me had grabbed onto the bars of its cage and was screeching like a crazed monkey ready to fling its poop at random passers-by. There was just no stopping what had been set in motion. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Uh, sheepishly, I pulled up the Red X YouTube channel. <laughs> he is here somewhere. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Hope you're doing better. Hope you're taking a good hard look at your life, man. It doesn't have to be this way, I promise you. <laughs> Pulled up the Red X YouTube channel and booted up the first story that I had written for you all. <laughs> uh, Chris sat there in absolute horror as the words that I had put to the page were read back to him cataloging so much, but by no means all, of the ordeals that we had been through together. He asked me eh, how much I'd written about him, and I replied honestly, a lot. <laughs> it's out there, bud, for the whole world to see, and it would be a cold day in hell before I was done. He seethed in impotent rage for a minute before exclaiming, eh, I can't believe you! I wasn't about to let that go. The last few years of pent-up angst and aggression was ready to come crashing through the floodgates. And I started up declaring, You can't believe me! Really? After everything, I'm the one who's out of line here. Right, Chris? And Chris stammered back that, Yeah, you are. <laughs> Uh, because you're totally misrepresenting who I am and what I do. There probably is another side to the story that I hadn't considered, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Because objectively, the things Chris has done, they're terrible. It doesn't matter what, what lens you run them through in order for you to stomach being able to do that. You are the one who's misrepresenting yourself, Chris. Come on, man. <laughs> I let out a maniacal laugh in his face. All the dope, all the toots, all the time he spent jerking it in the back of the truck, and I was the bad guy here? I put him on blast, and he sat there quietly, taking it. When things settled, he asked me sullenly, hey, How much is out there? And I again replied simply and honestly that there was a lot. <laughs> More silence. The bridge was burning, and it seemed that there was no way back at this point. The cat was out of the bag, and the poopy coon man acutely felt the sting of betrayal from somebody who he thought was his friend for some reason. Quietly, he hissed, Get out! I wasn't about to let myself get bossed around by the likes of him, however, and I replied in kind, No, you can get out, and take your stupid fanfic with you. Something broke. With a screeching sound, Chris came at me from the back of the cab with his hammy fists flailing. Yeah, here we go again, round two. If you want it, I'll be right here. <laughs> After all we had been through, this had been just one more line that Chris couldn't stomach me crossing. I put my hands up, stood up from out of my seat as 400 pounds of rampaging beard bared down on me, flailing his fists everywhere. Thankfully, I mean, dude couldn't throw a punch to save his life. And when I finally managed to reorient myself and find my footing, a couple quick one-two combos to the face quickly de-escalated the situation when he remembered that, oh, yes, that's right, pain hurts. <laughs> uh, I guess it's been a while. He needed to be retaught that lesson, but he learned it quicker the second time. Unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be a third time, at least not with Honker Donkers. Probably the next dude he gets paired with, if the company doesn't get burned to the ground. He was bawling between the shame of his shame being on full display and the physical pain that had now been inflicted on him, his tears and blood mingling and falling to the floor of the cab, and he just collapsed in a heap in the back. 
Chris blubbered through his tears. <laughs> Screw you, hunger doggers. <laughs> My dad owns this company. I'm going to get you freaking fired, bro. <laughs> and then good luck finding another job. Uh, I'm going to bring this up to him as soon as I get back. You'll see. I wasn't about to wait for that situation to come to fruition. And I responded to him, don't waste your breath. I'll call HR right now. I'm quitting this job as soon as we get back from this hall. We still had a couple days left on the road, and those would most certainly be awkward and sullen, but if that awkward sullenness could keep Chris from bothering me, then it was a small reprieve to pay. Dude, this is some high-tension drama going on right here. This is the culmination of many parts. So many people wondering how it's gonna end, and here it is! Honker Doggers knew deep down in his heart all along that he wanted to get out and he just needed all of us as like the motivation to actually pull the trigger. <laughs> Look, Chris, 20,000 people watched your video. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> uh, Chris stammered through his swollen lip. Did do it. I fished out my phone, called up HR and let them know. This was my last haul. As soon as I got back from our time on the road, I was done. I hung up the phone and without a word walked back to my computer, got on the internet and started looking for other jobs while the poopy coo man bawled his eyes out in the back. It was distracting listening to the cries of, Why? I can't believe you. You're not even a good writer anyways. <laughs> uh, not even a good writer. You should have got it kicked him in the ribs. You don't know what good writing is, Chris. <laughs> uh, as I filled out application after application with different companies, but at this stage, the boiling point had been reached. There was no way to uncrack that egg that had hit the floor. Hey, you pick it up and scramble it, it's fine. You still salvage something, right? <laughs> when things finally calmed down, Chris returned to his seat, more catatonic than before nursing his wounds, burning with shame, and absolutely miserable. He booted up his phone and began to browse to the compiled playlist and listen to the videos, offering his own counterpoints for why I was the a-hole for talking about how he'd jerk off in the back of the truck, or how I would paint his girlfriends as lot lizards, or how I would make a big deal out of some purely transactional a bluey. That one seemed to upset him the most. <laughs> Uh, if you're ashamed of the things that you do, then do not do them. So it's really that simple. I offered no reply, nor do I, honestly. I had to sort out my life, and after sending off another application for the day, I picked up my phone, sending a text to my wife, letting her know what had happened, and that when I got home, we might be living on our savings for a little bit while I sorted out a new gig. That's what savings is for, I guess. Always one to understand me, especially since that night that she attended that wretched shindig of a party with me. I got back her response. It's about damn time. See you when you get back. Oh, she ride or die. She ride or die as hell. Yeah, Mrs. Alkadagas. <laughs> Those next two days were extremely awkward. Chris made his presence as scarce as possible until dispatch contacted us and informed us that they had another package waiting for us at the docks. And when I finally rounded up Chris, his eyes were red, and not from his normal fare. He had just been a non-stop weepy mess since he had found out the depths of my treachery and had begun to obsessively watch those videos. <laughs> uh, thanks for the watch time, Chris. <laughs> Cataloging every perceived slight I had made against him by talking about the kind of person that he actually was. He denied every bit of it up and down, however, unable to come to terms with the reality of who he is, insisting it wasn't real or that it had all been taken out of context. Bro, he needs to see like a psychiatrist in a big way. This is so not normal. I guess it just goes to show you that some people are incapable of any self-reflection. I did not humor any of his complaints. I knew what I had seen, and I was not about to be gaslit by someone like the Poopy Coo Man. When we finally got back to the yard after our time out on the road, those last few rocky days, I got up from where I sat and prepared to leave the truck. Chris stopped me on the way out with a sullen, 
Hey. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and I turned to face him. He couldn't even look at me. He just stared at the floor and mumbled. So, uh, I, I guess this is goodbye then. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, you... <laughs> I can't with you, Chris. And OP can't either. I offered him no reply. <laughs> Gathered my things and climbed out of the truck and went to my car for the last time with that company. I drove home that day feeling like a huge burden had just been lifted off my shoulders. And when I got home and saw my wife for the first time in weeks, she gave me a big ol' hug and told me, Welcome home. Yes, enjoy, recoup, take some time for you! Ah, <sighs> it's been a day or two now since I quit that job. I wanted to forget about that place entirely, to be honest, but it seems that giving Chris my email address was a big mistake. <laughs> Every other day, there's something in my inbox from him, ranting or raving about this or that or the other. Most of it is completely schizophrenic. Some of it are fishes for an apology. Some of it's accusatory. Some of it is Chris apologizing himself and asking him if we can't talk things out and figure out where we stand. It's like a clingy girlfriend, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, one of them even said, I miss you, honker talkers. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Too bad. Sucks to suck. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Honestly, though the future is uncertain, I feel much better for it. I suppose it was about time that the dam burst. I've got plenty saved up to last us for some time while I find another gig, and I even lined up a couple interviews at other companies in short order, albeit at a reduced rate. I also took some time to talk with my lawyer, and and while talking about some of my experiences at that company with others was okay with them, they advised me that I should refrain from talking about specific details of our pending case against the company and what that entails until it is resolved in court. It seems that they're going to try and litigate the matter. Is that correct? Legalese? I, I, I don't know, man. I drive trucks for a living, but it sounds like it. Hell yeah, let's litigate the hell out of that. Or something. <laughs> This, of course, leaves a conundrum. Whatever shall happen to these stories about Chris? I mean, the sun sets on everything great. What can I say? Is this the last part? Do I need to figure out a song real quick? Nah, probably not. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. There's more in the backlog. The simple fact is that while I will not be experiencing any new stories about the Poopy Coom Man from this bold day forward, you can rest assured that there are plenty painfully seared into my memory that I will never be able to forget no matter how much I wish that I could. And now that I've got a lot of free time on my hands until I sort out my next job, you can expect them coming at a relatively steady pace. Bless. <laughs> Hopefully, the next guy that I get to ride with is much, much closer to normal than my previous co-pilot. Anyway, I can hear real life calling my name, my friends, and so I must attend to it. Don't you worry, however, for I will be back in the future with another story about my now ex-co-pilot, Chris. See y'all next time, guys. Oh, what a juicy story! Yes, it finally happened! <laughs> uh, that is some catharsis right there, boy, I tell you what. I'm so excited to see it. I do hope that the the legal action still goes through. Yeah, please don't share anything that your lawyer wouldn't want you sharing. I don't want to feel like I kneecapped you or anything by putting these stories out in the world. But I am excited that that's still going through. You didn't just quit and you're like, well, that's the end of it. No, nah, still go after them, all right? You get what's yours. <laughs> you suffered long and hard for that money, so... uh God, I'm, I'm so proud of you, honker talkers and Chris, I could probably be proud of you someday if you make some major changes in your life. My co-pilot is a neckbeard number 25. Oh, that's a quarter of a century, isn't it? Honestly, who wouldn't like to see this series go all the way to part 100? It's not gonna happen. <laughs> I don't think any neckbeard story has that steam. But if anyone did, it was Chris Trucker, man. <laughs> Anyways, hey there, Red X gang! Hi, you Somali Honkadakas! 
Looks like I finally got a bit of time to write, so let's not waste any more time and we will get into another story about Chris. Oh, I'm so glad there's more. Please, please. <laughs> so who is Chris? Well, if you didn't know, Chris is a very fat and sweaty man surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. Chris is a defective troglodyte <laughs> who indulges in his own personal dark triad of anime, lot lizards, and anime. Wait, did he kick the crystal? Is that what's going on? Did you just mistype? Because if you didn't know, the third thing is crystal. <laughs> Chris works for a trucking company, a major one, and him and I rode together for quite some time. God, it feels awesome to say that in the past tense. Yes. Things are changing, bless up, we are all growing. Things were usually okay when Chris was driving the truck, usually, but whenever we'd have to change shifts or pull over for the evening, Chris finally found himself free to do Chris things. You know the sorts of things. Despite my best efforts to make him act like a normal human being, to reform him somewhat, to make him act even some semblance of normal, he refused it all and he continued in his aberrant ways. <laughs> Thankfully, I am finally free of the torment fostered upon me by the Poopy Coo Man. God, that, that's so nice. I knew the time would come eventually, but now that it's here, it's, it's really surreal, I gotta be honest. Now that Chris and I no longer ride together, we will instead be reliving miscellaneous tales from the past from here on out into the future. So buckle up and let's go for a ride. <laughs> no, no, I know better than that by now. Nobody wants to ride with Chris. <laughs> this one comes from a few months ago and it is one that I will always uh, cherish. <laughs> <laughs> oh good, some classic Chris adventures. So Chris and I were speeding through Arizona when sundown decided to come on quick that fine evening. With our shifts coming to a close, we decided to find a place wherein we could overnight for the evening. Without fail, a truck stop soon presented itself and we resolved ourselves that we would begin again when the morning broke, as you do. We pulled into a spot at the edge of the lot put the truck in park and cut off the engine. Now, with the expansive darkness of the truck stop lot left to keep us company that fine evening, I told the poopy coom man that I would be retiring as it had already been a long day of listening to him declare, Daddy, back He said, whatever, dude. And I got up from where I sat and went back to my bunk to go and read a book and settle in for the evening. So is the vast expanse of darkness uh, declarative that there are no shenanigans for Chris to get up to? So we're going to have like another little one-on-one -on -one episode? Maybe not, because he said whatever. He's going to jump out the truck real quick. <laughs> Chris sat fidgeting in his seat for a minute, perhaps debating his evening's enterprise before he finally got up from where he sat and headed back to his bunk bed as well. Yeah, a little quality time with Chris. Great. <laughs> I figured that the poopy coom man would presumably be going to bed, but instead he just stood over me, his disgusting festering crotch at my face level as he fished around in his bunk. And I turned over on my side and buried my face into my blankets to stifle the overpowering smell that emanated from that rotting groin nigh but a few feet away. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, we're really getting the picture painted here. <laughs> Maybe he's fumbling around for the katana. I don't know what all is in Chris's bunk. It probably is just like a gigantic troll horde, candy wrappers and all this stuff. <laughs> stuff that he couldn't throw away because it'll be useful someday. When at last I heard him withdraw and make his way toward the door, I rolled over to watch him leave and it was then that I noticed in his hands he carried with him a uniform that I had seen before. Oh, <laughs> he's got a second job. Chris had produced the jacket of his costume from the convention that we had visited in Tales prior, minus the weird boxes that he mounted on his belt, of course, and he was preparing to head out and prowl the lot. I was about to ignore it, but something was amiss, and I had to ask. Yeah, why, why you dress it up for, buddy? <laughs> 
<laughs> He's going out there looking for his IRL waifu again. Chris, I mumbled, torn between agitation and curiosity. What the hell are you doing? He didn't offer much of a reply. He merely mumbled in reply that he was going out for the evening. And then he flung open the door, strange outfit in tow, clambered down the side of the truck, and disappeared into the truck stop for the night. I tried not to think of these strange goings-on as I drifted off into slumberland. Yeah, you don't want to tell me? That's cool. I'm not actually that curious. <laughs> I just wanted to see if you would volunteer the information. The night passed relatively uneventfully, and soon sleep overtook me. When daybreak came, I stirred from my bed to find myself alone in the big rig. Alone and at peace without Chris to ruin it. Yeah, just soak it in. It's fine. <laughs> I put on my shoes, stepped out into the travel plaza, and went off in search of my errant co-pilot, mindful of the time that we had before we had to get out on the road. Oh yeah, you got a job to do. That's, <laughs> that's why you don't just soak it in. Okay, fine. But I will say, if nothing else, it seems to me that Chris is like a timely person. Honker Doggers was never like, oh, I showed up at the truck stop to get out on the road and Chris just wasn't there or something. Usually he's at the truck before OP is. I guess that's just a trait he has, like, specifically when he's sober. <laughs> Anyways, a rudimentary search of the plaza found him sitting outside at a couple of benches, off by his lonesome, staring wistfully, a lot like a dog begging for table scraps. Staring at what? As I approached, I asked him if he was ready to go off and hit the road once more, and in a characteristically jittery, strung-out fashion, he mumbled, Yeah, screw this place, Let, let's get driving already. Without further explanation, he rounded up his belongings, curious uniform in tow under his arms, and followed me back to the truck to undertake that day's ride across the country. I was dying for an explanation as to what the hell he was doing carrying around that peculiar jacket the whole time, but I dared not ask at that time because if we're being fully honest, talking to him was less pleasurable than a root canal, and whatever explanation he would most likely offer probably wouldn't even make sense anyways. <laughs> it makes sense to him. This is all part of Chris things. <laughs> By the way he fumbled with that thing, I could tell that dragging it around with him almost produced in him a sense of shame. Its purpose hidden to all but the poopy coom man himself, and Chris was content to keep it that way until it was time for its grand reveal. What grand reveal? What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, I guess we're gonna find out. Hopefully it's not too weird. You know, it's gonna be pretty weird though. <laughs> My curiosity surged as we walked along back to our rig. When we finally reached the truck, we clambered inside. Not a word about that curious jacket spoken between us. I into the driver's seat and Chris into the passengers. I punched the truck in gear and headed off down the road for the day, while Chris descended into the realm of Japanese cartoons. Yeah, I guess. You don't want to sleep or something, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Probably the thing to do after a night of getting twacked out, right? Your shift is in eight hours? You, you gonna be good there, buddy? <laughs> Not for your sake, but for mine, because I'm strapped in here with you. Oh, it passed much like any other. The poopy coon man staring into his little flickering screen as the man children discussed their waifus. The occasional cries of the only two words he knew in Japanese tongue interrupting the silence that filled the air between us. Occasionally interrupting my focus on the road, pretending that a meth-addled neckbeard beside me wasn't a seemingly permanent fixture in my life, trying even more to ignore the curious uniform that he cradled in his swampy lap with awkward insistence. Oh, swampy lap. <laughs> Uh, thanks, I hate it. Somewhere around New Mexico, near the Texas line, my shift came to a close and we pulled over in a rest area and switched seats. Chris stowed away that peculiar garment in his bunk with an amount of thoughtful deliberation unusual to a man who was completely strung out, and then he took the truck in gear and we barreled down the road once more as I nervously watched that strung out speed freak beside me 
to make sure that he wasn't nodding off at the wheel. I mean, you don't really have to worry about that if he is still strung out currently, but something tells me all that's wearing off. Honestly, you got balls of steel to, to even let him try something like this, dude. <laughs> You're like directly putting your life in danger. Yeah, he just does his job, but not until he gets some sleep, you know? Jesus, dude. <laughs> well, by some miracle, we made it. And at a small travel plaza somewhere in rural Texas, we pulled over, nearly half done with our haul, and his shift that night concluded. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> the sun was setting, and I looked expectantly over at the poopy coom man, expecting him to vacate the premises post-haste to go and partake in the sordid fruits that the night promised. He did not disappoint, no, and as he left, he went to his bunk once more to fetch that curious jacket and bring it along with him. Then, without so much as a word to me, he disappeared into the night to go do Chris things. Man, this is, this is really piquing the curiosity. <laughs> uh, and OP says as much. Now, I was getting curious. Twice now, he had disappeared into the evening with that strange outfit of his in tow, and I couldn't just let it lie. It gnawed at me like a bored dog might gnaw on a bone to alleviate the passing of those languid hours. Try as I might, I couldn't focus on my book, and... When I at last realized that I had been stuck on the same passage for nearly 10 minutes now, I realized that resisting my curiosity was proving futile. That's right, <laughs> go get a peek and, and come back and report what you know. All we really can discern now is, uh, yeah, it's not gonna be something wholesome and it might be related to Attack on Titan. So yeah, OP says, screw it. <laughs> Bookmark the page, set the book down and laced up my boots prepared to head off into the night, compelled by a curious thirst for cringe. Yes, something that we all know all too well. <laughs> I opened the door and exited into the cool night air. The roar of the engines greeted me as I stepped out into the shadows of the parking lot. By the flickering lights of the travel plaza, I made my rounds in the curious quest for the poopy coom man, Determined to get an answer to the question that compelled me to hunt him. Now, he had not been gone terribly long. I knew that if I made haste, the odds were good that I might find him running about the small little highway travel stop and discover what strange acts he was so compelled to partake in. Yeah, it seems like it's, it's something he can get involved with from truck stop to truck stop, which makes me think maybe there's... You know, somebody following along and meeting Chris there to do like their attack on Titan cosplay or... <laughs> I don't really know. But soon all will be unveiled. I don't think my mind is twisted enough to predict what might be coming next. <laughs> but let's find out. When I found Chris, he was circling around near where a group of homeless folks had congregated on the edge of the property line. They stood right at the edge near the lawn, underneath a pale incandescent bulb. And as I hung back near the front of the convenience store, I saw Chris gesticulating wildly as he spoke to them, that uniform of his, flapping in the evening breeze as he motioned to them. I could see the admitted look of confusion on their faces as he spoke to them, and I wondered just what it was that Chris was trying to achieve. He wants the homeless people to, to LARP attack on Titan with him? Is that... <laughs> I don't know if I'm following. However, it seemed as if nobody there had anything that he was looking for, and after some heated conversation about something or other, Chris stumbled off into the night once more, prowling around the lot. As I stood watching, I heard a voice behind me, a voice as sultry as a pack-a-day habit. It asked me, Hey, baby, are you looking for a good time? I turned to face the speaker, before me stood a little old lot lizard, somewhere in her 30s, looking as rough as a piece of sandpaper. <laughs> she did her best to strike up a provocative pose, sure to excite the lust of a desperate man. And I remarked, no, I'm good actually. She replied, are you sure? To which I answered in the affirmative. <laughs> I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> Ah, uh, oh, it's fine to me. SpongeBob, anybody? 
<laughs> All right. And then I paused. <laughs> you know what? I continued. I might, however, know someone who is indeed looking for a good time. An eyebrow shot up as she regarded this curious response to her question, and I told her to follow me. A mystery was afoot, and I demanded a revelation. <laughs> I walked across the lot, lizard in tow, toward the poopy coop man who now milled about dejectedly in the dead hours of the night looking for trouble, that cringe-inducing costume in his hand. When he saw me approaching, he started up with a, Hey, hunker doggers, I, I thought you were going to sleep, man. What the hell are you doing out here right now? <laughs> no, you. <laughs> I smiled and said, Hey, Chris, I want you to meet a friend of mine. This is, uh... And I paused, and the lizard volunteered her name to the neckbeard before us. Chris looked at me, confused. He had never seen me with a woman before at this point in my career at this company, and most certainly not with a lady of the night at my own volition. And I could see the gears turning in his head as he tried to process this new series of events. <laughs> yes, it is quite a puzzle, isn't it? I remarked, uh, I thought I'd introduce you two. I figured you guys would get along swimmingly. Chris smiled and replied to me that <laughs> I didn't know you liked to party, Hunker Dunker. So, like, is this your favorite girl or what? Oh, God, dude. <laughs> You're so gross. Uh, your favorite girl. Yeah, just let me try her out. I can't stand it, dude. So far outside my frame of reference. It's killing me inside. <laughs> I replied, no, Chris, I don't party with her. But I figured maybe you two have some common ground. At this point, Chris ignored me for the lizard in tow, and I hovered around as he asked her about her, um, rates and services. <laughs> and she gave him all the lurid details. Chris listened with a degree of enthusiasm befit for a neckbeard in heat, seeking to proposition a working girl. And when he found her rates agreeable, he asked her, uh, how much would I have to pay you uh, to dress up in this outfit and, and roleplay it? <laughs> okay, I wasn't that far off, honestly. <laughs> uh, I guess I can't see where this is going now. Sight beyond sight. <laughs> he held out the costume that he'd been dragging around the parking lot that night to the lizard, and she thought about it for a minute before remarking that if he threw in an extra 20 bucks, she'd dress however he wanted and act however he wanted before they did the do. My searing desire for knowledge had been answered. At what cost? <laughs> uh, really, you could have just guessed and known. You didn't need to confirm it. Chris was trying to get the crackheads to roleplay as his anime girls for the evening. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow. Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> I mumbled, I guess I'll leave you two alone, as Chris took her under his arm and wandered off towards the nearby hotel. I figured that'd be the last I'd see of them for the evening, and with my curiosity now sated, there was very little point in staying up any longer. I figured that this would be the end of everything, and as I settled down into bed to slumber, I knew that I wouldn't see the Poopy Coom Man until sunrise the next day. You know, this interaction is probably one of the reasons that Chris thinks like you're his best buddy in the world, right? You shared your favorite girl with him. How could you do that? Because you're best buddies, right? <laughs> uh, anyways, I woke up to a few rays of sunlight piercing through the windshield, stirring me from my sleep, and as I pushed aside the blankets and crawled out of bed to the poignant absence of one poopy coom man, I looked at the time to see how much longer we had before we needed to get on the road. We had a couple of hours, so I spent the morning milling about, taking a shower, milling around the plaza, and having a little bit of breakfast. Chris had not materialized yet, and so I took the initiative, went over to the hotel and asked about a certain guest by the name of A. Chris Trucker, who had checked in the night before. I told them that he was my co-pilot and it was time to get on the road, and they gave me his room number. 
I wandered down the halls, found his door, and knocked. From the other side, I heard the hurried voice of Chris say, hey, What minute? it? <laughs> I'm guessing I had caught the poopy coo man in the middle of something about which I truly desired no further explanation. When the door opened a crack, I could see Chris's fat face peering out of the opening, and he said, Oh, hey, honker donkers, uh, what do you want, man? <laughs> <laughs> you know we have a job to do, Chris. You're really wringing every last penny out of that 20 bucks, ain't you? <laughs> uh, uh, I replied, Chris, my guy, it's time to go. We gotta get out on the road here in a minute. And he remarked, uh, well, how much time do we have? <laughs> in a minute. I looked at my watch and said, I don't know. Got maybe half an hour before we risk being late on delivery. Chris exclaimed, Perfect! Hey babe, we got time for another episode! Oh, they're just watching Attack on Titan together? <laughs> this is maybe sort of wholesome in a weird way. <laughs> you never know what to expect with Chris, dude. Just when I thought I had it pinned down. <laughs> what a twist! <laughs> uh, I put my hand to my face and asked Chris, are you still playing around with that lot lizard in there, dude? We need to get rolling. Get your clothes on. Chris paused and said, No, I'm teaching her. Teaching her what, Chris? <laughs> I listened as Chris explained to me that last night, as we had all known, he paid that working girl to dress up as a certain fictional cartoon character that he enjoyed. And after that, they had done the damn thing and, well... Chris found that her performance had been rather lackluster. Oh my god. <laughs> Never mind, it's not wholesome at all. I <laughs> take it all back. Uh, I guess that's what happens when you recruit random strangers to act like things they know nothing about. Admittedly upset that his fantasy had not been properly fulfilled, Chris had now taken the burden upon himself to educate this lot lizard on how to properly role play the role of his fantasies so that the next time he came to this truck stop, she could capture the character in all of its stark and nuanced detail and fulfill the frustrations of the poopy coo man. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not wholesome at all. I thought they was just go watch cartoons, you know? Chris was lonely, he needed somebody there with him. But no, it, it's it's much darker than that. I have once again presumed far too much. <laughs> I rolled my eyes and said, What? So you're watching cartoons with courtesans now? <laughs> and I heard him screech, You got cartoons! <laughs> uh, oh, that's right. It's like one of the first episodes that we did. And then he slammed the door in my face and retreated back into the hotel room. I could hear his angry voice through the paper-thin walls as he ranted and raved at this poor little lot lizard about how I had the gall to refer to anime as cartoons. And I can assume that she listened in silence before offering her own interjection about how, well, actually they were cartoons. <laughs> and I know this because I heard Chris shrieking through the glass at that poor little working girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but kind of they are, though. <laughs> then his head just explodes. Uh, inside <laughs> came some shuffling and some banging, as I imagined that the poor lady of the night wasn't going to take no guff, and I could hear Chris stammering, uh, Wait! Where are you going? And I could hear the heated voice of the lizard coming through the other door, saying, Staying away from you! And the door swung wide to reveal the Lady of the Night to the rays of the sun that now lit this outside world. She was still wearing the costume that Chris had provided her. <laughs> oh no! Uh, and I noticed that it was now covered in milky streaks across the front of the jacket. Oh god! No! <laughs> Uh, nowhere near as wholesome as I hoped. 
<laughs> she stormed past me as Chris came running out after her, half naked, shouting for her to come back and return his property. And, and that maybe they could stop fighting whether anime or cartoons and instead focus on the Japanese lessons he had planned. Yeah, Nani, Baka, okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going home. I told Chris to get back inside, get his clothes on, and get his ass to the truck. And he said in a huff, Dude, she's walking off with my stuff. Besides, I paid her good money to watch anime with me. <laughs> I'm gonna get my money's worth, man. <laughs> <laughs> the extra 30 minutes just ain't worth it, dude. Is this about the point where Chris gets beat up again by uh, another gentleman of leisure, the working girl's boss, right? <laughs> What's that, like the third time? I kind of want to see it. All right, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> you show her what for? I remarked that, Chris, we don't got time for that, my dude. We got to get on the road. And he said, well, I guess I'm checking out early anyway. <laughs> gotta get dressed to go round up that costume. Dumb chick thinks she's gonna walk out on a paying customer. She got another thing coming. Yeah, you too. <laughs> I rolled my eyes and reaffirmed to Chris that he needed to get his clothes on once more. And he went inside and started to get dressed in his usual poopy coom rags. When at last he had donned his filthy clothes, he stormed out of the room and I followed him. He went up to the front desk, threw the key on the counter, and then waddled off toward the truck stop in hot pursuit of the lot lizard who he insisted had just robbed him. I mean, she did steal his costume. The 30 minutes, uh, she gave you more than enough time, bro. <laughs> this is over now. It's time to go do work, Chris. But then again, he's probably just not in his right mind. Well, I followed Chris like a lost puppy, trying to persuade him to leave and just drop the issue. I didn't want to be late for our delivery either because I wasn't trying to get penalized, but he was having none of that. He was going to get his costume back and get his money's worth. Dude, this is over already. <laughs> I only expected this to end terribly. <laughs> <laughs> of course, so when at long last, he did in fact catch sighting of that lot lizard prowling the lot in that crusty costume looking for a new trucker dong, I paused and let him go after her. The little lizard was talking to some other dude, propositioning her business to him when Chris came storming up to him. And I could hear him shouting about how she needs to give those clothes back right now. <laughs> Uh, you have uh, an alternative for her to wear right now? He demanded that she take him off this instant right in the middle of the parking lot. And for a minute, the trucker that he had followed was absolutely gobstruck at what the hell was unfolding. Yeah, it ain't gonna be like this, dude. The lot lizard was having none of this, however, and when the poopy coom man stormed up on her while she tried to conduct her business, she simply reached into her purse, scooped out a can of pepper spray, and blasted the poopy coom man square in the face. <laughs> uh, probably didn't even finish that sentence. I could hear his wails of agony as she yelled over him, You want this stupid jacket pack? Fine! She threw it at him as he stumbled around blindly, then this third trucker and the lot lizard, content to disengage from the situation entirely, both climbed into his big rig idling somewhere in the lot, presumably to uh, do unholy things. All the while I could hear Chris squealing in agony like a stuck pig, demanding that she either get back here and watch anime with him this instant or give him a refund. <laughs> Uh, I guess maybe she did owe him one more episode, but was that part of the terms and conditions? Chris does seem fond of the transactional exchanges. This is why we always need a fiscal contract, isn't that right? <laughs> With the situation de-escalated, Chris blind and the lizard nowhere to be found, I approached Chris, who staggered around the lot, coughing and wheezing and half blind, and I asked him, if he was ready to go now. <laughs> he replied, Screw you, Hawker Dockers! And I said, yeah, whatever. 
grabbed him by his shirt, and started to drag him towards our rig. He groped around between wails of agony and eventually found his way into the truck, and by virtue of the simple fact that he couldn't see that day until the blistering pain of capsaicin and mucous membranes wore off, it was I that took us out of the yard that day. The whole way, Chris seethed, remarking that when he got back to that truck stop, he'd find that stupid lizard and get his money back or make her learn Japanese. <laughs> Uh, yeah, quite an ultimatum there. <laughs> Give me $20 or learn an entire language. Just take the 20 bucks, bro. <laughs> I asked him just how much he had paid that toot to watch the cartoons with her, and he told me the rate that she had billed him. It was no insignificant sum either, beating out even my hourly average by a healthy bit. I guess that's the price that some folks will pay in service of their fantasies. From then on out, I let the matter lie as much as I could, but Chris can hang on to things forever when he has a mind to, it seems. We never did encounter that lot lizard again. Whenever Chris and I stop at that travel plaza from this day forward, he made every effort to find her. I remember quite a few times he mentioned it in no uncertain terms that he was going out to try and find her again. I don't know if he was going to try and strong arm her into watching more cartoons and taking Japanese lessons or try to weasel her into doing it with him again with some apologies and whining. But rest assured that whenever we were passing through that town and we hit that particular travel plaza, he was dead set on finding the one that got away. Yeah, that's really weird. <laughs> also dangerous for that girl. But I don't know, I, I guess she's wily. It ain't her first rodeo. <laughs> she probably heard Chris is looking for her. And she's like, okay, I'm going to work another spot now. But yeah, truly, I am terrified of what Chris might do if he found her. That is, that's not good, man. <laughs> and so concludes this particular story about the poopy coo man. I can hear real life of calling my name and I have to attend to it. I'll let you guys know a bit about where things stand at this point in time. I'm still in the interviewing process at the moment. I got a few promising leads on another gig driving some trucks, and I'm hoping it pans out because if we're telling the truth here, I am already getting some itchy feet. Something about being on the road just feels right to me, especially if you have a partner that isn't Chris. <laughs> Additionally, it seems that we are actually moving to legal action. I got a call from my attorney a couple days ago, the paperwork's been filed, and there will be preliminary hearings soon enough. We'll see where all that good stuff goes soon enough. Things are looking up again, and I want to let you all who read these stories and watch the narrations know that I appreciate all of you guys for encouraging me to break loose from a bad situation. Hopefully soon enough we'll be back in the saddle and over this bump in the road. Anyway, until next time. Oh man, I, I, I sure am glad to keep the Chris Trucker stories coming, you know? I hope that the next person Chris rides with also starts telling stories, because Chris will talk about how he's famous on YouTube and show the dude the, the videos, and then, who knows, maybe that dude will come and visit Red X, and I don't know, this is all my headcanon. <laughs> but it could happen! It's not outside the realm of possibility at this point. That is, like, so beyond exciting for me. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, a small life that I lead over here. But yes, I am super glad to see these stories continuing. I thought it was the end, like for real, for real. But it's not. We do have some stuff in the backlog. So I am excited to dive into that even more with you, honka donkas. Don't keep us waiting too long because everybody out here is still hungry for more stories about Chris. My co-pilot is a neckbeard number 26. Yeah, it's getting up there, isn't it? <laughs> hey there, Red X gang. Hi, Yuzumami Hakadakas. Looks like I got a little bit of time to write, so let's not delay any longer, and we will get into another story about Chris. The uninitiated, however, may find themselves wondering, well, who the hell is Chris? Chris is a very fat and sweaty man, surrounded wherever he goes by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. This revolting troglodyte <laughs> has few pleasures in life, 
instead content to dwell within his own personal dark triad of anime, lot lizards, and the crystal. Chris and I used to work together for a major trucking company until I had enough and I decided to burn that bridge. And beautifully burnt it was. <laughs> now, Chris remains. When Chris and I worked together, things were usually okay when he had to drive the truck. Usually. But whenever his shift would end, and in particular when we'd pull over for the night, well, that was when the fun really began in earnest. Then Chris was free to do... Chris things. Chris would become a literal thorn in my side as I would struggle against all odds to try and make him act like a normal human being. This was more often than not in vain. These days, however, I no longer ride with Chris. And a beautiful thing that is, isn't it? Maybe now Chris's dad could step up and actually, you know, get him ride to something. Well, Chris is probably like 30 years old or so. <laughs> it's probably too late for him, honestly. We just need to write that one off. Just stay away. Stay away. Good news! It looks like I found myself a new gig. And after examining my credentials, they decided that they'd like me to come and drive for them starting next week. Wow, quick turnaround. So the short lull of income has been resolved, and now it seems that I'm back on the road. Well, you seem to like to be on the road, so good. Congratulations on the new job. Also nice is that the gig is much more local. I won't have to be going across the country all the time, so I'll actually get to come home at the end of my shifts. Bless up. See, it's all building to something better, dude. I love that. The wife and I are excited for it. It'll be nice for both of us to get to spend some time together and for me to be a bit more of a presence in everybody's lives. Yes, children need their father. Good on you, hunger doggers. I'm loving this. Now, it should go without saying that, of course, searching for that gig meant that I had to keep a close eye on my email inbox. And it seems like every day now, multiple times a day, there's something in there from the poopy coop man himself. This particular story here is a bit of a uh, postscript from where we last left off in our tales about the poopy coom man. Let us delve into this more expository entry regarding our quote unquote friend, Chris. Oh, little exposition, ain't nothing wrong with that. I do that all the time. <laughs> now, I like to read these emails from Chris because a lot of them do give me chuckles. That shouldn't be surprising. What was surprising, however, was that Chris was reaching out to me, asking if I wanted to meet up with him in the next couple of days. No. <laughs> like a nagging ex-girlfriend, he said that, uh, we needed to talk. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but I was curious as to what possible reason the Poopy Coom Man could desire an audience with me. Hung on to that proposition for a couple of days, I really did chew it over, if we're being honest here. I didn't want to see Chris. I mean, I never wanted to see Chris by any metric, but something told me that whatever he was trying to accomplish would certainly, at the very least, be amusing. I'm a curious cat, however, and sometimes I can't leave well enough alone, particularly when afflicted with the endless boredom of being stuck at home. I decided that I would go and accept Chris's efforts to contact me and see just what the hell it was that he wanted. Nothing good, dude. I don't know. I don't know. It could be entertaining, but also maybe let sleeping dogs lie, I think. So I replied to his email, telling him that, you know what? Sure. We can meet up and talk. He recommended a restaurant somewhere nearby, stated the date and the time, and I said that I would be there. When that day came, I told the missus where I was headed and gave her a kiss goodbye. I loaded up in the car and drove about half an hour to try and find the poopy coom man at the agreed upon location and see just what it was that he wanted. When I got to the place, I walked inside and looked around for Chris, who apparently hadn't arrived yet. Ugh, this didn't surprise me. And I figured that the best case scenario of this whole ordeal would be if he got into a car accident on the way here and I got to enjoy a nice meal by myself in peace. <laughs> oh God. Uh, that is so dark. Although I gotta say I don't completely disagree. 
Of course, should that not be the case, I got us a table and sat waiting for the poopy coom man to materialize while I sipped on some water instead. I must have waited at that table for upwards of half an hour from the appointed time. I was getting ready to leave. Visions of the jaws of life peeling back crumpled metal to pull the poopy coom man out of a collapsed vehicle danced in my head. <laughs> You really do feel a certain type of way, don't you? <laughs> uh, uh, admittedly, I was enjoying the psychic television that now entertained me. Sadly, however, and eventually, the front door swung wide, and the fat shadow that blotted out the sun stood upon the threshold, beaming around the restaurant, looking for me as other patrons desperately looked to get away from the pungent reek that emanated from his fragrant folds. <laughs> I waved to him, gingerly, a bit ashamed that I would be seen in public with this guy, but I figured, you know what? It's not like any of these people here know me anyways, and it was my own curiosity that had dragged me into this meeting. I didn't have to be here. I honestly, I'm still not sure why you're here, but if it keeps the stories flowing, I can't be too mad at you, I guess. <laughs> When he noticed me, he approached my table. Hey, Hawker Doggers. <laughs> it's been a long time, man. And I mumbled, not long enough. <laughs> he pulled out a chair and grabbed a seat. I stared at him while I sipped on my water cup. Chris had gotten dressed up for today's occasion. Oh, God. <laughs> Can you imagine what he thinks dressing up is? A pair of well-fitted slacks hung over brightly polished dress shoes. A properly sized sports coat clung to his frame and matched a rather nice hat that donned his head. You might have mistaken him for a legitimate businessman if it wasn't for some anime girl t-shirt he had on underneath the coat. <sighs> the guy just can't grow up, it seems. You were so close, Chris. Even daddy's money can't save him from himself. I'm surprised he made it as far as he did, honestly. You know, Daddy bought him a nice fitted suit, but he just couldn't be seen in public without letting everybody know that he likes anime. Let it go, bro. <laughs> we sat there for a bit in a terse, awkward silence. I, waiting for Chris to spill the beans and elucidate the reason why he had requested this meetup between him and myself. Chris stirred nervously beneath my unwavering glare, and I could tell instantly that whatever subject matter was on his mind, was one that was certain to precipitate discomfort in our immediate locale. Maybe he was embarrassed about it. Good. He should be embarrassed. <laughs> I'm still not convinced that he legitimately knows how to feel embarrassed, but I guess we'll see. Still, I didn't interrupt him. I gave him ample time. I was waiting for the floodgates to fail and release the voluminous tripe that it held back. Eventually, he found his voice and started to speak. So, uh, hawker dockers. <laughs> My eyebrows shot up as he began his proposition. Uh, I've been thinking about everything over the last week or two, you know? And I got to thinking, man. Well, what you did was really uncool. <laughs> uh, I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> Note my distinct lack of surprise at this vein of conversation. Still, I let him continue further. Now, I like you, man. I look on you as a very dear friend of mine. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I also know you didn't really want to lose your job. And truth be told, I don't even think that you should lose your job, man. You're my friend, and, and I don't want you to go away. I still don't know where he gets that friend bit from. I mean, you helped him out, you tried to treat him like a normal human being, I think that's more than most people give him. He doesn't have much else as far as interaction, Honker Dockers, so yes, he's clinging to this one real hard. And now he's trying to get you back to your old job? No. No! <laughs> Not like this! Uh, now, I know that we had a bit of a falling out on the last trip that we took, but... I thought about it, and I talked to my dad, and he said you could have your job back if you apply again, and I give it the go-ahead, bro. But if I'm gonna give you your job back, well, you gotta do something for me. 
Yeah, I'm sure. It's purely transactional. No, I'm good. I got a new job. <laughs> I'm up and out. What? A magnanimous offer. How could I ever reject it? Easily. <laughs> However, I did want to hear the juice. He licked his greasy little lips and continued saying, You get those stories you wrote about me taken off the internet. You agree to not write any more of them? And I'll make sure you get hired back, bro. That's it. That's my one condition. <laughs> then you gotta come to me and ask me. I mean, taking them down off Reddit, that's all well and good, but they're still up on YouTube, so... Chris is gonna come to me next. <laughs> Look, can you take them down? I don't know. How much you offering? Six figures should be enough to take them down. That's fine. But I never said I wouldn't put them right back up afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's curious. We're reading a new one right now, aren't we? I wonder what happened next. I smiled and said, Gee, that's great and all, Chris, and I do appreciate you trying to get me my old job back, but if we're being totally honest, I found myself another job already. One where I don't have to deal with you. And what's more is that I don't actually have the power to take those stories down, bro. The guy who reads them? Yeah, that's not my channel, that's somebody else. I've got no power over what he does. Even if I did have power over him, I don't think I'd go and take him down anyways, just because I know it gets under your skin. <laughs> that's true. Six figures would be really nice, but <laughs> annoying Chris, not taking Chris's money, letting him know his money's no good here, that is a delicious offer in itself. Hmm. Also, I'll let you in on one little secret. I actually like writing them. It's much, much cheaper than therapy, and it's a good way to get all this BS off my chest. No, you can just deal with the fact that they're out there and that more are coming. <laughs> and if you don't like the fact that they're out there, well, that's because you know they're true. And you know that you're a piece of crap for acting that way. You want to feel better about them existing? Maybe you should work on bettering yourself. Damn, just facts. The comments section has had a lot of good suggestions for Chris uh, on ways to better himself. I don't think I've seen any actual comments from him, but who knows, maybe I missed it. Maybe he wrote to the email that's attached to the channel or something like that on my about page. Is he smart enough to do that? Did I just give him the key to get in contact with me? <laughs> I suppose time will tell. Chris prickled like a cactus at the suggestion that all of his wheeling and dealing was getting smacked down at the moment of its proposition. I could tell he didn't like it. I could also tell that me getting back my job was merely an incidental lever that he could pull to try and get me to do what he wanted me to do. However, upon the revelation that everything was out of his control and that I didn't want my job back anyways, he decided that he needed to change up his tactics. What sort of new tactics did he have up his sleeve, you ask? The one that he stood by throughout the ages, of course. The whinging and the whining started up in earnest. Yeah, I guess I could have guessed that one. Chris even got out of his chair and crawled to me on his knees like a fat, dejected bachelor reeking of crap and regret, <laughs> approaching me with a desperate request. Bro, this is so uncomfortable. In the middle of a restaurant? <laughs> Get back in your chair. <laughs> he held up his hands in supplication, offering an invisible ring of Sauron to the one that he sought to proposition, and said, Damn it, bro. I need this, man. I can't have that stuff circulating about me. What if someone finds out who I actually am? Oh, and trust me, people are trying. <laughs> I shrugged, turned back to my drink, and said, That's not my problem, dude. If you're worried about being found out, then maybe you should change, so that people can't put it together. Have you considered that if you started acting like a normal person, you'd have nothing to worry about? I stirred my drink as he screeched at me, I DON'T WANNA CHANGE! <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't, buddy. <laughs> uh, he said this loud enough 
to jar the attention of half the restaurant towards the scene that he was making, I smiled and waved to a few of them to express, it's all right, we're just having a lover's quarrel. <laughs> uh, oh, that, that creates quite a mental picture, doesn't it? Then I turned to the poopy coo man and I whispered coldly, too bad. I can't help you, Chris. You've got to help yourself. Now, if there's nothing else you want, then I guess we're done here. Have a nice life. I stood up, brushing his hands away from my clothes, revealing the greasy streaks that his mitts had left on my pants. Ugh. <laughs> then summarily, I left a few dollars on the table. I was ready to make my way to the exit when I heard him get up behind me, practically on the verge of tears, begging me pleading me, saying, please, man, just, just delete the stories. <laughs> uh, they're anonymous, Chris. It's okay. There's a reason that I do mostly anonymous Reddit stories. I haven't gone after anybody that has a name and a face for exactly this reason. So feel comfort in that fact. And yes, please change for the better. OP simply told him, no, <laughs> and walked toward the exit, but the whole way he shadowed me in that characteristic desperation of his. I stepped outside, and for a moment, all was calm. I guess he had accepted the inevitability of the situation now unfolding, and was contemplating just letting the whole ordeal lie. That, however, as we all know, is wishful thinking. Yeah, I think the one thing that I could say about Chris is that he's super determined. When he sets his mind to something, by golly, he's gonna get it accomplished. Even if it's the worst possible thing to get accomplished. <laughs> As I got out the door and started making my way back to my car, soon after I could hear the thundering pounding of Chris hot on my heels. I guess he had taken a moment to soak in the revelation that I was powerless to take down the stories. And worse, that even if I was... I would not do so. Desperation was yielding to violence. He came around my side and interposed himself between me and the rest of the lot, huffing, red in the face, prickling with agitation. There in the middle of the thronging masses coming and going, he declared to me with a stubby finger poke to the chest, uh, So what's it gonna take? For me to get you to help me out on this one, huh, honker dockers? Do I gotta beat you here in this parking lot in front of the whole damn world? <laughs> you are beyond delusion. <laughs> uh, I mumbled, you're welcome to try, and raised my hands, ready to box. He recoiled as I took a fighting stance, however. Some far-off memory of physical injury soliciting a visceral reaction that he simply could not suppress. Yeah, he remembers. <laughs> Try to act like the big dog, but you, you know deep down that you ain't. He knew how this would end, and despite the hard front he tried to muster, he truthfully wanted none of it. I put my hands down as I realized that his threats were idle, and he wasn't actually looking for a physical altercation. Chris, however, frustrated that he wasn't getting his way, frustrated he couldn't strong arm me into finding a way to delete the forever archive of human memory and the internet, decided to attempt to wield the last possible weapon that he had in his arsenal, the one tool that for so long had yielded him results, the appeal to authority. Daddy, daddy, he's being mean to me. <laughs> You know what? Screw you, Hawker Doggers. If you're not going to take those stories down, then I'll have to drag you to court and sue you for defamation. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's how it works, buddy boy. The stories might be embellished, but I believe that the core of it is the truth. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed and laughed and laughed. And then when I was done laughing, I laughed even more. <laughs> I could see the confusion etch itself into his expression as I did so, because I'm sure this trump card of his might have even worked in the past. It wouldn't today, however, because I might have talked to my lawyer about the stories that I've written about the time, and my lawyer considered taking up my lawsuit about this precise subject, and the beauty of it all? Yeah, the particular party upon whom they are based is never expressly named. 
We are all good on the defamation front, baby. High five. See, that's why I avoid it for YouTube videos as well. <laughs> what really tickled me the most, however, was the threat of a legal intercession by Chris. Especially after the gears that were quietly turning in the background, which he could not even perceive. At least, not yet. He looked at me dumbstruck as I so casually and coolly brushed off what he perceived to be the biggest threat that he could fling at me. <laughs> when at last I calmed down, wiping the tears of laughter from the corner of my eyes, I placed my hands on Chris's shoulders, looked him square in the face, and said, Dude, please, go ahead. You'll be able to make your case in court soon enough anyways. Oh, is that the first time that uh, Honker Donkers revealed that he was taking Chris to court for all this? You might have done yourself a disservice because now daddy's gonna like pony up and get a, a massively expensive lawyer, right? God, I would love to be in the courtroom for this. <laughs> I could see the blood drain from his face as he mouthed, uh, What do you mean, soon enough? And I told him that I had been talking to a lawyer for quite some time now, looking to take legal action against the company that employed both him and I. And that just this past week, we were preparing to move ahead with our case against them. The papers were filed, and the summons should be well on its way, and from there, it would be an issue of me wringing them out to dry for every last penny I could squeeze from them. Chris was at a loss for words, as he realized that the consequences of his actions were coming home to roost once again, and he began to stammer, hey, bro, bro, you, you, you can't do that. <laughs> Uh, God, he just thinks he's gonna win, and he never does. It's beautiful. Au contraire, Monsieur Trucker. I already did. I patted him on the shoulder with condescension, and then I pushed past him again as he followed me like a lost puppy, begging, pleading, asking me, Wait, wait, we don't actually gotta settle it in court, man. What do you want, buddy? I could give you plenty of money, dude. <laughs> Uh, and I said, what's the big deal? I thought you wanted to legally drag me just like two minutes ago. Can't take it? <laughs> I would be so tempted by the money. But yes, that's how he's gotten away with it for this long. So don't take the money. It's time to start a paper trail. Hunker Dockers! Started Chris, visibly pained at the hypothetical prospects that he explained to me. If my dad gets taken to court as a result of my alleged actions, I'm going to be out of a job and a place to stay, man. Literally sleeping in a cardboard box beside the road, dude. You don't want that to happen to me, do you? Bro, we're friends. You don't do that to friends. <laughs> uh, we are not friends, and I don't care. He tried his best to give me an ameliorating smile, meant to stir my sympathies for him, and I met it with an impish grin at the thought of him suffering retribution. I thought about this sweet trifecta of a homeless, unemployed, penniless Chris sleeping in a cardboard box in the middle of downtown Los Angeles for a moment before I said nothing and kept walking to my car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's cold-blooded, but you tried. It, 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 you, you just can't fix it any other way. Taking his money isn't going to fix it. Yes, it's time to learn some hard lessons, Chris. Sorry, not sorry. I could hear him shout again as he followed me and said, Hey, dude, did you hear me? I, I said I won't have a, a place to stay or a job if you go ahead and do this, Hogger Dockers. Is that what you want, man? Show me a little bit of mercy, dude. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> You've shown no mercy to anyone, Chris. Look, I'll break out the checkbook right now. How much do you want? Just tell me and we can forget about all of this. Name the number and we can make this whole thing go away. And you can tell your lawyer to drop the case and everyone wins. We can settle this right now. No, no, we can't. Like I said, the money is super tempting, but you're not going to learn anything if I take it. This is an opportunity for you to better yourself, and I suggest that you take it. I offered no response, however, and unlocked the door to my car, climbing inside as Chris 
hovered around me, begging and pleading with me all the way across the parking lot. I offered no further response and instead shut the door and fired up my vehicle and pulled out of the lot as Chris ran half-assedly behind my vehicle, <laughs> screaming and shouting that I needed to come back and hear him out and show him a little mercy. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but no. The next couple days passed by in relative peace. Still in limbo between starting a new gig at this prospective company and sitting at home, I couldn't help but check my emails because they had become rather entertaining as of late. You should share those emails, honestly. I don't know what format to do it or how to get it on the channel, but I think people would be interested. Right? Comment section? Let me know. <laughs> I knew beforehand that the Poopy Coom Man had probably written a deluge of messages to me regarding the discussion that we had just the other day. And now I had to see what sort of tripe was filling my inbox. And by filled, I mean that as no misnomer. There were a few common themes amongst them, either oscillating between vaguely threatening or desperately pleading page-long illegible scribbles as the Poopy Coom Man tried to bring me around to see his side of things and why I should do everything in my power to make sure that the summons did not arrive at his house. I ignored most of these. The one, however, that caught my interest was one titled, Peh, Suck It, Nerd! <laughs> I opened it, and I read it. Inside, Chris was gloating. It seemed as if the summons did arrive at his house, as intended, and while it was expressly meant for the owner of the trucking company that we worked for, i.e. Chris's dad, Chris had managed to intercept it before his father got his hands on it. Isn't that illegal or something? <laughs> Chris laughed and laughed and laughed at me, remarking that now his dad would never see it, and that my deliberate efforts to drive him into poverty and homelessness and undermine his entire life would all come to naught. How can Chris not see he's the one that undermined his own life, and now he's going as far as undermining the company that his dad owns because the dad's not gonna show up to court? <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, he just ruins everything he touches. I smirked because, well, while I'm not necessarily a legal scholar, it's pretty common knowledge that failure to appear at court usually results in the judge ruling in your favor in absentia of the accused party. But, you know, if that was how Chris wanted to play this game, pfft, I wasn't about to stop him. <laughs> Let alone offer any input of my own. Nope, I figured I'd just let him hold on to that summons and never show it to his dad for all I cared. <laughs> uh, I wanted to offer some reply. Hey Chris, do you want to ruin your life? Because uh, that's how you ruin your life. But instead, I left the matter alone. I didn't think that the Poopy Coom Man's own stupidity would be my best bet for a well-deserved payday, but in lieu of everything that had already occurred in the long-lived process that culminated in this lawsuit that I was bringing forward, I should not have been surprised. Honestly, probably the best thing that could have happened. That dad could hire, like, a, a big gun lawyer, <laughs> but instead he's just not gonna show up. <laughs> uh, each day now, almost like clockwork, there seems to be a new email gloating to me in my inbox about how I should have just settled it with him in the parking lot. Should have just named the price and took his money to shut up. And my, now my lawsuit was going nowhere. And, and Chris was off the hook scot-free because he managed to intercept that parcel of documents bound for his father. As if all of this was just going to disappear because his daddy wouldn't happen to see the paperwork. <laughs> uh, I don't know how you could be so dumb. How did you get this far in life? Oh yeah, because money, I guess. And he seems to think like that's how you solve everything. Honestly, I can't wait to see his offer hit my inbox. So I can tell him no. No thank you. <laughs> this is all part of the lesson learning process. I think I was just checking the emails at this point because I wanted to enjoy the climb before the fall, and a delicious climb it was turning out to be. I'm kinda hoping that the fall email comes soon, but we have a while to wait because, well, everything is still in legal limbo. 
Yeah, these things take a while. There are ample days left before a response to their summons is required. At least a few weeks. The ball is currently in Chris's court, and we'll see what he decides to do. My thoughts are that he's going to sit on those papers until the chickens come home to roost, and when they do come home to roost, all the horrible fallout that he alleged he would experience by his dad getting the summons would only be amplified by the fact that Chris had the audacity to try and hide something so dire from his father in the first place. Not too bright. <laughs> Regardless of his course of action, I'm rather confident that when everything is said and done, the cards will be coming up, Mommy Honker Donkers. That concludes today's stories, guys. Real life doesn't stop. I got a few things to take care of around the house right now. Seems I'm playing house these days, but that's okay. The missus has appreciated the extra help. Don't worry, there's still plenty of tales about Chris to come in the backlog, and I'm sure you guys are curious as well regarding the details of this legal action I've been taking against him. I'll reveal what I can when I can on that front, but we may just stick to backlog stories moving forward until we get the ruling in court. The audacity of this prick is just too mind-numbing not to share. Anyways, until next time, guys. I think the Joaquin Phoenix Joker said it best. You get what you deserve. <laughs> You've been getting away with shenanigans for a long time now, Chris, and, and now it's all over. Now you have to deal with what's coming. Maybe after seeing this video, he'll realize how stupid it was to try and hide the summons and hand it over to his dad, and then Honker Doggers might have more of a legal battle on his hands. I'm also eager to get some backlog stories about Chris, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait just a little longer and see what comes up. My co-pilot is a neckbeard number 27. I'm pretty sure this is one of the longest things that we've ever been privy to, right? The longest series ever was like 34 parts. Honker Doggers, <laughs> he's in it to win it, bro. <laughs> uh, uh. Hey there, Red X gang. Hello, Honker Doggers. It looks like I finally got a bit of time to write, so let's not delay any longer and get into another story about Chris. Is this like going back into the past again? I like those stories. The uninitiated, however, might be wondering, who is Chris? Well, playlist link in the description. Eh, but if you don't want to go there, I'll just tell you that Chris is a very fat and sweaty man, surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. Chris and I used to work together for a trucking company, a major one, and we would take turns driving the big rig down the road. Whenever my shift would end, especially so whenever we would pull over at the end of the night, Chris would find himself free to go and do... Eh, Chris things. You know, the sort of things. The sort of things that usually involved his own personal dark triad of lot lizards, anime, and crystal. Despite my best efforts to make Chris act like a normal human being, to remind him that he existed in polite company and that he should shape up, this fetid abomination of a man proved near incapable at almost every twist and turn. The good news is at least that I no longer have to ride with Chris. Yeah, so much has changed in so little time, let me tell you. But I'm, I'm glad we got some stories that we can look back on, you know? I just got into the yard that morning, bright and early. Too early for this crap, if we're being real honest. <laughs> I feel that. I begrudgingly gathered up my personal belongings into my backpack and made my way through the fleet yard looking for our rig. I was ready to hit the road and get this haul done with as quick as possible. And as always, I was praying for no complications. And as always, I'm sure you ran into some complications. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this was only the beginning of another good couple of weeks out there on the road, so I knew deep down that my tortures were only just beginning, and that on a long enough time frame, some form of complication would be inevitable. I mean, at least you're realistic about it. <laughs> I knew that they would be even more pronounced when I found our truck, and took pause to soak in the sight that stood before me. Something was amiss, as evidenced by the stickers of several Japanese cartoon characters plastered to the outside of the rig. 
Uh, yeah, I guess. I'm surprised that Chris didn't try this one out like a lot earlier, especially considering that daddy owns the truck and such like that. Some of them were dressed scantily and provocatively, lusty expressions beaming at me from the side of the metal cabin, their big jiggly booba dooba jutting out of the lingerie that was too small to contain those succulent masses. <laughs> You're into cartoon girls, are you? <laughs> the truck jostled and bounced on its suspension, and I knew that the odious occupant inside bared all the responsibility for this sudden and undesirable change. And I wondered whether the jostling of the rig was from Chris waddling around, or was he quickly rubbing one out to these cartoon Jezebels that he had pasted everywhere. <laughs> Uh, cartoon Jezebels. Okay. <laughs> uh, but you're kind of into it though, right? You can admit it to me. That's fine. I opened the door and climbed inside. The poopy coom man exuding manic energy, possibly not of the stimulant induced variety, as he decorated the inside of the cab with more of those same stickers. Big old mommy honker donkers exploding forth from two tight brassieres and corsets worn by questionably aged cat girls with big, shiny cartoon eyes. I mean, if they're questionably aged cat girl, can they really have honk mommy honker donkers? I guess they can. It's anime, whatever, make all your dreams come true. It was then that I felt the tension of a migraine headache coming on with each new sticker that was adhered to the inside of the truck. I didn't even start the conversation that day with a, hey Chris, how are you? But rather went straight to, what the hell is all this? And why is it on my truck? And then they're gonna argue about whose truck it actually is. Well, my daddy owns it. <laughs> Chris paused at my words, turned to me and smiled and told me that uh, today was a very special day for him. Oh, great. <laughs> I groaned and demanded of him again why the inside of our space that we had to share was covered in scantily clad stickers of Japanese cartoon characters, sheepishly gesturing to one who was wearing a cow pattern bikini and a cowbell around her neck. Yeah, that's, that's, I've seen that one before too. Is that what we're into these days? Ladies dressed up like cows? I mean, at least they're not choosing to dress up like wolves which is, of course, the most basic thing ever. But cows, really? <laughs> that same cheesy grin came from the poopy coom man as he remarked that uh, today was Chris Trucker's isekai birthday party. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, happy birthday, poopy coom man. <laughs> Isa, Isa what now? I stammered back, totally confused, searching for an explanation, but unsure if I even wanted one. Eh, uh, isekai, dude. Come on, don't tell me you're so uncultured that you don't know what isekai is. Yeah, please forgive me. <laughs> As I made my way to the clipboard to check out our pre-drive paperwork, I mumbled, it's bold of you to assume that I even bothered to find out what isekai is. Chris continued at this remark, bearing the offense he took at my uninformed plebeian tastes, instead telling me as coolly as he could that isekai is a genre of anime, bro, where the protagonists get sucked out of their mundane reality and into an awesome adventure. Wow, that sounds great. Hey, bro, I heard you like escapism, so we put escapism inside your escapism so you can escape while you escape, right? <laughs> <laughs> I put down the clipboard and turned my uneasy gaze towards Chris, raising an eyebrow as I watched him put up yet another decal, precariously close to my bunk. Visions of the poopy coo man massaging the tent in his sweatpants precariously close to my sleeping head flashed in my psyche. And you know that's totally fiction and that you're not gonna get, uh, isekai'd now, right? 
Like the world we live in is bound by physics and rules and doesn't actually work like that. People don't get sucked into dimensions full of cartoon characters, Chris. Unless you're taking enough of those stimulants, I guess. <laughs> he grimaced and declared, they're not cartoons. <laughs> yeah, they are though. And then he went back to stickering the cab. He didn't answer me any further, but instead started singing what I can only presume to be a theme song from one of his favorite cartoons, broken Japanese and the throaty nasal groans of our birthday beard filled the cab. <laughs> uh, and I just shrugged and said, whatever. It seemed harmless enough, I guess. I mean, what's the worst that could come of Chris decorating the truck with some cartoon characters for his birthday after all? So long as he didn't jerk it near my sleeping head, I guess it wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> uh, but he's going to do that. You know that, right? If it made the Poofy Coon Man happy for a day and kept him out of my hair, I decided to just let it lie and just pretend that I wasn't under the scrutinizing gaze of this lusty cartoon material. I settled into the passenger seat, pulled out my laptop, and started a movie to whittle away the hours, remarking to Chris that he better hurry up and get his ass in the driver's seat because we needed to get a move on and get down the road. He came lumbering up from the back, one last sticker in his hands, and slapped that lusty cartoon girl right on the dash where he could snatch coom brain stares at her as he drove us down the road. Whatever. As long as the truck didn't crash and he kept the vehicle under control, it'd be fine. Yeah, we all tell ourselves stuff like that, you know? <laughs> as long as we don't die in a giant fireball, it'll be okay. <laughs> this is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. Uh, then he fired up the GPS and the usual tired podcast, and we pulled out of the yard and out of the city limits to the exuberant cries of Naughty Baka! Yep, yep. <laughs> Same stuff, different day, I do suppose. I did my best to ignore Chris for the entirety of that shift, which, to my delight, was very easy that day. The podcast wasn't so spicy today, so the shouts were few and far between, and seldom broke my attention from my movies when he did in fact feel the need to make his little outbursts, and whatever was going through Chris's mind tangentially related to his isekai birthday seemed to keep him occupied enough with his own thoughts. Isekai birthday party for a 30-something year old man? Uh, I don't know, man. To each their own, but... <laughs> I really don't like where this is going. Maybe he was over there pretending that he was actually out on some magical anime adventure as he drove the big rig. Sure to meet that cowgirl with the big honker donkers that he plastered up on the ceiling right above his bunk. <laughs> I didn't ask too many questions on what was going through his mind because it all seemed to keep him fairly preoccupied. Yeah, don't look a gift horse in the mouth, right? And anything that kept Chris preoccupied and prevented him from engaging with me in any capacity is generally a good thing. Now, that boy ain't right, sure, but if he's not bugging me, whatever, man. Everything's cool, baby. At least for a little while, while he's not bugging you, but the fact is he's going to inevitably bug you again. We rode along in silence until somewhere near the end of his shift, Chris mumbled to me, Hey, Hawker Dockers, uh, I gotta ask you something, bro. Do you? <laughs> I groaned and replied, No, you don't, Chris. <laughs> uh, and he said, Ah, come on, it's really important, dude. Begrudgingly, I paused my movie and turned to him. What do you want? Chris smiled a sly grin and asked me, hey, Do you know what's gonna happen tonight? Don't know, don't care. <laughs> I had a sinking feeling in my gut, and so I responded with complete honesty, remarking that, Yeah, 
You're gonna go off the deep end with this stupid whole, it's my birthday thing, and you'll get into trouble with some lady of the night, or a pimp, or another truck driver, or a gangbanger, or a homeless dude, or the travel plaza staff, or, or something like that. You're gonna get into trouble, and piss them off, then ask me for help, and cry a river about it, and when I do offer you some advice on how to fix the situation or what to do, you're gonna refuse to listen to any advice or take my help. You'll call me a beta male, get yourself beaten to a pulp, and then blame me for all of it when we finally drive out of there, assuming, that is, that you don't just get hospitalized. Well, you got this down to a science, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, one or all of those things is definitely going to happen. Chris scoffed and said, No, dude, that's not what's gonna happen, man. Are you sure? <laughs> you clearly don't understand how Isekai works. Then he audibly whispered, Isekai. One more time while waving his hand in front of him, as if it was some kind of magical incantation sure to pluck him from the realm of the mundane into anime land, as if the mere recitation of the word was sure to make all of his fantasies materialize before him in the flesh. <laughs> How's that working out? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure that sounded a lot cooler in your head, Chris. Seeing it in real life, yeah, it's kind of weird. I'd appreciate if you didn't do that no more. <laughs> yeah, I could feel that trouble was a brewing, all right. I tried to head it off before it even started and said, Chris, look, just drop this whole silly isekai thing right now. And I'll tell you what I'll do, man. I'll take you out for dinner and drinks tonight and we can celebrate your birthday and we'll call it a night and hit the road bright and early tomorrow and nothing bad will happen. What do you say, bud? <laughs> Chris retorted, What's the matter, honker donkers? Afraid of a little adventure? I mumbled, Only when it's your brand of adventure, Chris. And we continued on in silence. I mean, as usual, you've tried to save him from himself. <laughs> There's no winding it back now. He's determined to do what he's going to do. Somewhere around Las Vegas, we had our shift change, and I took control of the truck. With the paperwork completed and the seats now changed, I put the rig into gear and took us down the road once more. We carried on in relative peace throughout that shift, as Chris furtively wandered around the cab, mumbling to himself as he surveyed the stickered handiwork of his plentiful waifus. Yes, he's got a whole harem of stickers. How lucky! <laughs> <laughs> Curiosity overtook me, and I listened in to the inane musings of the poopy coom man as he clambered around the back of the cab, wondering if he was whispering sweet nothings to the stickered girls, or if perhaps he was up to something else completely. Eh, katana, check. Adventures hat, check. The waifu. Where's my waifu? Eh, I guess you'll have to survive, Odi Chad. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're me, Cam. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't buy like all Mikasa stickers, right? Honestly, I don't think I could listen to this without my spine imploding. Like in real life, nah, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna do my best to ignore every second. Just pretend I'm not here. When I peered over my shoulder, I saw Chris staring lovingly at one of the stickers that he had posted on the wall. He ran his fingers over the glossy surface of that sticker, his fingers pausing at the boobas for just, uh, a little bit too long. This dude was getting into his fantasies, all right. And I saw that he had donned his little fedora and clipped his katana to his belt in preparation for whatever grand adventure awaited him when he was finally free of responsibility for the night. Just, just let him go, honka donkers. Look. You tried to fix this, it's over. I don't want you getting out of the truck chasing around Chris, okay? It's not good for you, it's not good for him. He needs to learn some of his own lessons, finally, please. <laughs> he rambled around the back of the cab for the whole shift, making all sorts of preparations for the grand evening that he believed to be coming. And I did my very best to tune it all out and focus on the road before us instead. I think that's well advised. 
When at last we pulled over that fateful evening, the sun had gone down and we were somewhere on the outskirts of Reno, the portal to the magical world of anime land must have opened up and beckoned wide because Chris bounced up and down in the seat beside me, fidgeting with his hat and his sword, ready to go out in the truck stop and prowl for that evening's amusements in earnest. Can we stop him from bouncing? The shocks on this truck, they're already gone, bro. Just from you getting in and out of it. <laughs> As I cut the engine for the night, I turned to him and said, Dude, the offer for dinner still stands. Just drop this whole thing right now. Take off your stupid hat and that sword and let's go get something to eat, man. It's on me. What do you say? <laughs> Chris responded, I'll tell you what, honker knockers. I'll do you what better. I'll keep this dashing hat and trusty blade with me tonight and find my isekai adventure. And hey, you can even come along and be my sidekick. And you and I will set off in search of the great quest that awaits us. Or what, are you a sissy and like <laughs> afraid of some waifus? Is he serious right now? Like, I really have to ask myself that question a lot when we're reading some Chris Trucker stuff. <laughs> I don't know if he's just on one. He dropped a few a, a few tabs of acid before he got in the truck or something like that. But is this really how you want to spend your birthday? Is this really how you want to spend your life? Oh, I guess it is. OP responds, Sissy I am then. It's your funeral, bro. Get the hell out of here and don't say that I didn't tell you so. Chris stood without so much as a word further to me and headed off into the night, his katana bumping against the truck as he climbed out. I wondered how long it would be before this wannabe samurai ended up in a jail cell for the night because he pulled that thing out of his sheath and threatened some poor soul, but uh, I tried not to think about it as I stared around the cab under the watchful vigilance of those lusty anime stickers that he had plastered everywhere. My God, the breasts of those things were like so big that my back ached in sympathy for those poor cartoon girls. <laughs> uh, if I couldn't save Chris from myself, I could at least save myself from the barely contained cartoon breasts around me and the sympathetic back pain that they solicited from this tired old man. I found a paint scraper inside our toolbox and without any remorse whatsoever, I set to work, cleaning up one of his less foul messes that he had left in the cab. I mean, honestly, I don't see a problem with, with doing that. It's your cab too. Keep it clean and such. And probably when he comes back, he's going to be so twacked out, he's not going to notice anyways. <laughs> I had scraped off a multitude of stickers already, and it had been about an hour or so, but the scummy residue that they left on the paneling of the truck was tougher than the scummy residue that Chris unintentionally left on everything that he touched. <laughs> it was about time for me to go and turn up some more rigorous measures to remove the offending cat girls in question, and so I went into the truck stop and browsed the aisles before settling on a couple of bottles of rubbing alcohol, which I was certain would do the trick of waifu removal. <laughs> With my purchase complete, I headed back into the night and towards our rig to complete the cleanup process. Now, on my way back to the rig, I gave pause. As I could see by the flickering streetlights of the evening that Chris was on the prowl about the property, looking for trouble and Chris things. No, no, do not pay any attention to that. Eyes on the prize, okay? He's made his choice. You can't save him! <laughs> How have we not learned that by now? You can't save him! Chris flitted past the edge of the streetlight's dim glow, a dapper fedora bobbing atop his head, while his hand rested on the sword that hung from his hip. And I wondered how nobody had called the cops yet on him as he crawled across the lot in the dead hours of the evening, role-playing as a ninja or a knight or whatever the hell the Poopy Coop Man believed himself to be at that moment. Fat ninja! <laughs> I paused as he went from trash can to trash can, thrusting his hands deep inside of them pulling the juicy limb back with a face of disgust 
as his ham fists wrapped around the discarded refuse of other truckers and disappointment was plastered on his face. I'm curious, I do want to know what's happening, but I really don't need to know what's happening. You know, slightly curious, but it's not going to be anything good. I'm not going to be glad about the answer that I found, so let's just continue on. Take the rubbing alcohol back to the truck, finish cleaning up the stickers, okay? Please, can we do that? If we did that, it probably wouldn't end up to be a story, right? <laughs> I figured I'd go rib him a bit before I headed back to the truck. So I tucked the bottles of alcohol under my arm and beeline towards the lot where Chris furtively dug through the garbage. What you looking for, Chris? Is the portal to the anime world in there? <laughs> uh, I craned my neck a bit to see what he was digging through. It looked to be mostly food trash and plastic cups and even a couple of piss bottles because we truckers are indeed infamous for these bottles of urine. Oh, that's where the neckbeards picked it up from. It's kind of like the chicken or the egg, right? <laughs> Chris shot upright, a look of shock on his face that I had come out at this late hour. I had surprised him in the middle of his secret trash stealing act. And he even looked a little ashamed as he gingerly wiped the juicy contents of the can onto a greasy spot on his sweatpants that glistened with the sheen of trash splooge. Oh, God! <laughs> Uh, yep, that's some, that's some hard cringe right there. Everything that I know about human biology tells me that Chris should be dead at this point, right? How, how does he just continue existing? I could tell that Chris had been tweaking, by the way, his jowls jittered with every word that he spoke. Oh, uh, hey, hey there, hunker uh, uh, I'm just looking for something right now. I remarked, in the trash. What are you looking for? He motioned back towards the edge of the lot, where a hobo pushing a shopping cart full of aluminum cans and plastic bottles stood, a shadowy specter in the dark, staring at us both as we interacted by the garbage, pensively waiting for something from the Poopy Coom Man. Yeah, this is really weird. He's out here tweaking looking for shinies, which I guess that part doesn't surprise me, but who is this shadowy figure? You know what? I probably shouldn't even ask that question. I don't want to know. Go back to the truck. Continue peeling off the stickers. It's the only way to be safe. <laughs> Chris explained that Sir Hoboton had sent Chris on a quest for recyclables that fine evening. And as a reward for his loyal service, the Duke of Detritus was going to give him crystals in compensation for his dutiful labors. I said, Chris, my guy, don't you usually just like buy a bag and that's it? Just hit an ATM and be done with it. I don't want you coming back to the truck smelling like sun-baked garbage, dude. Chris denied at that point that he had ever paid for drugs, saying, uh, That's illegal, and I shouldn't mischaracterize him like that. Oh, firm arbiter of the law of the realm, how dare I slight thee? <laughs> I'm honestly curious how Chris can deny things that are like so blatantly obvious. <laughs> I guess he's just never been confronted on that stuff before. Or if he is confronted, then he keeps denying and it seems to work out. Anyways, Chris said he didn't have any money on hand anyways, and that he totally tried that, but the ATM inside the truck stop was broken, so he had to make do with what he could find. Yeah, birthday trash digging. <laughs> this is wonderful. Nope, he was going to help that bum dig up some recyclables in exchange for meth, calling it a holy quest with which he had been charged this night of his isekai adventure birthday party. <laughs> it makes me feel sad a little bit, but also, whatever man, you made this choice. You got offered a nice dinner. It could have been a great time. I sighed and just said, all right, Chris. Have fun digging through the trash to fund your habit. I turned and walked off towards the truck, and when I arrived, I set back to work, removing those tacky decals once more. All's well that ends well, I guess, except it ain't over yet. <laughs> it took me a good bit to scour that lusty scuzz from the cabin, and after another hour or so had passed, I figured that I should get ready for bed. I was packing up the supplies and throwing out the remnants of those poor mangled waifus into the garbage. <laughs> when the phantom sound of a loud shriek 
and the toppling trash-laden cart lilted its way over the rumbling of idle engines and arrested my attention. Oh, well, let me guess, that bum didn't have enough for Chris. Or probably any for Chris. I mean, you can't really get mad about it, can you, Chris? It's just a financial exchange. <laughs> financial transaction, whatever you call it. Heated shouts resounded from the far end of the parking lot, and I stalked the shadows towards the site from whence they had erupted. As I rounded the bend and peeked behind the wooden fence, I saw the hobo cart from earlier, its recyclable contents spilled all over the lawn. With Chris standing there, his foot atop it in a Captain Morgan-esque pose, his katana unsheathed, and the homeless man cowering in the corner. Chris was shouting at the poor guy, telling him, What the hell you mean this is a dime bag? <laughs> and he brandished his katana in one hand and stared intently at what I could only survive to be a small baggie of drugs in his other. I could see the homeless man had produced a weapon of his own, I guess he had a machete tucked away in the shopping cart, and I figured that right about now, Chris was about to get chopped up into little bits, or chop up the homeless man himself. As I came around the corner to this unfolding scene, I cleared my throat and shouted, What the hell are you guys doing? Fighting over drugs, what are you doing? <laughs> this is the way you want to spend your night, your life, your birthday. Uh, I, I guess I asked that question already, but I never cease to be amazed. They both looked my way, weapons brandished, and Chris began to explain that this foul knave had tried to short him on his reward from the great quest that he had undertaken. For all the treasure that he had poured into the coffers of this lowly lord, his compensation for his efforts had come up lacking, and Chris was having none of it, apparently. In a heated moment of passion, he crashed his kingly chariot and now stood, ready, prepared to do battle upon its wreckage with its owner. Bro, y'all are both going to jail. You realize that, right? <laughs> this isekai birthday party is horrible. The hobo screamed at me, Dude, this guy's like a freaking psychopath. He, he tried to attack me. And I figured that Hobo Joe's story was a little bit closer to the truth. I came walking up and said, Chris, easy bro, put the sword away. You really want to go to jail for killing a homeless dude? Chris started up and said, bro, you're killing the mood. Can't you see I'm trying to get my isekai fantasy on? Yeah, but also you're twacked out of your mind and I don't trust you running around with a sword. Come on, man. <laughs> I said... You're about to find yourself having a prison fantasy next if you don't put that goddamn sword away and get your ass back to the truck. Chris murmured, fine, and then turned to the bum beside him, sheathed his sword and declared that you got lucky today, but don't let me catch you out at about this travel plaza again, or I will end you. Bro, I, I, I got my money on the homeless dude, honestly. <laughs> If it's gonna go that way, I don't think you stand a chance, Chris. But Chris just put his treasures into his pockets and waddled after me back to the truck while the sounds of rattling garbage being deposited back into a shopping cart somewhere sounded off in the distance. When we got back to the truck, Chris paused outside of it. Then he turned to me and asked, Hunker Donkers, what happened to Odie Chad? Oh my god, you took his stickers down. Worst birthday of his life. <laughs> because the stickers came down. Not because you almost got in a fight with a dude that had a machete. <laughs> He's out of his mind. And I said, well, dude, it's past midnight. Your birthday was yesterday. And if we're being honest, I wasn't going to drive around in a big rig plastered in cartoon stickers for the rest of my life. Chris on cue hissed. There are not cartoons, honker donkers. I've already explained to you like five times why anime is a much more superior medium to Western animation, but you just don't get it. And I mumbled, nor do I care to get it. Then I restated firmly, get back in the truck. <laughs> it really is just like a child, isn't he? At least he listens. 
And let's be very clear, whether you're talking about Western animation or Eastern animation, it's all made in Korea. It's basically the same stuff, isn't it? <laughs> well, we climb back in, and I, dead tired with the shenanigans going on, return to my bunk to get some much-deserved beauty sleep before the open road called my name again tomorrow. Chris, however, was strung the hell out, and I don't think that he slept at all that night. I did not, however, hear the door to the cab open, or the truck suspension lurch as he threw his center of gravity off kilter with his massive weight. And when I awoke that coming morning, he was sitting in the driver's seat, passing the hours by watching episodes of his stupid cartoons. I mean, I guess. <laughs> That's better than some other stuff that could have happened. Remember Kevin in the big rig? Dude pulled the, the air conditioner or the heater apart. Or was that Chris being twacked out of his mind? I don't know, those two kind of blend together. Maybe comment section will have something to say about it. <laughs> I climbed into the driver's seat and I filled out the morning's paperwork before taking us back to the travel plaza that fine morning. And as we left, we could see Hobo Joe with his shopping cart standing on the street corner, the same one from the night before, holding a cardboard sign to try and get a few bucks. Chris told me to slow down real quick as we prepared to pass by the intersection upon which he stood, but I sped the truck up. This did not stop Chris, however, from trying to huck a bottle out of the window and bean Hobo Joe in the head. Thankfully, Chris not only failed once that birthday, but twice in assaulting an innocent homeless man who was literally just trying to survive. Yeah, he's the biggest piece of trash ever. I'm glad your birthday was terrible, honestly. Part of me wishes that it had gone even worse. Why didn't you get beat up at any point? <laughs> That's your job, Chris. Your pain amuses me more than anything else. <laughs> well, that about wraps up today's story about Chris. I'm still trying to get in the swing of things with this new job I started, so I apologize for this one coming a bit later than usual, but I'm starting to get down the rhythm of this new weekly routine. Apparently, the company I'm with also has some OTR, that's on the road, routes as well. You know, those long cross-country hauls that I used to do, and has asked me if I might be interested in taking up a few between local driving routes. Yeah, that's always how it starts, isn't it? <laughs> I figure it might be interesting from time to time, but it certainly won't be a regular occurrence for me. The pay is better than the local gigs, but ah, uh, we'll see what's up with all that. Anyways, guys, real life is a call of my name, and so I'll see y'all later when I have for you another story about Chris. Honestly, one of the uh, fluffier entries that we've got. Still ridiculous, still Chris doing some horrible stuff, but I don't know, it kind of recalls to me like the earlier days of the Poopy Coon Man, before we realized just how far gone Chris was. What a degenerate he actually is deep down. I'd like to say there's still some hope, but I think we're far past that point. Oh, Jesus, take the wheel. My co-pilot is a neckbeard number 28. Good God. Hey there, Red X gang. Looks like I finally got a bit of time to write, so let's not delay any longer, and we will get into another story about Chris. For the uninitiated who might be wondering, who is Chris? Well, we've got 27 parts in a playlist in the description if you'd like to catch up. But to catch you up here, Chris is a uh, very fat and sweaty man surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. This defective coom goblin <laughs> has few pleasures in life. Instead, relegated to his own personal dark triad of anime, lot lizards, and crystal. Chris and I both used to work together for a trucking company, a major one, and we would take turns driving the truck down the road. Things were usually okay when Chris had to drive, usually being the operative word here, but when I had to take the wheel, or worse yet, pull over for the night, things would rapidly spiral out of control. The Poopy Coon Man was then free to do Chris things, you know the things, and despite all my urgings for him to just stop for once while he was ahead, it was all in vain because, well, Chris is just hopeless. <laughs> Thankfully though, I no longer ride with Chris. And yes, indeed, the fallout has even arrived in my email inbox, so I'll be reading that email after the patron reading. 
But first, we'll see what is going on with Chris today. <laughs> I flung the door wide open to be greeted with the stagnant, swampy, smegmatic smorgasbord of scents <laughs> that had suffused themselves in the cab. And I climbed around with a look of absolute agony engraved upon my face. Bro, well, you just alliterating right now. Pure poetry in motion. <laughs> I wasn't ready for this today. And some unknown factor that I hadn't yet quantified just made it so much more potent. Chris had already arrived, and today he smelled worse than usual. That's not really a big feat for Chris, because there were many times in his life that he smelled worse than usual. <laughs> <laughs> Those times were usually after he just smoked a bunch of drain cleaner or came back to the truck soaked in the questionable juices of meth muppets or just happened to exist in a very hot and humid area, like whenever we had to go and truck through the deep south. Yeah, this got to be the worst. <laughs> I admired, however, that we hadn't even left the fleet yard yet, and he already somehow managed to smell worse than usual today. This was in and of itself a new and novel feat. I gagged as I climbed inside, wondering what it was that had changed. And as I finally got inside, I rolled down the window first to let out as much of this smell as possible. <laughs> then I shut the door and returned to Chris and the question that demanded an answer finally got one in very short order. Chris, sat in the driver's seat doing his usual pre-shift checklist, and instead of wearing his usual poopy coom sweatpants, he had decided to change his attire. Oh my god. Did he buy new pants? <laughs> Are those dumpster pants? <laughs> uh, yeah, pee pants. <laughs> you bet? That's so hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so indeed, Chris sat there, with his legs sprawled open as wide as possible. I imagine that he was, of course, enjoying the breeze and the significantly shorter fabric of these new cargo shorts that he now wore failed to contain the rankling odor of his fetid groin. <laughs> he had a look of absolute pleasure on his face as the cold air conditioner of the truck blew the stench off his rankling nuts and diffused it about the cab for all to smell. Oh, God. Uh, there's that spine powder, man. A little bit of a return to basics today for Chris Trucker. Oh, it hurts. I choked back tears as I stammered out, Hi, Chris. And he just grunted disapprovingly at my presence as he checked boxes off on the paperwork. I pressed ahead in spite of this stone wall before me and said through the blinding tears of my olfactory torture, I see you decided to try out a new style, huh? <laughs> he finished up the papers and set them on the dash and said, yeah, they're great. I don't know why I never actually tried these out before, man. You know, those sweatpants are hell on my gooch. <laughs> Uh, it gets all sweaty and itchy, and I've had this gnarly rash down there forever, uh, so I figured it was time maybe I changed things up. Oh, I'm so not surprised by the rash. <laughs> uh, I figured, well, it never gets to breathe, and I get all sweaty and hot inside of them, and, and besides, they were getting a little gross. Understatement of the year. <laughs> so I decided I'd try something different. It got me some shorts. <laughs> what do you think? They're totally awesome, dude. And I love the pockets. <laughs> you can keep all sorts of stuff in them, and they don't get all bunched up like they do in my sweatpants. Yes, many advantages. <laughs> this is like standard neckbeard attire, isn't it? Check it out. It's tactical, bro. <laughs> To emphasize this point, he reached inside and pulled out some of the contents. Among them, what looked like a little anime figurine. Ugh. <laughs> he stammered through weeping eyes, hoping against hope that his response would come back in the affirmative to my question. But you do still have those sweatpants, right? Chris looked at me in confusion and said, Yeah, of course I do. Why? I practically gagged as I asked him, 
Well, can you please, for the love of God, uh, just wear them. Chris said, no, dude, I'm really comfy right now. <laughs> and then deflected. He asked me if I was ready to leave. I figured that once we got rolling, the window being down would do more in my service anyways. And I practically leapt into the passenger seat and said, okay, let's go. He took us out of the yard as I hung my head out the window like a dog on a Sunday drive, pretending that his tainted gooch wasn't airing out for the whole world to smell right beside me. <laughs> and I was dreading the moment that I did in fact pull my head back into the cab to breathe in a fresh lung full of tainted balls. <laughs> uh, oh, I missed this, man. Hawker Dockers just returned into the basic gross-out humor, and I am living for it. <laughs> Once the truck did get rolling, though, things were much better. The motion of the vehicle sucked fresh air into the cab and displaced the rankling fumes that emanated from the moist man-meat beside me and dragged them outside into the wilds of nature, never to be smelled again by civilized man. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to push the issue right now. Things were manageable, at least at the moment, and they would continue to remain manageable so long as the truck was in motion. It's like speed too, only with a bus instead of a boat. I also counted what small blessings I had. Those shorts were comparatively clean to the usual rags that the poopy coom man wore that were saturated beyond their holding point with the fluids that he secreted. Oh God, oh! <laughs> this episode hurts today. I'm not sure I was ready for it either, man. Whew, that was something in my favor today, albeit barely. And I wondered how much worse they would be when they were at long last finally soiled. The question of course was how long before that semi pristine fabric was not only so thoroughly basted with the questionable discharge of the poopy coom man's nether regions, but also unbearably aerated to the point that the torturous fragrance could be freely spread, that I lost my mind and physically assaulted my coworker with a rag on a stick and a bar of soap. I wash myself with a rag on a stick. <laughs> I needed to get Chris to stop wearing those cursed shorts before my sanity went out the window, along with those billowing clouds of invisible crotch stink. <laughs> I knew that on a long enough timeline, the aeration would bring fouler things on it than just the blossoming infections between the poopy coom man's thighs. Oh god, you ever hear penicillin bro? Just, just try it. <laughs> I had to think fast, and I decided that the best way to seek resolution regarding the situation was to imbue in Chris the idea that the clothes he now wore were actually undesirable, so I plied my luck. Chris, I said, don't you know that only beta males wear cargo shorts? <laughs> I had to try something, and it seemed like the quickest and most surefire way to get him to listen was to speak to him in his own lingo in a way that would associate those cursed clothes with all the things that he had deemed bad within his own mind. At this point, anything was worth a shot. <laughs> Chris chuckled, however, and responded, <laughs> Oh yeah, if only betas wear cargo pants, then explain why Steve Irwin wore cargo shorts. <laughs> that guy's as much of a chad as they come, and he didn't see anything wrong with them. That dude wrestled freaking alligators, man. You can't be much more of a manly man than wrestling alligators. Ah, uh, yes, wearing cargo shorts will surely transform you into Steve Irwin. <laughs> Crikey, stand back, John. Have a go at the size of this beauty. I got him, mate. Steve, oh, don't. <laughs> My mind ran a million miles a minute. I needed a retort that would tear down this idol of his and make him hate him. And I responded, yeah, well, Steve Irwin is dead. He got killed by an animal like a little beehotch. Oh, so tough. He got freaking stingrayed, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, is it too soon? I think it's fine. 
Plus, I don't know if you knew about this, Chris, but Steve Irwin, yeah, he, he's totally <laughs> Oh, no. Uh, I had gone too far. I had him eating out of my hand when I cited that Steve Irwin had been killed by a stingray and how that made him a little beta boy. In fact, I could even see understanding and even agreement coming across his face as he discerned that cargo shorts were not a masculine garment worn by the tamers of the wilds, but rather by effeminate ladyboys who get killed by fish. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, we're already so far off the deep end. We're not even really on the road yet, are we? However, the moment that I pushed into the Steve Irwin is territory i lost him and chris burst out laughing remarking that the dude was an absolute unit with a trad wife and that if he was then why did he have kids huh maybe the desperation was what was enabling me but i was quick on my rhetorical feet today and i came back with a surefire response that would shut him down it's called denial dude it's not just a river in Egypt either, you know? Dude was totally in the closet. Like, he practically lived in it. He had slumber parties in there with other dudes. <laughs> uh, I guarantee you he was in there puffing on peens when he wasn't smiling with his wife for the cameras and his son. Dude, look, totally adopted. <laughs> just go look into it. You can read all about it if you just do a quick internet search. I think there's like a whole forum that talks about it if you just dig around. But yeah, Chris, you are emulating the style of a dude. You want to dress like a dude, Chris? Is this some way that you're crying for help? <laughs> I'm dying, dude. <laughs> this, I, I, what? <laughs> I could see Chris furrow his brow at the proposition that he was in fact dressing akin to a person, and I could see that that upset him. He offered me a response. But they're comfy, and the air feels good on my junk. And I said, yeah, but you're still totally for wearing clothes like that, dude. You sure that blowy wasn't just a transactional thing, my guy? Oh, digging up the past. Chris grappled for a response. Eventually, he decided with, well, at least, like, he wasn't all flamboyantly <laughs> uh, I want to give apologies to Steve Irwin and his family on behalf of Red X Industries. <laughs> and I said, dude, have you heard his accent? Nothing is more flamboyantly than a thick Australian accent, dude. They call it the land down under for a reason, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Down under is like under the table where your homie goes to puff on your Peter where other dudes can't see what's happening like <laughs> The whole country's just a euphemism for doing the nasty with other men Down under is where you are when you're being mounted by another man <laughs> Down under is where you keep the word about your erotic dealings with the masculine s When your wife asks you where you've been all night the nickname of the whole damn country is a euphemism for man on man, my guy. It's about as straight as a rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to apologize to Australia on behalf of Red X Industries. <sighs> oh, God. Chris was beginning to look a little unsettled, and he mumbled, I don't think that's true, dude. And I said, well, that's about what I'd expect from somebody who's in complete denial, man. Maybe Steve Irwin is the perfect role model for you, after all. <laughs> uh, oh, if you're enjoying the story so far, the bashing of Australia and their national icon, Steve Irwin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much. <laughs> we drove along in silence. Chris doing his best to cope with the stinging belief that I had implanted in his head. He was now fighting with the thought that he was wearing the signature clothing article of the community, torn between the obvious comfort that it brought his miserably chafed man meat and his own visceral hatred of people with sexualities different than his own, or perhaps the visceral hatred that he had of people with sexualities that they're not ashamed of that in fact lined up with certain aspects of his own. 
Particularly when it came to homeless dudes who wanted to get high with him. Every now and then I would tease him, saying things like, Yeah, I bet you want Big Stevie to take notice of how cute your butt looks in those shorts, don't you, Chris? <laughs> okay, okay, probably don't do that. You're gonna gas him up in some imperceptible way. <laughs> <laughs> or, hey, every hobo will know that you got a chode worth gargling if you dress like that, Nancy boy. <laughs> Hunker Dunkers go balls to the wall with this. He was getting more and more aggravated with each remark, and when we pulled over at the end of his shift, he was absolutely smoldering in sullen rage. I got up to take the driver's seat, and as he waddled out of the way, I realized that the white fabric of cargo shorts was... A poor choice for Chris, as I could see the moistened splotch of fabric that clung to his chocolate starfish with a doo-doo based adhesive. <laughs> uh, judiciously, I wiped down the seat with some wet wipes before I took my place in it. When I got settled, I asked Chris if he was going to sit down or what. Chris said, hey God, and I turned around in the chair and looked at him curiously, wondering what the hell he was doing. He was visibly upset, and he said, I gotta take a walk. I just can't be around you right now. I said, careful, bro. Take a walk like that. You might get a manly trucker trying to tongue punch your fart box in the back of his big rig. <laughs> 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 and Chris practically shrieked, Excuse you, hunker knockers! As he stormed out of the cab to prowl the truck stop and uh, blow off some steam. I saw him cursing to himself as he wandered off. <laughs> uh, uh, this is just the petty antagonism that I live for. <laughs> I watched Chris as he traveled around the plaza in the burning daylight of the afternoon sun until he ducked out of sight. The whole way he was talking to himself, probably assuring himself that he totally wasn't And I wondered if perhaps... Uh, maybe I had just gone a little too far today in picking on Chris. I felt a little bad for the Poopy Coom man in that moment, but at the same time, those cursed shorts just let the stench of his sour loins relentlessly spill across the cab something fierce. I couldn't just sit idly by and take it. I had to make sure that he changed back into his usual poopy coom rags so I didn't have to breathe in the decaying miasma that flowed forth from his girthy folds. <laughs> as much, at least, anyways. So I looked at my watch. We were burning daylight and I wanted to get back on the road and if we were gonna do so, I knew what I had to do. I had to go round up Chris and bring him back to the truck. I sighed, got up from where I sat, and said, Screw it. It's time to go find the Poopy Coom Man. I wandered out into the lot and found him in pretty short order. He'd found himself a spot over by the Diesel Island wherein he lingered, and as I approached, I saw that he was asking random truckers questions <laughs> as they passed him by on their way into the store. I got near, and I heard him ask one dude as he walked into the travel plaza, Hey, do these shorts make me look... <laughs> and the truck driver said, I don't swing that way. I only sleep with women. <laughs> uh, that same truck driver gave me a strange glance as I approached Chris not long after and spoke to him. Perhaps he surmised that I was trying to get into those nasty little cargo shorts of his. Uh, <laughs> I said, come on, bud. We got to get back on the road. Chris didn't want to leave, though. Not yet. He needed an answer to the burning <laughs> question that had embedded itself in his brain. He was determined to find out whether in fact those cargo shorts screamed to the whole world that he was lusting for Ding Dong or not. <laughs> and he said to me, No, we're staying here, dude. I have to know. You're telling me that if I wear these, people are going to think I like dudes, but I don't like dudes, bro. <laughs> Uh, and I'm gonna prove it to you and to myself that wearing cargo shorts totally doesn't mean that I'm out here chasing chode. I sighed and said, Chris, dude, I I'm telling you that if you just go and put on your sweatpants, nobody's ever gonna think that you're into that sort of stuff anymore. It is literally your get out of free card, dude. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. 
And then you can bury your predilection for men deep down in your psyche like you did your predilection for getting blowies from homeless dudes by saying it was just a transaction. Come on, let's get back to the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a bit more antagonistic than intended, but okay. Chris spitefully told me, screw off. And he probably was in the right to do so. I was really bagging on him hard today. <laughs> you don't say. Like relentlessly bagging on him. And now that I finally realized I might have pushed him too far and tried to dial it back, Chris was having none of it. He went storming off past the trucks, putting distance between him and myself, pausing in front of another driver who was fueling up his truck and practically shouting at the poor dude, Do you think I'm bro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guy just looked at him in awkward silence before he said something to Chris, which I couldn't make out over the roar of the engines. I could see Chris's pained expression as the dude said something, and then the truck driver approached Chris reached into his pocket, produced something, and showed him that same something in the palm of his hand. Oh no, a transaction is happening. <laughs> uh, I knew what was happening. Dude probably did swing that way, and Chris, in all of his insecurity, did in fact find the one truck driver who would relentlessly plunder his booty with the promise of some cheap smack, and had decided to try and shoot his shot with the poopy coon man, of all people. Whew, there'd be some freaky folks out here, guys, I tell ya. <laughs> and by the look that spread over Chris's face, I could tell that he was actually considering doing some nasty things for that cheap truck stop dope with another random trucker. Tonight, Chris would be the lot lizard. I yelled, Chris, come on, we gotta go! And he turned to me, torn. <laughs> I could tell half of him wanted to defiantly shout, You know what, hunker talkers? I totally am. And I'm going to make passionate, sweaty trucker love to this man for some amphetamines in the middle of his plaza. And nobody can stop me. I am Chris. Hear me roar. <laughs> uh, and yet the other half of him wanted to come running back persisting in denial and just change into those nasty, poopy coom stained sweatpants and forget about all of the garbage that I had fed him today to fuel his insecurities. I motioned to him, beckoning with the promise that it would be all right if he just came back with me and put his normal rags on so that his filth would be contained. And then he turned back to that bag of dope. Addiction runs strong, I guess. Chris said something to his new trucker friend and pointed to the truck he was fueling, and the guy nodded. Then, without a word, Chris climbed inside while the guy finished up at the pump. Oh, he's not finished at the pump quite yet, is he? <laughs> uh, so, so terrible. I hate it. Lusty glances were cast at Chris's ascending by the truck driver, and then, when he was finished fueling, he climbed inside after Chris, perhaps getting ready to pump him until he was finished. <laughs> I sighed. There was really very little I could do at this point. Honestly, the whole thing had spiraled beyond my control. I didn't want to go beat on the door to that big rig only to catch the poopy coom man with his cargo shorts around his ankles being straddled by another obese trucker, so I decided, you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to go back to the truck and, and take a nap and wait for this whole ordeal to blow over. Get it? Blow over? <laughs> I climbed inside, checked the time, and realized that I'd be driving most of the night when we finally did start down the road once again. And the reality of the situation was that I probably wouldn't see the end of my shift until sometime tomorrow morning. I knew how Chris got when he smoked up, and I imagined that he would be really busy working for that dope before he ever got the chance to smoke any of it, I settled into my bed, stretched out, and shut my eyes while that languid afternoon passed me by. Must have been out for a while, because eventually the truck did shift and lurch, and I woke up to see that the sun was going down over the travel plaza where we had parked. The door to the cab swung wide, and in staggered the poopy coom man, strung out to absolutely no one's surprise, walking like it caused him 
a great deal of pain. Oh, Chris. Oh. <laughs> I can only guess as to what transpired in that truck cab for Chris to get his hands on that bag. And guess I certainly did as he stumbled, unable to walk straight and clearly in agony. <laughs> I murmured, hey, Chris, you ready to hit the road? <laughs> And Chris just said, through a weirdly stimulant-induced fit of tears, yeah, I don't want to talk about it! <laughs> God. Uh, and he wandered back to his bed to quietly sob into his pillow. Probably not the first time he's done that today. <laughs> uh, okay, I thought. I got myself into the driver's seat, put our rig in gear, and took off down the road again. For mile after mile, Chris just sat in the back, sobbing and wailing like he was either in pain or ashamed of himself or probably both. Yeah, let's be fair, it was probably both. I wanted to berate him a little bit, but what started as a harmless ruse to try and get him to put his freaking sweatpants back on so that I didn't have to smell his smarmy balls had escalated out of control very, very quickly. <laughs> And I do admit that I felt a little bit bad about it. I mean, you did have a hand in it, but you didn't really make it happen. A choice was presented, and Chris made his choice. <laughs> Truth was, I shouldn't have pushed those buttons, but I had no other buttons to press. And by pressing those buttons, Chris had his love button pressed by a surly grown man strung out on speed. <sighs> Where do we even go from here? <laughs> Every day we stray further from God's light. <laughs> I thought about it, but I decided that for everyone's sake and sanity, it was just best if we let the matter lie. Eventually, Chris did come out of his bunk and up to the passenger seat. I noticed that while he was back there, he had taken the time to change out of those cargo shorts that he was apparently now convinced was the clothing article of choice for the... And instead, he donned his usual filthy sweatpants to nobody's surprise. He was still staggering around. I guess that his friend had really done a number on him, and it'd take a bit to get back his equilibrium. <laughs> he didn't say anything to me at first, and we just rode on for a bit. He stared catatonically out the window before he mumbled, Hey, honker donkers. And I said, What's up, Chris? Hey, next time... I think I'll just listen to you, man. I'm, uh, I'm not proud of myself. But I want you to know that it was purely transactional. <laughs> uh, I murmured in agreement. Of course it was. <laughs> All the things we tell ourselves to get through the day. And that about there wraps up this particular story about this disgusting coom troll that we all know as the poopy coom man. I feel a little bad about this one. I shouldn't have pushed him so hard, but you guys gotta understand that having to smell him like that, unadulterated, undiluted, raw and exposed, oh, I just couldn't do it. I did what I thought I had to do, and it rapidly escalated towards some unsavory things. Either way, this concludes my tale that I had for you guys today. Real life is out there, and I could hear it calling my name, but don't you worry, guys, because I'll be back in the not-too-distant future with yet another story about our favorite disgusting reprobate that we call Chris. Honestly, I don't feel bad about what happened for Chris. Honestly, I feel pretty good about it, especially considering the email that we got, which I will read after I uh, give thanks to my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous YouTube channel members and Patreon patrons right now. Now, regarding the email that was sent to me by a Mr. Ackerman, I'm going to bleep out his actual email address, but here is the text of the email in its entirety. Uh, slander is the subject line. <laughs> I'm writing about some stories that you have up on your channel. I think you call them Chris T Tucker. And those stories are fake. And the guy who writes them is a piece of crap who can't even write anyway, anyway. So you should <laughs> take them down. Because having them up is misrepresenting the guy who they're supposed to be based on uh, by spreading lies about him. And that's not okay.
And honestly, it's not okay that people are out here laughing at totally fake events meant to defame someone at somebody else's expense anyway. It says a lot more about you guys than it does about me anyway. <laughs> Why does he say anyway so much? Like, that's totally small PP beta male energy. I bet you're probably a sad virgin living alone in your mom's house. So, pff, who are you to judge anyone anyway? Anyway, you need to get help. And I think the best way you can strat helping yourself is to delete those stories. Because I know you don't want to be a bad person. And a good person will totally see why I'm right and the story should be taken down unless you're a bad person, <laughs> which is something that I'd expect from a sad incel who laughs at faking stuff. Hope you do the right thing. Please contact me when the stories are removed. XX Mr. Ackerman XX. And I am so tempted to hit the uh, auto reply, the generated response, just say, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping there would be a cash settlement in here, you know, I still think I would turn it down, uh, depending on the amount. <laughs> but yeah, you, you, you don't even do me the dignity of offering me cash. You just, the, on the basis of being a good person, well, that doesn't stick at all with me, honestly. <laughs> I've never considered myself to be, like, a good person, okay? I do my best, and, uh, that's all anybody can ask. Maybe you should start trying to do your best as well, Mr. Ackerman. It's a hard email to even respond to because the text is just all over the place. The syntax is horrible, but that is what I have to say in response. So, uh, thank you for writing in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, check it out, though. Hong Kong beep beep. Yeah. My co-pilot is a neckbeard number 29. Good Lord. Almost 30. I'm excited. Hey there, Red X gang. Looks like I finally got a little bit of time to write, so let's not delay any longer and get into a very Chris Trucker Christmas. No way, dude. <laughs> Beautiful. The uninitiated may be wondering, uh, who the hell is Chris? Well, we have a playlist in the description that has 28 other stories, but for the uninitiated, Chris is indeed a very fat and sweaty man, surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. Chris and I both worked for a trucking company, a major one, and we would take our turns driving the big rig down the road. Things were usually okay when Chris was driving, usually, but when I had to take the wheel, or worse yet, when we had to pull over for the night, then Chris was free to do Chris things and he would go indulge in his own personal dark triad of crystal, anime, and lot lizards. Now, I rode with Chris for quite some time, and try as I might to make him quit while he was ahead and actually act like a normal human being, despite the tears and the wails and the gnashing of teeth, it was all in vain, because Chris is just, well, he's thick as a brick. <laughs> At the very least, now I can say that I no longer ride with Chris. Well, Christmas has always been the time of year that I loved. I got a lot of good memories about it. Sitting under the tree, opening up presents with the family, bringing smiles to the faces of my own little ones as the years have gone by, and Chris Trucker stories? Oh yeah, you betcha. <laughs> it was the season to be jolly, all right. And jolly I was that December as we finally got home from our protracted period of time out on the road. Y'all get Christmas break or, or what's going on? I hope they ain't got you out on the road during the holidays. Probably some companies at least do. But regardless, I said, smell you later to Chris and headed up to my car. And he said, wait up, bro. And I only picked up the pace. <laughs> Run. <laughs> I heard him huffing as he ran up beside me while I speed walked across the lot to my car and he said, Bro, didn't you hear me? I said, wait up. I didn't reply and I just kept walking. <laughs> Catch a clue. Chris furrowed his brow in agitation at me and said, Look, dude, whatever. 
I just wanted to say that there's a company Christmas party. And I know you haven't come to them at all since we've been working together. But I figured I'd ask if you wanted to come through and, and come to the party this year. Oh no. I mumbled, it's unlikely, as I picked up my stroll, trying even harder to get away from Chris. He was getting irritated, and his breath was leaving him as I strode across the parking lot, with him hot on my heels, pressuring me to go to that stupid party. I didn't want to go. Let's be frank. I wanted to spend my time at home with the wife and the kids, settle in, eat too much food, drink too much eggnog, and maybe have a little fire in the fireplace, and try to forget the hell on earth that awaited me when I had to return to work once more. But Chris, man, he just would not let it lie. I miss eggnog so much, they don't do that in the Philippines, you know? Probably the, the singular biggest disadvantage. <laughs> no nog, bro. Eventually I said, all right, fine. I'll go to this stupid party if you just get the hell out of my hair. And Chris lit up like, well, like a man-child on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> then he bounced away across the lot towards his own questionable van and hopped in and drove off. Well, the first few days I came home, I was particularly grumbly about my time on the road, this stint around. The horrors with Chris are just endless, you know? And my lovely wife, a true sweetheart, is always there to listen to me moan and complain if that was something that I needed to do, which it was often. So she listened to me complain about everything that I had endured during my last few days out. Eventually, the discussion wound its way around to the company Christmas party that was sure right around the corner that I half-assedly promised to attend, and my wife, who at this point had already met the poopy coom man and knew how awful he was, asked me, feigning disinterest, if I was going to go. I said that I didn't want to, but I could just tell by the tone in her voice when she said, oh, that she was disappointed. And I got up from where I sat and said, fine. And she squealed giddily and clapped her hands. The missus wanted to go watch the horrors of a soulless corporate Christmas party with Chris. And really, who the hell was I to deny her that? So when the weekend finally rolled around, the wife and I both donned our favorite ugly Christmas sweaters loaded up into the car and headed to the fleet yard where the party was being held. Yeah, Mrs. Hoggadogga, she really loves a train wreck, you know? <laughs> so my wife and I headed towards the office where we could already hear the sounds of loud Christmas jingles from inside. Laughter and chatter greeted us as we flung open the doors, augmented by all of the festive sights and smells of the season. Red and green, holly wreaths, cinnamon, spice, and a subtle hint of some lingering poopy coom stinky stank. <laughs> uh, that's not a smell of the season. As we came through the doors, everyone in the company from HR to the truckers to the accountant yelled, hey, upon the new arrival of the guests. And I smiled sheepishly and waved to everyone, but barely even a foot in the door, I was shortly accosted by a familiar ogre whom I had to ride with just a little bit too much. Chris had a big old smile on his face as he said, Hey, hacker dockers, you made it! He still wore his usual poopy coom rags, but now he also donned a Santa hat, and he turned to me, shoving a box in my hand before turning to my wife and saying, Look who's underneath the mistletoe! <laughs> oh, God. Uh, he expectantly puckered his lips, hoping his oral dexterity might warrant somebody sitting on his lap, and leaned in, waiting for the turnaround. Turnaround it did, as I told him, put a hand on my wife and I'm gonna knock your goddamn teeth out. And then I smiled to the rest of the company and tried to push past. Chris's expression turned ugly, however, at my remarks, and he said, oh, well, I guess the gift I got for you is perfect then. I sighed as he told me to open it, and I humored his remarks. It's not another body pillow, is it? <laughs> I can only guess what horrors are in this box. I figured I might as well get this charade over with and get right into the dysfunction. <laughs> 
<laughs> I pulled back the brightly wrapped paper to reveal a box that contained a plastic dong that put horses to shame. I stammered, what the hell is this, Chris? And he said, it's a deal, honker donkers, so you can go and screw yourself. <laughs> Everyone within earshot thought that this was funny. Truth be told, I even chuckled a little bit. I'd never heard Chris try to be witty before, and I thought that it was a good change of pace from his usual idiocy. I smiled, pushed it into his hands, and mumbled, I hope you kept the receipt. <laughs> then I grabbed my wife's hand, and we meandered into the thronging masses of obese truckers, drunk on holiday cheer, and perhaps, you know, like, actually drunk as well. Through the crowd we meandered, myself trying to enjoy the party, and put some mileage between myself and Chris, but to no avail. He was excited that I had arrived and felt the need to follow me around the party like a lost puppy. Perhaps it was because he was lonely and nobody in the office wanted to be close to Chris, myself included, obviously, but he was stuck to me like a fly on some doo-doo. Yeah, except Chris is the doo-doo, isn't he? I don't think that that joke was very funny, it's definitely another piece in uh, the lawsuit that's waiting to happen, isn't it? That's sexual harassment, and I don't have to take it. <laughs> I tried to humor him, as did the missus, and we eventually found our way over to the banquet table, wherein numerous truckers floated around, picking at the different offerings presented. A tiny little woman, tottering precariously with an alcoholic haze, glared at the people as they thronged about the table, picking over everything that had been set out before them. A look was etched into her porcine features, something akin to, I'm better than all of you, and I'm gonna lord that fact over each and every one of you. And she glared at me and my wife as we approached the table to fix ourselves a little something to eat. Her glare softened really quickly, however, when her eyes landed upon a certain trucker by the name of Chris. Oh no. Oh no, this is either a lot lizard he brought to the party, or even worse, it might be Chris's mom. <laughs> she gave him a beaming smile and said, Hey sweetie, what do you think? Chris didn't meet a beat and said, Hey, everything's going great, Bob. Oh, mom, <laughs> you really killed it on the food tonight. And I knew in that moment that I stared upon the abyss from which Chris had crawled forth, and I shuddered at what unspeakable horrors this unseemly woman had birthed. I mean, maybe she's a decent person. Maybe I shouldn't have given her the leg beard voice, but she was referred to as poor scene, so I don't know. I'm taking bets. Is she a good person? Is she a bad person? I mean, probably she's a bad person, but is she better than Chris's dad? <laughs> Let's put it that way. As quick as it came on, I did my best to push it from my mind, but Chris felt the need to push ahead. Hey, Bob, you remember how I told you about my friend? Well, this is him. Honker Donkers, this is my Bob. I extended my hand to shake hers because that's what you do when you meet people, right? I figured it wasn't a big deal, but apparently the word my friend was a magic intoxicant for Mrs. Trucker because when she reached out to grab my hand, she did her best to do it in a mannerism that could only be interpreted as seductive. Or at least as seductive as this woman can muster, I guess. <laughs> I pushed even harder to get it out of my mind, but that smile and the way she said, oh, it's my pleasure. <sighs> just left me on edge <laughs> and I knew that things were about to get spicy. I pulled my hand back feeling a little violated as the piggish drunken lady undressed me with her eyes with slow deliberate motions and then broke eye contact, heaped some food on a paper plate for myself and my wife and then we took our leave of Mrs. Trucker. Chris stayed behind to talk to his mom for a bit well, my wife and I found ourselves a nice quiet corner to go to and people watch for a bit. One of the best pastimes, if I do say so myself. And when we were convinced that we were finally out of earshot, I practically hissed, What the hell was that? My wife jokingly said, 
I think the big guy's mom has a heart on for you, babe. <laughs> and she mocked jealousy. I groaned and replied, yeah, I know. And I don't want to think about it. I cast a glance back at where Chris stood, jabbering excitedly at the mother who spawned him while she dismissively listened, instead casting a long and intense gaze in my direction. And it was then that I knew what it felt like to be a gazelle on the savanna being stalked by a lioness. An overweight lioness with a pig face. Do you think it's just Honker Donkers in particular or is she just like, you know, taking whatever comes at her? Because <laughs> I'm not too sure. Mr. Trucker doesn't seem to be fulfilling her needs. So she goes to the Christmas party and, and she's on the hunt. She sipped at her booze filled cup and swayed where she stood, her gaze predatorial, her poise like a coiled snake preparing to strike. I mumbled to my wife, this is getting really weird. I kind of want to just go. Well, my wife, having seen the antics that I put up with before, didn't want to leave just yet. Something about company Christmas parties screamed to her that the opportunity for unadulterated cringe lay just around the corner. If only we waited it out. And my wife, admittedly bored with her predominantly stay-at-home existence, wanted to remain for the fireworks that were sure to ensue. Oh, come on, missus. You're putting your husband right in the line of fire for your own entertainment. I don't know if I could sign off on that. If you guys are enjoying it together, that's great. If one person says they want to go, yeah, you should probably just go. We had our brief little quarrel about whether we ought to stay or go. And then my wife hit me with the pouty face. And so I caved and said, all right, fine. It's not every day we get to go out. Is this going out? <laughs> uh, I don't know if this one counts. I told her we could stay a bit longer, despite how bored I was of being there already. Then I excused myself and told her I'd be right back and that I had to go to the restroom. No, no, don't go by yourself. <laughs> I exited the office where everybody was partying and stepped out into the hall. I walked a bit and found the bathroom and went inside. Among those quiet, tiled walls, I found a moment of respite from the madness that was unfolding in the other room, soaking in the silence and the solitude. Well, lucky you, honker donkers. I'm glad someone wasn't having diarrhea doo-doo in one of the stalls. <laughs> That'll break up the silence and solitude. I've always been a private person, and the idea of a party with my coworkers just was not my idea of a good time. I mused to myself as I went to take a leak, as I stood there alone in that dark, dank, grimy restroom, I heard the door behind me swing open on its creaky hinges. At first, I thought nothing of it, until I heard a familiar raspy voice that I heard long ago and far away by an alcoholic bowl of punch that it lorded over. Hey there, big boy, it mused. Oh no, I told you not to go by yourself. <coughs> and then I felt wrinkled, gnarled hands, twisted by the merciless advance of age, wrap their bony fingers into my shoulders and begin to rub while I stood there holding my wiener. Do you need a hand? Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> I knew instantly who it was that had come up behind me, and the inebriated Mrs. Trucker, apparently convinced that she still had what it took to get a guy like your old pal Honker Donkers, had decided to shoot her shot. Why is it gotta be like this? Please don't be like this. Somebody needs to shoot their shot. <laughs> Drag her out back, right? <laughs> right in the head. He's my dog, I'll do it. <laughs> I practically jumped out of my skin when I felt those hands lay upon me, and I slapped them off my shoulders and turned around and said, What the hell do you think you're doing? Forgetting to tuck myself away. She looked down with a big old smile and said, Oh, would you look at that? And advanced on me, her grasping claws reaching for my nethers. I practically screamed, Get the hell away from me! And jumped out of my skin, packing myself away. She didn't relent, however, and drunkenly swayed towards me, practically pinning me up against the wall and said, Don't resist! Oh. 
Bro, you need to shove her out of your face. Shove her real hard. Break a hip. Hit the door and don't stop running. <laughs> I pushed past her, went to the door and grabbed the handle to pull. And when it didn't open, I heard Mrs. Trucker say behind me, Looking for something? I turned around and she held the key in her hands, dangling them in front of me. I held my hand out, demanding the keys, and she smiled at me before dropping them in her bra and saying, Oh, come and get them! <laughs> uh, how often does this work? Why has she picked honker donkers out of everybody at the party? Maybe she's been with everybody else at the party already. The forbidden fruit tastes the sweetest or something. I replied, hell no, I ain't coming to get them. And she said, why not? I remarked that one, I'm married and loyal to my wife. And two, that I wasn't about to compromise myself for her cheap alcohol fueled lusty urges. She said, you're taking it too seriously. And I replied, hardly. I'm not gonna let your husband legally drag me with a false accusation of assault because you're drunk and stupid. She thought this was uproarious and she tilted her head back and laughed. <laughs> then she faced me with a big grin and remarked, what do you think Papa Trucker's gonna do something? She walked closer, her hot alcoholic breath forcing its way into my nose. And she said, what? You think he cares about me? <laughs> he can't handle a woman like me. His son isn't even his son. Wow. What? Wow. <laughs> that loser is so busy playing with his trucks. He doesn't have any time for me. I can find my fun among the company. Wow. Bro, what a revelation. Chris Trucker's dad ain't really Chris Trucker's dad. But he acts just like him, sort of. I guess it's nurture over nature or something like that. I thought about all this for a minute and it did make sense. Papa Chris wasn't Papa Chris at all. They didn't look alike. They certainly didn't smell alike. Their interests and demeanors were so far removed from each other and the lack of concern which Papa Chris showed for baby Chris suddenly made a lot more sense. It was a marriage of inconvenience. And rather than break those bonds and let Mama Chris drag Papa Chris into court for half of everything he owned, he decided instead to just foot the bill for this bastard trucker child born of some other random trucker in the company. Whew, my mind instantly started racing. And I had to ask, if Chris wasn't actually Papa Chris's son, then who was it? that had sired the poopy coon man. Bro, the, the plot just keeps thickening up. It's getting deeper and deeper. <laughs> I don't know how to feel. Truthfully, I had to know. My curiosity wasn't about to be cast aside so easily in exchange for some forbidden gilf passions in a rundown office bathroom at a depressing Christmas party. And so I pressed ahead. Plus I figured, you know, with a good change of subject that might reduce this awkward tension that I didn't want to deal with. Wait, so who's Chris's dad? Is, is he here? Chris's mom smiled and was about to speak when the sound of pawing at the door handle interrupted us in the restroom. I was never more relieved in my life to hear the voice of the poopy coon man on the other side mumbling, what the hell? Why is the door locked? And I yelled, Chris, find the key so you can open this damn door and get your mother out of here. I heard Chris pause and say, what? Mom, again? Why are you going to do this every Christmas? <laughs> I just love that, dude. Uh, how have I predicted this story beat for beat? Can you tell me that? So yes, thankfully I heard Chris wander off and moments later, a key slid in the lock and the door was opened. Chris's mom burning with shame and Chris chastising her for getting drunk and getting trapped in the bathroom again. <sighs> that poor naive child. <laughs> he didn't want to believe that his mama was doing what his mama was doing. Well, I didn't wait any longer. 
I said thanks to Chris for perhaps the first time in my life and stumbled back out into the party in the office where everyone had congregated and found my wife, politely but also half-heartedly listening to some trucker explanation about the finer points of hauling a tractor trailer. And then I grabbed her by the hand and asked her if perhaps she was ready to go now. She asked me, where were you? And I relayed the events of the last 20 minutes to her as quickly and subtly as I could, that I had almost been assaulted by someone old enough to be my mother in the restroom, and I also found out that Chris was the illegitimate spawn of somebody else who worked at this company. She said, really? And then motioned her eyes toward the guy that she had been talking with, struggling back a big smirking smile, and then I turned around. The guy that she had been talking to had turned away towards the delicious Yuletide offerings laid out on that table, and my jaw hit the floor. We had found him. Oh, convenient. <laughs> they were peas in a pod, all right. That guy was huge, easily pushing up to about the same weight as Chris at this point in his life. The same vacuous stare that I had seen so many times from Chris before, gazed from behind those unthinking eyes, as if the light of consciousness had been sucked out of them by too many hasty coom sessions with questionable lot lizards. His clothes were like tattered, ill-fitting rags, covered in a panoply of crumbs and stains, and somewhere behind that dainty layer of fabric was a tide of stale body odor that it struggled to hold back. Jesus Christ, we got a little family reunion going. <laughs> it was like cryptid hunting in real life. And we had just found the seed donor that resulted in the abomination that I had to ride with today. The pieces just fit too nicely. But the one piece of the puzzle that was missing was, who the hell would sleep with that guy? <laughs> I suppose my answer was given when I heard shouting coming down the hall that led to the bathroom, and I could hear Chris yelling at his mom. Every year you get drunk and trap yourself in the bathroom, Bob. Oh, why can't you just be normal? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, if Chris is calling you out, then, then you know you got some problems. <laughs> I found this hilarious coming from Chris, of all people. And his mom, burning in shame that she failed to get freaky with some poor employee at her husband's company this year, was laying into Chris too and said, I'm not the one who spends his life gushing over cartoon figures, you overgrown child! Predictably, the vein of the argument was lost as Chris took the bait and cried out, How many times do I have to tell you? They're not cartoons, Bob! And besides, at least I can figure out how a lock works. <laughs> uh, his mother retorted, I'm sure you've had a lot of practice working locks when you bring your stupid dolls with you into the bathroom for hours at a time. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's really getting all laid out on the table, isn't it? Chris stammered, Yeah, well, you're drunk. <laughs> the retort came in hot. Of course I am, you idiot! Do you know why I drink, Chris? It's because of you! I had to raise you! Oh boy. <laughs> uh, it started out spicy, but it's getting a little too hot right now. I need everybody to take a deep breath. <laughs> I cast my glance back at Chris's actual father, who had a stupid smirk on his face, smiling, perhaps oblivious to the fact that the person fighting before him now was his mistress and his illegitimate son. And then he leaned into me and said, man, I'd hate to be that kid's dad, huh? <laughs> and I couldn't help but agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, irony. I missed a few beats in the fight, and when at last my attentions returned to the dramatic scene before me, Chris's mom had taken off down the hallway, shrieking and wailing and cursing everything and everyone. I guess some of the words that had been exchanged were uh, a bit too spicy for her, or maybe they hit a bit too close to home. And Chris bitterly yelled, Merry friggin' Christmas to everyone before he sidled over to the punch bowl 
and poured himself a nice, big, boozy cup. He turned to me after chugging down the cup and said, Hey, sorry my mom's a freaking idiot, and she locked you in the bathroom, honker donkers. I replied, Dude, I'm just glad you showed up when you did. The last thing I wanted to do was be trapped in there with her when she was trying to bang me. Chris's jaw dropped as I said this last bit, perhaps a bit too candidly, and mouthed, What? And I explained, Yeah, dude. Your mom pinned me in the bathroom and tried to score with me. What, do you think she just forgot how to operate a lock and key? Pfft, come on, man. Beside me, I could hear the real Papa Chris chuckling to himself as he said, eh, She didn't have any problem with my key. <laughs> and Chris turned to whom I was certain was his real dad and said, You take that back! The blood draining from his face and his fists balling up in anger. Bro, this is juicy. <laughs> well, this guy wasn't about to take any of that from his illegitimate son. And he said, you got a problem, baby boy? We can take it outside. Chris poked him in the chest and said, let's go, beta male. Now, I tried my best to de-escalate things, but it seems that some of the nearby company men, egged on by my wife, quietly chanting, fight, fight fight had taken up the chant for themselves <laughs> oh, no. uh, the two of them staggered out into the parking lot and prepared to exchange blows with each other all right again i'm taking bets who do you think is gonna win it really was a pathetic sight to be honest most of the time they just spent awkwardly wrestling with each other both of them lacking the upper body strength to restrain or manhandle the other one and every so often they would pause out of breath in a half hug while everybody cheered on from the sidelines. <laughs> I don't even think any blood was drawn. And when they were finally done with their awkward groping match that passed for a fight, they were both red in the face, heavy respirations the only sound that we could hear. It was at that point that somebody walked up and said, all right, break it up. When it had concluded and nobody was hurt, Chris's real dad extended his ham fist to his son, who happened to be sitting on the ground, and offered him a lift up, proclaiming, Hey, you're actually pretty tough. <laughs> I can respect that. He smiled at his bastard son and then said, But I still begged your mom! <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd jeered as the pathetic grappling match resumed. <laughs> huh? 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 I had seen enough at this point, and I turned to my wife and asked her if she was ready to leave. She tore her eyes away from the unfolding battle before us that was sure to go on for a while without any real consequential resolution, and she said, sure babe, let's go home. We piled into the car and left. I mean, you saw all that there was to see, ain't nothing gonna top that. <laughs> and that about concludes today's tale for you. Life is a call in my name, and I gotta get back to it, but don't you worry, my friends, because I will be back in the not-so-distant future with a twofer of more stories about Chris. I mean, this answered a couple questions, but it raised a lot more. I think that the plot of the Chris Trucker saga is really only starting to thicken up, which is insane, considering we're almost at 30 parts. Give me that toot toot, and give me this beep beep. My co-pilot is a neckbeard, number 30. Wow. Hey there, gang. Looks like I got a little bit of time to write, so let's not delay any longer and get into another story about Chris. Well, who is Chris, you might ask? We do have a playlist in the description, but for the uninitiated, Chris is a very fat and sweaty man surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. Chris is a defective troglodyte of a human being, <laughs> content to wallow in his own personal dark triad of crystal, anime, and lot lizards. Chris and I used to work together for a trucking company, a major one, and we would take our turns driving our big rig down the road. Things were usually okay when Chris had to drive, usually being the operative word there, but whenever his shift would end or Worse yet, when we would pull over for the night, then Chris would find himself free to go and indulge in 
Chris things. You know the things. Despite my best efforts to make Chris act like a human being, to put on a respectable face, and to stop doing those awful things that he liked to do, it was all in vain, and the Poopy Coom Man would take his leave to get into his evening shenanigans. Thankfully, however, I no longer have to ride with Chris. Holy hell. We broke 30 installments on the Poopy Coom Man, and as promised, we have a gruesome twosome for you guys today. First story I have for you, I affectionately refer to as Pokemon Gone. Oh no, he's out there hunting Snorlaxes. Maybe they can become a breeding pair. It's been nine months since the, the first story was posted. And I gotta say, just as an aside, I'm so happy for it. <laughs> this has been a hell of a ride. So Chris and I had been out on tour for some time. And during a layover one fine day, where we found ourselves lacking any package to deliver, Chris decided that he was going to find some new way to occupy these boring hours between driving. Chris had picked up the most infamous game that we all played at some point in our lives. You know the one, Pokemon Go. I still play it sometimes, hit me up for the friend code. <laughs> you can imagine how excited he was when he finally picked it up able to not only get his dopamine hits from a cheap plastic screen, but he believed as well that it would be crucial in a newly pronounced desire to lose some weight. I remember his words to me that day, as he looked at himself in a mirror, his piggish jowls shaking uncontrollably, and he said, Hacker dockers, I, I think I'm fat, bro. To which I casually responded, Gee, you really think so? <laughs> Well, he scowled at me and said, Whatever, I have a secret weapon. I'm gonna get super sleek and I'm gonna become the very best. Sure, Chris. Whatever. Get out of the truck and just leave me alone. Please, thanks. Now, at first, it really wasn't such a big deal. Kind of a refreshing change of pace, if I'm honest. Chris would go out across the truck stop parking lots and play his game for hours on end, and he'd catch his Pokemon, and he would stay out of my hair during that entire time. And I found myself surprised when he would come back to the truck at a sensible hour in the evenings, sober. And I realized that this new leaf he had turned over was apparently, unintentionally, actually going to be good for him. He wasn't out there chasing toots or getting strung out or any of that stuff, no. He was just out there trying to catch them all. It's almost wholesome <laughs> when you think about it. This change I actually did approve of, and so I said nothing to try and nip it in the bud. Between my co-pilot hunting prostitutes and dope or hunting Pokemon, well, my choice practically made itself. When our layover finally concluded and Dispatch radioed us with a new package to pick up, we took off from the lot and Chris asked me if perhaps I could drive us to that first pickup point. Okay, Chris, no problem. We took off from the travel plaza and scooped up our package while Chris sat in the passenger seat, glued to his phone, the silly little sound effects of Pokemon catching, filling the cab. It was actually kind of nice for a change. Things this good never seem to last in, in this saga though, so we'll see how it falls apart. <laughs> Well, we got our package and started back west with our delivery in tow. Things were quiet, save for the sounds of the poopy coom man busily playing his game in the corner of the cab, and I enjoyed the silence. Things were just going so well, you know? You also know, however, that this would not be a story, though, if things continued to go so well. Nope, nope. So when I had finally driven my allotted hours, we pulled over and I finished my end of shift paperwork. Then I motioned to Chris to take the wheel, and I could hear him mumble, hey, I don't know, Hawker Dockers. Do you think you could just take my shift, dude? I'm kind of busy, and I caught a lot of cool Pokemon while you were driving. Hey, help me out, dude. They aren't going to catch themselves. <laughs> uh, you want me to do your job for you while you catch Pokemon? Not in this old life, friend. I sighed and said, Chris. Put that freaking game down and get in the driver's seat right now. He scowled and said, I don't want to right now. 
and I practically shouted, Tough sh Dude, you've got a job to do! My hand shot out, snatched his phone from out of his greasy paws, and he went off like an angsty teenager who, well, had his video games taken away, swearing and cursing me and calling me a piece of crap for taking his phone from him, and remarking how I had no right to do so. And I said, do you want it back? Then start driving the damn truck. Chris sighed and said, fine. And he sidled into the driver's seat and begrudgingly did his paperwork. And then, before he took off, expectantly held out his hand, into which I did deposit his phone. Then I settled in on the computer, and Chris set the phone on the dongle and punched the rig into gear, and we took off. I expected the normal cries of Daddy Becker to come erupting, but the ride was strangely silent as we drove. I tried not to think about it. Maybe the poopy coo man was just mad right now and couldn't focus on anime waifus, nor did he care to try. You never know what's going through Chris's head, you know? I do. I I'm gonna tell you right now, he's playing Pokemon Go while driving a big rig. <laughs> I hate it. Then the truck swerved, and I practically got thrown into the door as I realized that Chris was trying to play Pokemon <laughs> called it. Uh, as we barreled down the road at almost 70 miles an hour. Jesus Christ, man, you really want to die over a Pidgey? Do ya? <laughs> I didn't waste any time. I shot my hand out from where I sat, seized his phone from the dongle, and told him to focus on the goddamn road. He started screeching again, but I ignored it, and made a resolution to hold on to his phone the whole time. Chris begged and pleaded with me and remarked, Fine, I will try to catch anything while I drive. And I said, Do you swear? <laughs> he told me that he would honor that request, and skeptically, carefully, I put the phone back on the dongle and watched him as we drove. He's just going to spin the polka stops. <laughs> that doesn't break our agreement, does it? Well, we continued on in silence for a bit. Chris didn't make any moves to grab his phone and play Pokemon from that point onward, and I figured that this ordeal was over with. Well, we continued on our merry way, and everything was fine, until about an hour in, after that promise had been made, when Chris decided we needed to pull over at a rest area along the interstate. I looked up from my computer and asked Chris, what are we doing here? Chris grabbed his phone and said, dude, we gotta stop. There's probably a Pokestop here and I gotta spit it. <laughs> uh, oh, I know where it's going and I'm still fascinated. <laughs> yeah, Chris was not having a bathroom break, not, I'm gonna get a snack from the vending machine. I sighed and said, whatever as he opened up his stupid little game and checked out the map. He got out of the truck to go and spin his dumb Pokestop while I sat there wondering how many times he would try and force us to pull over and get his game fix before I said, you know what, whatever. It's not like he's putting extra mileage on the truck and we got plenty of time right now to get where we need to go, so let him do his thing. It's not like he's out there getting dope. However, I should have laid down the law sooner. Eventually he came back and he was all aglow. I mumbled, you get some good Pokemon? And he said, no, actually I just made a friend. I was lurking a forum for Pokemon trainers and I started talking to a girl and she seems really cool. I sent her a friend request and she accepted and she sent me a gift. Well, look at you out here making connections. Like I said, it's almost wholesome. <laughs> I died inside, wondering how much Chris was reading into this non-committal exchange of electronically generated items, and I knew in my heart of hearts that this probably would become an issue down the road. I said, Chris, whatever, man. We good to go, mate? We gotta get back on the road. To which he replied, yeah, let's go, man. I figured that Despite the poke stops that we would make along our drive, <laughs> Chris would generally behave himself as we continued on our way, and he did, for the most part, 
running his podcast, crying out in shock as the man children discussed their waifus. Things were fine, and every so often we would pull over at a truck stop, and Chris would take a quick five or ten minutes to spin his polka stops or whatever the hell he had to do, and I said, whatever. Well, we made it probably seven hours into his shift when he took a detour off the main interstate, opting for a relief route through a small nearby town. He pulled over at a gas station and cut the engine again. I raised my eyebrows, knowing that Chris had just deviated from our usual course, and I said, Chris, what the hell are we doing here? He said, bro, my trader friend wants to meet up. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I asked where she was and uh, apparently she's local to this town. We're going to meet up and do this gym raid real fast. Uh, then maybe we'll hang out or something. I practically died inside. <laughs> and while I wanted to just bail on the poopy coo man there in the parking lot, I said, screw it. At least he's not getting strung out, so... Just let it happen, honker donkers. I looked at the time. We did still have plenty of time left in the day, and so long as he completed his shift and we got on the road tomorrow, and he kept up a comparable pace, despite all the numerous in-between stops, we would still make our delivery on time. <sighs> okay, whatever, Chris. Go do your thing. He sidled his fat ass out of the cab, leaving me alone in there to ruminate upon this recent turn of events. I'm doing some ruminating myself. It seems like a good idea, but yeah, it's it's quickly going off the rails, isn't it? <laughs> well, I get bored too, and sometimes I do have to get up and out of the truck and go take a stroll. That boredom did come on really quick, so this just turned out to be one of those times. Since I hadn't really moved around all that much that day, I decided it was indeed time to get up and out of the truck and go take that stroll, while Chris played his stupid game. I did a lap or two of the plaza, and eventually I came back around the front where Chris was milling about haphazardly on his phone. I walked up to him and said, how's the Pokemon, Chris? And he said, good, somebody just showed up, so my friend should be here soon. Great, I mused, and I didn't think much of it until I saw a young girl. She couldn't have been more than a teenager, Approaching where he stood, her eyes glued to her phone, and my heart sank. As she walked up, I could hear her mumble, Mr. Ackerman? <laughs> and she lifted her eyes from her phone with a wary and slightly confused smile. And I felt myself dying inside. Chris, man, what the hell are you doing? Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Oh, this is, this is not good. He greeted her with a bow and a, Hello, my lady. And I decided instantly, Okay, this has gone too far. I seized Chris's phone, despite his protests and shrieks, and I said, Chris, what the hell is this? That's a teenage girl, dude. What the hell are you doing meeting up with teenage girls? And he stammered, It's okay, bro. She's like 17, and she told me that her birthday was soon. Oh, God. How old are you? I'm 17. What? <laughs> I'm going to jail! Something broke inside. Yes, it did, Bobby Honker Dockers. Yes, it did. I smashed Chris's phone there on the sidewalk and began shoving Chris towards the truck, telling him to get his inside the whole way he whinged and whined about how i destroyed his property and i shouldn't get so messed up about it dude because she'll totally be legal in like a month bro and how i was totally overreacting i wish in that moment that i had a shotgun because i would have taken that boy out back myself and put him down he's my dog i'll do it <laughs> I'm surprised I managed to refrain from outright hitting him. I think my instinct at the time was just to get Chris away from that poor child. That really is just like super terrifying. One day my daughter's gonna be like, I wanna play Pokemon Go too. I'll be like, no! <laughs> Chris Trucker's still out there! You get that thought out of your mind right now! <laughs> 
Uh, well, the ride went on in awkward silence for the rest of that trip until we finally pulled over and Chris got himself another phone. He never did reinstall Pokemon Go, bitterly remarking that he had given it up because I was just going to smash his phone again if he tried to play it. Mumbling under his breath that I was a blocker of ding-dongs. Syphilitic ding-dongs. <laughs> and I said, whatever, dude. Stick to the lot lizards. At least they somewhat understand how scummy you are. And that wraps up our first tale for this entry. But wait, there's more. More? Much more. But first, I wanted to interject and say if you are enjoying the content, hey, why not subscribe if you haven't already? Thanks for that. So this story is one that I affectionately call Macho Man Poopy Savage. <laughs> uh, oh boy. The truck lurched. We'd been stopped for a while that evening after dropping off our package and Chris had gone out to go and indulge in the evening's offerings. Well. He was back now, and the door flew open and in stumbled Chris, red in the face, visibly agitated, clearly excited about something. He stammered through raggedy breaths. Eh, eh, uh, doctors, eh, come quick. I mumbled, no, <laughs> and returned to my movie. <laughs> uh, he decided to press his luck and said, Dude, dude, you, you have to come check this out. This is totally wild. I paused my movie, looked up from the screen, and said, All right, what the hell is happening now? He smiled, revealing his yellowing, rotted teeth, crammed full of meth-smoked food chunks. <laughs> and he said, Hobo Fight Club. Well, normally I don't partake, but those are three magic words, I gotta say. <laughs> I slowly closed the lid on my computer, mouthing, Hobo Fight Club? And he said, Yeah, dude, it's freaking happening! Come on, bro, you, you gotta check this out! <laughs> uh, now I'll admit, I was definitely a bit curious about Hobo Fight Club, as Chris called it. And so I stowed my laptop, stepped out of the truck, and followed Chris through the parking lot. He wandered past the edge of the lot and into the tree line, and we followed a steep little game trail down to what looked like a flowing creek. I don't know how Chris finds these places, but find them he does. Well, he came stumbling out of the brush near the edge of the embankment underneath a highway bridge in smack dab the middle of sprawling bum camp. <laughs> Trash and needles, and tents, and tarps, oh my! And underneath the bridge, in what looked like a primitive little ring erected by the local vagrants, were two hobos, squaring up with each other and trading blows. A pack of them sat on the sidelines, drinking or smoking or what have you, watching the match and egging on the participant with leers and jeers. And egging on the participants with leers and jeers. Chris turned to me with a huge smile on his face as if to say, Well, what do you think? <laughs> I think this is actually a lot sadder than what I had imagined in my mind. I I'm going to go away now. <laughs> I replied to that unspoken question with, I think I'm going to go back to the truck, Chris. <laughs> you have fun. I swear, Hawker Donkers and I are one and the same. And I turned around to leave when I heard Chris say behind me, Come on, Honker Donkers! Where's your sense of adventure, dude? We got real-life boxing matches down here that we don't even gotta pay for. Look, man, Boxcar Joe and I are gonna fight next. Don't you wanna watch it, dude? <laughs> I said, uh, not particularly. And he said, Come on, bro. Everyone down here knows Boxcar Joe, and they're all rooting for him. And I got no fans to cheer me on, bro. Come on, dude. I can't wipe the floor with this guy if I don't have any fans watching me fight. <laughs> uh, I guess I would stick around to watch Chris get beat up. Sure. So I just sighed to myself as I remembered the last physical altercation that Chris and I had. Now, I wiped the floor with Chris, and I'm not even a physically intimidating specimen. I'm just a fairly average guy who can punch straight. 
But one look at the poopy coom man and this alleged boxcar Joe that he was gonna square up against already told me everything that I needed to know. Yeah, Hobo's got that stringy muscle. They look tiny, but they strong. <laughs> boxcar Joe was life and in seemingly decent physical shape eh, for a hobo, probably from always having to walk everywhere and carry a backpack and do whatever physical things that hobos do. Opening cans of beans with a knife? <laughs> Chris, by comparison, was a petulant blob of mushy man flesh who lived a very sedentary life inside of a big rig, punctuated only by his desire to jerk it in the truck stop shower stalls. This would not go well. I tried to remind Chris of this fact and I said, Chris, my guy, that dude is gonna wipe the floor with you. Just back out now. And Chris said, I can't back out now, dude. I had to pay an entry fee to get into the fight. Besides, it doesn't matter anyway, man. I'm totally gonna kick that frail little hobo's I've been practicing MMA, dude. Check it out. <laughs> what? When? When did you practice MMA, Chris? As if to prove his point, Chris struck what he imagined to be an intimidating fighter stance. As he exhaled sharply to emphasize his movements, his big old boobas bounced up and down from the force of the impact. And then, with the addition of some vocalized kung fu sound effects, he shadow boxed with the air in perhaps the most unimpressive and awkward display of physical prowess that I have ever had the luxury of seeing. What were the kung fu sounds? We might need to articulate that a little bit more. <laughs> From the corner, I could hear the cronies of Boxcar Joe snickering, and I said, Dude, just cut your losses while you're ahead. And Chris replied, Screw you, honker dockers. I'm gonna fight. And if you're not gonna cheer for me, well, screw it, I don't need your support anyway. All right, sure thing, mate. I wanted to go back to the truck, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious. Frankly, watching Chris get pummeled was always amusing to me. <laughs> and so I crawled in under the bridge and took a seat next to a random stanky bow and watched as the first fight wrapped itself up. It wasn't too brutal of a display, they weren't like beating each other until they were unconscious or dead or using weapons or nothing like that. It seemed like a fairly tame boxing match for the most part. So I said, whatever, it'll probably be fine, right? <laughs> Chris will get slapped in the face a few times and start crying and he'll run back to the truck after he realizes that he lost and then we can all try and move on with our lives. Yeah, surely that's how it's gonna go. Boxcar Joe seems like such a nice guy. <laughs> well, the ring cleared up and Chris walked into the center of the little pit that they had where they were fighting, flexing his blubber, scowling at the hobos like a professional wrestler might do to the crowd as he walked into the ring. I rolled my eyes and admittedly, a lot of the hobos weren't very impressed either. From the other side entered old Boxcar Joe and he stretched a bit in preparation for the fight at hand and then their ref, a particularly greasy old man, walked up, stood between them, and told them that he wanted a good, clean fight. No blows below the belt. And then he told him to touch glove and that the fight was on. Chris and his opponent squared up against each other and spent some time circling a little bit before Chris started to throw some punches. I think he severely overestimates his own stamina. The hobo he was up against was a squirrely opponent, ducking and weaving between the punches that Chris threw, and when Chris had started to gas himself, trying to attack a target that he just couldn't hit, the crusty bum saw his opportunity. He advanced on Chris with his fists flying, and Chris raised his arms to protect his face. Well, the blows landed hard and fast, and his opponent changed up his target, dropping down to work on Chris's bloated belly. With a big wind-up, he delivered a heavy hit right to the middle of his corpulent gut, and then everyone fell silent. Chris doubled up, gasping for air as a loud, wet, slapping fart <laughs> emanated from his sour butt cheeks. <laughs> uh, that's his special move, dude!
He's got the gas passer and he's also got the coom boom. <laughs> Apparently he went for the gas passer. It is a smart move, but hobos are resistant. <laughs> they, they smelled things like that before. Everyone paused for a moment before we realized that greasy old boxcar Joe had literally just beaten the crap out of Chris. <laughs> <laughs> the ref walked into the middle of the circle, grabbed Joe's mitts, and raised his hand up into the air. While declaring Joe the victor, Chris, between tears, gasps, and farts, <laughs> tried to regain his composure. <laughs> Despite the cheers for Joe, I knew what was coming. Chris, sore loser that he was, humiliated and shamed in the arena of public spectacle, would not take this lying down. Oh no. Joe's back was turned when Chris finally recovered and ran forward with a loud shriek, probably a re, <laughs> shoving Joe as hard as he could. Joe went down to the ground. The spry hobo tried to recover, rolling onto his back to see what had happened, and then he turned around to observe the poopy coo man himself, full of spite and pants heavy, moving in to straddle that poor hobo and wail on him. <laughs> Those soggy pants <laughs> found a firm seat on his torso, and the poopy coom man, now mounted on top of his victim, began to wail as the other bums beneath the bridge sprung into action. And in a joint effort, they managed to pull Chris off of poor Boxcar Joe before he really did pummel him into the ground. Now, it was at about this point when the referee turned to Chris and said, Dude, you knew the rules and you attacked him after the match was over. That's not cool. Don't come back. And Chris, speechless, seething, and soggy, just flipped him the bird and started up the hill. His beleaguered and pain steps now accentuated by the heavy load that had deposited itself in the back of his sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> As he walked away, the slowly spreading wet stain in the fabric could be seen quite visibly for some time. Honestly, he could have come off of this a, a whole lot worse, right? All they did was kick him out of a place that he probably won't be back to anyways. We could have seen like a real hobo beatdown, you know? Oh well, there's always next time. <laughs> well, I thanked the bums, apologized for the trouble, and went back to the travel plaza. Chris had gone back into the truck and changed, and he had left his soiled sweatpants outside on the pavement next to our rig. Oh, God! At least he didn't try to hold on to him in the laundry basket. I'm pretty sure that was like one of the stories that we had. He's got to leave those sweatpants behind, right? <laughs> this is not going in the rig, right? I gagged as I looked at the chunky, greasy, brown slop so casually cast onto the pavement. Oh, God. Uh, and I hurried inside to find Chris, sad, upset, dejected, and defeated, sitting in the passenger seat. I asked him if he was okay, and he just mumbled, hey, martial arts are stupid. <laughs> and that about concludes today's two for tales about a certain poopy coo man. I can hear the open road to call him my name, and I gotta get back out there and get back to it. I'll be back in a little while with another tale about that disgusting troglodyte that we all know as Chris. I guess the Pokemon Go thing was just like sort of a palate cleanser. And when the palate cleanser's that gross, you know, you know something's happening. I'd expect nothing less from Chris Trucker. No, that's a spicy meat of all. My co-pilot is a neckbeard, number 31. Hey there, Red X gang. Looks like I finally got a little bit more time to write, so let's not delay any longer and we will get into another story about Chris. The uninitiated may be wondering, well, who is Chris? And if you are wondering that, well, lucky you, there's a playlist in the description. Check that out. But if you ain't got that kind of time, I'll tell you right now, Chris is a very fat and sweaty man, surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. He is our resident deviant coom goblin, <laughs> whose sole pleasures in life revolve around anime, lot lizards, and crystal. Chris and I both used to work for a trucking company, a major one, and we would take turns driving our big rig down the road. 
things were usually okay when Chris was driving, usually, but when his shift would end and I would have to take the wheel, or worse yet, when we pulled over for the evening, that is when the fun would really begin in earnest. Then, despite all my best efforts, my well-intentioned attempts to make Chris act like a normal human being, he would inevitably continue his downward spiral about the drain. At least, on the bright side, I no longer have to ride with Chris. I'm excited for what this episode might bring. Court update? Anybody? <laughs> We'd been out on the road for a few days now, maybe a week or so at this point, and we had come and gone, and we were on our way once again, headed hither and thither, and as Chris finished up his pre-drive checklist and settled in for the long hours ahead, he grabbed his phone, looking for something to put on and listen to as he drove the truck. I could hear him mumbling to himself, No, watch that. Oh crap, no. And it seemed as if today, he was having a hard time deciding what he was going to listen to during the ride. He then turned to me and said, Hey, honker donkers, recommend me something to listen to while I drive. Myself, not being a big fan of podcasts, didn't really have any input on this matter, and I said, I don't know, Chris, why don't you just watch what you usually do? I returned to my book while he groaned beside me, saying, uh, I don't know, dude. I've watched every episode up to the current one, and they haven't put out another one yet. That's not till tomorrow. I don't want to watch reruns again. I, I need something new. I said, well, I got no recommendations for you, man. I don't watch that crap. Unless it's Red X, of course. Honestly, you should have suggested him some Red X, but I guess I was a well-kept secret at this point. <laughs> well, Chris sighed, screwed around on his phone a little bit more, trying to come to some decision on something to entertain him. However, it seemed that his efforts were to no avail, and we took off driving, surrounded by an unbroken veil of peace. Yeah, enjoy that while it lasts, i.e. not very long. <laughs> and I did actually manage to sink far down into my book and almost forget that I occupied that detestable cabin with that detestable person. Somewhere, about halfway through his shift, Chris pulled over to take a break and take a leak at a rest area, and I sat in the truck still balls deep in my book. It took Chris some time to finally come back, and when he did, he was surfing through his phone. I asked him if we were ready to go, and he replied, Yeah, let's do it! And he climbed in and got settled into the pilot's seat. He set his phone up on the dongle, navigated to a web page, and hit play. I guess he'd found something new to watch, because sound came blaring through the truck speakers by way of the Bluetooth connection. The sound of some news type theme music or introduction played and I really paid it no mind. Well, I paid it no mind, that is, until the narrator started up. The subject of this new podcast that Chris had found was announced with utmost fanfare. The issue with a certain ethnic group's power. Oh no. Oh, not this. No. <laughs> uh, uh oh. My eyes skipped the line as I heard those words spoken by the announcer before they delved into the subject matter of today's talk. Honestly, I had to do a double take. I had expected something more akin to our usual fare, like anime girls or maybe some Japanese lady talking about news in Tokyo or whatever, but this, well, this caught me off guard. <laughs> as it would. All of a sudden, anime girls don't seem so bad. <laughs> slowly, I dog-eared my page. Slowly, I closed the cover. And slowly, I set the book on my lap. I turned to the poopy coom man, who had taken us out of the lot now. A look of shock and concern on my face, surely betraying the inner turmoil that I now experienced at this unexpected change of events. The narrator was going hard on his conspiratorial ramblings, talking about this and that and the other, and how all the world's problems could be traced back to a particular single group of people. <laughs> oh, dude, uh, my skin's crawling. I'm so uncomfortable. I was internally screaming, but I did my best to keep my cool. I said, hey, Chris, 
what the hell are you listening to? Chris started up, saying that, Well, I was lurking 4chan while we were pulled over, and I decided to go to one of my favorite boards and ask some people for some good podcasts to kill the time while I drove. And somebody recommended this one. I checked it out, and I thought the aesthetic of the channel was cool. And they do talk about some other interests of mine from time to time, so I, I figured I'd give it a shot and see what they're all about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure I can tell you what they're all about, man. One of your favorite boards wouldn't happen to be Pole, would it? <laughs> <laughs> it most assuredly is. I replied, well, Chris, it's pretty obvious what they're about. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not even five minutes into their stream. Are you really gonna listen to this propaganda all the way to the next truck stop? Are you gonna change this or what? Hell, dude, c could we just listen to the waifus again? <laughs> <laughs> I swear, me and Hakadakos, we wanted the same. I mean, waifus, yeah, pretty insufferable, pretty bad, but <laughs> this is so much worse. Uh, oh no. Chris thought about this for a minute, perhaps debating his next reply, and he said slowly, Hunker Dockers, have I ever told you about them? You could stand to learn a thing or two about who's in charge of this world. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, I didn't want to reply. I said, you know what, Chris? I don't even want to know, dude. And I did my best to retreat into my book as we went down the road. As Chris listened with interest to a couple of basement dwellers discussing the JQ, as they called it, <laughs> I could hear the occasional shouts of Naughty whenever something revelatory was said and Becca whenever he disagreed. Some things will never change. Okay, but did the Nannies outnumber the Bakas? Because if the Bakas outnumbered the Nannies, then I think there's still hope. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> the rest of that drive was, uh, Really awkward, to say the least, as I tried to drown out the sounds of that podcast and Chris's exuberant fascination with it. When we finally did pull over and change seats, I cast a leery glance at the poopy coom man before putting the truck into gear. He was still watching it, disconnected from the cab speakers, at least. Before I put the truck into gear, though, I paused. I turned the truck off and I turned to him. I said, Chris, we need to talk. Chris put down his screen, pausing it, and turned to me, saying, What's up? I didn't beat around the bush. I don't like you watching that crap, man. I don't want you watching that crap. Chris scoffed and said, Yeah, sounds like something a jaywalker would say. I responded, What the hell does that have to do with anything, dude? And then Chris very politely informed me that, uh, the juice is immunized from all danger. You can call him a liar or a thief, and it all runs off him like water, but if you call him a jaywalker, he recoils and he says, Oh, I've been found out. Are you sticking up for your tribe, honker donkers? <laughs> oh, God! Uh, I replied, Chris, I'm a white Christian man. You know this. To which he scoffed and said, Yeah, a uh, fellow white for sure, huh? <laughs> uh, you are literally killing me, Chris. I'm dying inside. We've gone too far. I want to go home. I was getting a bit steamed at this point, and I said, Dude, what in God's name is your problem? The poop and waffin' then... <laughs> Uh, the poopin' waffin' then launched into a long tirade, his reasoning being about how there was overrepresentation of a certain group of people at the top of societal power structures, and that by virtue of this representation, they were busy keeping the white man down, and this was directly disenfranchising him. Chris, you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. The only problems that you have are ones that you elected to have. <laughs> well, this story's getting real spicy, isn't it? <laughs> like I said earlier, this is your reminder to like, comment, sub on the video if you haven't already. My head hurt. 
I turned to Chris at this point in time and said as much, Dude, you're crying about disenfranchisement when your dad is a multi-millionaire who runs a massive, country-spanning trucking company. You are literally set for life, and you're gonna sit there and tell me with a straight face that they are literally disenfranchising you. Come on, I'm not even that set up. 99.9% .9 of white people aren't that taken care of. Hell, the overwhelming majority of them are scraping by paycheck to paycheck, and you don't see them grinding an ax against a whole group of people. I don't even think race plays into it that much. Like, everybody is scraping by paycheck to paycheck, essentially. <laughs> Chris remarked, uh, Well, yeah, but that's because they don't know. That's why you've got to name them, Hawker Donkers. Oh my god. <laughs> my eyes narrowed, and I asked, What do you mean by name them? He replied, Yeah, you gotta name them. You gotta call them out every chance you get because people don't even know that they're being attacked. <laughs> it's up to guys like me to save us. <laughs> uh, oh, Crusader Chris, the Poopin' Waffin, here he comes to save us. Uh, you can do it, Chris. You can save Western civilization. Uh, Ah, uh, this whole thing has me sent. Like, I'm uncomfortable, but it's hilarious. <laughs> I sighed and I said, Chris, you can't even save yourself from living with your parents. <laughs> what the hell do you think you're gonna do? He said, I think I'm going to name them. He really liked the idea of that. I figured I'd press forward. So what happens next then? You name and blame and... People hear about this alleged situation, and then, what's supposed to happen next? Chris fell silent, perhaps not wanting to state the obvious conclusion of what this behavior was supposed to accomplish. I continued, What happens next, Chris? You dehumanize a group of people and blame them for all your problems, and then what's the next step after you dehumanize them? Come on out and say it. You sound cartoonishly freaking evil right now. Well, I think the next step is to take away the guns, and then the next step after that, yeah, we don't talk about that. <laughs> he deflected and said, eh, it's not like that, bro. <laughs> what are you talking about? I demanded to know what it was like then, and he sidestepped from the point at hand. Well, they dehumanize us. Just look on TV and in the news and ads, and even in schools, dude. It's always like whitey bad everywhere you look. And who do you think owns and controls all of that, huh? I replied, well, just playing devil's advocate here, Chris, but if you're gonna respond to a negative narrative with a desire for mass homicide of a certain group of people, then maybe, maybe that response might justify that narrative. <laughs> oh, snap. Did you ever think of that? You're over here crying about how you're part of a group that gets painted with a broad brush in a negative light while you're out here painting other groups with a broad brush in a negative light. 99.9% .9 of the people you say you want to protect want nothing to do with any of that. Here's an idea. How about instead of denigrating a whole group of people based on immutable characteristics and talking about why they need to be destroyed, you focus on specific actions that you see as harmful to the things and the people that you care about. Maybe focus on finding an end to those actions and the sentiments that fuel them. Maybe you try winning hearts and minds and building a world where everybody gets offered dignity, consideration, and well-being, and we all aspire to be just a little more mindful of each other instead of telling everyone that X group is evil for whatever reason du jour. You know, like a moral and sensible person might do. You don't get respect if you won't offer respect. Moral and sensible person. Well, there's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking a lot of truth, Hawkadonkers, but I, I think it's gonna fall on deaf ears. You might be wasting your breath. Chris thought about it for a minute. I could see that he was actually considering the weight of the words that I had said, right up until he replied, <laughs> That's gay. <laughs>
<laughs> I sighed. He started to ramble, telling me, Might makes right, bro. Why do you think people always defer to me? Because I'm a superior male specimen. <laughs> Nobody ever listened to the crying and whining of a sad little beta. Dignity? Well be what are you a woman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are definitely womenly traits. Fellas, is it gay to have dignity? <laughs> Uh, you, you think you could just sit down and talk things out with people? Chris had a point that I had to concede. There was no talking sense into him. I said, you know what, Chris? You do you, man. But don't expect me to save you when those chickens come home to roost. I punched the truck into gear, and we took off down the road. We rode along in silence. I was torn between righteous fury and complete incredulity. I could barely hear the bleeding of the tinny little phone speakers that played speeches from a certain Austrian painter over the roar of the engine. <laughs> Chris was transfixed, listening to his favorite despot, and I found it ironic because that same despot would have Chris lined up against a wall for being a filthy pig. There was no reaching him, however. There was no walking him back from the edge today. He had found a completely new way to destroy himself. I'm just at a loss for words. How do you how do you top something like this? You've been saving the best for laughs. Have a jogger dockers. <laughs> Good God. We roared into a truck stop that evening. Chris was still transfixed on his new show, soaking in old episodes. Seems like every other sentence was racial group this and other group that, and I turned to him incredulously and said, Are you still listening to that garbage? He said, dude, did you got to educate yourself. Did you know that despite... And my eyes glazed over as he started talking about crime statistics. <laughs> I pressed my hands to my temples and said, get the hell out of the truck, Chris. Chris lowered his voice and said, I don't know, dude. There might be ethnics out there. <laughs> and I practically shouted, out! <laughs> I just, I just have no words. This is, this is insanity. Chris got salty and shouted back, You're the reason why our race is dying, Hawker Donkers. <laughs> uh, and then he stormed out the door. <laughs> I don't think he was actually salty about me evicting him from the truck, if we're being honest. We had pulled over at a truck stop for the night, and going out and prowling the lot for more dope and lizards was... Probably far more exciting a prospect than sitting in the cab and trying to talk to me about crime statistics and who owns what. No, the poop and waffin left <laughs> in a huff to go and do some poop and waffin things. <laughs> you know the things. <laughs> I was restless that evening. The whole day's ordeal just had me on edge. And I paced the cab for a bit, trying to calm myself down, but... It wasn't enough. After a good 20 minutes of walking in circles in that confined space, cursing and mumbling under my breath, I decided I need some fresh air. Are we gonna watch Chris get beat up again? <laughs> Is that how all this ends? This has to be how it ends, right? I needed to get out of that tainted cab that carried the telltale stinky stank of the third reek and roam the lot myself. <laughs> <laughs> the third reek. <sighs> oh, I'm dying, dude. I laced up my boots and stepped down from the cab and into the travel plaza for a nice evening stroll. I'm sure it's going to be super relaxing. It was quiet, well after dark on that cool spring night, save for the roaring of idling engines all about me. And underneath the lamps, I could see the specters of patrons traveling to and from the convenience store. I figured I'd go and get myself something to drink. Now, I seldom drink, but with how wound up I was that night, I figured I'd get myself a nice cold beverage to help me relax. Oh, I thought you were talking about like an Arizona iced tea, but yeah, sure. <laughs> Imbibe if you feel the need. I walked inside to the chime of the doorbell and practically entered on a riot scene. People, 
A couple customers and even a member of the staff were angrily shouting their ire, collectively pointed at the poopy coom man. And I could see Chris recoiled like a cornered animal. His face flushed red with shame and anger, shouting back at them, yelling about, uh, Those freaking redacted! And how it was all their fault and people just needed to shut up and listen to him so they know who their real enemy was. <laughs> this is so out of hand. Calmly, as the scene unfolded, I walked past it all. <laughs> and I grabbed a nice cold drink from the cooler. I paused and grabbed the cup as well because, let's be honest, a show was unfolding and I wanted to stay close so I could watch all of the glorious fallout. I walked up to the counter where a confused convenience store clerk was watching it all unfold as well with visible uncertainty, their hand on the phone, perhaps ready to call the cops, and I showed them my drink, threw 10 bucks on the counter and said, keep the change and I turned around to observe the escalation of things before me. Was better than drinks and a show! <laughs> well, Chris spotted me from among the crowd and figured maybe he could lean on me for help. And that's about the time I said, screw the observation, it's time to go. Yeah, you definitely don't want to get pulled into this mess. <laughs> uh, with my plan foiled, I instead headed for the door, on the way out, I could hear Chris crowing, Hugger Doggers, help me out, man! But I just kept walking as quick as I could <laughs> out the front door. Whatever trouble Chris got into tonight was 100% on him. I mean, he was warned, and he still chose this path, and <laughs> I can't feel that bad. When I got outside, I grabbed a seat at a picnic table, quietly cracked my beverage, and poured it into the cup. Then I threw a lid and a straw on it, tossed the can, and waited. I was expecting sirens and cops and handcuffs, maybe a paramedic, any minute now. But they did not arrive. What I did see happen next was Chris coming out of the travel plaza, red in the face, shouting obscenities behind him as he walked out into the cool night, while the angry shouts of others came through the doors behind him. He looked disheveled, even more than usual, <clears throat> then he let out a deep breath, collected himself, and looked around, perhaps wondering what all came next. <laughs> oh no, dude, just, just go smoke something and bang it too, you know? At least that's only really harmful to you and whoever you paid to get into this transaction. <laughs> oh, that's when he noticed me, of course, and came over to the table where I sat. I took a long pull off of my drink as he walked up, and Chris said, Dude, what the hell's wrong with these people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's everybody but you, Chris. <laughs> I offered no reply. I just stared at him, sipping on my drink, waiting to hear his side of the story. And of course, it didn't take Chris very long to spill the beans. Uh, so, I went into the store, right? And as I'm walking through, I saw somebody. And they were wearing an anime shirt, right? So, I figured I'd go over there and I'd talk to them, because why not, you know? We got into it for a bit, and they totally had a patrician taste in anime. Then they asked me which ones I liked. So, obviously, I talked to them for a bit about Attack on Titan, because Mikasa, ah, oh, so sexy, right? And they totally agreed that she's a top-tier waifu. So I thought they were cool, and we could talk openly about other stuff. Oh, what kind of other stuff, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> well, I started telling them that Attack on Titan is actually a metaphor for Jewish people and white people, and, and they started looking at me like I was weird. So I explained it to him, and I told him that if we just followed the path that Aaron took and rose up against the people who control everything, we would have all these problems that we have. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow! In public, to a complete stranger. Do you know about inside thoughts, Chris? This is definitely an inside thought. You probably shouldn't think it at all, but if you have to, Keep it inside. 
<laughs> and then they started yelling at me and said I was an a-hole and a piece of crap. I tried to explain to them that I was actually on their side. I was just trying to teach them where their problems came from. And then other people that overheard us started to argue and they decided to jump in. And next thing I know, everyone was screaming at me. Okay, but can you process why? <laughs> I took another long pull off of my drink and said, So, you're using your favorite anime as a wedge so that you can talk to people and tell them about how they need to participate in this mass homicide of a certain group of people. Chris didn't bat an eye. With enthusiasm, he replied, I Exactly! <laughs> uh, he's just never gonna get it. I'm glad you get me, Hawker Doggers. It's the best tool we got, man. The Japanese are totally on our side, bro. They were even on the German side in World War II. I'm telling you, they're using anime to red pill the masses right now about the JQ and impart hyper masculine warrior values onto us. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, this has gone so much deeper than I ever wanted it to go. Uh, hyper masculine warrior values. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you look at the story arcs in Attack on Titan, you can totally see that Mikasa, the Japanese girl, is totally Aaron's. He's a German guy. Her best friend, and she's always looking out for him. So it's like the Japanese are nodding to us that they're trying to help us out. You can even study the blade while you're entertained. <laughs> uh, and they've created the perfect way to reach out to people and let them know about the trouble we're in. <laughs> I swear, they're trying to wake us up, bro. People who watch anime are already halfway there. I just gotta talk to them and help them realize the message. Yeah, he was using his weeaboo fantasies to justify the commission of actual war crimes. Is this why the worst things I always see on the internet come from people with anime profile pictures? It, it might explain a lot, like I'm sort of buying into Chris's delusion in this moment. Probably not true, probably bridge too far, probably just the ramblings of a meth-addled mind, but I don't know. <laughs> What do I really- I, I don't participate in any of this. It makes me viscerally uncomfortable. So, OP stands up from where he sat without a word and walked towards Chris. He was beaming enthusiastically at me, as if this revelation was sure to sway me over to his position. What it did sway me to do was deliver a hard slap right across his fat face. And when at last his jowls stopped quivering from the force of the impact, I said two words, truck, now. He started up with a, but hugger dockers, and I repeated myself, get your back to the truck. He could tell by the look in my eye that I meant business. And when we got there and sat down in the seats, I let out a heavy sigh. I said, Chris, do you know how close you came to being ended by that mob in there? Chris turned to me and said, uh, what do you mean? I think I was getting through to him. <laughs> uh, really? <laughs> I said, you were getting through to them that they shouldn't think twice about beating you to death. He retorted, I don't think it was that bad, bro. I know if I had a little more time with them, they would have seen that I was being reasonable. <laughs> None of this is reasonable. I don't think Chris has listened to reason even once in his life. I asked him, why did you leave then? And his response was, uh, because you would back me up. And there were a lot of them. <laughs> I raised my hands into the air as if to emphasize the point that he just made. There you freaking go, Chris. You left because you were afraid of mob violence. And you're too much of a coward to even admit to yourself that that is the reason that you left. And truth be told, man, if you did get attacked by a mob tonight, you not only would have deserved it, but you would have brought it entirely upon yourself. You can't go around calling for the extermination of people. 
<laughs> can't believe I have to explain this. It doesn't matter what group allegedly did what or who's in control of whatever. Things like that will never, never be acceptable. Chris began to reply, yeah, but if you do actually look at who's in control, and I cut him off with a shout, yelling, screw who's in control! God damn it, Chris, I swear, on God, as my witness, if you do something like this in public again, it will be me who exterminates you! <laughs> Chris seethed and said, so what? You want me to just stay silent then? And I replied emphatically, yes! Never bring it up again. The next time you talk about something, anything at all, you shut your stupid mouth before you get us both killed. Frankly, you can never talk again for all I care. Chris didn't respond. He just glowered where he sat, and I concluded saying, Now, I'm going to bed, and I hope that we never have to talk about this crap again. Good night. I went over to my bunk and laid down, and as sleep began to overtake me, I set up a small prayer with hope against hope that Chris would keep his desire for ethnic atrocities to himself. We all know, however, that prayers are often in vain, especially in these necks of the woods, and so we'll have to talk a little bit more about how that prayer failed spectacularly in the next installment of the Poopy Coom Man Saga. I hear the real world a call in my name it's time for me to go out and take care of business. I'll be seeing you real soon with another tale about the poopin' waffin, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> huh? Jesus, dude, we've got a, another whole episode of this? Okay, okay, I guess. <laughs> I asked for the cringe and it was delivered in full force today. I see that truck a rollin', it's rollin' down the bend. It's filled up with Chris Trucker and a big old load of cringe. My co-pilot is a neckbeard, number 32. God, wasn't Unfortunate 34? We're doing it. We're really doing it, you guys. <laughs> hey there, Red X gang. Hi, you some Bobby Hockadakas. Looks like I finally got myself a bit more time to write, so let's not delay any longer, and we will get into another story about Chris. The uninitiated might be wondering, well, who the hell is Chris? And to that I say there's a playlist down in the description, but I will explain to you now that Chris is a very fat and sweaty man surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. He is a splooge-brained ogre, <laughs> content to indulge in his own personal dark triad of anime, lot lizard, and crystal. Chris and I both worked together at a trucking company, a major one, and we would take turns driving our big rig down the road. Things were usually okay when Chris had to drive, usually being the operative word, but when his shift would come to an end, or worse yet, when we would finally pull over for the evening, Chris was finally free to his own devices, and he would begin to do uh, Chris things. You know the sorts of things after 32 parts, right? <laughs> Despite my best efforts to make Chris act like a normal human being, however, it was all in vain because at the end of the day, Chris is just unreachable by conventional human methods. At the very least, some consolation is that I no longer have to ride with Chris. That's right, not my circus, not my monkeys. But just because I'm not in charge of the circus doesn't mean that I don't want to, like, witness it, you know? <laughs> There's lots of entertainment value here. Where last we left off, Chris had grown bored of his usual anime podcasts and decided to plumb the internet for new entertainment. And as I'm sure you can imagine, this did not end well. What he found caught even me off guard. Now Chris, having been uh, red-pilled on the JQ by a couple of podcasters, proceeded to almost precipitate a riot at a truck stop by telling everyone he could about uh, who's really in charge. <laughs> of course, I can tell Mommy Honker Donkers is the one that's really in charge, but go off, I guess. <laughs> I told Chris that he needed to drop that shtick and never speak of it again, and he begrudgingly said that he would do so. Do you actually think that he held up to that promise? Well, let's just find out. 
shall we? The next few days of trucking were spent in awkward silence, which, quite frankly, is always the preferable alternative to anything that the poopy coo man might have to say. We picked up a package and we took it down the road and all the way the uber poop and Fuhrer <laughs> ran through episodes of that same questionable conspiracy theorist podcast. We're never going to get the names for any of these podcasts, are we? Maybe it's better that way. <laughs> he was transfixed on everything that they had to say and the cries of Daddy back served as a punctuated reminder that dragged me away from my escapism and back into the reality that Chris indeed had gone full Reich mode. <laughs> Still, he did honor my demand to never speak of it publicly, and so despite the long and protracted rantings of his fellow basement-dwelling goons, we went from truck stop to truck stop with no further threats of mob violence. Yeah, that's the least we can ask for in a day, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps because Chris had learned very quickly that I was not about to back him up when he decided to partake in the naming ritual, and that he recognized on some instinctual level that engaging in that behavior was a risk to his health. <laughs> and your health as well. I gotta give Chris points for never talking about it. He does seem to have some, like, loosely crafted set of morals I just can't really put my finger on how it's all supposed to operate. Frankly, it didn't rear its head, and after a week or so of this, he went back to watching anime podcasts. Perhaps he got bored with the 1930s German LARP, and the Poopenwaffen <laughs> instead descended back into the usual delights with which we indulged those long hours of driving the truck. The waifus had returned when a new episode was posted, and then Chris decided to branch even further into the pursuit of anime, much to my refreshment. Like I said, that was a real reality check. Maybe anime isn't so bad after all. <laughs> I mean, it's bad, but it's not as bad. Anyway, perhaps Chris was scared straight by the specter of the other night at the truck stop. Well, he found another anime podcast and began to indulge in that one as well. I thought things were back to normal, or at least, like, the closest approximation of normal that we could possibly hope for around these parts. <laughs> we completed our haul, and when we finally made the drop-off, we found ourselves once again waylaid back at another truck stop somewhere in Southern California. As we pulled in and put the truck in park, Chris turned to me and asked me uh, how I felt about taking a little detour while we had some time. Yeah, I don't think that sounds like anything I want to get involved with. <laughs> I said, Chris, you know we can't do that, dude. They track our mileage, and if we've got excess mileage, they are going to bill us for it. I'm not about to lose pay on your behalf, dude. Chris said, dude, it's cool. We're not even going that far. Maybe like 20 miles, and that's it, man. I just gotta go into town to do some stuff, bro. All right, sus. <laughs> I probed him, ew, never, never say that again, please. I asked Chris what kind of stuff, and he didn't want to reply. My mind shot to the worst possible potentialities. Maybe go traffic a kilo of dope, or maybe the lizards were just that more skeezy on the opposite end of town. I came back to reality, however, and listened to him as he rattled off excuses. He tried to run through a list of errands that... He could have easily accomplished in the travel plaza. Uh, do laundry, take a shower, use some Wi-Fi, uh, pick up supplies. Do you mean actually take a shower? <laughs> he hasn't taken a shower in a while. I guess we're over that part. But we could definitely bet some money that he's not actually doing laundry, right? <laughs> I remarked that all of these options were readily available to him from the comfort of the Flying J and that he knew this. He dodged the question by repeating, Um, well, we need to head into town, bro. <laughs> I firmly and resolutely said, No, we do not. He whined, Fine! And then got up and decided to prowl the truck stop for that evening's delights. The sun went down not long later, and I figured that I could rest easy knowing that Chris was on the hunt for his usual deviant behaviors with which he occupied his time, and that we wouldn't have to worry about excess mileage until 
Some other time when Chris got a wild hair up his ass. At least that's what I thought until I felt the truck lurching in the dead hours of the night. <laughs> uh, and like clockwork, I woke to the poopy coo man crawling into the cab and hopping in the driver's seat. Now, I had left the keys up on the dash because I don't want to sleep with them in my pocket. And Chris knows this. Truth be told, that's where I usually leave them and it's never been much of an issue before. Well, he certainly took advantage of it this time and began to warm up the engine as I clambered out of bed and said, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Joyride, bro. <laughs> he put the truck into gear, remarking that ah, he needed to go into town. I staggered into the passenger seat, wiping sleep from my eyes and cursing under my breath. I sat down beside him and said, I swear to God, Chris, if we get penalized for excess mileage, you're paying for all of it. He replied with a dismissive, eh, yeah, whatever. And we rolled down the road. Is this okay? Is he twacked out of his mind right now? <laughs> Uh, you, you've never felt like you're really driving this truck before. Wow. <laughs> we really didn't go very far, perhaps another 20 miles or so, like Chris had stated, to a nearby town, and Chris pulled us off the highway. The GPS rattled out all the turns as we proceeded toward this unknown destination wherein we were bound, and when we at last arrived, we found ourselves sitting outside of a small diner in the middle of a dumpy section of town. <laughs> Chris cut the engine, gathered a couple of his belongings, and asked me if I wanted to come inside with him. I remarked that I was going back to bed. Chris replied, whatever. <laughs> it stepped out into the night, leaving me alone in the cab. What could he possibly be doing? I mean, he, he seems to find all of the accoutrement at these travel stops. And even before he went outside to have a look for all that stuff, he was saying that they needed to make this trip. Another Tinder hookup? I don't know, man. <laughs> it's pretty weird. I guess let's find out. Well, I closed my eyes and did my best to return to the sleep that I had been so rudely deprived of, hoping to get back to sleep. And just as I was about to drift off once again, maybe an hour later, I could feel the truck lurch once more, jarring me back to this awful waking nightmare in which I persisted. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, that's a mood. Uh, Chris had returned, a scowl etched on his face, bitterly ranting to himself. He sat down in the driver's seat and let out a deep sigh, clearly perturbed by something that had just transpired. Now, I didn't want to risk conversation with the poopy coom man, but Chris had learned by now probably from my consistently annoyed reactions, that whenever he did come stumbling into the truck, he woke me up to the horrors of this world, inadvertently. And this time around, he had decided to just start hitting me with a barrage of his inane ramblings. Pretend to be asleep, bro. It's your only escape. You have to pretend to be asleep. <laughs> I can't freaking believe it, Hawker Talkers. Chris started, practically shouting. I come out of my way to meet these people because I want to help them out. And they have the gall to reject me to my face. Like, they don't even know what they're missing out on, dude. Like, man, would you reject me? Yes. <laughs> Look at me. I pressed my fingers up to my temples, resisting the urge to say, I'm about to reject you out of this truck if you don't shut the hell up. And instead, I said, Chris. What are you even on about? Chris didn't miss a beat. I guess after our discussion, not even a couple of weeks ago, Chris decided that he was going to go and arrange a meetup with some members of a nationalist group. <laughs> God, dude. <laughs> and they rejected him. <laughs> uh, oh, that is, that is sweet. Chris's logic here was that if naming them alone was dangerous and OP honker dockers was too much of a wuss to help him out in the act of naming, then perhaps he ought to go find a group of like-minded individuals with whom he could participate in said naming so that he didn't get his butt deservedly kicked when he decided to name them. 
Well, we were way late over in California, of all places, not that far from where either of us live, and so we figured that now, of all times, would be the perfect place for him to go ahead, look for a group of those said like-minded individuals, and arrange to meet up with them and talk about the naming business. <laughs> In California, bro, there's got to be an easier state you could do that in. Being racist in California, you're just going to get tired. <laughs> uh, I, of course, sighed upon realizing all of this. And after putting together that said crowd of like-minded namers had rejected him entirely, I remarked, Good. I'm glad they rejected you. Now, are you finally over this stupid JQ crap? He said, hell no, I'm not over it, dude. He said they didn't want me. <laughs> uh, it cracks me up every time. I mean, I get it, you know? But the low rejecting the low is just, uh, it's so sweet. <laughs> uh, who wouldn't want my help? I'm over here single-handedly trying to save the white race. <laughs> Uh, and they're just gonna reject me. Yeah, you doing that single-handedly, are you? Quite literally? I mean, I guess I do have to concede the, the point that your hand, your single hand is, is white. <laughs> I doubt it will ever bear you any children, but you, you just let me know how that goes, I guess. <laughs> I really wasn't gonna hear the end of this until I got down to the bottom of the matter, so... Begrudgingly, I said, well, Chris, why did they reject you? <laughs> oh, it's a laundry list. He started up. Bro, you'll never believe what he said. He said that, and I quote, white advocacy should have a mature face to it, man. <laughs> like I'm a child or something, right? And I told him that. I said, bro, I'm in my 30s. You can't get more mature than me. Like, what the hell do you even mean by mature? And this guy has the balls to tell me, look, you're gross and you're fat and you smell bad. <laughs> uh, nobody's going to take you seriously if they ever get into a conversation with you. And if anything, you're just going to poison the well and make us all look like bad people. I mean, <laughs> worse people, I guess. But yeah, I totally follow that line of logic. Like, who wants Chris to represent your group? Doesn't matter what the group is. Truckers Association, I'm sure they're sad Chris exists. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he said that, man. First of all, I'm not fat, dude. Like, it's all muscle under there, bro. <laughs> Uh, you're killing me today. Uh, plus, I don't know where he got that whole smell bad thing. <laughs> I put on some deodorant before I walked in there. Did you? Did you really? X is not deodorant. It's like a spray on. It's a body spray, right? That's not deodorant. The denial certainly was flowing hard today. And I said, so he rejected you. Does that mean we can let all of this lie now? Are you finally done, man? Chris thought about it for a minute and said, <laughs> Like hell, I'll let it lie, honker donkers. You think I'm going to abide by an insult like that from a pompous little redacted like him? <laughs> hell, I bet he isn't even white. Couldn't think of it. He did have a big nose. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, yikes. No, man, we're going to get even, him and I. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I got the number of one of the other guys of his group right here. So I'm going to set up a meeting with him tomorrow and I'll see if I can't figure out some way to settle the score. Oh, Chris, I don't think you're ready for all of this. Do you know what comes of blood for blood? I didn't want to tell him that he was probably cruising to just get himself hurt in all of this. Frankly, I was ready to just let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Watching Chris get stomped out by a bunch of skins didn't exactly sound half bad when I was somewhere between sleep and agony. There's never any point in trying to direct him away from his own stupidity anyway, you know? <laughs> That's a fair point. You're just gonna waste your breath, so why not just enjoy the show? 
So this time, we were just gonna let it ride. I said, all right, Chris, just don't put too much mileage on the truck or else you're paying for it. And he said, yeah, whatever. I went back to my bunk, got comfy and did my best to go to sleep as Chris drove off and found himself a cheap and skeezy motel for the night. Well, when we got there, he climbed out and went off to do his Chris things. I guess he was getting himself a room. Sun broke the next morning. I got out of bed and checked with dispatch to see if we'd be getting a package that day. The projected outlook was doubtful. Oof. So I figured, yeah, what the hell. With the day to myself and admittedly desiring a proper bed, I'd go ahead and get myself a motel room too. I walked into the desk, booked myself a unit, and headed off to get cleaned up. But for reals, not like Chris does it, all right? <laughs> As I got to my room, I saw a door at the end of the hall open up, and Chris came out. And then a tumbleweed rolls by, and they get that old western music going. <whistles> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> we met halfway in the hall, and I informed him as to what was up. Dispatch says we're probably not getting the package today, so you might as well renew your check-in. He mumbled, okay. I went off to the front desk and I stepped inside. I settled into a seat and took off my shoes and I was just about to get comfortable with the TV on when I heard a knock on the door. God damn it. <laughs> I knew right off the bat who the hell it was and I tried my best to ignore it, but the same hammy fist beat on my door once again. Annoyed, I got up from where I sat and headed over and unlocked the door. Sure enough, it was the poopy coo man on the other side. I simply said, what do you want? He said, hey, hey, so I got a hold of my friend and I guess the good news is I don't have to take the truck anywhere, so there's that. He's gonna meet me here. But I was wondering if you wanted to meet him too. Bro, why are you so insistent with- No! <laughs> he asked me if I had any friends who might be interested in what they do. I didn't miss a beat. I said no and slammed the door in his face. <laughs> this is the third invite, isn't it? Third time's the charm? You might miss Chris's inevitable beatdown, but yeah. Better not to be associating with characters like these, huh? <laughs> I walked back to the bed to lay down and watch my shows, and I heard Chris knock one more time. I just turned up the volume and pretended he wasn't there. <laughs> well, I was getting bored just sitting there watching TV. No, sit back down, watch your stories. <laughs> you don't want to be involved, I just said. I figured it had been an hour or two, and it was high time I got up and stretched my legs out. So I turned the soul-sucking television obelisk off and got up from where I sat and threw on my shoes. The sun was still shining outside and as I stepped out, I was quite surprised to see that a police cruiser had parked at the end of the lot. <laughs> uh, and out of one of those cruisers stepped a cop in plain clothes. Oh, Chris got caught by the feds? He didn't see the glow? <laughs> Oh no! Uh, I walked past him on the way to the truck, not exchanging a word, but I did exchange a glance back over my shoulder as I watched him go down the line of units and stop at one on the far end and knock. As I climbed into the rig, I cast a glance back that way and saw the door open. To my distinct lack of surprise, I saw Chris in the shadow of the door frame. <laughs> they stood there for a second, exchanging words, before Chris invited them inside. Oh, and I caught myself repeating the words, please be tweaking, <laughs> please be tweaking, please just be tweaking. <laughs> but he wasn't though. Well, the cop walked in and the door shut behind Chris and the officer and I said, you know what? <laughs> Maybe we just hang out in the truck for a little bit and uh, watch what happens. Yeah, they're knocking on your door next for sure, dude. <laughs> I locked the doors, <laughs> and I watched and waited. It seems that the plainclothes cop didn't come alone. They never do. There was also one of his buddies sitting in a car, craning his neck and watching the door into which his partner had entered. I was expecting Chris to, in characteristically Chris fashion, do something completely stupid, 
hopefully something which would result in drawn pistols, and Chris face down on the floor, but it didn't seem to happen. <laughs> Eventually, the door opened again, and the cop exited the place after saying something to Chris, who was admittedly visibly salty, and then walked down the row of units toward the waiting police cruiser where his partner sat. Without much further ado, he got in, and he walked off. Wait, they set up a honeypot and then let him off with a warning? That don't seem right. <laughs> Something's going on here. Now, I was beginning to get curious, but I didn't really want to go and knock on the poopy coom man's door. Whatever was going on, it gave me some serious creeps. Yeah, this is getting deep, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get caught up in this. I said it before, but I'm going to say it a, a million more times now that the feds are involved. I didn't want to get roped into some weird fed sting operation. Frankly, I didn't even want to be in that truck or at that hotel at that very moment. But that was where I was forced to reside because, well, some of us are just trying to work a job so we could feed our kids. <sighs> I debated on what to do. After maybe 30 minutes of waiting it out, noticing that a SWAT team was not yet kicking down Chris's door, I decided to take my chances. I got out of the rig and walked along the corridor up until I got to Chris's unit. Gently, I knocked, and I could hear the sound of Chris shuffling around inside. He undid the latch and it swung open wide, and Chris said, Oh, hey, what's up, honker donkers? Y you really don't want to talk about what just happened? <laughs> I saw it all. I replied, hey, figured I'd come in and uh, check on you. What's going on, dude? Did you ever go out and meet up with your friend like you were planning to? Chris scowled and said, yeah, I actually did, bro. You're never going to believe this. So I figured I'd talk to this other guy and maybe I'd have some better luck, you know? Well, he comes in, dude, and he starts giving me the same story. Says I'm unprofessional, and nobody would take me seriously, and then I should probably just give up on being a racist and stick to my day job because I smell bad. <laughs> huh? Huh? Oh, my God. Can you believe that, dude? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I wanted to say... Yes, I can absolutely believe that, Chris. <laughs> but instead, I said, So what happens now? You ready to give up on all this stupidity yet? Chris smiled and said, <laughs> Oh, not even, bro. I'm gonna get even with both of them now. <laughs> they think they can just come in here and talk down to me. Well, they got another thing coming. Oh, so Chris snitched. That's what happened, I'm pretty sure. I wanted to tell him he ought to just stop while he was ahead, but I was feeling particularly jaded today, and I volunteered no such productive input. Frankly, the thought of Chris getting ventilated by San Diego PD kind of tickled me. <laughs> so I let him continue. He told me, Dude, I managed to get both of their real names, and I know what city they're operating out of. Check this out, man. I'm gonna snitch him out to some cops. Well, that is about the worst idea ever. If cops can't build a case, they're just gonna throw Chris in jail since he admitted to all this stuff already. And even if for some reason he's successful, aren't you worried about reprisals? <laughs> You've never heard a more audible forehead slap in your life. I wanted to break his delusions and tell him, Chris, you're literally talking to cops, and they're probably building a case on you right now. <laughs> it's my first thought, too. But I didn't. He wouldn't have listened to me anyway, you know? So instead, I just decided to rib him a little bit. Hey, Chris, whatever happened to that whole we gotta save our race crap that you were on about for like the last two weeks? You just gonna let all that go out the window because they won't let you join their stupid little group? Chris started up. Hey, dude, it's not about them not letting me in their group. I could understand if they didn't let me in their group. It's just about how much they suck. Uh, dude, I'm totally not fat, and I don't even smell bad. <laughs> Those guys are just being jerks because they can. 
They're trying to out-alpha me, so I'm gonna out-alpha them instead. Yeah, by whining to the police. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine the looks on their faces when they wake up to the cops beating down their door? Bro, you are going to be the next one with your door kicked in. <laughs> and it's not just going to be for a court date. They're going to put a bullet in whoever is home. Dad, mom, Hispanic maid, 14 body pillows. <laughs> yeah, you've never seen such a bloodbath. I truly tried to fathom... In what world being an alpha male translates to you having other men do your dirty work for you, but I couldn't quite grasp it. It's a world in which Gustavo Fring exists, I guess. But I figured, whatever. Let Chris call the cops on the cops. <laughs> <laughs> They've probably got a record of all the fake identities they use back at the department anyway, and I'm sure they'll have a laugh about it when they find out that this fat tub of lard that they were sent to investigate for hate crime was trying to report them to the department uh, for hate crimes. <laughs> Case dismissed. We don't even know who's psyoping who anymore, truth be told. Well, that's just facts. Either way, I just had to know. I had to ask again. Chris, are you done with this racial crap or what, man? Chris thought about it for a minute and then he said, Yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and get talked down to by anyone. If that's how those guys are gonna act, then the J-words are right to get rid of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just wash your hands just like that, huh? Just like every other identity Chris Trucker's taken on. There's just... Nothing that really sticks. <laughs> Chris actually did let the subject lie after that. I think that his dreams of becoming a dedicated freedom fighter for his people were dashed on the rocks when he realized that the group he sought to join, and perhaps still to this day believes was entirely legitimate, wanted nothing to do with him. Frankly, I find it hilarious that the sting operation that he was attempting to get involved with actually hazed that fat, disgusting prick and told him to stick to his waifus. <laughs> I don't really know whether anything actually came of this interaction or not between Chris and the police. It wasn't terribly long later that we ended up parting ways. This one will always be a mystery, but I at least take comfort knowing that somewhere, my tax dollars were hard at work putting Chris on a watch list and also talking mad crap about him at the same time. <laughs> and that about wraps up today's story. I can hear the open road out there calling my name, so you know the deal. I'll see you guys when I see you guys with another story about our favorite decadent disaster that we call Chris. I apologize for nothing. Part of me does question why they would decide to haze Chris if they're actually trying to like build a case on him. Wouldn't they try and wrap him up and be like, yeah, dude, we're totally gonna firebomb a, a religious facility. And he's like, yeah, cool. And then you have him show up at a certain date and time and arrest him. Maybe that's entrapment. I don't know about law enforcements. Except for the fact that they probably do like to have fun. Probably couldn't resist hazing him just a little bit. This is what a deep rabbit hole to go down. We're talking about feds and glowies and all this stuff. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you don't know, to say that uh, a post glows or someone is a glowy is basically calling them a federal agent. And they're definitely out there, and I'm definitely not one of them. <laughs> ho ho, he he. <laughs> Some people are out of your life for a reason, and that's okay. My co-pilot is a neckbeard, number 33. Hey there, Red X gang. Hi, Yuzumami Honka Donkas. Looks like I finally got myself a bit of time to write, so let's not delay any longer and get ourselves into another story about Chris. The uninitiated might find themselves wondering, well, who the hell is Chris? And if that's the case, you should check out the playlist in the description. But suffice it to say that Chris is a very fat and sweaty man, surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. He's a defective troglodyte <laughs> of a human being, content to dwell in his own personal dark triad of anime, lot lizards, and crystal. Chris and I both used to work together for a trucking company, a major one, and we would take our turns driving the big rig down the road. 
things were usually okay when Chris had to drive, usually being the operative word, but when I would take the wheel, or worse yet, when we would pull over for the night, Chris would find himself free to go and do... Chris things. Yes, you know the type of things by now, despite my best efforts to make him act like a normal human being, despite my efforts to talk some sense into that boy who just ain't right. <laughs> it was all in vain, and Chris would continue his own downward spiral into oblivion. At least now, I no longer have to ride with Chris. Oh, don't you worry, Chris will always ride along in all of our hearts, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, the banging of the gavel arrested my attention. Ooh, court update! <laughs> Swish! I came back from somewhere else that was a thousand miles away. Perhaps some truck stop haunted by budget price lizards, or maybe a fleet yard wherein a big rig that haunted my dreams rocked back and forth and back down to the reality of the courtroom before me. The arraignment proceedings had begun, and the judge mumbled, The case of Mommy Honka Donkers versus Poopy Coom Trucking Incorporated is the defense present in the court. I looked around expectantly, knowing full well that a certain stupid coom ogre had done the job of handing me an easy payday. <laughs> By the seeming of things, he had certainly done his job. The judge soon realized that the accused party had failed to materialize. <laughs> and I imagine that the courtroom documents that Chris had intercepted in transit to his father had been buried judiciously under a heap of dirty laundry and used tissues, permanently fused to the floor by bodily secretions, <laughs> never to see the light of day again. Oh God, that's the good stuff. Fused to the floor, bro. The gavel banged again, and the judge declared that a settlement ruling was being issued. I had just gotten a paid. I smiled and turned to my attorney, shook his hand and thanked him, and as we exited the courtroom, all I could think about was making my way back home to let the missus know about the good news just in time for Christmas. Wow, that's a pretty quick turnaround for the US legal system. <laughs> well, the next day I had to get back to work, as my home leave was wrapping up. The new company had been pressuring me to take on some OTR work, and I said, yeah, you know what, I'm getting itchy feet as it stands, so sure. I'll go hit the road for a couple of weeks, and I'd just see everyone when I got back. I made my way down to the fleet yard, hopped into my new truck, strangely absent of lingering poopy coom stinky stank, and I said, hey there, to my new co-pilot. A man in his 20s, of appropriate weight and good hygiene, a generally straight-laced dude named Steve. Whoa, Steve, yeah. I'm honestly surprised that Honker Dockers would go back to work after a, a giant court settlement. It's time to celebrate, isn't it? <laughs> Come on now. They just handed you a giant nest egg. Time to gobble it up. Duh. <laughs> uh, so for a moment, I wondered... What sort of lewd or lecherous pastimes Steve might indulge in, and the reality of how scarred I was from my time riding with Chris was truly driven home. Yeah, they didn't give you that money for nothing. <laughs> I pushed it from my mind and settled in. As we got situated, him in the driver's seat and I in the passengers, he turned over the engine and pulled us out of the yard. I braced myself for the impact of, Daddy, back but... It never came. Oh my god. And I thank the Lord above for the generic rock and roll that blared out of the radio instead of man children obsessing over cartoon characters. I smiled because, well, I could smile again. Life was beautiful. We hit the highway and there were no racial epithets or crapping in their pants or near collision swerves or high speed knob polishing. No, none of it. Just sane polite conversation between him and I on a sane and polite drive down the road. And I found out a bit more about the new guy that I'd be driving with for a couple of weeks. The young man had just started a family, had sane hobbies like automotive and guitar and even painting. And the best part was he didn't really care for Japanese cartoons. Yeah, I asked him specifically about all that and he was surprised that I even knew what anime was by name. 
And he was generally just a wholesome and well-intentioned guy by every metric that I could measure. The world was indeed looking up. Well, good for Steve. I like him already. Personality of a rock, but I like him already. <laughs> well, we carried on down the road, and after a while, when the topics of discussion were spent, I decided that I'd go zone out on my computer while Steve drove the rest of his shift. When he was done, we pulled over at a rest stop, switched places, and I continued the drive. You guys have to understand me when I say that it was truly a magical moment. <laughs> There was no bed spring symphony from the furtive diddling acts of an overweight troglodyte behind me when I took over the wheel. No exposed muddy butt cracks wafting their particulate matter around the confines of the cabin. <laughs> oh god. Uh, every time. No Pavlovian erection reflex at passing truck stops. <laughs> None of it. It was just me and Steve rolling down the road. Me driving the truck and Steve reading a book like a normal, sane human being. I was almost ready to cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it wasn't easy to hold myself together. I legitimately had to struggle against the impulse to pull over the truck onto the shoulder, grab a hold of that magical, normal truck driver beside me in a big ol' hug, and maybe even weep like a baby into his shoulder until I passed out from exhaustion. <laughs> uh, you have to say no. <laughs> I held my composure together, however, and did my shift with due diligence, bearing the wellspring of years-long agony that had finally come to a close. When at last my shift had come to its end, we were somewhere outside of Elko, Nevada, and we roared into a truck stop for the evening. Steve stood up and said, Oh, he was gonna go, like, clean up. And I winced <laughs> through a conditioned reflex that I simply could not suppress. Until I reminded myself that Steve was not Chris. Steve probably was, in fact, going to bathe. And if he decided to clean the pipes while he's at it, well, that's none of my business, I guess. <laughs> I told him, no worries, that I'd go fill up the truck and find us a place to park overnight in the truck lot, and then I'd probably go clean up as well. I wondered momentarily if perhaps he would prowl the lot late into the night, looking for some courtesans or crystal, but I pushed the thought from my mind because even after all this time, I was still conditioned from my time riding with the poopy coom man. Some wounds never heal, OP. <laughs> I reminded myself that Steve was a married man, seemingly of good character, and from what I gathered in just a few short hours of conversation, all signs pointed to that he was a generally upright individual. From the way that you're talking, I'm wondering if it's going to go off the rails in some unexpected way. <laughs> just two more weeks of hell to really remind you. Well, Steve left, and I went to the Diesel Island, as I said I would, I started filling the truck up and sat there for a minute, enjoying the fresh air. After I finished at the Diesel Island, I climbed back in and continued to enjoy the fresh air as I pulled into the back of the parking lot and cut the engine. For a moment, I stared out of the windshield. I'll be completely honest with you guys, I was ready to cry. I'd been struggling the whole day to hold back this tide of emotions welling up inside me for the entire day. Trucking actually isn't so bad when you're not stuck with a depraved coom goblin for weeks on end. <laughs> yeah, he made this job way harder than it had to be. <laughs> I was actually enjoying myself at work for the first time since I had started riding with Chris. It was an abusive relationship, wasn't it? My god, I think I'm just coming to that realization too. It seemed all funny and whatnot, but no, there's a human being behind all that. And he's convinced himself that all this stuff, I guess, isn't really that bad. Why did that take 33 parts to really sink in? Like, I just had a revelation right now. Anyways, if you watched the video this far, you probably enjoyed it. So uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. Thanks so much. Share it with a friend. Why not? Anyways, getting this taste of luxury when not having to interact with my coworkers struck a chord that I had long since forgotten could be struck. I whispered a small prayer of thanks to the Lord, gathered my belongings in my backpack, and prepared to go take my shower. 
I stepped out into the cold air of that near wintry night and took a breath, relaxing myself and pushing that tide of emotions from my mind, and then I began my advance across the lot. I reached the truck stop door, stepped inside and walked up to the driver's desk, requesting a shower. And when I got my ticket and turned around, I took up a spot by the screen flashing the stall numbers and customer numbers, realizing that I had quite a wait ahead of me before I'd get to go clean up. I shrugged, found myself an available seat in the trucker's lounge, and zoned out into my phone. Not even a minute or two into my vertical scrolling, I heard a voice that will never fail to make my skin crawl. Hunker uh, Donkers, is that you? Oh god. No, no it's not. <laughs> I looked up from my device, dragging my eyes across the ragged flip-flops stuffed with yellowing toenails that nurtured a greasy and viscous fungus <laughs> past the varicose cankles that jiggled with each step towards a pair of sweatpants stained with unspeakable discharge uh, uh, up over the corpulent gullet wrapped in a gray t-shirt painted in the myriad stains of questionable body secretions and fast food condiments, up past the black, grisly stubble that decorated a quibbling double chin lovingly cultivated by a consistent diet of truck stop taquitos and corn chips, and I found myself staring into the red, vacuous, overstimulated eyes of the beast that now circled me. <laughs> Is there no God? <laughs> it was just my freaking luck that the first day really out on the road again and my past would come back to haunt me. Is this a vision? What are the odds of this? <laughs> I stood face to face once more with the Poopy Coo man himself. Most likely after having spent his rancid load in one of those shower stalls, I begged baby Jesus that the stall that I was about to use wasn't the one that he had used as a spank bank. I replied, no, it's not. <laughs> it's the perfect response. And I turned back into my phone as if he wasn't there, hoping against hope that he would just go away. Chris, however, replied, <laughs> dude, that's totally you, isn't it? What the hell are you doing out here, dude? I thought you quit trucking. I replied, I quit trucking with you. <laughs> and then I returned to my screen while Chris started to orbit around me, trying to ask me probing questions. Uh, so who you working with now? What kind of truck are you driving? Uh, hey, you want to hang out and party with me a little bit? Chris, why do you not understand that nothing has changed in the dynamic of our relationship? <laughs> I mumbled, go away, Chris. We have nothing to talk about. It was true. We did have nothing to talk about at this point. Chris was a little taken aback by it all. And he replied, dude, it's Christmas time. You really going to be rude to me at Christmas time, dude? There's a reason nobody likes you. <laughs> it's because you're a total a-hole. I repeated myself firmly, saying, Chris, I don't care what time of year it is. We have nothing to talk about. We're done, dude. We've been done. He said, yeah, I noticed you've been ignoring me. You don't even respond to my emails anymore. Even when I ask you nicely to please respond. What's up with that, dude? I ain't holding no bad blood against you. Why you gotta hold a grudge against me? Because you have deeply and psychologically disturbed this man, now please have the good grace to go away. What is... what? I wanted to make him go away. Hell, really, I just wanted to start laying into him with my fists and not relent. But I didn't. I knew that making him go away of his own accord would not be accomplished so easily, however, by just ignoring him. I'd been ignoring him for weeks, and he still constantly constantly sends me emails. Yeah, I've got a few, but I'm holding those back for a later date. <laughs> After the fact of this story, I checked my old inbox just to be sure, and to my distinct lack of surprise, there was yet another one from him. I even created a new inbox just so I wouldn't have to look at him. I might have to do this too, honestly. <laughs> Chris believed that he had a bone to pick with me, 
even though he was being totally duplicitous about its presentation. And now that I found myself in his physical company, he was not about to let me go so easily. There was only one way out, and it was through. I decided I'd just go for the throat instead. I went to court the other day. Chris's attentions perked right up. Yes, this is what he had come in here for. He leaned in and said sarcastically, Oh yeah, and how'd that go for you? <laughs> I bet it was a big fat waste of your time. You came here to admit that I was right. Right, honker dockers? I calmly replied that he should probably start packing his things. The judge ruled in my favor because nobody showed up to represent the defense. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. I could see the shock on Chris's face as his plans came cumbling down. <laughs> cumbling. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Leave it in. His plans came crumbling down around him. <laughs> Very soon now, despite all his efforts to try and protect himself from the wrath of his daddy dearest, he had failed. And he was realizing for the first time that he was about to feel it in all of its unbridled fury. A storm was a brewing and the fallout was coming. It was so quiet that you could hear an ant fart. Chris recomposed himself as best he could and struggled through the denial as he said, Stop lying, honker donkers. There's no way that really happened. <laughs> Tell me the truth. And I repeated what I had said once more. And Chris descended into a sullen silence that I, of course, found quite welcome. As Chris sat there, glowering at me, I heard a familiar voice coming up from behind the shower stall. Apparently, Steve had just come back, chipper as ever, and figured he'd come up to me before we went back to the truck for the night. What's up, honker dunkers? I heard him say from beside me, and I turned away from the glowering pile of excrement in front of me to see my new co-pilot approaching. His expression told me that he was somewhere between concern and disgust. I had not told Steve about any of the horrors that I endured while I rode with Chris because, well, that's just not really good meeting people conversation. <laughs> uh, yeah, you nailed it down. I get very concerned when people are like, I want to introduce my friend to Red X. I showed him Chris Trucker. It's like, dude, maybe start with like pajama beard or something like that. <laughs> A little bit softer. There are many levels to this stuff. You got to realize. <laughs> So, for Steve to see me so casually embroiled in conversation with this defective troglodyte probably gave him some pause about the nature of my character and who I was. He probably wondered what the hell I was doing with the scruffy looking ragamuffin with an odor on par with a dead skunk visibly strung out on dope in the middle of a Trava Plaza this late at night. I could sense the unspoken judgments forming already. Awkwardly, I cleared my throat and said, Steve, this is Chris. Him and I, uh, used to work together. Chris's eyes darted from me to Steve and back to me again before focusing on me, and Chris started shouting, hey, Screw you, Hunger Doctor! You ruined my life! You know what's gonna happen to me now? Oh, do you? I thought long and hard <laughs> about my next words, as his denial now lapsed into anger, and I said, of course I know what happens. You're finally gonna get what you deserve, Chris. He squealed like a stuck pig, and then came at me while I was sitting there in the middle of the travel plaza. <laughs> Here we go again. Some of the truckers in the lounge looked up from the movies that they were watching while Chris moved to strike me where I sat. It was not long for this world, however. Steve, already proving himself a total bro, came up behind Chris lightning fast before his punch could land, struggling through his transparent revulsion, and placed Chris into a full Nelson. <laughs> oh man, he just took a shower. Now, now you're gonna have to go back in there. <laughs> Chris struggled against the physical superiority of my new co-pilot in vain, kicking and braying like a poop-smeared mule declaring, You betrayed me, Hunger Doctors! I can't believe you betrayed me, dude! After all we've been through, you have to do me like this? Let me go, you son of a- I'm gonna kill him! 
Steve, however, was not so easily persuaded, and did not, in fact, let go. Well, this scene had certainly escalated, and Chris's ruckus had drawn the ire of some of the staff. A janitor pushing his mop bucket along, probably paid far too little to deal with this sort of crap, came up and said, You guys gotta take all that outside. Chris jeered, Yeah, hunker dockers, let's go outside. I'm about to kick your ass. Steve silently nodded at the disgruntled employee and dragged Chris kicking and screaming the entire way with him towards an exit and out into the lot while Chris yelled at me to hey, stop hiding behind my boyfriend and find him like a man. <laughs> I sighed, brushed it off, and lingered in the travel plaza pretending that I wasn't actually involved in the whole ordeal that was unfolding. <laughs> I mean, if you hadn't beaten Chris up on multiple occasions, I'd be like, yeah, get in there and get you some retribution. But Honker Donkers, he just tired, man. <laughs> he just wants it to be over, man. Just cut me my check. I'm going home. Now, as Steve dragged Chris out of the travel plaza, I noticed a few of the guys who were watching the TV and waiting for their showers casually got up from where they were and followed the commotion outside. Hollywood can't possibly compete when there is actual real-life drama unfolding, I guess. <laughs> I imagine that they followed Steve and Chris out into the lot to go and see what would come next. I tried not to think about it. <laughs> I glanced down at my shower ticket and then up at the screen and saw that I was coming up next, so I decided to wait. When my number was finally called, I wandered off to the stalls and took a long, hot shower to wash away the unnecessary excitement that I was enduring. I tried to relax, but it was hard, because I knew Chris was out there, and I knew that in one of these stalls, Chris had spent his load, and I might currently be standing in it. <laughs> uh, oh, you cut me deep. You cut me real deep. <laughs> now, I didn't take too long getting cleaned up. I was curious what was going on outside. I got out of the shower, dried off, got dressed in a hurry, and made my way through the truck stop and out into the night. When I hit the outside, I could hear the rumble of idling engines, wondering what the hell had transpired. I did a quick lap around the outside of the building. No Chris, no Steve, nothing. And I wondered what it was that I had missed. As I was about to turn back to the truck and figure out what had happened, I saw a familiar trucker who had broken loose from the television in the lounge, and I asked him if he knew what had happened. He relayed to me the unsurprising truth. Yeah, the fat one got his pushed in. <laughs> I smiled, told him thanks, and made my way back to the big rig. On my way out, I noticed our old big rig, and I could see it lurching around with a familiar occupant whom I had parted ways with only a couple of months ago. I couldn't help myself. I went up to the door and knocked. See, see, you're not better than any of us. You want to beat him up too. Just once, for old time's sake. <laughs> the door swung wide and I was blasted in the face with the reek of stagnant smegma. <laughs> God! Inside was Chris, pressing a dirty rag to his bloody nose, struggling back tears. I guess that whoever was his new co-pilot wasn't much a one to hang around in that truck when he didn't absolutely have to, and I couldn't blame him, honestly. Because as I peered past Chris, I noticed that he was alone. Between the blood and phlegm, he sputtered the words, And what the hell do you want, man? Truth be told, I didn't quite know what the hell I wanted. <laughs> I just reflexively asked him, Hey, you alright? Vindictively, he replied, Do I look alright to you, hacker doctors? Do I look alright? And I murmured, Well, you're still alive. Chris spitefully retorted, For what? You ruined my life, bro. Now I gotta find a way to hide the fact that you sued my dad, or, or I'm gonna wind up homeless. I replied, Chris, things are well beyond that at this point, man. You should probably stop sneaking around behind his back before you end up making things worse for yourself and for him. Oh, honker dog, always out here spinning up some home truths, right? And Chris never listens. <laughs> some things never change. He thought about this for a minute, clutching that blood-soaked coom rag to his nose. <laughs> Before shrieking, Screw you! And slamming the door shut, 
leaving me out there alone in the lot. What really was there left to say? I had said my parting words to him, and now it was time to get back to the truck and get some rest. I figured it'd probably be good to check up on Steve anyways, so I left that foul vehicle there in the night, and I headed back to a much nicer semi and climbed inside. Steve was up, sitting in the passenger seat, holding a bag of ice to his knuckles. He must have smacked Chris fairly hard because by the looks of it, he had broken one of them on Chris's stupid face. I came in a bit cautiously and said, hey. Steve looked up from where he sat and said, so you want to like tell me what the hell that was all about? <laughs> well, it's a really long story. There's actually a playlist. Nah, he probably would only watch a couple episodes. He'd be like, that's disgusting, bro. I'm going to go work on my car and play some guitar. Good on you, Steve. You chose a different path, but it's not entirely incorrect, I guess. <laughs> so I told Steve that I used to ride with that guy at my last company that I worked with and that it was a waking nightmare every moment of my life. Of course, it was quite the long story, and I told him I could keep him up all night with tales of that dude. Instead, I pointed him towards my Reddit posts and the narrations of them, and I said, have at it, man. Then I thanked him for stepping in, to which he replied, No problem, man. It's crazy out here on the road. Last guy I worked with looked out for me. Figured I ought to pay it forward a bit. Without a word further, I headed to my bunk and got cozy, opening my book, and from the front of the cab, I could hear a familiar voice remarking that it's totally science, and that you can go ahead and look it up. Oh, gave me chills, dude. <laughs> what the hell's going on? How'd you do that? Wow, I love that. And so concludes today's tale about our favorite troglodyte that we all know as Chris. The well is starting to get pretty damn dry at this point. I might have one or two more stories that are worth telling, barring any further potential encounters in the future with the Poopy Coom Man. I will say this though, if I ever do see him again, maybe I'll try and get him to squeal a little bit about how his life is going and relay it all here. <laughs> I don't rightly know what all's happened to him since then, but I imagine it hasn't been very pleasant. <laughs> if I do hear from him or see him again in the future, I'll be certain to let you guys know how all that pans out. I imagine that a rude awakening is coming his way very, very soon now. I'll push hard to see if there's anything else notable about our time together back at the old company, but like I said, we are getting down to slim pickings in these parts. Still, I might have one or two good ones left up my sleeve, and if I'm not gonna lie, it actually feels pretty good knowing that I've gotten so much off my chest. It feels even better knowing that there is some small semblance of justice in this otherwise backwards world. Anyway, I can hear the open road to call him a name, friends, and I'll see you guys again with another story about Chris. Absolutely beautiful. I want you to put a number on the settlement. You know, I'm very, very curious about that. Obviously, it wasn't big enough that you retired 100%, and I think that's sad. He's obviously left some, like, deep psychological scars, which was probably the most interesting thing in the story to me. Just how deeply this trauma has been embedded, and OP constantly telling himself, Yeah, it's not so bad. It could be worse. No, it really couldn't. <laughs> it could be normal, and wouldn't that be better? Really glad you found your way up and out, man. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Like, comment, subscribe if you did. Follow me on all the things. Links in the description. If you'd like to support monetarily, we got the Patreon. We got the YouTube channel memberships. That's the join button down in the lower right. And of course, I would always like to remind you, friends, that you are loved. You are worthy. You definitely, definitely deserve it. And I shall see you in the next one. So until then, friends, bye-bye. Wash your hands.